बहुत ज़रूरी हो गया लोगों के लिए और उस चीज़ से मुझे डर लगने लगा कि हाँ ऑफकोर्स मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फ़ोटोज़ पोस्ट करने में बहुत मज़ा आता है लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की ज़िंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो वन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन वन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेर एवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम इन अ गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड आई थिंक आई एम फ्री चौपी बट देर आर डेज वर आई एम जस्ट लाइक Yeah. Like I, I don't know. My stomach's hurting, but I had to go to the gym because I have to look good for an event, or because yeah. I'm losing weight for a role, and then I have to do training after. And and like, someone just told me that the film I wanted to do is now happening with someone. And like, you're having a shitty day, and then yeah. there are paps saying, "Jami, ma'am, yah turn karke wave kije, please." Yeah, yeah. And you, you yeah. know that your tights are too tight, and this won't look flattering. And people yeah. will say that, "Oh, ye jaan buch ke aise kapde pendi," and all of these thoughts rush in your head. in a matter of seconds and then i and then it shows on your face yeah that's true and then they say ke itni khadu se hai bhi nahi bol sakti hai so you can't care about these things yeah you've got into several roles like isme main jo aapke expressions dekh rahi hu main ye expressions nahi soch sakti thi ki aap de sakti hain for some reason logon ko ye lagta hai ki jisne gareebi nahi dekhi वो क्या जाने गरीब लड़की के दिल में क्या चल रहा होगा ये सही है ये गलत लेकिन वही तो काम है हमारा काम है आपका ओके वही तो काम है हमारा एंड आई अग्री अगर एक इंसान अपने देश को नहीं जानता अपने देश के लोगों को नहीं जानता अगर उसने जिंदगी ना देखी हो तो वो कनेक्ट कैसे करेगा या कैसे करेगी बट हैविंग सेट दैट गरीबी इज अ रिलेटेबल प्रॉब्लम इट्स द इट्स लाइक ऑब्जेक्टिवली इट्स 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 बैड राइट इट्स अ स्ट्रगल ऑब्जेक्टिवली अगर आप अपने घर पे खाना नहीं डाल सकते या अगर आपका घर है ही नहीं तो वो रिलेटेबल प्रॉब्लम है राइट right. hmm. लोगों को लगता है अगर आप फाइव स्टार होटल के बेडरूम में रो रहे हो तो वो रोना है ही वो रोना है ही नहीं एग्जैक्टली वो प्रॉब्लम है ही नहीं लेकिन वैसे भी नहीं है सो देर आर पैरल एंड जस्ट बिकॉज आई हैव ग्रोन अप इन अ मोर कम्फर्टेबल एनवायरमेंट डजेंट मेक इट एनी मोर और लेस वैलिड and i used to have this problem jahan main kehti thi ke whatever would happen in my life because people would keep saying but people are suffering here people are suffering there yeah. i'd be like ha mera problem kya hai but yeah. that's not healthy also yeah kyunki har insaan ke liye hmm. there will always be someone more privileged more than privileged. you of course there will always be then no one has a right to complain of but course. the point is that sab log koi na koi cheez se guzar kuch na kuch चीजों से गुजर रहे हैं ना दे समन मोर प्रिवलेज देन यू दे समन मोर प्रिवलेज बदली हैं लोग भारत के साथ खड़े हैं इन लोगों ने गुमराह किया उनको आज इस प्रकार से जो एक कोशिश की जा रही है कि वहाँ पर हर घर में झंडा खड़े तो ये बार बार गलत बयानबाजी करके लोगों को गुमराह कर रहे हैं लोगों को भड़काते हैं compelling people to put tricolor on their shops and houses and establishments All right now going up to JNK as a part of the Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration the JNK government has formed a high level committee to implement the recent decision taken on the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign while the move was welcomed by the BJP PDP spokesperson Anil Sethi has called it a childish move. Now I remember earlier National Conference Chief Farooq Abdullah had said if you uh, want to keep the flag you can keep your tiranga at home. Mehbooba Mufti bar bar bharti jhande ko lekar ke jo azadi ka amrit mahotsav manaya ja raha hai us par sawal khade karte hain tiranga ki beizzati karna इनका शुरू से काम रहा है इनको तकलीफ़ होना स्वाभाविक बात है क्योंकि सत्तर साल इन्होंने उस झंडे को प्रायोरिटी दी जिसके कारण से अलगाववाद आतंकवाद और परिवारवाद ये सब चीज़ें चलती रही 
अब वो कश्मीर में परिस्थितियाँ बदली हैं लोग भारत के साथ खड़े हैं तो ये बार बार गलत बयानबाजी करके लोगों को गुमराह कर रहे हैं लोगों को भड़काते हैं लेकिन इस प्रकार की जो व्यवस्था है लोग इस सब को नकारेंगे और आज़ादी के अमृत महोत्सव पर हर जगह झंडा चढ़ेगा I mean, compelling people to put tricolor on their shops and houses and establishments. In my opinion, personal opinion, the most demeaning the authority of the tricolor. Tricolor is something which we respect from the core of our hearts, and we stand up wherever tricolor is unfurled or hoisted. Secondly, I think this is yet another a distraction move of the government. The government never wants to address the main issues. unemployment poverty other hostile issues facing the country the common man they keep on distracting they keep on generating controversy out of nothing out of no issues now i join my colleague tejinder singh sodi uh, about this har ghar tiranga campaign in jnk uh, tejin how are the citizens of jnk viewing it the fact that uh, har ghar tiranga uh, kind of strides to have a national flag in every house and not just that to hoist the flag in every house how do they feel about this i uh, see uh, this is the campaign which the union uh, territory uh, administration would start as part of the azadi ka amrit mahotsav we also saw uh, in the pa- in the recent past when there was uh, the, the authorities decided that at every school across the union territory of jammu and kashmir try color would be hoisted on the republic day as well as on the independence day so people in large number they participated in uh, hoisting tricolor in uh, schools colleges and all other educational institutes institutions across the union territory so there was a massive response and uh, elated by that massive response uh, the authorities have decided that now at every household they would start a campaign to hoist a tricolor and for that a committee has already been formed uh, a high level committee was yesterday formed rather uh, by the unitary mm-hmm. administration to overlook all the arrangements even at uh, several district uh, districts level uh, the deputy commissioners have already started uh, to finalize the modalities of uh, this campaign so the people in uh, in in most of the places they have welcomed this move but if you remember uh the opposition parties they have started playing politics over the issue just a couple of uh, days ago uh, the former chief minister of uh, jammu and kashmir farooq club when he was asked about the campaign he made a sarcastic comment saying that uh, telling the journalist that he should keep uh, the dry color at his home and now uh, the people's democratic party has a uh, uh, termed uh, this uh, move of the lg administration as childish they are saying that uh, they 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 have the respect uh, for the dry color but uh, by by take, doing such things uh, the government is uh, diverting the attention of the people from the real issues so uh, you see uh, the opposition parties it seems in jammu and kashmir uh, they, uh, they 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 have started playing politics they are against this move uh, of having a tricolor atop every household but uh, the uh, authorities the administration has already started the process uh, the high level committee was yesterday formed and at several district levels uh even uh, in 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 jammu region also uh, the authorities have geared up uh, for uh, this uh, to start this campaign yes yes shilpa well yes indeed tejinder thank you so much for bringing us the sentiments of the people and for our viewers you don't have been jnk to have the tiranga at your home you can have it at your home wherever you are but you will have to follow the flag codes remember that Now let's move on and see uh, what's taking place in the vice presidential elections of the BJP. Ahead of the VP elections, BJP parliamentary board will hold a key meeting today. The party will deliberate over its vice presidential candidate, whose victory will be certain as the ruling NDA has majority in the electoral ca- college. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, and Nitin Gadkari, besides party president J.P. Nadda, among others, will be present at the meet. The last date for filing of nomination papers for the poll is July 19th and the election is scheduled for August 6th.
Now we're joined by Arun Dhanta, who's live with us from Delhi. Of course, Arun, very good morning to you. And my question is going to be, who will be NDA's choice? Whoever it is, of course, uh, will be uh, poised to become vice president, as uh, will uh, Draupadi Murmu, who will become uh, the president. But who are the choices uh, for vice president? What are the names you're hearing of? Well, uh, see, uh, Shilpa, it's it's going to be very, very difficult to to zero in on one name because we have seen from the past precedents that how things happen. Uh, it's a very, very uh, secret, uh, uh, you know, between uh, between the top leadership of uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Nobody knows. Even if you remember when they announced the name of Draupadi Murmu, nobody knew till the moment uh, J.P. Nadda announced it from the stage that she's going to be the presidential nominee. Uh, as far as the vice president is concerned, they're also going to follow the same practice. Today at around 6 p.m., that's what we are told, uh, the BJP's uh, top decision-making body, uh, parliamentary board, will sit at uh, the BJP headquarters in uh, New Delhi. And then the decision will be taken. Of course, they have shortlisted few names. Uh, and then accordingly, uh, you know, all these seven members who are part of the parliamentary board, they will discuss and then finalize the name of uh, the uh, vice presidential candidate. Uh, perhaps uh, at around 7.30 or 8, we'll get to know who's going to be the vice presidential nominee of the NDA. But as far as uh, stats are concerned, numbers are concerned, uh, you know, that is something which is very much in favor of uh, uh, Bharatiya Janata Party because if you see uh, in the elections of vice president uh, the voters are only Lok Sabha members and Rajya Sabha members so the total strength at this moment uh, of the parliament is around 780 and the majority mark the magic number is somewhere around uh, 380 and BJP very easily uh, has number around 394 in the parliament so I don't think so they'll be fa facing any trouble in, uh, in, 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 in vice presidential election. Uh, but BJP is also in, ensuring the fact that uh, uh, not even a single vote uh, you know, gets wasted. And therefore, uh, they had organized a three days training camp here in, uh, in Delhi's uh, their headquarters starting from 13th to 15th, where uh, you know, the agents will be, uh, you know, a, 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 agents are being trained by the top leaders of BJP and then subsequently they will go into their uh, you know, states uh, uh, and then train the MLAs of course for the presidential election. Uh, but of course it is going to be very very interesting as to whose name comes up after the parliamentary boards meeting here at Delhi in the uh, party headquarters of BJP. And then we have also a dinner which has been uh, organized by uh, you know, JP Nadda for all the MPs of Bharatiya Janata Party. So two or three days are going to be very, very uh, you know, uh, jam-packed. Uh, and therefore, starting from today, parliamentary boards meeting, then we'll, we'll have the name of the vice uh, vice presidential nominee of NDA, and then uh, dinner being hosted by uh, J.P. Nadda and uh, others for the BJP MPs. Thank you so much, Arundhanta, for joining us. Appreciate your time, and we will keep coming back to you to find out who that candidate will be. Now we have some breaking news coming. Okay, trouble mounting for Mahua Moitra once again in FIR against TMC MP Mahua Moitra. The MP from West Bengal, it's been filed by Jatia Sangrami Sena in Assam. The charge sheet was filed after she posted a tweet comparing Gogoi with the word sexual harassment. The Jatia Sangrami Sena president Chittu Barua expressed anger against Bengal MP Mahua Moitra and called her to kneel down and apologise. All right, now we're joined by Preeti, who is live with us from Gohati. Um, Preeti, very good morning to you. Not such a good morning for Moa Moitro because of her tweet. She said, uh, you know, I am clarifying that I am talking about uh, ex-CGI Ranjan Gogoi when I'm talking about uh, sexual harassment. For uh, those of our viewers who don't remember, there was a bench convened by the Supreme Court last year uh, to, dis uh, to listen to a case that was filed by a staffer against him, but they disposed of it because there was no uh, evidence against uh, Gogoi. Now, Preeti, now an FIR has been filed against uh, Mohua. Can you detail uh, what more the FIR says? Yes, uh, Shilpa, good morning. And uh, yes, as you have said, it is uh, quite not a good morning for Mohua Moitre because uh, of the uh, remark that she made upon the uh, 
uh, on her Twitter uh, stating about Gogoi. Also, al al already she has specified that she was uh, indicating about Justice Ranjan Gogoi. But again, uh, when she says Gogoi, it is uh, here in Assam, it means to a larger community. It is about a whole community which uh, actually was a part of the Ahom dynasty and is a very integral part of the uh, state and the Assamese community. So now a lot of comments have been coming from different fraternities of the society. And as you have seen that already an FIR has been launched against her. But again, here, the whole uh, the, the statement that she made, actually, the people have got uh, offended uh, for the whole Trinamul Congress in Assam. Because now they have, in the FIR also, they have stated that uh, they want uh, Mohua Moitri to please, uh, apologize about her uh, comment on Gogoi. Also, they say that uh, if she is specifying on uh, Justice Ranjan Gogoi, then also it cannot be accepted because he is a very respectable person in Assam and that uh, such kind of a remark by such a public representative cannot be accepted. And also, they have said that uh, regarding Trinamul Congress in Assam, they will uh, see upon it that uh, no, uh, no member of Trinamul Congress in Assam can enter into the upper Assam because Gogoi Goi community is a very integral part of the Assamese community, and mostly uh, we can find uh, the population of Gogois in the Upper Assam. So we have seen more remarks, more comments coming from Upper Assam in the state regarding Muhammad Moitri's comment on Gogoi. That's very important perspective coming in from Preeti Priyadarshini. Thank you so much, Preeti, for joining us and staying on Assam. We have a request for you. After many decades, Assam has experienced horrific floods. 54 lakh people have been affected. The death toll has risen to 192 as 5.39 lakh people in 12 districts are still affected by the deluge. News 18 Assam Northeast has launched a unique campaign called Fight the Flood, Stand with Assam asking viewers to donate to the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. Your small contribution can help save millions. And now it's time for a very short break. Bits to Billions this weekend, we have an entrepreneur who wants to make an India for the world, Amrit Acharya, the co-founder and CEO of Zetwork. Is it exciting to train for engineering and actually do engineering? Like I graduated with a degree in electrical engineering, but I ended up doing nothing close to electrical engineering for, for many years. In fact, I was at McKinsey for a bit. At my heart, I always felt that calling that, you know, I really like building things. Why did you decide to choose um, an unsexy industry, so to speak? While it was unsexy, for us, it was very sexy. Because, <laughs> because we, we understood the pain points in a way which it felt unique to us, mm. uh, it felt very authentic to us that these are uh, problems we are passionate about and I felt that I wanted to drive some change. But Siddharth, who is our director, his take on this film was so quirky and the original film was so quirky and it was so comedy. So, I was very excited. You trained yourself as an actor in Lee Strasberg um, School of uh, Theatre and Films. What is your biggest learning from, from learning acting? Be honest and be in the moment. And nothing is more repulsive, maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, awesome than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Hmm. To be in the moment, and to be honest in the moment is, I think, where the magic happens. Actually, Nawaz, sir, who I met very briefly one day, mm. said to me and Ashan, he said, all of the best acting is acting that happens by mistake. Wow. When you sit down with your father, Mr. Boni Kapoor, what are the conversations that you have now? Now that you're into the film industry, you're reading scripts, and your father has been the producer. Recently, Salman made a statement that, you know, when I was in my career, it was a very bad time, so Boni Kapoor had So as a professional now, what are the conversations that you're having with a professional like him? I think that a lot of creative discussions. We love watching movies, discussing movies. I love telling him about how my day has been on set. And he has 
इतना विजडम है उनके पास उसने yeah. इतना कुछ देखा है अपनी जिंदगी में इतना कुछ किया है um, कि वो ज्ञान बांटने के लिए हमेशा तैयार रहते हैं <laughs> और उनकी कहानी आपको एक बार सुननी चाहिए बिकॉज ही सीन इट ऑल एंड ही इज़ डन इट ऑल तो कई बार मैं बस बैठ के सुनती हूँ और उनको बात करने का बहुत शौक है स्पेशली जब वो अपने दोस्तों के साथ बैठते हैं रूमी सर जावेद साहब शबाना yeah. मैम और उनके जो किस्से हैं वो मतलब आप सुन के चौक जाओगे कि ऐसे भी फिल्म्स बनते थे <laughs> ये फिल्म ऐसी बनी थी ये इसके वक्त ये हो रहा था सो देर सो मच टू लर्न इज बिन प्रोड्यूसर मैंने देखा है कि जब एक्टर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स की जिंदगी थोड़ा मुश्किल करते हैं डिमांड करते हैं ये वो करते हैं कि प्रोड्यूसर पे क्या प्रेशर्स होती हैं सो आई ट्राई आई ट्राई वट एवर वे आई कैन टू मेक इट एज ईजी एज पॉसिबल वंडरफुल and when i read about you newspapers and websites and social media sometimes i think you are under too much pressure of just looking good do you ever feel that thing that just people are little judgmental of looks especially women i i do feel like that i don't just think wo hamari industry ki problem hai ya hamari uh, gender ki problem hai i think social media ke badolat wo har इंसान की प्रॉब्लम हो गई है कि वो जो फिल्टर्स एंड या नो जो मतलब एक्सटर्नल चीजें जो हैं दिखावट जो है वो बहुत जरूरी हो गया लोगों के लिए और उस चीज से मुझे डर लगने लगा कि हाँ ऑफकोर्स मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फोटोज पोस्ट करने में बहुत मजा आता है लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की जिंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो वन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन वन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेर एवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम इन अ गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड आई आई थिंक आई एम फ्री चौपी बट देर आर डेज वाई आई एम जस्ट लाइक लाइक आई आई डोंट Welcome back after the break as you know monsoon has lashing all over India and until now Kerala has been spared but not anymore heavy rain in the rural areas of Kori Kode Malappuram and Kannur districts has led to water logging houses were inundated and families staying in low lying areas have been shifted out by the district administration a 24 hour control room has been set up in Kori Kode collectorate and a warning has been issued to fishermen to not venture out for fishing as you know it is a, a state where it continuously uh, rains but this time around heavy rain massive winds have wreaked havoc in kerala and there have also been flash uh, floods in some of the places all right now we're joined uh, now by my colleague for more on the, all right all right let's move on uh, to a neighboring state in fact to karnataka karnataka government late last night withdrew the decision of ban on photography and videography inside government offices by citizens this decision comes after the order faced criticism from the opposition all right now we joined by ritu from bangalore with more on this Good morning to you Ritu speaking of photos in government offices i can't help but think about those images we've been seeing from sri lanka you know people want to see how these offices look so i feel uh, you know some transparency will definitely go a long way and i think that's what the government feels as well yes exactly that's the fact in fact you know the circular was just issued uh, yesterday and in fact within 24 hours the government had to Uh, withdraw this particular circular where they had told that there would be a ban on the photography and videography inside the government offices to avoid the misuse of these tools that bring disrupt dis- interact uh, to the government and also their female colleagues is that what you know the Karnataka government had stated while issuing the circular but now within 24 hours you see the Karnataka government withdrawing this particular circular uh, because this comes right after the lot of criticism that the government faced from the opposition because this is something which is important for the transparency and the people must know because 
I remember the, the, the presenter, in fact, the government of Karnataka is also already uh, facing flack, whether it is about the 40 percent uh, uh, corruption charges or for that matter, uh, the, the way how people are being uh, manhandled inside the government offices. So now this comes right after that of a criticism that the government has faced. So this is how people, in fact, want it to be. Because, uh, in a way, the public is also feared that this would uh, mislead them also. And more or over, they would also have to be problems when they are uh, in the government offices because uh, the workers in the government, uh, the, the workers of the government, in fact, might uh, uh, misuse them also. And there would be a lot of even more corruptions and the other allegations that might come in the front line. So now this comes right after the criticism from the opposition party also, which has been up in arms about the corruption charges against this particular government. Well, yes, indeed, Ritu. Now that there is no photo ban, we're looking forward to your selfies from the government offices there. We leave it there and move on to Sri Lanka. Amid the political crisis, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe took charge as the interim president of the island nation. Within hours of taking charge, Vikramasinghe issued two decisions. Firstly, he has prohibited the term, use of the term excellency to introduce the president. And he also appointed top army officials in order to maintain law across the country. Meanwhile, nominations for the presidential post will be filed on the 19th of July and elections will take place on the 20th of July. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and MP Peruma have announced their candidature for the presidential post. Alright, now uh, you see Vikramas Senge will be the acting president, though he was very reluctant. He told the speaker that uh, you should uh, nominate somebody for the president who is acceptable to both the opposition and uh, the other parties and especially the people. Now we know Ranil Vikramasinghe was the Prime Minister for just a month and after that the anger of the people engulfed the entire uh, country and uh, while they took over uh, the President's residence, they in fact burnt down uh, 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 Ranil Vikramasinghe's uh, uh, place. So the fact is that there's a lot of anger targeted towards uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe. That's why he would not want to be the acting President for too long and now we know that the candidature of Sajit Premadasa and MP Peruma are the ones who are the front runners. In fact, our managing editor had also spoken uh, to Sajit Premadasa yesterday, that Zaka Jacob, spoken to him, and uh, you know, and Sajit had given his opinion on um, you know the constitutional laws of uh, Sri Lanka and how um, you know th these elections will probably play out. Uh, Sri Lanka, there were uh, slight celebrations with the resignation of Gotabaya, uh, which uh, finally came in yesterday. In fact, Gotabaya is currently in Singapore. And uh, I was telling you about uh, Zaka Jacob speaking to uh, Sajid Premadasa. He is the leader of opposition. And he spoke to him about the candidature for the post of president. Take a look. One thing is official, that Gotabaya Rajapaksha has resigned. He is no longer the president of Sri Lanka. What is expected to happen next? Ranil Vikramasinghe has been sworn in as interim president. There is likely to be a president and a prime minister for the next 30 days. Are you one of the leading contenders, sir, to be the next prime minister of Sri Lanka? Well, one has to understand the provisions of Sri Lanka's constitution which prescribes that the process which will commence tomorrow after a special sitting of parliament that is for the selection of the president which will happen next Wednesday after nominations are taken on Tuesday. So it is only after the president is appointed will we have the position of a formal prime minister and a government. Right now you have an acting president who is mandated with appointing an acting prime minister who should be a member of the present cabinet. The next president of Sri Lanka will be chosen from the 225 members of parliament who were chosen in August 2020 under the leadership of the president who just fled the country. The president was elected in November 2019. He got 6.9 million votes. 
His party got 6.8 million votes in the ensuing general election in 2020. Mm -hmm. So the present composition of parliament is what you may call a Rajapaksa ideology dominated parliament. Okay. That's the composition of the present parliament. We, the opposition, are a small part of that in terms of composition. Mm -hmm. But still, we are the legitimate alternative government and we are following constitutional procedures, which is the only methodology of expressing our ideas, our views and our forward path for the country. Our party is SJB and we have an alliance, SJB alliance. This is the main opposition party and uh, right now what you have is a skewed representation. Parliamentary representation is lopsided. It does not reflect the aspirations of the people of the country because today the Rajapaksa ideology is a failed ideology. Okay. We have a failed bankrupt state and country because of the Rajapaksa ideology. So the majority that was attained in 2020 will be deciding on the future presidency. Very good morning to Purnima Murli who joins us live from Colombo. Uh, Purnima, I know it's been a hectic few days for you and uh, hopefully there will be an end to that soon. What are the people saying, you know, now that Gotabaya has stepped down? Were there, I know there were brief celebrations. How do they feel about the parliamentary elections coming up? Because right now the will of the people is paramount and Sajid Premadasa and other people who are in the running, are they accepting these candidates? Well, good morning, Shilpa. We are uh, uh, reporting from the Gaul phase where protests continue peacefully. Uh, remember, there has been a village uh, that's named as Gota Gogama village. Now that Gotabaya has resigned, today at around 10 a.m., they are going to have the hashtag Ranil go home uh, because Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is now the acting president, uh, is also one of the front runners for the top post, which, uh, which, is why uh, which is why protesters here say that they don't want Ranil and now their hashtag uh, that uh, they will be introducing here at the golf phase at 10 a.m. is Ranil go home. Uh, you know, uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe is also one of the contenders for the post of the president. 20th is the voting. The ruling party has offered to support him also. How do you see this and why uh, will the protests uh, continue if Ranil uh, continues to be uh, the, the president of Sri Lanka? Yeah, actually uh, Ranil uh, doesn't have any vote or any something power uh, to come to like mm. acting president because uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha also not, not in power so he can't, uh, he can't appoint uh, as acting president because Ranil Vikram Singh also like a thief. He doesn't do any good for Sri Lanka. Mm. So will the protests continue till he resigns? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we will uh, continue this uh, until uh, he resigns. Uh, but looks like Ranil is not planning to resign. So will you continue uh, protesting? Because tomorrow is the 100th day of protest. Yeah, uh, so many people will uh, say uh, we can't do anything uh, from the uh, like start. Uh, from the start, uh, all the people are saying like we can't do anything because uh, there are some youth people and leaders yeah. So we we have uh, left the Gotabe Rajapaksha yeah. because so the the, uh, the people struggle is what made the Rajapaksha family members uh, quit their posts and they feel that Ranil too will eventually quit. Back to you, Shilpa. Thank you very much, Purnima, and we'll leave it at that. Good morning and welcome. You're watching the morning news and it's time for a quick look at the top stories that are making headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to inaugurate the 296 km long Bundelkhand Expressway today. The expressway is built at a cost of Rs 14,850 crore. This four lane expressway will pass through seven Uttar Pradesh districts. The foundation stone for this expressway was laid by PM Modi himself in 2020 and the project has been completed in a span of 28 months. 
Four people have been arrested in connection to the Patna terror module. While three were arrested on Thursday, the cops arrested another last evening and have found Pakistani links in the case, according to the police. The messages found on the group were communal, extremist, objectionable, unlawful and unconstitutional. The WhatsApp group also had people from India, Pakistan and Yemen. कल एक और महत्वपूर्ण गिरफ्तारी हुई है जो गिरफ्तार अभियुक्त है उसका नाम है मरगूब अहमद दानिश एक ऐसा नंबर पता चला था जिसमें बहुत ही आपत्तिजनक पोस्ट राष्ट्र विरोधी वीडियोस, नारे इत्यादि उनका प्रचार और प्रसार किया जा रहा था ये व्यक्ति गजवा हिंद नाम का संस्था के साथ जुड़ा हुआ था Ahead of the vice presidential elections, the BJP Parliamentary Board will hold a key meeting today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh and Nitin Gadkari, besides Party President J.P. Nadda, among others, will be present at the meet. The last date for filing of nomination papers for the poll is July 19th and the election is scheduled on August 6th. As part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration, the JNK government has formed a high-level committee to implement the recent decision taken on the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign. While the move was welcomed by the BJP, PDP has called it a childish move. Mehbooba Mufti, bar bar Bharati jhande ko lekar ke jo ajadi ka amrit mahosam manaya ja raha hai, us par sawal khade karte hain. Tarangya ki beizti karna, inka shuru se kam raha hai. 70 saal, inhone us jhande ko priority di, jiske karan se aadab baad, atank baad, aur parivar baad ye sab tije chalti rahi. This is yet another distraction move of the government. The government never wants to address the main issues, unemployment, poverty, other hostile issues facing the country, the common man. They keep on distracting, they keep on generating controversy out of nothing, out of no issues. A Pakistani woman is nabbed on Chakanda Bagh line of control in Poonch by security forces. The infiltrator was nabbed in forward sector where infiltration took attempt a few days ago. The woman was handed over to the JNK police. Dubaiya Saeed, daughter of former Union Minister Mufti Mohammad Saeed, identified Yasin Malik and three others as her abductors in the 1989 kidnapping case. Saeed was kidnapped on 8th December and was held hostage till December 13, 1989. She was released in exchange for five known militants of the JKLF. Three men are arrested for allegedly gang-raping a 16-year-old girl in a moving car. She was picked by two of the three accused from Vasant Pihar as per police. They went to Mahipalpur, consumed liquor, took her to a secluded place and raped her. FIR has been registered under POXO Act. The army saves five youths from joining terror ranks in Jammu and Kashmir. All five are planning to go to Pakistan for weapons training in lashkar e taiba camps. Sections 13, 18 and 18B of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act has been invoked against the recruiters as well about the whole conspiracy. In order to revive the dying Kashmiri art of paper mache, Shafia Bashir, an artist from Srinagar's Lal Bazaar, has started making paper mache designs on things like Kashmiri Kangri. Shafia said that she has got a very good response from all over the world for this revival of culture and people now appreciate and support her in this initiative. Heavy rain has wreaked havoc in several parts of Kerala. The Aluva Mahadeva Temple, which is situated on the bank of the Periya River in Kochi, submerged under water. The water level has risen significantly in the Periya River following incessant rains. The rural areas of Kori Kod, Malapuram and Kannur districts witnessed water logging and minor landslides. The President of Sri Lanka is scheduled to be elected by the Parliament on the 20th of July to complete the remainder of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's term after his resignation on 14 July. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasenghe, Lankan MP Peruma, and opposition leader Sajid Premadasa are in the fray to run for the presidential post. According to sources, more trouble mounts for Gotabaya as Singapore is not keen on keeping Gotabaya for long. Singapore is unlikely to extend its permission to stay after 15 days. According to sources, Gotabaya approached India also but India denied permission. 
No retest will be held for those who missed yesterday's common university entrance test for undergraduate admissions to central universities. This comes after reports from several cities that students missed the test due to sudden changes in centers. Chairman of the University Grants Commission Jagdish Kumar denied that no retest will be held. Union Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas Hardeep Singh Puri inaugurated 166 CNG stations through video conferencing last evening. The stations were launched under the government's Cleaner Fuel Alternative Initiative. In 2014, the country had only about 900 CNG stations and the government aims to reach the target of 8,000 stations in the next two years. Happy I am personally when we are doing the inauguration of no less than 166 newly commissioned CNG stations in different parts of the country established by Gale and its uh, subsidiaries and joint ventures. With an investment of rupees 400 crores, this will also generate 1,000 direct employment opportunities. Spiritual leader Dalai Lama is currently in Leh where he held a meeting with the head of the Thikse Monastery. Dalai Lama received a warm welcome upon his arrival with thousands of people cheering for him. The 16th round of India-China military talks will be held tomorrow on the Indian side of the LAC in Eastern Ladakh. India has been pressing for progress in overall bilateral ties and for quick disengagement of troops from the remaining friction points in Eastern Ladakh. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh participated in Bara Khana event and interacted with naval officers, sailors and technicians in Kolkata last evening. The Defence Minister also launched warship Dunagiri to strengthen India's maritime security. NFIR has been registered against TMC MP Mohua Moitro for comparing Gogoi to the world sexual harassment by the Jatiya Sangrami Sena Assam. The group's team, Chittu Barua, has expressed his anger against TMC MP Mohua Moitro and has sought her apology. The centre has listed 24 bills including the Cantonment Bill, the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill and the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Bill for introduction in the monsoon session of the Parliament that is scheduled to commence from Monday. Ahead of the monsoon session of the Parliament, an advisory has been sent to the members to refrain from distribution of any pamphlets, leaflets or placards in the House. This advisory comes at a time when opposition parties created a huge furore over the advisory on demonstrations and dharnas within the parliamentary complex. The INB Ministry has started to process to uh, amend the registration of press and periodicals bill to now include digital news. Digital media in India will be regulated and can face action for violations under an amended law. Digital news publishers have to apply for registration and will be required to do so within 90 days of the law coming into effect. A Delhi court granted bail to Alt News co-founder Mohamed Zubair in connection with a 2018 tweet case weeks after he was arrested. The bail has been granted on a personal bond and surety of Rs 50,000. The fact checker will not be able to leave the country without the permission of the court, the verdict said. Delhi has reported 601 new Covid cases in the last 24 hours. With this, the positivity rate stands at 3.64% with zero deaths reported from the capital. China's workers face economic pains from zero COVID as the country also reports its worst quarterly performance in two years. China's zero COVID policy has inflicted devastating economic pain across the country. The policy has brought the cities to a grinding halt. There are people who haven't been able to access their own savings since April. Was that your life's savings? Yeah, for sure. I worked almost 10 years and that's all I have with my family. I'm, I'm losing my weight, I'm losing my, you know, uh, my mind. Just in June, massive protests broke out at the government building for five straight days, for more than 12 hours a day, only to be quashed by the cops violently. Local authorities later promised to start giving small payments to some such depositors. But still, there is no clear policy with people left in lurch. Britain's Met Office has declared a national emergency issuing a red extreme heat warning for parts of England for Monday and Tuesday next week. 
the temperatures are likely to reach a record high. Remember, much of Europe is facing a heat wave that has pushed temperatures into the mid 40s in some regions. Kaliningrad is a transit deal, it's a setback to Lithuania, it's a ruling in favor of Russia. Now, no Russian goods can be stopped from reaching Kaliningrad. The EU, in fact, uh, Lithuania had stopped Russia from sending any sanctioned goods via rail to Kaliningrad. The rail link to Russia via Lithuania uh, is now going to be well and truly functional. Russia is welcoming the decision. It says it is working on the front print of getting in these goods from Lithuania. North Korea today slammed Ukraine for severing diplomatic ties between the two nations after Pyongyang said it was formally recognizing two self-proclaimed Russian republics in the east of the war-torn country. This came after Ukraine had cut off its official relationship with the nuclear armed state in response to Pyongyang recognizing the so-called Donetsk People's Republic and Lugansk People's Republic. North Korea slams Ukraine. Korea recognizes two pro-Russian republics. As the race to become Britain's next Prime Minister gained pace, caretaker Premier Boris Johnson has reportedly told his allies to back anyone but Rishi Sunak, according to a media report. Johnson, who resigned as a leader of the ruling Conservative Party on July 7, has been urging defeated Tory leadership candidates not to back former Chancellor Sunak. Britain's Met Office weather forecaster on Friday declared a national emergency issuing a red extreme heat warning for parts of England for Monday and Tuesday next week when, rep when temperatures could reach record highs as we earlier told you. Now the US House of Representatives have appoint up adopted two bills aimed at protecting access to abortion after the Supreme Court ruled that individual states can ban or restrict the procedure. The legislation passed by the Democratic controlled House is unlikely to advance in the Senate where 10 Republican votes would be needed to bring the measures to the floor. US President Joe Biden said he had confronted Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman over attacks on dissidents during his visit to Saudi Arabia. Prince Mohammed drew global outrage for the 2018 killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Kingdom's Istanbul consulate, an operation US intelligence services said he approved. BCCI has moved Supreme Court seeking to amend its constitution with regard to the tenure of its office bearers, including President Saurav Ganguly and Secretary Jay Shah. BCCI and AGM in December 2019 proposed six amendments which had barred BCCI and state board office bearers from holding office for more than six consecutive years. In a video that is winning over the internet, former India stars MS Dhoni and Suresh Raina were spotted enjoying the second ODI at launch. The CSK Twitter handle has shared the video where the two of them step out of their car and into the lodge with a backing track to go with it. The second ODI between England and India was a star-studded affair with the likes of Sachin Tendulkar, Saurav Ganguly, MS Dhoni and Suresh Raina in attendance. A day after the game, master blaster Sachin Tendulkar shared a photo with West Indies legend Sir Garfield Sobers on Twitter. Manchester United signed Tristan Eriksen as free agent on a three-year deal. The 30-year-old switch to the Red Devils completes an incredible return after his brush with death last year. Eriksen suffered a cardiac arrest on the pitch in Copenhagen while playing for Denmark at the European Championship and was forced to leave Inter Milan after recovering due to severe health regulations. Two prolonged Bihar plan for P two pronged, sorry Bihar plan for PFI two point agenda included reaching masjids in interiors of the state to spread the alleged message and bid to provide physical education to train youngsters in martial art use of swords etc. According to sources, their main target was Mithilanchal and Simanchal areas. The modus operandi was to get Maulana from Kerala. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu to meet Maulana or Imams of interior villages in Darbhanga, Motihari, etc. According to sources on the radar, there is a man called Roslan, who agencies believe had come from Tamil Nadu. A day before the PM's visit, the meeting was held near the Patna airport and instructions given on the plan.
All right, now we're joined by Arunima with more on this. Good morning to you, Arunima. Um, big developments coming in there uh, from Bihar. We had uh, the mission 2047 module that was discovered. And now there is a WhatsApp group that is very worrisome called Ghazwa e Hind. And uh, the inside scoop on this uh, shocking plot is very alarming indeed. Yes, the Bihar police uh, and the agency is working on this field. That this was an attempt to bring what they're calling the South model of radicalization. Essentially, they're pointing out that you've seen uh, the situation in Kerala where uh, young Muslim boys and girls left Kerala and went to fight for ISIS in Afghanistan a few years ago. Then you saw Karnataka where the hijab controversy and uh, the other related controversies, uh, attacks, uh, you know, communal attacks against uh, you know, RSS and uh, allegedly by uh, PFI members. Um, all of that is being pointed out to say that there is a model of radicalization which the PFI has perfected down south. PFI, of course, has rejected the charge. They're even saying that the 2047 document that uh, the police is relying on is fake. But the police feel that the plan was to take that South model to, to the interiors of Bihar, specifically two areas, Mithilanchal and Simanchal, which is the Darbhanga area. It has a sizable Muslim population. Uh, and uh, the assessment was that in these interior masjids, uh, the PFI's attempt was to through the Imam Council, that is one of the front organizations that agencies are naming, uh, that through the Imam Council attempt was made to influence the Friday decree that that, that happens. Talk about issues like Nupur Sharma, agitate the people, get them uh, to, to quote-unquote subvert the system. That is the charge. Was there a terror angle, even though Ghazwatul Hind's name is coming up and that name always, uh, you know, rings a bell as far as terrorism is concerned. At this point, where they're just using the name on a WhatsApp group, usually terror activities don't happen on an open platform like WhatsApp. They go into more encrypted platforms like Signal and Telegram. So that also is a matter of investigation as to how far this attempted radicalization has had proceeded as far as terrorism is concerned. But the attempt of radicalization itself uh, police feels is good enough for them to crack down and prevent it at this stage. Arunima, also PFI's name uh, features prominently in this. We know that the two arrested in the mission 2047 module, one of them said he's not part of PFI, he said he's part of SDPI. And the other uh, accused says that he was a peripheral member of PFI. Um, so, you know, what, the fact that uh, the police uh, and the investigating officials feel that there is definitely, um, you know, PFI's hand in this. What other um, incriminating details do they have? Or is it just with the larger picture because of, um, you know, the fact that PFI has been involved in uh, some of these other terror plots, of allegedly, uh, you know, which have been discovered off late? Is that why, uh, you know, they're convinced that PFI has a hand in this? The membership of PFI itself is not a crime because PFI is not an outlawed organization. So just by saying that person A or person B was a member of Popular Front of India does not give police uh, the, the right or the evidence uh, to arrest that person or carry all criminal action. However, this is much more. What is being alleged is that these PFI members and SDPI is the student wing of uh, PFI as well. They have another front uh, called the Campus Front of India which again came to the fore when the hijab controversy was going on in Karnataka. So the charge is that these members were using their front organizations, the Imam Conference, the Campus Front of India, uh, the Lawyers Collective, to radicalize Muslim population in Mithilanchal and in Simanchal. The charge is that this Sabji Bagh premises that, that, that have seen rent, uh, you know, uh, raids being carried out, these premises were actually rented in the name of one of uh, the accused wives. Uh, Farhad Bano is the signatory on the rent agreement. She's the wife of accused Jalaluddin. And she had claimed that she was renting this place to run an NGO for the sake of poor children. But the allegation is that actually what was happening there was trying to impart uh, training, military training. And for this, what uh, the police is alleging is that just ahead of the Prime Minister's visit, after a meeting took place at this premises, there was a second meeting which happened at Fulwari Shedi, an area which is very close to the Patna airport. We know that the airport itself is very susceptible. If the plan was to in any way subvert the Prime Minister's visit, was there a terror angle? That's a matter of investigation. But what they're saying is that this group definitely was on the path of radicalization 
they wanted uh, the the people who are recruited if they recruit 10 people and give them training for martial arts and sport fighting they wanted those 10 to go back to their villages or to their uh, localities and train at least one person trains 10 others so this this planning itself as per the local police is uh, is reason enough for them to carry out a crackdown and you are seeing for the last four days now repeated raids repeated searches are going on to get to all people who are involved in this and uh, they they have they, the one name which has come up um is, is uh, that of sort of a feature from south so there is a possibility uh, that karnataka police tamil nadu police kerala police could also be involved they have already said enforcement directorate must step in nia so far has not really taken uh, you know interest in this case but we are waiting to see what more comes out and if the center intervenes and hands it over to nia All right, Arunma. Thank you very much for that. But we are staying on uh, what you said. The raids in several districts took place late last night as well in Bihar. Houses, houses of those mentioned in Pulwari Sharif FIR were raided in Katihar, Darbanga, Araria, Madhubani, and Patna. We join by Saurabh with more on this. Uh, Sora, raids continue this time around. Late last night, uh, houses of those mentioned in that Pulwari Sharif FIR. What more are we learning? What was recovered during these raids? Uh, Shilpa, see, when the FIR was lost, it was lost uh, 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 with 26 persons named mentioned in it, and uh, more than 10 districts are mentioned in the FIR from where the people used to come. and radicalize uh, youth uh, also the trainings were given by these people uh, who came uh, from dis- different districts from bihar to patna and uh, they used to give martial art trainings uh, to the youth who came from not only from other parts of bihar but also from uh, tamil nadu uh, karnataka kerala uh, other districts as well so uh, the uh, uh, there were 26 names that were mentioned in the fir now the police uh, they were uh, focusing patna because uh, almost 10 of 26 names were mm-hmm. from patna so uh, till yesterday uh, patna police wo- were ra- uh, was raiding uh, Uh, patna premises of those uh, mentioned in the fir uh, in which uh, yesterday uh, two people were picked up also from sabji sabji bag area and after interrogation because of the lack of evidence uh, police had to release them but uh, uh, furthering the process of uh, investigation uh, police have started searching locations uh, uh, other than patna and uh, 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 mostly uh, the simanchal area where uh, uh muslim populations are high and uh, many of them are from uh, uh, from th- those area areas uh, mentioned in the fir such as katihar araria uh, darbhanga uh, madhubani these all areas are uh, you know sensitive areas and uh, uh, police have conducted raids late night yesterday and uh, they have not recovered anything yet because the official statement of uh, police have not come but the raids were conducted that is uh, what we are learning and uh, they are uh, searching for those people who are mentioned in the fir and police have now uh, you know s- uh, speeded the tr- uh, the process of investigation because yesterday uh, after the arrest of uh, tahir who's uh, who's uh, we know the link uh, was with uh, tarike libaik and also gajbay hin so it, it's a serious matter now and because uh, international uh, uh, you know organizations are involved uh, wh- uh, which are fanatic in nature so the police are on their toes now and they have st- uh, speeded up the process of investigation and they are conducting raids uh, uh, as as quick as possible and they are trying to uh, you know detain people and interrogate them asking uh, what were their motives and what were their plans because in tahir's uh, message uh, in his mobile it said that uh, jihad lana hai 2023 mein so direct jihad lana hai so uh, that was a, a very uh, you know instigating line and uh, police are serious about it uh, although we are expecting central agencies to uh, rope in but uh, so far uh, we have not received any information of uh, them being involved although the dgp of the state has uh, hinted that uh, not only the state police but central investigating agencies are also involved in it but uh, as far as nia is concerned we are not learning anything uh, about their involvement back to you shilpa 
Thank you very much, Saurabh. You've been bringing us all these details about these terror plots in Bihar. Thank you very much for joining us. But we will have to slip into a very short break. Big headlines on the other side. Lawrence Bishnoi, operating from inside the Tihar jail with impunity, had no qualms uh, ordering multiple hits on Salman Khan. The sculptor himself, the mean man behind this, is saying that there is actually no difference. Drugs to try and fund their terror operations and to also try and radicalize young impressionable minds while confining them to the throes of drug addiction. What is becoming increasingly worrying and problematic is that issues related to education is becoming so, so polarizing. energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if it's going to go through these conditions and difficulties, and it's going to be a serious tonality, then maybe I don't take so much interest in this film. But because Siddharth, who is our director, his take was so quirky in this film, and the hmm. original film is Kola Mabu Kokila, it was so comedy. Thi. So, I was very excited. You trained yourself as an actor in Lee Strasberg um, uh, School of uh, Theatre and Films. What is your biggest learning from, from learning acting? Be honest and be in the moment. And nothing is more repulsive, maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, awesome than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Hmm. To be in the moment, and to be honest in the moment is, I think, where the magic happens. Actually, Nawaz, sir, who I met very briefly one day, mm. said to me and Ashan, he said, all of the best acting is acting that happens by mistake. Wow. When you sit down with your father, Mr. Boni Kapoor, what are the conversations that you have now? Now that you're into the film industry, you're reading scripts, and your father has been the producer. Recently, Salman made a statement that, you know, when I was in my career, it was a very bad time, so Boni Kapoor had So as a professional now, what are the conversations that you're having with a professional like him? I think that a lot of creative discussions. We love watching movies, discussing movies. I love telling him about how my day has been on set. And he has such wisdom for him. He has seen so much in his life, so much in his life. कि वो ज्ञान बांटने के लिए हमेशा तैयार रहते हैं <laughs> और उनकी कहानी आपको एक बार सुननी चाहिए hmm. because he's seen it all and he's done it all hmm. तो कई बार मैं बस बैठ के सुनती हूँ और उनको बात करने का बहुत शौक है especially जब वो अपने दोस्तों के साथ बैठते हैं रूमी सर जावेद साहब शबाना मैम hmm. और उनके जो किस्से हैं hmm. वो मतलब आप सुन के चौक जाओगे कि ऐसे भी फिल्म्स बनते थे ये फिल्म ऐसी बनी थी ये इसके वक्त ये हो रहा था या सो देयर सो मच टू लर्न या ही इज बीन अ प्रोड्यूसर मैंने देखा है कि जब एक्टर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स की जिंदगी थोड़ा मुश्किल करते हैं डिमांड्स करते हैं ये वो करते हैं कि प्रोड्यूसर पे क्या प्रेशर्स होती हैं सो आई ट्राई आई Try and whatever way Absolutely I can to too. make it as easy as possible. Wonderful. Uh, when I read about you, newspapers and websites and social media, sometimes I think you are under too much pressure of just looking good. Do you ever feel that thing that just people are a little judgmental of looks, especially women? I I do feel like that. I don't just think wo hamari industry ki problem hai ya hamari uh, gender ki problem hai. I think social media ke badolat wo हर इंसान की प्रॉब्लम हो गई है कि वो जो the filters and या नो जो मतलब एक्सटर्नल चीजें जो हैं दिखावट जो है वो बहुत जरूरी हो गया लोगों के लिए और उस चीज से मुझे डर लगने लगा कि हाँ ऑफ कोर्स मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फोटोस पोस्ट करने में बहुत मजा आता है 
लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की जिंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो वन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन वन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेर एवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड Welcome back after the break the Indian High Commissioner called on the Lankan speaker today according to a tweet India appreciated the parliament's role in upholding democracy and constitutional framework especially at this crucial juncture India also conveyed that it will continue to be supportive of democracy stability and economic recovery in Sri Lanka All right uh India very clear on our stand there we say that we support the Sri Lankan people and that our sympathies are with them and that our focus is on the democracy stability and economic recovery in Sri Lanka we know that India has already given about 3.8 billion dollars to Sri Lanka and now we're joined by Abhishek Jha for more on this a uh, very good morning to you Abhishek um now the Indian High Commission this morning has uh, uh said that and according to a tweet uh you know they appreciated the parliament's role in upholding democracy how is india viewing the latest developments taking place in sri lanka re the presidential elections that are coming up there uh, it looks like that after this uh, turmoil of last week at least there has been uh, some sort of direction in which sri lankan polity is moving currently after the resignation of gotabaya rajapakse we have seen rani vikram singh as a constitution says Uh, has been erected as a president who will be uh, interim for the interim time period until the fin- uh, full fledged president is elected by the uh, political parties there uh, the speaker of the house is, has also convened the parliament and we can uh, be a little hopeful that a consensus leader would emerge uh, from this meeting of parliamentarians and uh, we'll be able to see a more stable uh, politics of sri lanka in the days to come uh, so this is something that has that has given sense of relief to uh sri lanka's neighbor also and other uh, institutions who were trying to help sri lanka like uh, indian uh, like international monetary fund who has uh, their officials and technical teams uh, still in sri lanka in finance ministry of sri lanka and sri lanka's uh, uh, federal bank so they would be now in a position to talk to certain authorities with a with a sense of uh, uh, more uh, uh, you know decision making ability uh, in order to have a bailout package or the financial assistance or Uh, what could be the way forward where sri lankan economy could be revived in a long term manner meanwhile indian high commissioners meeting with the speaker uh, is in a way because we know that the speaker is the uh, is currently in charge of most of the key political decisions that is happening there he has convened the parliament there uh, or he will be in a very pivotal uh, position where uh, he will uh, uh, he will facilitate the election of a new leader of sri lanka who will be the president Uh, after gotabaya rajpakse's term is over uh, we'll have to also see whether or not Raj, uh, uh, mahinda rajpakse will be in a race for to be elected as a president uh, because he does not have enough of his own party member but we know that uh, since he has been able to facilitate uh, gotabaya rajpakse as uh, uh, you know fleeing the the sri lankan uh, the uh, sri lanka so probably there might be some loyalist faction uh, in his uh, in gotabaya rajpakse's party who may support Arane uh, Vikram Singh as the next candidate, uh, but we'll have to see how the politics of the Sri Lanka develop. Uh, Sajid Prem Dasa, Dasa, who has been the opposition leader, but who does not have enough of parliamentarian in his support, has also uh, said that he is he is one of the front runner uh, for the post of president. Uh, we'll have to see who actually emerges out from this crisis as a as a leader who has support and confidence of not only the people of Sri Lanka but also uh, the political uh, class of Sri Lanka. All right, Abhishek. We'll leave it at that. I have a feeling we'll find out very soon. Now, moving on to Gujarat. The Gujarat Special Investigation Team probing charges of fabrication of evidence and conspiracy linked to the 2002 riots against activist Tisa Setelwad has made a massive claim that Tisa received a Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Modi government. The SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that the accused were allegedly part of a larger conspiracy for dismissal or destabilization by hook or crook of by the then state government. 
Now we're joined by my colleague Janak Dave with more on this. Very good morning to you, Janak. Uh, ये जो एस आई पी का बड़ा क्लेम है कि uh, उन्होंने एक बड़ा सा खुलासा किया है कि तीस्ता को ये पी एम मोदी को मलाइन करने के लिए दूसरे गवर्नमेंट शायद कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट ने पद्मा अवार्ड दिया है तो क्या पॉलिटिकल रिएक्शंस आ रहे हैं इसके बारे में और फर्स्ट रिएक्शंस क्या हैं ये बड़े खुलासे के बारे में देखिए शिवा गुड मॉर्निंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ये सबसे पहली बात ये है कि एस की ओर से बहुत बड़ा दावा किया गया दरअसल एस आई टी की ओर से कल देर शाम को जो एफिडेविट फाइल की गई कोर्ट के सामने उस कोर्ट के सामने में उन्होंने कहा कि जो अब तक की जांच में सामने आया है कि एक लार्जर कॉन्स्पिरेसी थी तत्कालीन मुख्यमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी को सरकार को गिराने की और बाकायदा दंगों के बाद सर्किट हाउस में एक मीटिंग मिलती है एक कांग्रेस के बड़े दिग्गज नेता उनको 25 लाख रुपए देते हैं और उसके बाद बायहुक और क्रूक सरकार को टॉपल करने के लिए सारी कोशिशें की जाती है और इसी की बदौलत जो साजिशें रची गई फर्जी दस्तावेजों के सहारे जो प्रक्रिया कानूनी प्रक्रिया शुरू की गई उसकी बदौलत ही दो में उनको पद्म पुरस्कार से नवाजा गया ये भी एक बड़ा दावा है उसके अलावा कई ऐसे बयान हैं जो चौंकाते हैं जो एक पॉलिटिकल महत्वाकांक्षा तिष्ठा शतलवार की थी वो बात आती है उसमें बकायदा एक बात का जिक्र है जहां पर वो कह रही कांग्रेस नेता से कि जावेद और शबाना को आप अगर राज्यसभा संसद बनाते हैं तो मुझे क्यों नहीं तो वो अपनी पॉलिटिकल महत्वाकांक्षा में इजहार करती दिखती है उसमें उसके अलावा जो पूर्व आई अधिकारी हैं जो संजीव भट्ट और आर बी कुमार उनकी उन्होंने भी बहुत बढ़ चढ़ कर हिस्सा लिया यहाँ तक कि संजीव भट्ट बाकायदा ऑफिशियल ड्यूटी होने के बावजूद कांग्रेस नेताओं के संपर्क में थे ईमेल के जरिए कई बार उनको पैकेजेस मिलने का जिक्र है उस ईमेल में वो सारे डेटा भी एस ने रिट्राइव किए हैं और ये काफी बड़े संगीन जो जांच के दायरे जिसको कहें उसमें एस ने ये बहुत सारे मामले सामने निकाले हैं और अभी और भी जांच चल रही है कभी और और भी बयान सामने आ रहे हैं आने वाले दिनों में इस पर बहुत एक राजनीतिक On bits to billions this weekend, we have an entrepreneur who wants to make an India for the world. Amrita Charya, the co-founder and CEO of Zetwa. Is it exciting to train for engineering and actually do engineering? Like I graduated with a degree in electrical engineering, but I ended up doing nothing close to electrical engineering for for many years. In fact, I was at McKinsey for a bit. At my heart, I always felt that calling. That you know, I really like building things. Why did you decide to choose um, an unsexy industry, so to speak? While it was unsexy for us, it was very sexy because, <laughs> because we we understood the pain points in a way which. It felt unique to us. Hmm. Uh, it felt very authentic to us that these are uh, problems we are passionate about, and I felt that I wanted to drive some change. And then you meet Ranbir. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. See, you're he's, you're, he's you're been demotivating me since morning. Every time you do interviews, you always ask the musty core questions. So when I am allowed to do musty, no? oh, why only you allowed? That's fine. That's Correct. fine. That's fine. But on, don't pretend on sets. You are like very disciplined, why very sweet, introvert, introverted. Have introvert. you been on my set? You're very, you're very disciplined on your side. I don't know. Ask them. Am no. I? Yeah. He's is he? very disciplined. No, generally, he's generally. Oh, but it's it's a it's a shocking transition that happens. If I, it's a question yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked. Good, okay. good to know. She doesn't know. want to receive the answer, but she's yeah, she's <laughs> leaving yeah, with okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and as an as a co-star, he's okay. Yeah, just about okay. Just about okay. He manages. Yeah. Manages. Yeah. We manage. Yeah. We jail of him. We sail through. <laughs> you, I, I know you did Kathak for this film. You prepared huh? for this yeah, film. Yeah, I did. Did what Few about sessions. you? Were you prepared? I yeah. prepared falling down in a chair <laughs> <laughs> for six months. I was no. just falling down chairs. It's a larger than life role, and yeah. you're so real. No, no. Let's. I mean, real. on a on a serious note, yeah, yeah, this film came with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because it's a part which I've never done in my life, hmm. in the say 15 year career that I've had. Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shumshera and Obbali. Uh, it was a, a a a character which was filled with angst. It's something which. Angst doesn't naturally come from me, mm -hmm. and uh, Karan's one um, 
requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film he said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry do you get angry mm -hmm. and when I told him no I don't get angry his face had broken <laughs> he's like you don't get angry so how are you going to do this part uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst yeah. and I think that really helped in um, portraying both these parts I don't feel you would be angry but I feel like you're a little angsty you can be angsty no uh, little about life about life the bigger question no but I, I don't know nobody's complained yet okay uh, <laughs> except you it's a good thing it your characters thing, yeah. have so much angst like in yeh jawani hai diwani you so angsty yeah but those are all soul searching and hmm. those the villain was me only <laughs> yeah. here finally I have Sanjay Dutt as a villain so yeah. the angst has to be external not internal you know? yeah but how was that facing off with him very intimidating already he's like somebody who's your role model and now you know it would have been very intimidating but the kind of person that Sanjay Dutt is he makes you feel very comfortable mm. he makes you he gives you a lot of love mm. he gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation mm. that listen it's for the movie it's for a greater purpose mm. Mm. from the day i signed this film yeah. till the day he see, saw the teaser the trailer the film he calls my entire family mm. my mother my my uncles me that listen i'm so happy ranbir's done this kind of film because these are the kind of films i want to see him in what about you banya you taking any pressure or are you just putting it all on this title character no i feel responsible because i'm part of a film i will feel a sense of responsibility mm. in my own way mm. and i i mean i wish i could be that detached to the uh, result of you know output of mm. all the hard work that everybody's mm. put in and after that Welcome back after the break Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to inaugurate the 296 km long Bundelkhand Express Highway it's built at a cost of rupees 14850 crore rupees this expressway comprises of four railway over bridges 14 major bridges across eight rivers 293 minor bridges and 224 underpasses This expressway will pass through seven Uttar Pradesh districts. The foundation stone for this expressway was laid by PM Modi in 2020 and this project was completed in a span of just 28 months. If you start from Delhi, take the Yamuna Expressway to Agra and then the Agra Lucknow Expressway. This is the point. If you travel about 300 kilometers from Delhi, where you hit this interchange from where the new Bundelkhand Expressway starts. This project is being inaugurated by the Prime Minister on the July the 16th. The 296 kilometer long expressway is special in many aspects. Especially because it's going to connect seven districts of Bundelkhand considered the most poorest and the backward regions of the state what does uttar pradesh achieve by building this new expressway to bundelkhand we will travel on this expressway speak to locals and try and find out how key this expressway will be to the industrial development and for the social development of the region of bundelkhand when we speak of expressways we speak of expressways from lucknow to delhi connectivity a bundelkhand expressway how do you think that is significant in this aspect right now? this is an expressway which has been made in record time the honorable prime minister laid the foundation stone on the 29th of february 2020 leap year and we have leaped forward and uh, we have been able to construct this road in around 28 29 months mm -hmm. and that again is an achievement <laughs> with up building a record number of expressways a big concern in the expressway projects is also the safety of the project ensuring that there are less accidents and vehicles traveling at high speed don't collide or don't overturn which has been one of the cases we have seen in many other expressway projects now in the bundelkhand expressway project safety seems to be paramount some additional security features have been added we can see here there are crash beams on both sides of the middle median so this means that cars basically can't come can't overturn from one side of the median to the other side hum logo ka jo business hai jaise hamara dhaba hai ram jan ki log badhenge side matlab jaldi aayenge aur log seedha yahan pe turning point hai seedha hamare hotel pe hi hai utarne ka service road hai jo to log aayenge badhenge hum logo ka business badhega rozgar badhega bahut vikas hoga hum log apna maal bhi 
और कहीं ले जाके बेच सकते हैं इससे सड़क का बनने से सर एक तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो चीज इसमें फायदा होगा टूरिज्म में Travel about 120 kilometers from the Agra Lucknow Expressway from the turn from where the Bundelkhand Expressway starts and here you come this is Jalon district we have another 173 kilometers to go in our journey towards Chitrakoot but Jalon is the district where Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be arriving on July the 16th to inaugurate this expressway a huge tent has been set up a huge public meeting will happen a bit far from here where the prime minister will be addressing the people this is Aman Sharma reporting with Arpit from Jalon for CNN News 18 This 297 kilometers long Bundelkhand Expressway will be dedicated to the people of Uttar Pradesh shortly in an event held being held here in Jalon and will be dedicated to the people by the Prime Minister now Prime Minister has laid the foundation stone for this expressway way back in February 2020 so it has been completed in a record period of almost 28 months Bundelkhand Expressway that will pass through six districts comprising of Jhansi Chitrakoot Mahoba Jalon and will finally end in Aurya will connect the Bundelkhand dire Expressway directly uh, to the already existing Lucknow Agra Expressway and thereby it will give people of Bundelkhand a direct connectivity not only to state capital Lucknow but also to the national capital of Delhi in terms of econ economic statistics the expressway is expected to give a big boost to economy and development in this region now we're joined by aman live aman you were there at that expressway you got a glimpse uh, you were telling us about the features on the expressway now there are the safety features you were telling us about those were very notable what are the other features uh, that were striking to you about this expressway the expressway a 296 km long expressway this is not the first expressway that up is building up already has a network of about five expressways but what is special about this express is also the region where it is going the seven districts that it is passing right from etawa till chitrakoot are perhaps the poorest the socially backward districts in the country and fast road connectivity coming to chitrakoot right from etawa and you know you start from delhi you can take the yamuna expressway first then you take the agra lucknow expressway you travel about 130 kilometers down the agra lucknow expressway and there is a turn for the bundelkhand expressway so from delhi to chitrakoot you can travel almost within 7 hours now that is the real change that is coming to this area this area which lack connectivity earlier such fast road connectivity is being connected this is not just important i think for the uh for uh, road connectivity also for the socio economic development of this region you know bundelkhand is a region where you know we have seen visuals earlier of women trudging for kilometers to get drinking water but here now in this region is a road which is coming which is a four lane world class expressway so that way i think it is important and also up's increasing focus on expressways you know the upcm yogi adityanath feels that uh, that is what we were told by avnish shavasti the ceo of the up expressways authority that the cm feels that it is a big state so the state needs to be interconnected with the range of expressways so that every part of the state gets connected with the main frame of up so first we saw the purvanchal expressway being built from lucknow till gazipur which connected purvanchal to the central frame of the state uh, the avad region now we have the bundelkhand expressway connecting the bundelkhand region to the central frame of the state also with this expressway being inaugurated today up now has a network of six functional expressways totaling nearly 1200 kilometers and they are building seven more expressways in the next four years up is building which will take the total expressway network in up to nearly 3200 kilometers by 2025 or 2026 so up will be the first state in india to have such a big large network of expressways and in fact this network of expressway would, would be larger than most countries so in a way that is what is the most important thing coming in here and up also building this expressway in a record time just 28 months uh, pm in, uh, pm laid the foundation stone of this project in february 2020 and now we see within 28 months the project is ready also nearly 1100 crore rupees have been saved during the construction of project when the tendering was done land was acquired for this project within 6 months so farmers have give, willingly given up their land for the project there was no protest and also this also shows the up's very transparent land acquisition policy where four times the cost of the land is given to the farmers and the money is directly transferred into their bank accounts so quick land acquisition quick construction money saved and connectivity coming to a very very backward region of the country i think the impact of this will show in the next 2 to 3 to 4 years Well, yes, indeed. Aman, as you're pointing out, that expressway was also made on a fast lane. 
Now, what Aman was telling you, I'm just going to recap. This is all that you need to know about the Bundel Khan Expressway. It connects Chitrakoot with Lucknow. Agra Eway near Etawa completed in a record 28 months. 8 months before time, 296 km long. It's built at a cost of Rs 14,850 crores. In fact, about Rs 1,000 crore were saved because of e-tenders. This expressway will cover 7 districts and these are the most backward districts of UP. It will start off as a 4-lane expressway and can be expanded to 6 lanes. And with all that trivia, I'm going to take a break and we will give you more details on the other side. Pressure of just looking good. Do you ever feel that thing that just people are a little judgmental of looks, especially women? I, I do feel like that. I don't just think that it's our industry ki problem or uh, our gender ki problem. Hai. I think social media ke badolat wo har insan ki problem ho gayi hai ke wo jo yeah. um, the filters uh, and <laughs> yeah no jo matlab external cheese jo hai dekhavat jo hai wo bahut zaruri ho gaya logo ke liye aur us cheese se mujhe dar lagne laga ke ha of course मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फोटोस पोस्ट करने में बहुत मजा आता है लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की जिंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो व्हेन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन व्हेन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेयरएवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम इन अ गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड आई आई थिंक आई एम फ्री चर्पी बट देयर आर डेज व्हेयर आई एम जस्ट लाइक yeah. Like, I, I don't know, my stomach's hurting, but I had to go to the gym because I have to look good for an event or because yeah. I'm losing weight for a role and then I have to do training after. And, and like, someone just told me that the film I wanted to do is now happening with someone. And like, you're having a shitty day and then yeah. there are paps saying, Janvi ma'am, you have to turn karke wave ke jay, please. Yeah, yeah, and you're, you yeah. know that your tights are too tight and this won't look flattering. And people yeah. will say that, oh, you're wearing your clothes like this. And all of these thoughts rush in your head. In a matter of seconds, and then I and then it shows on your face. Yeah, that's true. And then they say that it's not so high, be not able to say. Yeah, yeah. So you can't care about these things. Yeah. You've got into several roles. Like this, when I was watching your expressions, I couldn't think about these expressions that you could give. For some reason, people feel that the one who hasn't seen the poor man, what will he know about the poor girl? What is going on in the heart of the poor man? This is right or wrong? But that's our job. That's our job. Okay. That's our job. Okay. वही तो काम है हमारा एंड आई अग्री अगर एक इंसान अपने देश को नहीं जानता अपने देश के लोगों को नहीं जानता अगर उसने जिंदगी ना देखी हो तो वो कनेक्ट कैसे करेगा या कैसे करेगी बट हैविंग सेड दैट गरीबी इज अ रिलेटेबल प्रॉब्लम ट्रू ट्रू इट्स द इट्स लाइक ऑब्जेक्टिवली इट्स इट्स it's bad, right? Yeah. It's a struggle, objectively. If you can't put food on your house, or if you don't have a house, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you're crying in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Exactly. It's not a problem. That's true. But it's not that. So there are parallels. And just because I've grown up in a more comfortable environment doesn't make it any more or less valid. And I used to have this problem where I said that Whatever would happen in my life, because people would keep saying, but people are suffering here, people are suffering there. Yeah. I'd be like, ha, mera problem kya hai? But yeah. that's not healthy also. Yeah. Welcome back. After the break, more bad news for Amarnath Yatris. The Amarnath Yatra has been stopped from both sides due to rain. However, as weather clears, it would be allowed via choppers. The main route would be examined and if not found slippery. Only then, pilgrims would be allowed here on. Now, we're joined by Mufti Islam, my colleague, with more on this. A very good morning to you, Mufti. Right now, all routes are shut for Amarnath. And if you want to go, and if the weather clears up, then it will be allowed by the choppers. Now, uh, are these choppers going to be provided free of cost, or now only those who can afford them can complete the yatra? Uh, well, uh, to begin with, uh, both the routes, 
that is the Baltal route as well as Bahalgam route. They have been shut because it's raining continuously since morning and authorities thought it wise that whoever is wherever, I mean all those uh, halt points, uh, be it Pahalgam, Nonwan, Chandanwari for that matter, Sheshmak, Baltal, uh, Panchkarni, uh, whoever is really assembled in these halt points, they've been told to stop till weather clears because it's been raining, as I said, since morning. And authorities thought it wise that uh, there shouldn't be any kind of casualty and is, and they stopped the yatra temporarily. Whenever weather clears, the yatra will be allowed to go. But meanwhile, what the authorities have done, people who can effort, they can take the choppers. Uh, because the weather doesn't remain static. It changes every second, uh, 10 minutes. So they've said that, uh, in fact, when weather clears on the route, they're going to examine that the route should not be slippery because we're talking talking about treks, the heavy, the, the hilly trek. And if that uh, route is found to be fit, then they're going to allow the yatris to move. As of now, we know that 1.62 lakh people have had darshan and the authorities hope that 8 lakh people are going to perform darshan this year. Uh, we're almost in the middle of the yatra uh, and the yatra is for 43 days. Uh, clearly, as of now, 18 days have passed, and we saw in between there was this huge casualty which occurred uh, last week when 17 people perished in those in that cloudburst and flash flood. Uh, however, today authorities extremely vigilant that no such catastrophe should happen, and that's why they have halted uh, pilgrims who intend to take yatra at different points. As I said, once uh, the weather clears up, they're going to allow the yatris to proceed. Uh, but clearly, uh, they, they will take all the precautions to tell them to move ahead. All right, Muti, we'll leave it at that. Faith uh, makes people move mountains and climb mountains. Moving on to Assam. Now, after many decades, as you know, Assam has experienced horrific floods. 54 lakh people have been affected. The death toll has risen to 192. As more than 5 lakh people in 12 districts are still affected by the deluge. News 18 Assam Northeast has launched a unique campaign. This is called Fight the Flood, Stand with Assam. We're asking you, the viewers, to donate to the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. Your small contribution can help save millions. Hello and welcome. You're watching the morning news on CNN News 18 and I'm Shilpa Ratna. Now the top focus right now is Bundel Khan because this 296 km expressway is all set to be inaugurated today by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is a landmark expressway because it connects seven backward districts of UP. It's been built at a cost of Rs. 14,850 crore rupees and it comprises of four Railway over bridges, 14 major bridges across eight rivers, 293 minor bridges and 224 underpasses. It will pass through seven Uttar Pradesh districts as I was telling you. And what's very remarkable is that the foundation stone was laid only in 2020 and this project was completed in a span of just 28 months. If you start from Delhi, take the Yamuna Expressway to Agra and then the agra Lucknow Expressway. This is the point if you travel about 300 kilometers from Delhi where you hit this interchange from where the new Bundelkhand Expressway starts. This project is being inaugurated by the Prime Minister on the July the 16th. The 296 kilometer long expressway is special in many aspects, especially because it's going to connect seven districts of Bundelkhand considered the most poorest and the backward regions of the state. What does Uttar Pradesh achieve by building this new expressway to Bundelkhand? We will travel on this expressway, speak to locals and try and find out how key this expressway will be to the industrial development and for the social development of the region of Bundelkhand. When we speak of expressways, we speak of expressways from Lucknow, to Delhi, connectivity, a Bundelkhand expressway. 
how do you think that is significant in this aspect right now this is an expressway which has been made in record time the honorable prime minister laid the foundation stone on the 29th of february 2020 leap year and we have leaped forward and uh, we have been able to construct this road in around 28 29 months mm -hmm. and that again is an achievement with up building a record number of expressways a big concern in the expressway projects is also the safety of the project ensuring that there are less accidents and vehicles traveling at high speed don't collide or don't overturn which has been one of the cases we have seen in many other expressway projects now in the bundelkhand expressway project safety seems to be paramount some additional security features have been added we can see here there are crash beams on both sides of the middle median so this means that cars basically can't come can't overturn from one side of the median to the other side hum logo ka jo business hai jaise hamara dhaba hai ram jan ki log badhenge sad मतलब जल्दी आएंगे और लोग सीधा यहाँ पे टर्निंग पॉइंट है सीधा हमारे होटल पे ही है उतरने का सर्विस रोड है जो तो लोग आएंगे बढ़ेंगे हम लोग का बिजनेस बढ़ेगा रोजगार बढ़ेगा बहुत विकास होगा हम लोग अपना माल भी और कहीं ले जाके बेच सकते हैं इससे सड़क का बनने से सर एक तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो चीज इसमें फायदा होगा टूरिज्म में travel about 120 kilometers from the agra lucknow expressway from the turn from where the bundelkhand expressway starts and here you come this is jalon district we have another 173 kilometers to go in our journey towards chitrakoot but jalon is the district where prime minister narendra modi will be arriving on july the 16th to inaugurate this expressway a huge tent has been set up a huge public meeting will happen a bit far from here where the prime minister will be addressing the people this aman sharma reporting with arpit from jalon for cnn news 18 This 297 kilometers long Bundelkhand Expressway will be dedicated to the people of Uttar Pradesh shortly in an event held being held here in Jalon and will be dedicated to the people by the Prime Minister now Prime Minister has laid the foundation stone for this expressway way back in February 2020 so it has been completed in a record period of almost 28 months Bundelkhand Expressway that will pass through six districts comprising of Jhansi Chitrakoot Mahoba Jalon and will finally end in Aurya will connect the Bundelkhand di Expressway directly uh, to the already existing Lucknow Agra Expressway and thereby it will give people of Bundelkhand a direct connectivity not only to state capital Lucknow but also to the national capital of Delhi in terms of eco economic statistics the expressway is expected to give a big boost to economy and development in this region Now I'm joined by my colleagues Pranshu Mishra and Aman. These two people know the most about the Bundelkhand Highway. In fact, Pranshu is currently at Jalaun, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected uh, to inaugurate the expressway. When is that expected to take place today, Pranshu? I hear there's a security cordon of about five kilometers near that event. Yes, yeah, Shilpa. Uh, you know, this, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, excitement about the fact that Prime Minister is going to come to Bundelkhand. I'll first show you the pictures. Uh, it's it's around 10 a 10 a.m. in the morning, and entirely this entire space is being jam packed by people of Bundelkhand. They are waving. They are waiting for the Prime Minister to come here. And again, here is the VIP galleries. The all common areas. They have been. totally jam packed so the excitement is clearly on the on the faces of the people because they are getting this much awaited as you rightly said 297 kilometers long expressway now aman in his detailed report has clearly explained that this expressway is unique unique in terms of passenger safety unique in terms of driving experience but talking more about the political impact i think the bundelkhand expressway would be seen as bjp's effort or the government's effort to actually bail out bundelkhand region from the era of poverty from the era of of uh, migrant laborers from the era of economic depravity and putting it on the fast track road to development the fact that tourism sectors here in bundelkhand regions like chitrakoot and jhansi can get more tourists here hotel industry will see a boom farmers can now have a direct access to the better markets in national capital region as well as in the, as in the state capital region the defense corridor industries will get better connectivity so all this going over, over the years will clearly help bundelkhand region to move forward as far as development is concerned politically speaking this as this it's also a fact that this project will not see 
the you know the politics to take credit for this project, like we have seen in the case of Bundelkhand Expressway, uh, where Akhilesh Yadav was saying that this is our project. It is being now inaugurated by Prime Minister. Bundelkhand Expressway is totally the brainchild of Yogi government. It was first, you know, from the basic concepts to its execution. Everything has been done in record 28 months, all during Yogi Adityanath's government. So in that sense, one can also say that it is this Bundelkhand Expressway is entirely the brainchild of Yogi government and uh, the, the foundation stone was laid by Prime Minister in 2020. Inauguration would be done by him today. Well, yes indeed and uh, Prime Minister Yogi Adityanath had pointed out that not even two expressways were built uh, by um, the Congress when they were in power 70 years and now about six have already been built. Um, Pranchu, I also want to ask you, uh, you know, the, the fact that Bundel Khan so far has been ignored on the map and even Jalam where you are, uh, you know, it's going to get a huge boost. In fact, the work on the industrial corridor near Jalam has also started. If you can tell us a little bit more about that. Shilpa, there is a lot of noise here, but I clearly, you know, I can get a sense of what you are okay. asking. See, Bundel Khan Expressway is clearly an important milestone as far as UP's road story is concerned, and remember, electorally speaking, this narrative of double engine ki sarkar phenomenon, the double engine growth initiative, that has been the talking point for the BJP leaders. So, BJ Prime Minister has always said that the, ever since Yogi government came to power in Uttar Pradesh, UP has seen a fast pace because both in centre and, and, and the state, there is the BJP government. Bundelkhand Expressway, which is being dedicated today, over the next couple of years, we'll have the Ganga Expressway again, a project which was conceived during Yogi Adityanath's government. It is already in the construction phase, likely to be completed over the period of next one and a half years. So all these efforts are clearly, uh, you know, the, the showcase moments for BJP to say that how they are working well in UP's interest and how UP, which was often seen as a Bimaru Raj, a, a Sikh state, has now moved out of that track and is fast moving towards being a state with a one trillion dollar economy. So all these efforts along with, you know, uh, the groundbreaking ceremony recently in May when 80,000 crores worth project was brought in, all that is an indicator of how important the expressways are in the BJP scheme of things. Well, yes indeed, Pranchu, as you're telling us, uh, let's just recap those facts about the Bundelkhan Expressway for our viewers. It connects Chitrakoot with Lucknow. The Agra Eway near Etawa, it's completed in a record 28 months. Remember, PM Modi laid that foundation stone in 2020 and it was completed 8 months before time. How long is it? It is 296 kilometers long. It's built at a cost of rupees 14,850 crores. It will cover 7 districts and it starts off as a 4-lane expressway. It can be expanded to 6 lanes. Now, going back to my colleagues, uh, let me let me talk to uh, Pranshu. I know, Pranshu, there is a lot of noise uh, where you are. I know you've been speaking to the people there. They look very excited uh, about uh, PM Modi's inauguration. What are the sentiments of these people? Uh, now their districts are going to be connected to bigger cities. Um, are they unanimous about uh, being happy about it? Oh yes, uh, that's right. See, uh, people of Bundelkhand are really happy and I'll talk to some of the people. आप लोग आज खुश हैं कि बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे चालू हो रहा है आज जी कैमरे में देखिए आज हमारा बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे जो कि बुंदेलखंड बहुत पिछड़ा माना जाता था और हमारी मानी प्रधानमंत्री को बड़ा बड़ा आभार है हमारे बुंदेलखंड वासियों की तरफ से कि उन्होंने हमें इतनी बड़ी सौगा दी है उसके लिए हम आपको धन्यवाद ज्ञापन करते हैं आप लोगों को क्या लगता है कि बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे चालू होने से इस क्षेत्र को विकास को गति मिलेगी चित्रकूट से दिल्ली तक ये हाईवे जोड़ा गया है ये उस बुंदेलखंड के लिए विकास का हाईवे है विकास का हाईवे विकास का हाईवे यहाँ की जो पिछड़ी जनता है वो बहुत दिनों से प्यासी थी यहाँ पे हर जल हर घर जल की सुविधा दी है प्रधानमंत्री जी के द्वारा बुंदेलखंड को जाना जाता था मजदूरों के पलायन के लिए सूखे की वजह से पानी के संकट की वजह से आज बहुत दिनों के बाद एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम हो रहा है कि विकास को लेकर बुंदेलखंड में नीचे से मैं देश के प्रधानमंत्री को धन्यवाद देना चाहूँगा बुंदेलखंड की पहचान एक सूखा बेरोजगारी और पलायन के तौर पे होती थी आज ये बुंदेलखंड को एक तेज रफ्तार एक्सप्रेस मिला है जो चितकूट से डायरेक्ट दिल्ली के लिए जाता है यहाँ पे रोजगार बढ़ेंगे यहाँ पे डिफरेंस कॉरिडोर एक महिला भी हमारे साथ आप बताइए आप आई कार्यक्रम में गर्मी में 
आप मोदी जी को सुनने आए हैं हाँ मोदी जी को सुनने आए हैं उनकी भावनाओं को धन्यवाद देने आए हैं कि वो महिलाओं के लिए इतना अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे बनने से भी लोग आ रहे हैं बहुत फायदा है फायदा है बहुत ही ज्यादा फायदा है प्रधानमंत्री जी जल्दी एक्साइटमेंट इज क्लियरली इन दिन People are eagerly waiting. At around 11:30 a.m., we are expecting Prime Minister to be here and uh, dedicate this uh, expressway to the people of Uttar Pradesh. Shilpa. All right. Thank you very much, Pranshu. Now let's go across to Aman as well. Aman, you brought us uh, that ground report from uh, the expressway. We know you got a preview uh, to it. What were your first thoughts when you were on uh, the expressway? Well, uh, I know it must have been absolutely empty when you were there because it's not been inaugurated. But uh, what was your first thought when you were on it? See, I think uh, Shilpa, going to the uh, expressway, going to the Bundelkhand region is very important. You know, UP has other expressways. There is an expressway to Agra. There's also an expressway from Agra to Lucknow. But these are generally, you know, the bigger, the more prosperous regions of Uttar Pradesh. When you speak of Bundelkhand, a region, these seven districts, perhaps the most backward, economically backward, socially backward, poverty is there. For these regions, when an expressway goes, it opens up multiple possibilities. Now, the first thing is the center had announced a defense corridor in UP two years back. This expressway will be the backbone of that defense corridor because if you expect big defense companies to go and set up shop in that in Bundelkhand, these companies also need a fast road connectivity for their goods and raw materials right up till Delhi. So one is that, you know, mm. also the center is planning, uh, the state government is planning two industrial corridors alongside the Bundelkhand Expressway. This will bring industry to Bundelkhand. This will bring more jobs to Bundelkhand. This will lead to larger socio-economic development of this entire region. You know, I remember speaking to Mr. Uh, Avni Shavasthi, clearly saying that, you know, this expressway is special in these many aspects. And that is why also the expressway has been built in record time. Farmers gave up their land willingly for the project. In fact, the land acquisition for this project was at a record pace within six months land for the entire 296 kilometer long expressway was procured by acquired by the government this also shows that locals had a lot of enthusiasm for this expressway coming up in fact when i went to some villages in chitrakoot and jalon you know the line i used to hear from villagers was that chaliye kisi cm ne to finally bundelkhand ke bare mein bhi socha you know people had this feeling that you know cms think about you know, Prayagraj, about Lucknow, about Agra, about Meerut, but nobody really thought about Bundelkhand so far. So that way, I think the project is very crucial also because it links directly into the Agra Lucknow Expresses so from Delhi. You can now reach Chitrakoot within six to seven hours. This was unheard of before through a network of expressways. Six expressways are already going to be operational in UP right from today after PM inaugurates the Bundelkhand Expressway. Also, I think the political import of this, you know, with CM Yogi saying that, you know, he is transforming UP into Expressway Pradesh. The Prime Minister, when he's there today, I'm sure PPM will also raise this point, that the projects that are, whose foundation stone is laid by the PM, the projects are also inaugurated by the same PM. So, Mr. Modi made that point in Deoghar Airport, airport also, that this project is Shilinya Sam Karte Hai, Uska Udghatan Bhi Ham Karte Hai. So, this project also was, uh, foundation stone was laid by the PM in February 2020. And today, after 28 months, he's there to inaugurate the project. So in a way, the political import of this project is already, and some politics have already begun, Shilpa. We see Akhilesh Yadav has tweeted, uh, saying, par, uh, putting out a video saying parts of the expressway are not ready. He's also questioning that why has the uh, BJP government not built an airstrip on this project? There is an airstrip on the Agra Lucknow Expressway and the Purvanchal Expressway. So some politics will obviously happen, but this project, as Pranshu was saying earlier, is an out-and-out -out BJP Yogi government project. It was conceived under the Yogi government regime. It has been executed under the Yogi government regime. But some politics will also always be there with now Akhilesh Yadav questioning that why parts of the project are not ready. Shilpa. Aman, you were there on the expressway. So are parts of the expressway not ready, in fact, as uh, it's being alleged by Akhilesh Yadav? Well, I don't think so. See, there will be some parts work will go on. You know, it's a long express of 296 kilometers. Some parts of it work was still a bit on, but express was totally functional. You can drive down to Chitrakoot from uh, the start of the expressway. That way, the expressway is totally functional. And some works, you know, always keep on going. But as I said, some politics always enters these projects and there is always a game of what happens ship because Akhilesh Yadav, 
uh, claims that he is the one originally who thought about expressways in UP and built the Agra Lucknow expressway. Mm -hmm. Before that, Mayawati had built the Yamuna expressway. So it's also expressways in UP are a continuation over the governments also. You know, BSP has built it, SP has built it, but mm -hmm. BJP now is like taking it to another level. And as Mr. Avasti Avnish Avasti had told us in an interview, that CM Yogi feels that the because it is a big state. The big state needs to be networked by expressway, so there is fast connectivity. And now from Delhi, you can reach nearly every corner of UP within seven to eight hours. That's a big uh, achievement. I think you can get till Ghazipur in seven to eight hours. You can now get to Chitrakoot in six to seven hours. So that connectivity, I think, in long term, UP feels that it is on the path to progress and economic development through its network of expressways. Well, yes, indeed, bringing these backward districts forward with the help of these expressways. Going back uh, to Pranshu Mishra, who's there on ground. Pranshu, I hope it's not uh, as noisy as it was earlier, but uh, you're bringing us some very interesting reactions from there. Uh, so do try to uh, bring us more voices and also tell us uh, what is it uh, that they're saying that I think I can hear some chants as well. Well, Shilpa, again, you know, your, your voice is not very clear. But again, I'll try to speak to some people here, and this time the women of uh, Bundel Khan region uh, who have come in from far away places. Aap log, uh, आपको लगता है कि बुंदेलखंड की पहचान बदलेगा ये एक्सप्रेस बदलेगा बिल्कुल बदलेगा बदलेगा अभी तक बुंदेलखंड को लोग जानते थे पलायन के लिए सूखे के लिए एक्सप्रेस वे बनने के बाद क्या परिवर्तन आपको लगता होगा बहुत परिवर्तन आया सर जनता खुशहाल है और क्या जनता खुशहाल है बहुत परिवर्तन आएगा लोग डायरेक्ट जाएंगे परेशान नहीं होंगे आप बताइए मोदी जी को सुनने के लिए आए हैं बुंदेलखंड का को एक्सप्रेस वे मिला है तो आपको लगता है कि इससे परिवर्तन होगा यहाँ के लोगों के जीवन में हाँ बिल्कुल होगा इससे बहुत परिवर्तन होगा क्या किस तरह का विकास होगा क्या परिवर्तन होगा बहुत ज्यादा विकास होगा और आगे होता आ रहा है और आगे भी होगा well uh, you know people clearly have a, a sentiment and hope and see hope is something which people do need to have because bundelkhand region has been dep a deprived region uh, we have reported out of uttar pradesh for decades now and most often the region has been in news for all bad reasons you talk about exodus of migrant laborers it has been in news you talk about drought remember bundelkhand is a region where we have seen in the past uh, uh, water trains coming because it's such a droughted area in that region the bjp government has thought about development projects it has said that it is bringing uh, the, you know the defense corridor nodes here the express is being brought here and therefore people do hope that probably now over the years with bundelkhand express way being operational defense corridor taking shape probably bundelkhand region will emerge out of the past and will be headed on the growth story and that's the reason why the fact that prime minister is coming here is drawing in a lot of crowd see behind me uh, it's, it's still around one and a half hours for prime minister to be here but still the crowds are jam packed people are uh, uh, you know all uh, the, the sections are jam packed and many people thousands are still coming up here eight pandals have been erected to accommodate the people who have come in from across the districts of bundelkhand to listen to prime minister once he has dedicated the bundelkhand express way well, yes, indeed, Pranshu, that's quite a turnout this early in the morning. We'll come back to you when it's slightly quieter there. Now, over on to another row. Some breaking news. The row over parliament rules continues. The um, um, Amit Malia slams opposition over parliament politics. He tweeted that the opposition has had just three priorities in the last three days. One is aggressive lines. Two, compilation of expunged words seen as gag, uh, gagging freedom of uh, speech and expression. And three, routine circulars suddenly becoming dreadful. All right, now we're joined by my colleague Arun Dhanta uh, with more on this. Good morning to you, Arun. Arun, this is true. You know, the opposition is not really bothered about the actual issue. The rupees uh, had a rec record low. But the opposition is not talking about that. They're just caught up in the nitty gritties and they just keep highlighting this. Why is the opposition so scared to take on the bigger issues? Well, uh, you know, uh, in, in last uh, couple of days, uh, we had the uh, team Shilpa that our opposition party is uh, hitting out at the government, starting from the national, national anthem issue, uh, the question which they raised on... Uh, 
the structure of the, the national em emblem. Uh, they were saying that it is uh, different from uh, the original one and it looks uh, uh, more aggressive. And then also we had seen uh, the booklet of Lok Sabha um, in which opposition parties again raised their concerns saying that uh, this is a new dictat. The government uh, does not want uh, the opposition to speak in the parliament. They are trying to stifle so uh, issues like this, and therefore the uh, BJP's IT cell in charge, uh, Amit Malviya, has, uh, has 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 taken on uh, to the opposition parties by saying that they don't have. I don't request party. you to stay with us. In fact, uh, we have Amit Malviya, the BJP, joining us. Uh, very good morning to you, sir. Um, you're pointing out that uh, the opposition there is only, uh, you know, has uh, three agendas: aggressive lines, compilation of expunged words, as seen as gag and routine circulars suddenly becoming a draconian uh, today. Now, there are issues definitely uh, in, in the current economic state of the country. Uh, is the uh, opposition just, uh, you know, not raising the right issues, clearly caught up in the nitty gritties? Well, it is for the opposition to decide what issues they want to raise. But if their priority is highlighting whether the lions are looking aggressive or not, whether expunged words mean a gag order or a routine circular is uh, suddenly draconian. Now, if this is the opposition's priority in the run-up to the uh, monsoon session, the all-critical monsoon session, then perhaps we can suggest them some more ridiculous things to outrage about. The fact is that every parliament session, the opposition finds something which is absolutely inconsequential to the scheme of India's governance. It withholds and disrupts the House while the Treasury benches go on, debate, deliberate, and go on with the legislative process. It is for the opposition to decide if they want to be a constructive opposition, add to the discussion, deliberation, and the legislative agenda, or do they want to continue holding the House to ransom or the proceedings to ransom on one frivolous uh, charge or the other? What we've seen in the last three days is completely unbecoming of a responsible opposition. All right. Uh, thank you very much, sir. We'll just leave it at that. But the row continues ahead of that parliamentary session. Shifting our focus to Bihar, we know there's a crackdown on terror that's happening in the state. The crackdown on PFI continues in connection to the Bihar terror module case. Four people have been arrested and raids continue at the residences and offices of all the accused. According to sources, PFI's main agenda in Bihar was to spread its radical network in the interior parts of the state. Clerics from other states were invited to preach. The group also planned on giving martial arts sword use training to youngsters. उद्भेदित करने के लिए लगातार प्रयास किए जाते हैं और बहुत मेहनत लगती है समय भी लगता है उसके बाद ही ये सब चीजें जो हैं उभर के सामने आती हैं अभी उनका जो डिटेल पूछताछ हुई है और जो उनके लिंकेजेस सामने आए हैं उन पर और काम हमारे जो पुलिस है और इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसीज चाहे वो राज्य की हैं चाहे वो केंद्र की हैं वो कर रही हैं उसके बाद जो और चीजें सामने आएंगी तो हम आपसे वो चीजें शेयर करेंगे So let's recap what's been taking place in Bihar. There was a module that was found while two accused uh, were apprehended. This was a module called 2047. PFI says we are not responsible for this module, but that module uh, seems to have been drafted by PFI when you look at it. And it also says, um, you know, that there needs to be uh, Islamic rule in India and that uh, no other uh, organizations should be joined, like even the AIMIM is diluting um, the, the, the mission, PFI says, and they say do not join other uh, organizations. Of course, PFI on their side saying this has been planted, we have nothing to uh, do with it. On the other hand, there was also another arrest that was taken place. This is with an other, a connection to yet another terror module. This is called Ghazwa e Hid. Now we are joined by a Saurabh. Saurabh, over the last few days, we are seeing uh, quite a few terror modules uh, emerging from Patna. What are the people who are being accused saying? Are they saying it's a plot? Uh, they, these are being planted? What do they have to say uh, in their defense? And also, 
the fact that there is this um, training that is being offered, this sword fighting, uh, has the PFI uh, admitted to that, that this kind of specific training is being offered uh, to people? Shilpa, uh, on 11th of July when the raid took place at Pulwari Sharif, uh, it, it was found out that uh, Jalaluddin's house was raided and it was found out that Athar Parvez, uh, who was a, a semi-operative, and uh, Jalaluddin, who was a uh, sub-inspector in Jharkhand Police, uh, he was a retired officer. Uh, they had accepted that there was a, a martial art training going on uh, at their premises and also people from different districts used to visit to get those trainings in martial arts. Uh, swords uh, and knives trainings were given to them. Uh, also, lattes, how to use lattes. Uh, these types of training were given to uh, different people who came from not only from Bihar but also from different uh, districts of other states, uh, namely Tamil Nadu, Kerala, uh, these uh, Karnataka, these places, not only the uh, recruits were coming but also uh, the trainers were also coming from those states as according to the police. Uh, so uh, this kind of training was given uh, in Fulwari Sharif, uh, then the police busted this terror module and where uh, also the meetings were held to radicalize youth. and. Uh, when this was busted, the uh, Patna police uh, uh, named 26 person in the FIR and uh, since then raids have been conducted at different locations in Patna and other Simanchal areas such as Katihar, Darbhanga, Madhubani, Araria, uh, all those yeah. districts, uh, the raids have been going on. So, uh, so far four of them have been arrested. Although the role of PFI is, uh, PFI's role is not clear because PFI is saying that uh, uh, it's a fabricated story and this fire is fake uh, but the Patna police they are uh, adamant on their fire saying that uh, various indiscriminate uh, like the in incriminating uh, documents were found from the house which said India 2047 towards rule of Islam uh, and and the motive of those uh, people were to bring Islam uh, and uh, 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 make India a Islamic country by 2047 so so these kinds of incriminating documents were found in the house. Uh, so uh, we can say that uh, no, because uh, PFI is not an outlawed, uh, you know, uh, organization, but uh, the police, they are uh, based on the evidence they have collected. They say that there is a plot of PFI for radicalizing people, creating violence, and then, um, uh, you know, uh, put Islamic uh, uh, principles uh, in India. Sora, so, uh, the most uh, alarming part of this entire uh, plot and this module is that PM Modi was uh, visiting Patna and there was an attack planned on him. And also let's talk about those bulk transactions made by Parvez and Jalaluddin. Um, Parvez is a retired officer, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, there, were, there were transactions made to the tune of almost a crore when you add them up, 14 lakh, 30 lakh, 40 lakh. And the ED is also investigating this. Uh, so far, ED is investigating or not, we are not sure because official statement has not come. But uh, the transactions uh, that were made was uh, of around 83 lakhs, 40 lakhs from uh, uh, Pakistan, 30 from uh, uh, Turkey and 13 lakhs from uh, Bangladesh. These were the trans transactions that was uh, put by police uh, saying that these transactions took place in Jalaluddin's uh, and Athar Pravis's account. So uh, there is an angle of money laundering and uh, you know terror funding. But uh, as far as the investigation is concerned, uh, we are yet to get the word from ED whether they have taken up the case or not. But so far, uh, police investigate. Uh, Patna police uh, has taken up the case and they are investigating the case. All right, Saurabh, thank you so much for bringing us all those intricate details of that plot. Now it's time for a very quick break, but big headlines on the other side. Lawrence Bishnoi, operating from inside the Tihar jail with impunity, had no qualms uh, ordering multiple hits on Salman Khan. Sculptor himself, the mean man behind this, is saying that there is actually no difference. Drugs, 
to try and fund their terror operations and to also try and radicalize young impressionable minds while confining them to the throes of drug addiction. What is becoming increasingly worrying and problematic is that issues related to education is becoming so, so polarizing. Well, where are you? Where are you, sir? No questions asked. <laughs> what? I, I can't believe this, really? No money trail, no auditing, no question of accountability. No question of accountability? What is this? Listen carefully. PM Relief Fund. <laughs> what? Uh, India's or Sri Lanka's? <laughs> ah, you are right. <laughs> Let's just say... You see this? Sri Lanka. वैसे थोड़ा मुश्किल है आपको इसमें इमेजिन करना। आपके पास जब ये फिल्म आई, so this is a film based in Bihar, a girl from Bihar who's living in Punjab. उसकी ज़िंदगी में ड्रग्स आते हैं, उसकी ज़िंदगी में परेशानियाँ आती हैं, बाप का साया उसके सर से हट जाता है, बहुत तरह की परेशानियों से वो अकेली लड़की गुजरती है और वो भी इत्तेफाक what was your reaction to the script? It, it's still a fun film. Okay, okay. Um, and there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of uh, energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if she is going through these situations and difficulties, and she is in a serious tonality, then I don't take so much interest in this film. But because... सिद्धार्थ जो हमारे निर्देशक हैं उनका टेक इस फिल्म पे इतना कोकी था और जो ओरिजिनल फिल्म है कोलमा वो कोकीला उसमें इतनी कॉमेडी थी तो वो देखके मैं काफी एक्साइट हो गई। You trained yourself as an actor in Lee Strasberg School of Theatre and Films. What is your biggest learning from from learning acting? Be honest and be in the moment and nothing is more repulsive. Maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, awesome than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Mm. To be in the moment and to be honest in the moment is, mm. I think, where the magic happens. Actually, Nawaz, sir, who I met very briefly one day, mm. said to me and Ashan, he said, all of the best acting is acting that happens by mistake. Wow. When you sit down with your father, Mr. Boni Kapoor, what are the conversations that you have now? Now that you're into the film industry, you're reading scripts, and your father has been the producer. Recently, Salman made a statement that, you know, when I was in my career, it was a very bad time, so Boni Kapoor had me raised me. So as a professional now, what are the conversations that you're having with a professional like him? I think that a lot of creative discussions. We love watching movies, discussing movies. I love telling him about how my day has been on set. And he has itna wisdom hai unke paas, utne itna kuch dekha hai apni zindagi mein, itna kuch kiya hai, ke wo gyan baatne ke liye hamesha tayyar rehte hai. Aur unki kahani aapko ek baar sunni chahiye. Because he's seen it all and he's done it all. To kai baar mein bas baiht ke sunti aur unko baat karne ka bohat shock hai. Especially jab wo apne dosto ke saath baiht hai, Rumi sir, Javid sahab, Shabana ma'am. और उनके जो किस्से हैं, वो मतलब आप सुनके चौक जाओगे कि ऐसे भी फिल्म्स बनते थे, ये फिल्म ऐसी बनी थी, ये इसके वक्त ये हो रहा था। Yeah. So there's so much to learn. Yeah. He's been a producer. मैंने देखा है कि जब एक्टर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स की जिंदगी थोड़ा मुश्किल करते हैं, डिमांड करते हैं, ये वो करते हैं कि प्रोड्यूसर पे क्या प्रेशर्स होत Try in whatever way Absolutely. I can to make it as easy as possible. Wonderful. Uh, when I read about you, newspapers and websites and social media, sometimes I think you are under too much pressure of just looking good. Do you ever feel that thing that just people are a little judgmental of? Welcome back after the break. Some very distressing news coming in from Delhi's Jahangir Puri. Gang war and revenge has taken over the streets. Shocking footage shows a shootout that's been caught out on camera. A man was shot in the face, according to cops. The victim had beaten up the father of one of the apprehended 
minor boys around 7 months ago and today they all came to take revenge together. Three minor boys have now been apprehended. We're joined by my colleague Shankar Anand for more on this. Good morning Shankar. Um, Dushmani itni bad gayi thi ki jaan leva ban gayi. In nabalikon ko banduk kahan se mila? Aur kya ab vakt a gaya hai? Delhi aur Haryana mein shayad ye uh, hathiyar ke jo kanun hai unko badalne ka. निश्चित तौर पर देखिए बहुत बड़ा सवाल है आपने एकदम सही सवाल आपने किया है जिस तरह से देखा जाए इस जहांगीरपुरी इलाके की अगर बात करें तो जहांगीरपुरी इलाके में इस तरह की घटना कई बार देखने को मिली है और खास तौर पर जो नवालिक के हाथ में जिस तरह से अवैध कट्टा जो देसी कट्टा है वो उस इलाके में देखा गया हालांकि उस मामले पर कई बार कार्रवाई भी हुई है लेकिन जो ये ताजा घटना है ये 15 साथ का यानी कि कल की घटना है और जावेद नाम के शख्स जो 36 साल के हैं और एच ब्लॉक में रहते हैं उस पर जानलेवा हमला किया गया है हालांकि इस पूरे मामले की जो तार है इस मामले पर जो सुराती तफ्तीश की गई तो उसमें पूरा चला कि सट्टा सट्टेबाजी को लेकर ये फायरिंग की गई थी सट्टेबाजी को लेकर पहले भी कई बार आपस में इन दोनों के बीच में लड़ाई हो चुकी है और उसके बाद इस मामले पर जब सट्टेबाजी का विरोध किया गया था या पैसे का लेनदेन गलत तरीके से हुआ तो उसके बाद इस जो तीन नवालिकों के द्वारा जो फायरिंग की जाती है और देखिए कितनी नजदीक से आकर एक फिल्मी अंदाज में वो फायरिंग की जाती है हालांकि जावेद के आंख में लगी है वो गोली और उसकी जान बच गई है इस वक्त में उसका इलाज चल रहा है लेकिन जिस तरह से फिल्मी अंदाज में देसी कट्टा लेकर के जिस तरह से फायरिंग की जाती है और इस इलाके में ये वही इलाका है जहां के पूरी का जहां पर पिछले कुछ समय पहले काफी चर्चा का केंद्र में रहा था और उस इलाके में जिस तरह से बेखौफ होकर जिस तरह से नाबालिग बच्चों के हाथ में कट्टा देखने को मिल रहा है और फायरिंग की जा रही है लेकिन फायरिंग करने का अंदाज भी देखा जा सकता है कि काफी बेखौफ होकर फायरिंग की जा रही है तो ये मामला काफी संगीन हो गया है और निश्चित तौर पर इस मामले की गंभीरता को ही देखते हुए जिस तरह से तीनों नवाले को हालांकि जरूर पकड़ लिया गया है लेकिन यहां सवाल उठता है कि इस तरह के मामले पर रोक जो है कब लगेगी क्योंकि पिछले कुछ समय में लगातार इस तरह के मामले देखने को मिल रहे हैं और इस इलाके में जो अभी तक जो जानकारी हमारे सूत्र बताते हैं कि सट्टेबाजी को लेकर इस तरह के मामले देखने को मिले हैं सट्टेबाजी को लेकर पहले भी कई बार मारपीट हुई है और इस इलाके में इस तरह की घटना के वारदात को अंजाम दिया गया है कई बार कई लोगों की कुछ लोगों की हत्या भी हुई है तो सट्टेबाजी बहुत बड़ा मसला है खास तौर पर नॉर्थ फेस्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट के इस जहांगीरपुरी इलाके में और जिस तरह से कल देखने को मिला है कि जहांगीरपुरी इलाके में एच ब्लॉक में 36 साल के रहने वाले जावेद को काफी नजदीक से आकर उसके आंख में गोली मारी है हालांकि वो इरादा तो था कि उसके सर पर गोली मारने का जिससे कि पूरा सर के पखचे उड़ जाए लेकिन कहीं कहीं वो जिस तरह से बकायदा वो जावेद अपने आप को बचाया तो शायद उसी का तकाजा है कि वो गोली उसके आंख में लगी हालांकि वो आंख बर्बाद हो चुका है लेकिन इस वक्त में उसकी जान बची हुई है और अस्पताल में उसका इलाज चल रहा है जी Thank you very much, Shankar. That's a miraculous escape indeed. But now we're moving on to Kashmir where red flags have been raised over the tricolor mandate. परिस्थितियां बदली हैं लोग भारत के साथ खड़े हैं इन लोगों ने गुमराह किया उनको आज इस प्रकार से जो एक कोशिश की जा रही है कि वहां पर हर घर में झंडा चढ़े तो ये बार बार गलत बयानबाजी करके लोगों को गुमराह कर रहे हैं लोगों को भड़काते हैं Compelling people to put tricolor on their shops and houses and establishments. As a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration, the JNK government has formed a high-level committee to implement the recent decision taken on the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign. While the move was welcomed by the BJP, PDP spokesperson Anil Sethi has called it a childish move. Now, remember earlier National Conference Chief Farooq Abdullah had sarcastically said when a journalist in Kashmir asked him about the Harga Tiranga campaign, keep your Tiranga at home. That's what Farooq Abdullah had said. 
महबूबा मुफ्ती बार बार भारतीय झंडे को लेकर के जो आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव मनाया जा रहा है उस पर सवाल खड़े करते हैं तिरंगे की बेइज्जती करना इनका शुरू से काम रहा है इनको तकलीफ होना स्वाभाविक बात है क्योंकि सत्तर साल इन्होंने उस झंडे को प्रायोरिटी दी जिसके कारण से अलगाववाद आतंकवाद और परिवारवाद ये सब चीज़ें चलती रहीं अब वो कश्मीर में परिस्थितियाँ बदली हैं लोग भारत के साथ खड़े हैं तो ये बार बार गलत बयानबाजी करके लोगों को गुमराह कर रहे हैं लोगों को भड़काते हैं लेकिन इस प्रकार की जो व्यवस्था है लोग इस सब को नकारेंगे और आज़ादी के अमृत महोत्सव पर हर जगह झंडा चढ़ेगा I mean, compelling people to put tricolor on their shops and houses and establishments. In my opinion, personal opinion, the most demeaning authority of the tricolor. Tricolor is something which we respect from the core of our hearts, and we stand up wherever tricolor is unfurled or hoisted. Secondly, I think this is yet another distraction move of the government. The government never wants to address the main issues. unemployment poverty other hostile issues facing the country the common man they keep on distracting they keep on generating controversy out of nothing out of no issues now i join my colleague tejinder singh sodi ab uh, tejinder the flag is of course a matter of pride for all of us but if you have to display it prominently uh, you also have to follow the flag code so perhaps a lot of residents might be apprehensive about this because you know if any any dirt accumulates on it it falls in water for instance they will be held accountable and it's also a criminal charge uh, if you neglect the flag so it's also a huge responsibility which is why some people uh, might be objecting to it uh you see shilpa the authorities especially uh, the, uh, the the admis, uh, administration in jammu and kashmir they have formed several committees yesterday a high level committee uh, was formed that would overlook the entire campaign of har ghar tiranga and now at every district uh, level uh, the deputy commissioners and other officials they would be overlooking the overall uh, arrangement for this campaign and also people would be sanitized they would be informed about Uh, the steps which they have to taken to achieve that the protocol of the tricolor has to be uh, followed uh, it is not like that that uh, they will uh, they will install the uh, tricolor atop their houses and then they will forget it so every protocol has to be followed every uh, flag code has to be followed and that only after that uh, the people are sanitized and only after that they will be asked to uh, put the tricolor atop their houses so all the arrangements have been put in place by the authorities a high level committee has already been formed by uh, the uh, the lg administration and now at every district level even yesterday soon after the high level committee was formed uh, the uh, in in rajouri district in jammu region uh, the deputy commissioner of the area he held a meeting where in he discussed with all the officials all the modalities that would be uh, all all the modalities relating uh, the uh, the har ghar tiranga campaign so all every step would be taken by the authorities by the uh, by, by the police law enforcing agencies to ensure that uh, the flag code is uh, duly followed when uh, the the har ghar tiranga campaign starts across the union territory of jammu and kashmir yes shilpa all right thank you very much tejinder we'll leave, leave it at that because we have some breaking news coming in Now the Congress reacts to allegations against their senior leader Ahmed Patel. Jairam Ramesh has said that the Indian National Congress categorically refutes the mischievous charges manufactured against the late Sri Ahmed Patel. This is part of the Prime Minister's systematic strategy to absolve himself of any responsibility for the communal carnage unleashed when he was Chief Minister of Gujarat in 2002. Now we're joined by my colleague Pallavi Ghosh with more on this. Very good morning to you, Pallavi. Um, now the Congress saying that these are all manufactured charges. In fact, this morning uh, the SIT says uh, that uh, these are 
uh, Setelwar had actually asked the Congress to award her uh, with the Padma Award. Uh, so, you know, the Congress hasn't uh, any word from Congress on that allegation as well. Well, well uh, there have been on the social media timeline certainly defences coming in from the Congress Party asking this counter question to the BGP that did the UPA government actually give her that award. Uh, but having said that, I think this is going to be yet another round of confrontation between the two parties. Jairam Ramesh's extensive statement which he has issued on behalf of the party one, of course, defends the late Ahmed Patel, who's been a political secretary to Sonia Gandhi and someone who's been one of the top-notch leaders of the Congress. Second, of course, giving these counter allegations against the Modi government when he was the chief minister of Gujarat, that he did nothing to stop the uh, the violence which broke out there. And third, that how these issues are always raked up only because there's a cover-up operation by the Modi government at the centre. Well, yes, indeed, Pallavi, we'll uh, leave it at that. But Congress saying that this is a cover-up operation by the Modi government using the bodies to manipulate the truth is what Congress is alleging. We leave it at that and we'll take a very small break and bigger headlines on the other side. On Bits to Billions this weekend, we have an entrepreneur who wants to make an India for the world, Amrit Acharya, the co-founder and CEO of Zetwork. Is it exciting to train for engineering and actually do engineering? Like I graduated with a degree in electrical engineering, but I ended up doing nothing close to electrical engineering for, for many years. In fact, I was at McKinsey for a bit. At my heart, I always felt that calling that, you know, I really like building things. Why did you decide to choose um, an unsexy industry, so to speak? While it was unsexy for us, it was very sexy because, <laughs> because we, we understood the pain points in a way which it felt unique to us, mm. uh, it felt very authentic to us that these are uh, problems we are passionate about and I felt that I wanted to drive some change. Now in Sri Lanka folks, the PM and President have run away from the fight. It sounds funny if you're not paying attention, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. They actually just got up and ran away. They owe 50 billion in debt, the country that is, and they need to clear 28 billion by 2027. A minimum of 28 billion, otherwise they basically just sink completely. There'll be like nothing left. So let's talk to international financial advisor, Dr. R. U. Kutti, who is being consulted by what's left of the Sri Lankan administration. Uh, and he's right here with us. He's a very busy man. Mr. R. U. Kutti? Ah, that's my name. <laughs> I see, I see. Great opening, sir. Great opening. I love that. Let's start at the top now. Is there any hope for Sri Lanka? Is there a hope for Uddhav in Maharashtra <laughs> or Congress at the center? <laughs> I don't know. Then that's your answer. <laughs> okay, okay. But now let's go from the top to the bottom. But young man, I did that by appearing on your show. <laughs> right. So comedy we've got. We're getting no answers, but we've got comedy. True. Now, are you Kutti? That's me. That's my name. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just let me complete. Are you Kutti? That's my name. That's me. <laughs> this guy is just... Can you just behave yourself, sir? Please, sir. How did it get so bad for Sri Lanka? Give us an understanding of why it went wrong. See, I'll tell you. You owe 10 rupees. Yes. Then you borrow 10 rupees to pay off the first 10 rupees. I owe 10 rupees, so I borrow 10 rupees. But now, you owe the initial guy 12 rupees because of the compound interest. <laughs> so you pay off 10, still owe two to him. Mm -hmm. Plus, another 10 to second guy. Meanwhile, both sums compound further and become... This is getting very scary. <laughs> so now, you owe five to the first guy and 13 to the second guy. So you borrow 10 from the third guy. <laughs> okay, 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 please stop. Please stop. This show is painful enough as it is. Don't, don't do this calculation. Please stop. So, they reach a point of 50 billion plus in debt and growing. <laughs> is that so? And can you believe it all started from borrowing just 10 rupees? <laughs> I don't think that's true. I, in fact, I feel really bad. I apologize to all people listening. It's very insensitive to make jokes like this when some country is really... A country we all love. It's a beautiful country. With, you know, just really nice if you visited, unfortunately. So, we're all feeling bad. So, sir, please give us some good news. Ah, good news, yes. This is a very good news, I must tell you. My nephew, Sunil, 
is getting engaged and the girl is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful girl. This guy, I tell you, not that kind of good news about Sri Lanka. For Sri Lanka, is there any, any hope, any good news? Aha, Sri Lanka. There are few scenarios which may work. <laughs> are you just looking for out here or you really have some thoughts? Such as, such as? Uh, such as sublet to the global powerhouse like China, <laughs> US, Canada. You know, I thought of that. We were discussing this offline and I think that's a problem because you become a vassal state, no? You become yes men of the big power. Exactly. Then they could make Bahubali, <laughs> Pushpa, Arara, KGF. In Sinhalis as another option. But it's a country of just 22 million. I mean, they can't get India-like figures from sales of tickets and all year. They can, if the citizen... Welcome back. After the break, now Prime Minister Narendra Modi has landed in Kanpur. He's on the way to Jalan to inaugurate the Bundel Khand Expressway. Uh, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and other dignitaries received him at the Kanpur airport as per protocol. Now our colleague Pranshu Mishra is there at Jalaung. You've been watching those visuals. Um, all, um, I'm going across to him right now. Pranshu, we've seen the kind of turnout uh, that is awaiting Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They're all extremely happy about the recognition that districts such as Bundelkhand or even Jalao have received. When is he expected uh, to arrive there? And what is the program for the inauguration? Take us through it. Probably next 45 minutes, uh, he'll be here. Uh, we are expected him to be here by uh, say 11.30. That's not the official time as it's given. And here it's around one and a half hours of program where Prime Minister will be operating uh, this the particular book and send expressway. And then, of course, we'll be addressing the huge crowd which has been patiently waiting since morning to listen to Prime Minister. That seems to be the moment of a big change in perception for Bundelkhand. Bundelkhand has always been in use for almost that reason. For drought, we have reported about how uh, the, you know, there has been the exodus of migrants from these places. How drought has forced people to flee from this region. This region has been known for gutters and crime in the past. But now, Bundel and Expressway comes in at the moment when one can talk about the development possibility, the development potential in this region. This district of Bundel they are being connected to Bundel and via this expressway, they will be connected to the national capital, uh, Delhi, as well as the state capital. So clearly, it's a big moment. And even as I speak, I can hear the chants of Modi, Modi, echoing this entire uh, pandal, this entire area. So clearly, excitement is in the air, and people are eagerly waiting for the Prime Minister to arrive and inaugurate. Well, yes, indeed, I've been seeing that kind of excitement, and you've been bringing us all those reactions up from the people as well. Do you have a timeline? of when he is arriving because he ha he does have other uh, meetings scheduled for the day as well. So what time is this inauguration expected at? Well, uh, the official time is of 11.30 a.m. So we are expecting that somewhere around that time, maybe, you know, a few minutes late, uh, Prime Minister will be here. And since it's the event of the Prime Minister, it would be more or less precisely around the time. So from 11.30 a.m. onwards, we'll be watching these pictures where Prime Minister, along with uh, uh, the galaxy of BJP leaders, including Yogi Adityanath, UP Chief Minister, both the Deputy Chief Ministers, Kesho Moran, Vijesh Patak, along with the entire Cabinet, Governor of Uttar Pradesh, Anandi Ben Patel, all these uh, BVIPs are already there on the, on the stage waiting for Prime Minister to arrive. Yogi Adityanath also accompanying Prime Minister en route from Kanpur to Jalan. So clearly, uh, next 45 minutes, I think, Prime Minister should be here and uh, propose that uh, it will be around one and a half hours of events where the keynotes address will, of course, be that from the Prime Minister. And before that, there will, of course, be a welcome address by Yogi Adityanath. And emphasis, again, I think in the Prime Minister's speech will most likely be on the fact that how the double engine uh, 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 government phenomena has been working well for Uttar Pradesh when it comes to uh, pulling UP out of that image of a six state, a Dimaru Raj, and putting it on the path pace of development. So I think that, that message again would be resonated in what Prime Minister has to say to thousands and thousands of people who have been waiting for us now to listen to their leader. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, also, Pranju, tell us about uh, how this expressway has the image of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. He has built uh, so many in uh, his tenure. In fact, seven 
of them under a uh, work currently the fact that he has uh, executed this in uh, record time surely speaks for something and uh, are his critics also lauding him for this particular development Yes, that's why right. talking specifically about Yogi Adityanath, uh, the project clearly is in a, I, I, you know, it will be seen as a gem in its crown. Uh, so it will be high on its on, on, on its uh, list of achievements. Uh, the fact that unlike other projects, unlike other projects, for example, the Purvanchal Express Way, over which we saw projects were breaking out between the Samajwadi Party and the BJP, Akhilesh Yadav claiming their project was conceived during our regime. It has been only inaugurated by Prime Minister. Unlike that, the Delta Express Way is entirely the BJP. government project the vision was seen by yogi adityanath the chief minister and prime minister narendra modi uh, foundation stone was laid in 2020 with yogi adityanath as chief minister and now the execution is being done in record 28 months so in that sense the bill from the entirely a project that was you know the basic concept of planning by yogi adityanath government and execution is also been done by him so it is the entirely 100% project of yogi adityanath vision one can claim that uh, second of course you know the yogi adityanath has always talked about putting you Uh, making UP a one trillion dollar economy. So in that context, the expressway will clearly mean new business, uh, 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 you know, growth in, in tourism uh, potential, growth in trade potential. Even they can for the entire region, and therefore the larger vision of putting UP on a uh, development uh, growth, making it a one trillion dollar, uh, dollar economy. That growth also goes to the express rail and Mumbai and express rail. Of course, will be a big, you know, a big, a big uh, uh, channel of that uh, ambition. So I think in that context, uh, the Mumbai and express rail clearly gives Yogi Adityanath uh, an image of a man who is committed to the development of Uttar Pradesh. Well, yes, indeed, Pranshu. This is a tangible development, indeed, and they're on everyone's screens. But uh, now we're also going to take a look at what's taking place in Sri Lanka. Amid the political crisis, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe took charge as the interim president of the island nation. Within hours of taking charge, Wickremesinghe issued two decisions. Firstly, he has prohibited the term "excellency" to introduce the president. and he also appointed top army officials in order to maintain law across the country meanwhile the nominations for the presidential post will be filed on the 19th of july and elections will take place on the 20th of july opposition leader sajit premadasa and mp peruma have announced their candidature for the presidential post now we're joined by purnima murli who's live with us from the colombo presidential palace Purnima, from what we see from reports and what we've been watching, there is so much anger against Ranil Wickremesinghe. Was he reluctant to be even the interim acting president? And also the fact that uh, he has said, "Don't call me Excellency." I don't think anyone wanted to call him that as well. So, uh, you know, was it like a chance for him to do rapprochement, which is why he struck down that term? he know that people and protesters here are angry with uh, ranil as well because they see ranil as someone who is protecting the rajapakshas and now that as per constitution he is the acting president uh, the ruling slpp uh, has in fact said that their party will support uh, uh, ranil for uh, the presidency post and that's why uh, you know people here uh, who have been protesting for 99 days now say that it's time for ranil also to step down they want good governance they want an all party government and not someone who is seen as uh, someone close to the rajapakshas and therefore you can see that protests at the golf face continue even as gotabaya has resigned because they their demand right now is a resignation of ranil wickremesinghe uh, you know uh, you've been protesting for over 99 days uh, you know what is your analysis of ranil wickremesinghe why is that anger directed towards him is it because he's not done much after he uh, became the prime minister of sri lanka Yes it's also because he's been in the political system for years and years and he has failed many times so we have watched him we have supported him throughout the years and uh, it's been to no avail so we would rather have someone who would actually be able to hear who would be able to eradicate corruption not stand up for it and have deals going on so they to ensure so they are political someone who is very close to the rajapakshas yes yes and will the protests continue till he resigns yes 
Yeah. I think they will. I mean, we are. I haven't protested previously ever except when we started all this, which was f say four or five months ago. We started in our own areas, in our neighborhoods, peaceful protests, and then we joined this group of young people, you know, who are patriots. And we can see what everyone is going through, what we are going through uh, in what Sri Lanka. What are the uh, challenges you're facing, apart from, you know, uh, unavailability of fuel, what are the other challenges that uh, the citizens of Sri Lanka are facing at the moment? shutdown of workplaces so your income is lost mm. uh, your revenue is lost mm. all small and medium uh, business industries are closing down mm. retrenching of staff mm. and also the rising cost of living which mm. is what people are unable to handle right mm. now it's um, astronomical mm. every day and uh, then there is also fuel and things because there is a shortage of which mm. the shortage that has been created there is it's going at uh, black market rates mm. which is not fair to everyone right. not everyone can afford to uh, afford that and uh, that's not fair to the majority of the Sri Lankans and um, it's appalling actually that's the anger you see it's very difficult for people uh, on the uh, uh, you know to survive or to make their ends meet many businesses are shut because of uh, 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 the unavailability of of, uh, fuel and also acute shortage of essential commodities schools colleges continue to remain shut because uh, there's no fuel and there are transportation issues uh, every sector in Sri Lanka is hugely impacted and it's only getting worse all right Purnima thank you so much for bringing us those very essential updates staying on Sri Lanka Sri Lankan cricketer Chamika Karuna Ratne has shared his ordeal on the unavailability of fuel in the country affecting their practice. Remember, there is no fuel in Sri Lanka. People are actually buying bicycles. Listen to what he had to say. We have to go for practices in Colombo and uh, in some so different different uh, places. And we have club season also going on. And uh, with that, it's uh, with fuel and we can't uh, go for practices in last uh, Two uh, two days I didn't uh, went anywhere else. I just was in the queue for two days and I just got my fuel and uh, so struggling at right right now. So even if we got we only got for like ten thousand rupees and uh, that's only for like two to maximum two to three days and I don't know in from in uh, after that what I'm going to do because I think the people are like uh, saying that the fuel is not coming for another two th two one one week I guess, I think. Very warm welcome. You're watching the 11 a.m. newscast with me, Akanksha Swaroop on CNN News 18. Let's begin with our top stories in News Blitz 50. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to inaugurate the 296-kilometer-long Bundelkhand Expressway today. The expressway is built at a cost of 14,850 crore rupees. This four-lane expressway will pass through seven Uttar Pradesh districts. The foundation stone for this expressway was laid by Prime Minister Modi in 2020. And the project has been completed in a span of just 28 months. If you start from Delhi, take the Yamuna Expressway to Agra and then the agra Lucknow Expressway. This is the point if you travel about 300 kilometers from Delhi where you hit this interchange from where the new Bundelkhand Expressway starts. This project is being inaugurated by the Prime Minister on the July the 16th. This will be a lot of We और कहीं ले जाके बेच सकते हैं इससे सड़क का बनने से सर एक तो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट जो चीज इसमें फायदा होगा टूरिज्म में जलौन इज द डिस्ट्रिक्ट वे प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल बी अराइविंग ऑन जुलाई द 16th टू इनॉग्रेट दिस एक्सप्रेस वी अ ह्यूज टेंट हैज बीन सेट अप अ ह्यूज पब्लिक मीटिंग विल हैपन अ बिट फार फ्रॉम हियर वेयर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल बी एड्रेसिंग द पीपल this 297 kilometers long Bundelkhand Expressway will be dedicated to the people of Uttar Pradesh shortly in an event held, being held here in Jalon and will be dedicated to the people by the Prime Minister. Bundelkhand Expressway that will pass through six districts comprising of Jhansi, Chitrakoot, Mahoba, Jalon and will finally end in Oreya will connect the Bundelkhand di Expressway directly uh, to the already existing Lucknow Agra Expressway and thereby it will give people of Bundelkhand a direct connectivity not only to state capital Lucknow but also to the national capital of Delhi. 
समाजवादी पार्टी लीडर अखिलेश यादव हैज टेकन अ डिग एट द उत्तर प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट ऑन द बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे प्रोजेक्ट ही शेयर्ड वीडियो ऑफ द अंडर कंस्ट्रक्टेड एक्सप्रेसवे ऑन ट्विटर एंड आस्क व्हाट इज द हरी टू इनोग्युरेट द एक्सप्रेसवे इवन बिफोर इट्स कंप्लीशन Four people have been arrested in connection to the Patna terror module. While three were arrested on Thursday, the cops arrested another last evening and have found Pakistani links in this case. According to the police, the messages found on the group were communal, extremist, and objectionable, unlawful, and unconstitutional as well. The WhatsApp group also had people from India, Pakistan, and Yemen. कल एक और महत्वपूर्ण गिरफ्तारी हुई है. जो गिरफ्तार अभियुक्त है उसका नाम है मरगूब अहमद दानिश एक ऐसा नंबर पता चला था जिसमें बहुत ही आपत्तिजनक पोस्ट राष्ट्र विरोधी वीडियोस, नारे इत्यादि उनका प्रचार और प्रसार किया जा रहा था ये व्यक्ति गजवा हिंद नाम का संस्था के साथ जुड़ा हुआ था Head of the Vice Presidential Elections BJP Parliamentary Board will hold a key meeting today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, and Nitin Gadkari, besides Party President JP Nadda, will be among others present at this meeting. The last date for filing of nomination papers for the poll is July 19, and the election is scheduled on August 6. As part of the Azadi ki Amrit Mahotsav celebration the Jammu and Kashmir government has formed a high level committee to implement the recent decision taken on the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign while the move was welcomed by the BJP PDP has called it a childish move Mehbooba Mufti bar bar bharti jhande ko lekar ke jo Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav manaya ja raha hai us par sawal khade karte hain Tiranga ki beizzati karna इनका शुरू से काम रहा है सत्तर साल इन्होंने उस झंडे को प्रायोरिटी दी जिसके कारण से अलगाववाद आतंकवाद और परिवारवाद ये सब चीज़ें चलती रही येट अनदर डिस्ट्रैक्शन मूव ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट नेवर वॉन्ट्स टू एड्रेस द मेन इश्यूज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट पॉवर्टी अदर होस्टाइल इशूज फेसिंग द कंट्री द गवर्नमेंट They keep on distracting. They keep on generating controversy out of nothing, out of no issues. A Pakistani woman was nabbed on the line of control in Poonch by security forces. The infiltrator was nabbed in the forward sector where infiltration took attempt a few days ago. The woman was handed over to the Jammu and Kashmir police. Goodbye. Right, let's listen into the BJP press conference on Tista Setalwad right now. विषय को जीवित रखने का काम कर रहे थे और अतथ्य प्रस्तुत कर रहे थे। अब समय आ गया है। ये सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा था कि इन लोगों के ऊपर भी कानून का सिकंजा कसे और इन लोगों को भी जुडिशियल ट्रायल फेस करना पड़े। ये सुप्रीम कोर्ट की सख्त टिप्पणी थी और मीडिया ने � कुछ लोगों की गिरफ्तारी हुई तीस्ता सितलवाड बी श्री कुमार आईपीएस ऑफिसर संजीव भट्ट कुछ लोग गिरफ्तार हुए उनके ऊपर एक एसआईटी बैठाया गया था आज सुबह से मीडिया रिपोर्ट के माध्यम से देश देख रही है कि ये जो एसआईटी है एसआईटी ने अपने एफिडेविट को कोर्ट में सबमिट किया है एफिडेविट ने अपने जांच को कंक्लूड करके ये जो रिपोर्ट रखा है बहुत सारे सत्य को ये सामने लाती है इट रिवील्स शॉकिंग ट्रुथ शॉकिंग फैक्ट्स हैव कम टू द फोर आफ्टर द एसआईटी रिपोर्ट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कोर्ट बहुत स्पष्ट रूप से ये एफिडेविट कहती है कि तीस्ता सितलवाड़ और उनके साथी उनके सहयोगी जो काम कर रहे थे वो मानवता के लिए काम नहीं कर रहे थे वो एक पॉलिटिकल डिजाइन के साथ एक पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव के साथ एक राजनीतिक मंसूबे के साथ काम कर रहे थे और उनका मंसूबा क्या था उनका दो टूक मंसूबा था दे हैड टू ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ये दो पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव्स क्या थे प्रथम पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव था डिसमिसल एंड डिस्टेबिलाईजेशन ऑफ दी पब्लिकली इलेक्टेड गुजरात गवर्नमेंट उस समय जो राज्य की सरकार थी गुजरात में किस प्रकार से उसे बर्खास्त किया जाए और उसे अस्थिर बनाया जाए यह प्रथम राजनीतिक मनसा यह प्रथम पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव 
तीस्ता सितलवाड़ और उनके मित्रों का था उनके साथियों का था और जो दूसरा मनसा था द सेकेंड पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज टू फ्रेम इनोसेंट पीपल इन गुजरात राय टू थाउजेंड एंड टू जिसमें आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का नाम भी शामिल है किस प्रकार से नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नाम को शामिल किया जाए किस प्रकार से उन्हें अपमानित किया जाए उनको किस प्रकार से पदच्युत किया जाए किस प्रकार से उन्हें परेशान किया जाए ताकि भविष्य का एक लीडर जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को आगे लेने की क्षमता जिसमें है उसे रोका जा सके इस मनसा के साथ तीस्ता और उनके साथी काम कर रहे थे ये जो पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव था इसका खुलासा एफिडेविट में हुआ है एफिडेविट ने स्पष्ट रूप से कहा है कि ये जो कॉन्स्पिरेसी ये जो षड्यंत्र है दिस कॉन्स्पिरेसी वॉज टू मलाइन द इमेज ऑफ गुजरात केवल नरेंद्र मोदी और केवल राजनीतिक दृष्टिकोण से नहीं गुजरात किस प्रकार से इसमें उसके चित्र को मलिन किया जाए इमेज ऑफ गुजरात को धक्का पहुंचे यह षड्यंत्र भी तीस्ता सीतलवाड़ और उनके साथी कर रहे थे और दुख का विषय है जो हम कह रहे थे जो हम सोच रहे थे जिस पर डिबेट और डिस्कशन होते थे आज एफिडेविट में वो हकीकत सामने आया है कि षड्यंत्र तो हुआ षड्यंत्र के रचयिता कौन थे Who were the ones who were driving these conspiracies? Ahmed Patel, Shri Ahmed Patel, who was a former Congress leader, leader, Rajya Sabha member of Parliament, and most of all, chief political advisor to the then Congress President Sonia Gandhi. I am today calling on Ahmed Patel Ji for peace and reconciliation. He is not in our midst today, and. भारतीय जनता पार्टी संवेदनशीलता में विश्वास रखती है अहमद पटेल तो मात्र एक नाम है ही इज जस्ट अ नेम द ड्राइविंग फोर्स बिहाइंड अहमद पटेल वॉज हिज बॉस सोनिया गांधी अहमद पटेल तो मात्र एक नाम है काम तो सोनिया जी का था नाम अहमद पटेल काम सोनिया जी इसलिए अपने मुख्य राजनीतिक सचेतक अपने मुख्य पॉलिटिकल एडवाइजर अहमद पटेल के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने गुजरात के छवि को धूमिल करने की चेष्टा की अहमद पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की उन्हें अपमानित और उन्हें किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और यह पूरे षड्यंत्र की रचयिता सोनिया गांधी है और आगे बड़े स्पष्ट शब्दों में यह एफिडेविट कहती है मीडिया से हमने एफिडेविट डाउनलोड किया है क्योंकि मीडिया एफिडेविट चला रही है एंड आई वुड लाइक टू कोट फ्रॉम द एफिडेविट एंड आई कोट द एप्लीकेंट शीतलवाड हेल्ड अ मीटिंग विद अहमद पटेल एंड रिसीव रुपीज फाइव लैक एट द फर्स्ट इंस्टेंस वेर द मनी वॉज गिवन टू हर बाई वन ऑफ द विटनेसेज ऑन द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ पटेल टू डेज लेटर दे मेट एट द सर्किट हाउस एट शाहिबाबाग इन अहमदाबाद where she received rupees 25 lakh more from patel this amount was not for relief work as relief activity was carried out by gujarat relief committee there were many other political leaders in the meeting paise diye gaye aur jo pehla kist gaya hai wo pehla kist 5 plus 25 अर्थात तीस लाख का पहला किस्त सोनिया गांधी जी ने तीस्ता सीतलवाड को दिया अहमद पटेल जी हमारे बीच में नहीं है अहमद पटेल जी ने तो केवल डिलीवर किया दिया सोनिया जी ने अपनी तिजोरी से डिलीवरी की अहमद पटेल जी ने और लिया तीस्ता सीतलवाड ने और याद रखिए ये तीस लाख उस जमाने में केवल पहला किस्त था दिस वॉज जस्ट दी फर्स्ट इंस्टॉलमेंट इसके आगे न जाने कितने करोड़ों रुपए सोनिया गांधी जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को अपमानित और बदनाम करने के लिए झूठे षड्यंत्र में फंसाने के लिए बीजेपी को नीचे गिराने के लिए बीजेपी कैसे आगे ना बढ़े इस चेष्टा में और केवल और केवल बीजेपी और मोदी को पीछे रख करके राहुल गांधी को प्रमोट करने के लिए तीसता सी तलवार का इस्तेमाल इस पैसे से सोनिया गांधी जी ने किया और एक बड़ी बात जो एफिडेविट कहती है दिस मनी वॉज नॉट फॉर रिलीफ वर्क ये पैसा कोई रिलीफ वर्क के लिए नहीं था किसी गरीब के लिए नहीं था किसी दुखियारी के लिए नहीं था ये पैसा उनके पर्सनल यूज के लिए था क्योंकि गुजरात रिलीफ कमेटी बनी हुई थी जो भी पैसा रिलीफ वर्क के लिए जाता था वो इस कमेटी में जाता था और दूसरे पॉलिटिकल लीडर्स के साथ भी मीटिंग हुई सबसे बड़ी बात है 
ये एफिडेविट कहती है चार महीने बाद पुनः एक क्लैंडेस्टीन कोर्ट अनकोर्ट क्लैंडेस्टीन माने चोरी चोरी चुपके चुपके चोरी चोरी चुपके चुपके रात के अंधेरे में ये सारे षड्यंत्री कौन तीस्ता सीतलवाड संजीव भट्ट श्री कुमार ये कहा मिले ये अहमद पटेल जी के घर में मिलते हैं और उसके बाद कांग्रेस के बड़े बड़े दिग्गज नेताओं के साथ मिलते हैं वॉट वॉज द पर्पज द ओनली पर्पज वॉज टू डिस्टेबिलाईज एंड डिसमिस द गुजरात गवर्नमेंट एंड टू डिफेम द देन सी एम ऑफ गुजरात नरेंद्र मोदी जी एक ही मकसद था उसको लेकर इनकी मीटिंग होती है आज जो रिपोर्ट आए हैं वो दिल को दहला देते हैं कि ये सब जो षड्यंत्र कर रही थी जो मलेशियस काम कर रही थी तीस्ता से तलवार इससे प्रसन्न होकर अति प्रसन्न होकर सोनिया जी ने पद्मश्री दिया 2007 में तीस्ता से तलवार को केवल पैसे नहीं पद्मश्री भी दिया गया और ये पद्मश्री देने का काम तो अहमद पटेल जी नहीं ये तो सोनिया गांधी जी खुद कर रही थी चयन तो वही करती थी और याद रखिए ये तीस्ता सीतलवाड सोनिया गांधी जी के किचन कैबिनेट अर्थात एनएसी नेशनल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल की मेंबर थी तीस्ता सीतलवाड वाज वन ऑफ द कमिटेड मेंबर्स रेवर्ड मेंबर ऑफ द नेशनल एडवाइजरी कमिटी ऑफ सोनिया गांधी विच वाज अ नॉन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी एंड शी वर्क अकॉर्डिंग टू द एडवाइज ऑफ तीस्ता सीतलवाड बंधुगण आज अखबारों में यह भी छपा है कि तीस्ता से तलवार राज्यसभा की सीट चाहती थी राज्यसभा का नॉमिनेशन चाहती थी ये तो हम सरकार में आ गए वरना आज तीस्ता से तलवार हो सकता है गृह मंत्री होते हो सकता है आज एक बहुत बड़े पद पे होते किस प्रकार से ये सरकार पहले चल रही थी और अंत में ये एफिडेविट कहती है मिस अप्रोप्रिएशन ऑफ फंड फॉर पर्सनल यूज पर्सनल यूज के लिए मिस अप्रोप्रिएट किया फंड और ये जो फंड मिस अप्रोप्रिएट किया इसका एक एफआईआर हुआ था फिरोज खान पठान ने किया था गुलबर्ग सोसाइटी के गुलबर्ग सोसाइटी के खुद फिरोज खान पठान ने किया था कि पैसा तो हमारे नाम पे इकट्ठा किया म्यूजियम बनाएंगे ऐसा कहा किंतु ये सारे पैसे आपने खर्च किए अपने ऊपर और मैं आज एक मोटा सा दस्तावेज लेके आया हूं ये जो दस्तावेज है ये बीजेपी का दस्तावेज नहीं ये हाई कोर्ट ऑफ गुजरात का जजमेंट है आप सोचिए जरा सुनिए जरा मैं पढ़ता हूं द डाटा रिसीव मैं आपको एक एक करके पढ़ के सुनाता हूं कोर्ट के ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या था मनी विच वॉज मेंट फॉर द पुअर एंड द नीडी हैव बिन मिस अप्रोप्रिएट बाई दिकेंट फॉर दर ओन मेटेरियलिस्टिक प्लेजर एंड कंफर्ट ह्यूज अमाउंट हैज बिन यूज फॉर द परचेस ऑफ आइटम्स लाइक वाइन शूज हॉलीडे रिसोर्ट एयर टिकट्स एक्सेट्रा वाइन वाइन और शूज हॉलीडे रिसोर्ट यह है तीसता से तलवार की हकीकत वाइन एंड शूज रिसोर्ट गरीबों के पैसे के ऊपर इस प्रकार का जुल्म और सुनिए कोर्ट क्या कहती है द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द थर्टीन विटनेसेज रिकॉर्डेड टिल डेट क्लियरली इंडिकेट दट नॉट अ सिंगल रूपी इज रिसीव बाई देम देम मीन्स जिन्होंने केस किया है by them towards financial aid or rehabilitation or construction of museum investigation has revealed that it is only after the publication of interviews photographs articles relating to the gujarat riots and more particularly after the massive campaign in 2008 onwards for collecting funds for establishment of the museum of resistance for the gulbarg society that the funds started flowing into the two ngos in crores 44 percentage of which in sabrang trust and 35 percentage to the cjp have been transferred into personal accounts crores were transferred into personal accounts a court kehti hai having gone through the material on record i have noticed i means the judge i have noticed something very shocking and at the same time extremely sad main bahut dukhi hu judge keh rahe hain There are serious allegations against the applicants of misuse and misappropriation of huge amount received by them through various donors. The money which should have gone to the poor and the needy appears to have been prima facie misused for their personal pleasure and comfort. Personal pleasure or comfort के लिए ये पैसा इस्तेमाल किया गया. बंदुगन, हमारी ये सरकार. मैं आज बीजेपी को भी धन्यवाद देता हूँ. मैं तो एक बीजेपी का साधारण 
हम दोनों जो बैठे हैं साधारण कार्यकर्ता हैं मगर इस विराट पार्टी को आज हम भी धन्यवाद देते हैं नॉट थ्रू वेंजेंस बट थ्रू पेशेंस वी वर्क कभी भी बदले के भाव के साथ नहीं धैर्य के साथ ये पार्टी काम करती है और आज जो उक्ति हजारों करोड़ों साल से कहा जाता है भगवान के घर में देर है मगर अंधेर नहीं है ये सारे एफिडेविट ये सारे जजमेंट आज ये प्रूव करता है कि अगर धैर्य रख के काम किया जाए बदले के भाव से काम नहीं किया जाए तो ऊपर वाला भी द सुप्रीम कॉन्शियसनेस ईल्स ही लिसंस और सच्चाई सामने आती है ट्रुथ हैज द अनकैनी हैबिट ऑफ रिवीलिंग इट सेल्फ इट मे बी लेट but ultimately truth reveals itself and the truth is the driving force behind the conspiracy was sonia gandhi sachai hai ki jo driving force hai kis prakar narendra modi ji ko apmanit kiya jaye badnam kiya jaye bjp ko chal kapat karke samapt kiya jaye gujarat mein sarkar ko wahan dismiss kiya jaye usko kis prakar se asthir kiya jaye gujarat dange ko lekar rajneeti ki jaye iske piche keval aur keval ek vyakti thi aur wah hai sonia gandhi the president of the congress party today we are wanting answers from none other than sonia gandhi no jairam ramesh would suffice in answering this jairam ramesh ji ko ek kagaz release kar denge aur inke kagzon ki haqeeqat to hum teen din se dekh rahe hain ye hamid ansari ji ke teen teen line ke kagaz release karte hain aur har din sham ko aap media wale jo chaturth stambh hain wo aap inke kagaz ki dhajjiyan uda dete hain haqeeqat samne le aate hain photo dikha dete hain haqeeqat dikha dete hain to aaj bhi keval kagaz se kaam nahi chalega jairam ramesh with a clear conscience we beseech sonia gandhi ji to come and hold a press conference and address the nation as to why she was conspiring against narendra modi thank you so much republic tv sir what is your say on this news that spoke about jairam ramesh who has come out in the official status he has told them how the allegations are meritorious and no sense see as far as jairam ramesh is concerned i have observed that the day he became the media head of uh, the communication head of congress party ye pehle se hi ek aisa document bana ke rakhe hue hote hain ye har din ke hisab se document bana ke rakhe hote hain ki this is malicious this is mischievous we have nothing to do aur keval usme date change kar kar ke release karte hain humne press conference nahi kiya affidavit abhi jairam ramesh ji ne pura padha nahi aur subah 6 baje release kar diya ki mischievous hai are abhi to press conference hua hai सारे डॉक्यूमेंट तो हमने अभी दिखाए हैं जयराम रमेश जी आपसे नहीं हो पाएगा सोनिया जी को कहिए सोनिया जी वाज़ द ड्राइविंग फोर्स वी डू नॉट वांट अ जयराम रमेश टू आंसर विद अ पीस ऑफ पेपर वी वांट सोनिया जी टू आंसर सर देखिए पहला मैं उत्तर देता हूं जो आपका पहला प्रश्न था कांग्रेस पार्टी की सफाई को लेकर मैंने अभी अंग्रेजी में भी कहा मैं हिंदी में कहता हूं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी हर विषय पर यही उत्तर देती है कि ये दबाव की राजनीति हो रही है एसआईटी दबाव में काम कर रही है दो हफ्ते पहले जब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जजमेंट दिया सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा कीप द पॉट बॉइलिंग फॉर अल्टीरियर डिजाइन षड्यंत्री पूरे इस षड्यंत्र में शामिल थे तो क्या ये सुप्रीम कोर्ट दबाव में काम कर रही थी कांग्रेस क्या कहना चाहती ये पूरा देश दबाव में काम करता है कोई दबाव में काम नहीं करता है आज सोनिया जी और कांग्रेस पार्टी दबाव में है क्योंकि आज वो धरे गए हैं आज वो पकड़े गए हैं और आज उनको उत्तर देना पड़ेगा जहां तक अहमद पटेल जी का सवाल है देखिए मैंने बहुत संवेदनशीलता के साथ कहा उनकी आत्मा को शांति मिले यह अटैक अहमद पटेल पर नहीं है क्योंकि अहमद पटेल तो केवल एक पोलिटिकल एडवाइजर थे ही वॉज जस्ट अ पॉन हु वॉज यूज इन देंड्स ऑफ सोनिया गांधी वो तो केवल एक माध्यम थे षड्यंत्री तो सोनिया गांधी है उत्तर सोनिया जी को देना पड़ेगा हम अहमद पटेल जी की परिवार का सम्मान करते हुए उनसे कोई उत्तर नहीं मांग रहे हैं उत्तर सोनिया जी को देना पड़ेगा जिनके एडवाइजर अहमद पटेल थे ही वॉज जस्ट दी दी मीडियम थ्रू विच सोनिया गांधी एक्टेड सर 
See, I have answered the two parts to it. As far as the last part is concerned, why no action against people? I have categorically stated and I have thanked the Bharatiya Janata Party that this party does not believe in vengeance. This party believes in fact. This party believes in patience. This party believes in the judicial process. This party believes in institutions which have been laid down by our forefathers constitutionally. Hamnun ko vishwas hai ek judicial prakriya ke upar aur is liye kuch bhi kaam hum badle ki bhao ke saath nahi karte hai. Aur is liye kisi ko ghar se ghasit ke lana, kisi ko giraftar karna, aisi prakriya ho pe hum vishwas nahi karte hai. Hum debate, discussion, investigation, courts, judicial process in me vishwas karte hai. All right, so uh, that was the BJP spokesperson, Sambit Patra, uh, bringing out some shocking revelations that have now surfaced in uh, the affidavit lodged by the SIT, the Gujarat SIT team, that all categorically states that it was at the late Ahmed Patel's behest that Tista Setalwad and uh, along with others, that is uh, former DGP, Shri Kumar and uh, former IPS officer Sanjeev Bhatt were plotting to destabilize the situation in Gujarat. He also shared some other shocking revelations which have been uh, mentioned in the affidavit and those were a series of meetings that took place between the late Ahmad Patel and Tista Setalwad also uh, claiming that an amount of 30 lakh rupees was given to Tista Setalwad by Ahmad Patel and uh, how the court, he also referred to the court or court's order which also mentions how there was misappropriation of funds by Tista Setalwad. The money was apparently used uh, to buy shoes, wine and to invest in holiday resorts, tickets for holiday resorts. Uh, some shocking revelations coming over there. Uh, the battle has already begun as Congress has already stepped in. Remember earlier in the morning, Congress MP Jairam Ramesh rubbished the claims made in the affidavit. He called them as manufactured. At the same time, the late Ahmed Patel's daughter, Mumtaz Patel, has also refuted these claims made in the affidavit, saying that uh, there's no point in making these claims as far as as far as a deceased person is concerned, he is not even here to defend. But of course, Sambit Patra remains very, very. All right. Uh, I'm also joined in by Arun Dhanta, our correspondent, uh, who's been tracking the story very closely. Arun, if you could bring us the key takeaways of that very crucial affidavit that has been shared by Sambit Patra. <laughs> Well, that's right. This is the official response of uh, the BJP and uh, Sambit Patra uh, was saying, in fact, blaming uh, Sonia Gandhi for uh, the entire efforts which were made to destabilize the government there in Gujarat right after the train burning in 2002. Uh, Sambit Patra said that uh, Ahmed Patel was just used by Sonia Gandhi uh, to pass on to money to Tista Sitalwar and also all these efforts which she made along with uh, her team there in Gujarat that was happening at the behest of uh, uh, Sonia Gandhi. She uh, not only wanted to destroy the image of uh, then Chief Minister, Prime, uh, Chief Minister Narendra Modi but also to defame the reputation of uh, the state, state of Gujarat uh, and that's something which comes under the larger uh, narrative which they wanted to build from that time onward. So it is very, very significant uh, as the story uh, was published in various uh, newspapers and was also seen on television. This is after the SIT's uh, affidavit which they filed in the civil sessions court in Gujarat where they very categorically mentioned that how things transpired, how Tista Sitalwar along with the uh, other her associates try to destabilize, defame uh, the government of Gujarat and how she was uh, paid 
by Ahmad Patel. That's something which they have used in the affidavit which they had filed before the court there in Gujarat. And this uh, is something which is very, very significant. We have got the reactions from the uh, right. Congress party. They right. are saying Stay with that, us, Arun. Uh, Stay with us because I'm also joined agenda, in by uh, Pallavi Ghosh, our senior political editor who's joining me on the phone line. Uh, Pallavi, you just heard uh, those details that were shared uh, by Arun as well. Uh, we've heard what the BJP has to say. Some sensational and shocking claims have emerged in that affidavit that's been filed by the Gujarat SIT. Having said that, the Congress is also now up in arms in its defence. Could you tell us the kind of defence that is now being put forward by the likes of Jairam Ramesh, not to forget the comments that have come in uh, by uh, the late Ahmed Patel's daughter, Mumtaz Patel, as well? There has been a, a detailed statement which has been, of course, issued by Jairam Ramesh on behalf of the party and very categorically, you know, he makes the point that, first of all, Ahmed Patel's uh, these allegations against him are baseless and also shouldn't the chief minister also be held responsible for the 2022 riots is what Congress is talking about and this is, this is a cover-up operation and it's also time. It's interesting that this controversy has also now arose because there are two important developments which are going to take place very uh, very closely. One, of course, is the parliament session where I'm sure this is going to be made a huge issue against the Congress party as well and the answers will be asked from them whether Sonia Gandhi herself was involved. Second, of course, there are those Gujarat elections where the Congress party is now trying to make yet another pitch into coming back to power or at least improving its performance. So this whole concept of Ahmed Patel helping out Tisa Settlewards and how awards are being bought and how there was a systematic campaign and frankly speaking there was a clean sheet which has been given by the courts to the Prime Minister on this issue. Also there has always been this criticism by the BJP and the Congress that these are always baseless allegations and you know there was an attempt to malign the image of the Prime Minister even when he was a Chief Minister of Gujarat. Right. Uh, I'm going to take one more question from Arun Dhata. Uh, Arun, I believe it was you who posed the question uh, to Sambit Patra about why no action has been taken so far uh, against uh, Sitalwad and of course the others as well. That includes uh, um, Sanjeev Bhatt and Shri Kumar as well. Uh, what was the response that you received? Well... That's right, that's right. Uh, and, uh, you know, Sambit Patra was very much uh, categorical. He said, uh, you know, we don't interfere into the proceedings of the courts. You know, when court uh, gave that judgment, uh, when court, uh, uh, you know, uh, took the case forward, then only uh, the process will start. So there is nothing which we can do in this regard. But of course, uh, you know, uh, we had seen the responses not only from the Congress party, uh, Jairam Ramesh, but also the daughter of uh, Ahmed Patel. She's saying that uh, they're not even sparing the departed soul and using his name. Uh, you know, to defame the opposition. But the fact here is that uh, the SIT report, which has been submitted before the court, it has a uh, very uh, scathing uh, attack uh, on, on Ahmed Patel and Tista Sitilwar. And in fact, uh, you know, in last couple of days, we had seen uh, the, the, the arrest of Tista Sitilwar right after uh, Supreme Court giving clean shit to Prime Minister. And also, Sambit Patra read out uh, those remarks, very scathing remarks coming from the Supreme Court, where they said there was a uh, you know, larger conspiracy uh, to, to destabilize or to defame uh, the state of uh, Gujarat. And therefore, the action should be taken against those people. And, uh, you know, thereafter, we had seen the action against Tista Sitalwar. And now, you know, this uh, special investigation team filing their affidavit before the court, uh, you know, saying all these things is something which is very, very significant. And perhaps uh, uh, BJP will not let this issue to die down. We'll see more and more details, uh, you know, emerging out of, uh, up out of the investigation. All right, I'm going to request you, Arun and Pallavi, to stay with us as I'm also joined in by Congress leader Rahman Khan, who's joining me on the broadcast right now. Mr. Khan, what would you like to say uh, as far as those shocking revelations that have been shared by Sambit Patra during the press conference today? He's, of course, referred to that affidavit and also the order of the Apex Court. Your reactions? Sanjay Sam, Patra is famous for giving false news and then telling something uh, which is irresponsible statement is known for it. But Mr. Khan, no, but Mr. Khan, Ahmad, Mr. Ahmad, Mr. Khan, Khan, I'm just going to highlight or uh, correct you for one fact over there. This, these, these are not concocted details by Sambit Patra himself. We are talking about an affidavit that has been filed by the Gujarat SIT. No, that is correct. Gujarat SIT is now... Uh, the BJP is in power and uh, the, then also BJP was in power. So SIT is constituted uh, on, on, uh, uh, on uh, this, this, this uh, 
and now that uh, Ahmed Patel is no more, you can make any allegation because there is no body to find out. Because uh, I, the style, uh, they will now allege that she will be meeting all Congress leaders. They were trying to uh, bring down the government. All sorts of stories can be uh, related to people Mr. who are Khan, not, uh, Sambit Patra also had one thing to say that whenever there are shocking revelations that surface uh, regarding the Congress party, he used the Hindi word dabao. That that is always used uh, by your party in your defense that... Uh, that all this is being done, it's manufactured, ki wo dabao hamare no, no, liye, dabao I, I don't, shab, I don't, ki hum dabao me kaam kar rahe No, no, Sandeep Patra is known, the country knows how uh, Sandeep Patra twist in the uh, in whole uh, allegation. So I don't give any importance to what Sandeep Patra says that because Mr. Ahmed Patel is not, uh, is, uh, not alive, I will not, uh, it, is, it is not right to take, he should have taken this when Ahmed Patel was alive, when they had a central government and they also a uh, state government. Mr. Khan, respect, there are the post, shocking respect, revelations. The there, are, there are shocking revelations shared in the affidavit. It states a series of meetings no, no, that I, took... Yes. No, no, hear me out, sir. Hear me out. Let me complete my mm. question and then I'd like you to answer that. First of all, it states a, a series of meetings that took place uh, between the late Mr. Ahmed Patel and between Tisa Setalwad and that an amount of an initial installment being 5 lakh was given to her and later 25 lakh rupees. So we are looking at a financial uh, sort of uh, transaction of worth 20, uh, 30 lakh rupees, which is a huge amount, sir. And do you not think that it is now time no, for how, your party how, who, to... Who, who has... No, no, no. Listen, shouldn't your party has, now be organizing a press conference? Uh, should we expect yes, your party to be doing it, one right it, now? When, when this Ahmed Patel is no more, it is not... It, it, it is a, a... The allegation is false in my view. Because Tista Settleboard was meeting uh, several people as a social worker. We don't know, uh, but um, Ahmad Patel he has given 30 lakhs to her and all that. There is no evidence whatsoever. It is just an appearance. Anybody can find any options. Well, the point is that if there is no evidence, and there should be uh, there should be more concrete claims no, being no, made it is by not your an party. There. Against the party. It is not the allegation of the party, it is allegation put in the individual. Amat Patel, apart from that, is an individual. All right. Should we I, also I, I, expect uh, a reaction coming in from the party, like uh, the BJP just held a press conference? Should I, we I, now? I, 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 will not be, I will not be able to. I am not a party spokesman. All right. Mr. Stay Khan, stay there. with us because I am also joined in by Shahzad Poonawala of the BJP. Shahzad, uh, how would you react? Uh, to the fact that these claims are now being rubbished by the Congress party. They are saying uh, that these are claims being fabricated by the BJP and that the SIT has been uh, formed at the behest of the BJP and these claims are also being made by the SIT report at the behest of the Bhatia Janta Party. Today it's been seen that Congress party Mukhya Kirdar is Ahmed Patel Sonia Gandhi Sutradhar and Tista Setalwad was the Kalaka. And she was the Kalaka using the PIL, not public interest litigation, but Paisa interest litigation, Priyodit interest litigation, political interest litigation, to target the Chief Minister of Gujarat, to target the people of Gujarat, and to defame the state of Gujarat. And it has been put out in black and white before a court of law. And not just the SIT of Gujarat the police, but it is in fact the Supreme Court. And what did the Supreme Court say? For 16 years, the pot was kept boiling for ulterior design. What did the Supreme Court say? That there was an ulterior design by which Zakia Jaffe was tutored. That there was certain nexus of officers and you know, people like Tisa Sitalwad and others who for their ulterior designs had created this controversy against Gujarat CM and against the people of Gujarat. And there is not just one Supreme Court order. In the Supreme Court order in Sanjeev Bhatt's case also they spoke about the entire cottage industry of propaganda through all these NGOs and others trying to defame the people of Gujarat. So therefore the Congress party today must answer that were Padmas and money being given only to target the people of Gujarat in the name of Gujarat rights, they have to come out clean. And because you know Congress party used this, they used it and said Moska, Swadagar, they were behind this entire propaganda for 16, 18 years. So today they have to answer rather than answering direct questions. They are trying to take cover fire 
by making these kinds of lame excuses. All right, Shahzad Punawala there. Thank, many thanks uh, to Mr. Rahman Khan and Shahzad both for joining this discussion. And with that, it's time to slip into a short break. All right, uh, we'll take a break, but that's the latest we're bringing to you. Some very serious charges being put forward by the BJP government at the moment, uh, referring to the SIT uh, affidavit that has been filed by the Gujarat SIT team uh, making some shocking revelations. Remember, as our political editor Pallavi Ghosh was pointing out, uh, the timing of these revelations going to prove very costly for the Congress party considering Gujarat is all set for assembly election. I'm also joined in uh, by the late Mr. Ahmed Patel's daughter, Mumtaz Patel, on the phone line. Uh, Mumtaz, what would you like to say to these shocking revelations that have now surfaced in the affidavit filed by the Gujarat SIT? Uh, they are referring to a series of meetings that took place between your father and Tista Setalwad and that uh, cash amount of 30 lakh rupees was also involved. How would you like to react to that? Yeah, hello. So just exactly what you said, allegations now. Why didn't these allegations come even up till two years ago when he was alive? All right. It's not as if the investigations hadn't been going on for many years, and uh, uh, he's uh, some—I mean, someone whose name you can't ignore, which is why today he's uh, in the SIT report, and that is why you are uh, doing these stories today. But uh, when he was alive, and this government has been in power for eight years, and uh, in Gujarat for more than 35 years, I'm sure he could have been uh, taken up on this and prosecuted much before. Mumtaz, why now? Mumtaz, why six are you months also the Gujarat election? Are you also going to refute uh, the the court, the apex court's order? The Supreme Court has also talked about uh, uh, conscious efforts being made as far as misappropriation funds are concerned for personal pleasure and for personal comfort. That is also uh, something that was referred to by the BJP spokesperson today during the press conference. I'm not in a position to comment on that. That is a separate matter altogether. No, but, it, but the SIT follows uh, what after what of the course, apex court had to say in whatever, its order right whatever okay but I, I, as a family member i'm saying whatever little bit that i read in the sit report it mentions the name of my father in the first or second paragraph later and it says first installment what happens to the other installments like it, it, it's uh, such a big conspiracy to uh, bring down the government or defame the uh, prime minister now and uh, it mentions uh, other politicians who are the other politicians why are no names taken for them why only Mr. Ahmed Patel? Because today you want to use his name after his death to malign the opposition. All right, Congress MP. He's not, he's, right. he's not here to defend himself. So it's of, of course, becomes very easy. Mumtaz, Congress MP uh, Jairam Ramesh uh, today earlier in the day said that uh, these are manufactured claims, uh, that these charges are manufactured. Do you agree with him? No comments on that, please. It's it's obviously in court right now. There's an investigation going on. So I'm not in the position because I'm not even aware of the, the entire details of the case. But as a daughter, I'm highly uh, upset and disappointed that uh, you're uh, they're uh, using my father's name uh, today. And uh, I mean, using it as a breaking news uh, to malign the opposition when he's not here to defend himself. And since he's not here to defend himself, do you not think that the onus now lies on uh, uh, the Congress party and its president to whom he was the political advisor back then? Of to course, defend him? I totally have. No, I have faith in the party to stand by my father. All right. Would you want them to now organize a press conference and address these claims that have been made by the Bharatiya Janata Party? From whatever that I know, I think that's going to happen in the next 15-20 uh, minutes. All right. Were you aware so of Were you aware of Tista Setalwad's uh, connections with your father back then? No, I know the time that I it's know being who, referred to. I know who she is, and uh, like I've said earlier, also my father's uh, home residence and office has been open to one and all. I mean, <laughs> there's you can walk in and walk out anytime. I'm sure the media is very well aware of it. So I um, have uh, I, I have never been involved in his work, so I really can't comment on it, and I have no uh, idea about. But you're his, not aware uh, of any such meetings that took place between your father and no, uh, Tista no. Sitalwar. 
No, no. I have, I've, I've not, I've, I've been, uh, this was 20, 25 years ago. We were much younger, probably maybe away at college or university also. I have no clue. Also, uh, how do you view this uh, in terms of timing? There's much being said that uh, the timing of uh, this entire revelation is very critical considering the state of Gujarat is all set for assembly election. Uh, would you also uh, uh, question the timing? Of course. So do you not remember 2017, there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father. And I don't know where the terrorist is right now. And like I said, uh, in tw the election before that, uh, there was ISI and uh, some conspiracy, conspiracy in Pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister. So every election, uh, some controversy comes up. I, I wouldn't be surprised if 2027 20 also has Ahmed Patel turning up into some controversy again. All right, Mumtaz, uh, thank you for sharing all those details and giving us your precious time. That was uh, Mumtaz Patel, the daughter of the late Mr. Ahmed Patel, uh, speaking exclusively with CNN News 18. And with that, it's time to take a short break as news and updates continue on the other side. Okay, some people really Anybody? killed it in Fitur, uh, I have to say. Some people really did a fabulous job in Fitur. That's because I was in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a some people, I meant you. Yeah, only. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're very kind. <laughs> Even though some people had a great sequence where they fell down tables and chair, all of chair. that. Chairs, yes. yeah. Like a no whole array of chairs. So I feel like the director was a little partial to someone, but you still. New you words you've learned today. <laughs> array of chairs and all. <laughs> <laughs> what is that app? Grammarly. 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 <laughs> so despite that, you know, Vani, you really shone. Yeah. And I have to say that. I was just flying high in you know, like <laughs> taking those leaps and jumps and all. Very, very yeah. beautiful, very ethereal, I have to say. And uh, Ranbir, now this is a pan-India film. I want to say. Who said it's a pan-India film? It's a pan-India film, right? Who no, it's releasing so many languages, not pan-India. It's pan-world. Pan-world, okay. Pan-universe. Pan pan-universe, multi-universe. Multi-universe. Did you manifest this pan-Indian film? You signed on 2018, let's tell everyone. Two, three people who don't know, he signed on 2018 before KGF. Two, three people means only two, three people watch your show. <laughs> no, yeah. Two, three people who don't who know don't that know. you. Achha, okay. They all know your trivia. Na? Achha, we all achha. know trivia about you. Point. We all know too much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's your question though? <laughs> that you signed this on before, before KGF, before Bahubali. No, no, before RRR, after Bahubali. So were you prescient? Did you know that this is the kind of film Indian audiences are going to like? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't write the film. So, hmm. it, so actually he was someone who hmm. was, I guess, above. Ekta and me. Yeah. Ekta and him were uh, ahead of the curve. Uh, but at the time that it came to me, it seemed very exciting. Hmm. Uh, you know, I felt uh, very lucky to be offered a film like this. Um, yeah, and here we are sitting about the film. Very excited. 22nd July, the film releases, and the two, three people who don't know that uh, you know it's an action entertainer. It's uh, it's a badass um, entertaining film, uh -huh. and uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. Don't try to wrap up just yet. You go yeah. Pichhe se bolna. No, no one is saying. No one is saying. Lyo is just. He's playing with so a psyche all along. He does. Is, is it? Does he do this on sets as well? No, do you no, guys no. feel very demotivated when you go home? See, I have realized you're demotivated. What is happening? I wake up motivated. Okay, okay. And then you meet Ranbir. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. See, you're he's, a, you're, he's been you're demotivating me since morning. Every time you do interviews, you always ask the musty core questions. So when I'm allowed to do musty, okay. why only you're allowed? That's fine, that's Correct. fine, that's fine. But on, don't pretend on sets. You're like very disciplined, very sweet, introvert. Have you been on my set? You're very, you're very disciplined on your set. I don't know, ask them. Am no. I? Yeah. He's he? very disciplined. No, generally, he's genuinely. Oh, no, it's, it's a, it's a shocking transition that happens. Okay, fine. It's a yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I asked. Good, okay. good to know. She doesn't <laughs> want to receive the answer, but she's, yeah, she's leaving <laughs> yeah, with okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And as in, as a co-star, he's okay. Yeah, just about okay. Just about okay. He manages. Yeah. Manages. Yeah. We manage. Yeah. We jail of him. We sail through. You, <laughs> I, I know you. Did Kathak for this film? You prepared ah, for this yeah, film? Yeah, I did. Did what Few about sessions. you? You prepared? I um, prepared falling down in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> for six months, I was no. just falling down chairs. It's a larger than life role, and yeah. you're so real. No, no. Not let's. Too I mean, real. on a on a serious note, yeah, yeah, this film came with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because it's a part which I've never done in my life, hmm. in the say, 15 year career that I've had. Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shamshera and Obali. Uh, it was a a, a a character which was filled with angst. It's something which angst doesn't naturally come from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karan's one um, 
requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film he said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry do you get angry mm -hmm. and when I told him no I don't get angry his face had broken he's like you don't get angry so how are you going to do this part uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here I had mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst yeah. and I think that really helped Welcome back. You're watching CNN News 18 with me, Akanksha Swaroop. Uh, let's start our top story with Bundelkhand. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is all set to inaugurate the 296-kilometer-long Bundelkhand Expressway today, built at a cost of 14,850 crore rupees. This expressway comprises four railway over bridges, 14 major bridges across eight rivers, 293 minor bridges and 224 underpasses. This four-lane expressway will pass through seven Uttar Pradesh districts. The foundation stone for this expressway was laid by Prime Minister in the year 2020 and the project has been completed in a span of just 28 months. Let's bring you a report now. If you start from Delhi, take the Yamuna Expressway to Agra and then the Agra Lucknow Expressway. This is the point if you travel about 300 kilometers from Delhi where you hit this interchange from where the new Bundelkhand Expressway starts. This project is being inaugurated by the Prime Minister on the July the 16th. The 296 kilometer long expressway is special in many aspects, especially because it's going to connect seven districts of Bundelkhand considered the most poorest and the backward regions of the state. What does Uttar Pradesh achieve by building this new expressway to Bundelkhand? We will travel on this expressway, speak to locals and try and find out how key this expressway will be to the industrial development and for the social development of the region of Bundelkhand. When we speak of expressways, we speak of expressways from Lucknow, to Delhi, connectivity, a Bundelkhand expressway. How do you think that is significant in this aspect right now? This is an expressway which has been made in record time. The Honorable Prime Minister laid the foundation stone on the 29th of February 2020, mm -hmm. leap year, and we have leaped forward and uh, we have been able to construct this road in around 28, 29 months. Mm -hmm. And that again is an achievement. <laughs> With UP building a record number of expressways, a big concern in the expressway projects is also the safety of the project, ensuring that there are less accidents and vehicles traveling at high speed don't collide or don't overturn, which has been one of the cases we have seen in many other expressway projects. Now in the Bundelkhand expressway project, safety seems to be paramount. Some additional security features have been added. We can see here there are crash beams on both sides of the middle median. So this means that cars basically can't come, can't overturn from one side of the median to the other side. Our business is our dhawa, Ram Janaki. People will increase, it means that they will come quickly and people will come here, the turning point is here, it's our hotel, it's our service road. So people will come, it will increase, our business will increase, our business will increase. It will be a lot of work. We can also take our money, और कहीं ले जाके बेच सकते हैं इससे सड़क का बनने से सर एक तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो चीज इसमें फायदा होगा टूरिज्म में ट्रैवल अबाउट 120 किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम द आगरा लखनऊ एक्सप्रेसवे फ्रॉम द टर्न फ्रॉम वेयर द बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे स्टार्ट्स एंड हियर यू कम दिस इज जलान डिस्ट्रिक्ट वी हैव अनदर 173 किलोमीटर्स टू गो इन अ जर्नी टू एंड चित्रकूट बट जलान इज द डिस्ट्रिक्ट वेयर प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल बी अराइविंग ऑन जुलाई द 16th टू इनॉग्रेट दिस एक्सप्रेसवे अ ह्यूज टेंट हैज बीन सेट अप अ ह्यूज पब्लिक मीटिंग विल हैपन अ बिट फार फ्रॉम हियर वेयर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल बी एड्रेसिंग द पीपल दिस अमन शर्मा रिपोर्टिंग विद अर्पित फ्रॉम जलान फॉर सीएनएन न्यूज़ 18 And groin. <laughs> Is that so? And can you believe it all started from borrowing just 10 rupees? <laughs> I don't think that's true. I, in fact, I feel really bad. I apologize to all people listening. It's very insensitive to make jokes like this when some country is really, a country we all love. It's a beautiful country, with, you know, just really nice if you visited, unfortunately. So we're all feeling bad. So, sir, please give us some good news. Ah, good news. Yes, this is a very good news, I must tell you. 
my nephew Sunil is getting engaged and the girl is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful girl. This guy, I tell you, not that kind of good news about Sri Lanka. For Sri Lanka, is there any, any hope, any good news? Aha, Sri Lanka. There are few scenarios which may work. <laughs> are you just looking for out here or you really have some thoughts? Such as, such as? Uh, such as sublet to the global powerhouse like China, <laughs> US, Canada. You know, I thought of that. We were discussing this offline and I think that's a problem because you become a vassal state, no? You become yes men of the big power. Exactly. Then they could make Bahubali, <laughs> Pushpa, Arara, KGF. In Sinhalis as another option. But it's a country of just 22 million. I mean, they can't get India-like figures from sales of tickets and all, yaar. They can, if the citizens watch the movie again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> Are you on something, Mr. Aryu Kutti? Because, I mean, you, they told me number one in Asia, number one political informed person of India and Asia. Any other options? Yes, yes, yes. Make Sri Lanka the next IPL team. <laughs> no, come on, come on, that's not possible. I mean, can they be evaluated at 28 billion by 2027? I mean, come on, one team. I, I must tell you, you have a point. There is a last option, but I'm scared to say it. <laughs> no, 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 come on, please. This is the spot where you must tell us what you have because we want to give hope to people. Please, please tell me. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for me. <laughs> dangerous? Why would it be dangerous for you? We're not even involved. I mean, we're in India. That's Sri Lanka. Come on, no one watches this show. I'll tell you honestly. <laughs> you just say what you want. We just abuse sometimes and nobody complains. Go on. On that point, you have convinced me. You have convinced me. <laughs> oh, okay. Go on, please. Go on. There is uh, one place where billions of rupees are available. <laughs> billions of rupees available? Kaan pe? Kaan pe, sir? No questions asked. <laughs> what? I, I I can't believe this, really. No money trail, no auditing, no question of accountability. No question of accountability? What is this? Listen carefully. PM Relief Fund. <laughs> what? Uh, India's or Sri Lanka's? Ah, you are right. <laughs> Let's just say, you see this? <laughs> Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> वैसे थोड़ा मुश्किल है आपको इसमें इमेजिन करना आपके पास जब ये फिल्म आई सो दिस इज अ फिल्म बेस्ड इन बिहार अ गर्ल फ्रॉम बिहार हुज लिविंग इन पंजाब उसकी जिंदगी में ड्रग्स आते हैं उसकी जिंदगी में परेशानियां आती हैं बाप का साया उसके सर से हट जाता है बहुत तरह की परेशानियों से वो अकेली लड़की गुजरती है और वो भी इत्तेफाक से बड़ी बहन है घर की व्हाट वाज योर रिएक्शन टू द स्क्रिप्ट इट्स स्टिल अ फन फिल्म ओके ओके अम एंड देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ ह्यूमर एंड देयर इज Expressway, Expressway. All right, so uh, we are bringing you live visuals of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi Thank just you. now arriving in Jalaun. Remember, elaborate preparations have been made today in Jalaun for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit, which we, which is the much-awaited visit to inaugurate the 296-kilometer Bundelkhand Expressway. As you can see, the Prime Minister is also accompanied along with the UP CM Adityanath. And elaborate preparations have been made. The, the Prime Minister is currently visiting this exhibition that is showcasing those models of uh, the seven districts that have been displayed in sand. They talk about the seven, they, they display the seven districts that the Bundelkhand Expressway will be going through. Remember, it's a 296 kilometer expressway, uh, is also supposed to connect various districts of Uttar Pradesh and uh, help economically help those uh, districts, those backward districts of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, for more details, I'm joined in by Aman Sharma, who's uh, visited the Bundelkhand Expressway and is also going to highlight uh, how this expressway could just be a huge feather in the cap as far as achievements are concerned for the ruling party. Uh, Aman, please take us through all those details. Uh, the Bundelkhand Expressway marks another milestone, I think, in UP's expressway journey. Uh, the, in, uh, under the Yogi government, first the Bundelkhand Expressway uh, is being inaugurated now. Before this, the Purvanchal Expressway was inaugurated. 
the foundation stones of both the Purvanchal Expressway and the Bundelkhand Expressway were laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and now he's inaugurating the, both these projects. So in a way, this is also BJP's strong pitch, which PM also made in Deoghar when he was there in Jharkhand uh, last week, when he said that this project ka hum shilinyas karte hain, uska udghatan bhi hum karte hain. So the, in a way, the center's pitch. Second important point about this particular project also is that this project has been built in just 28 months, eight months ahead of schedule. It has been also been built with a cost saving of nearly rupees 1200 crores, which was saved during e-tendering. Land was acquired for this project very quickly within, within like 60 days. So in a way, the, the project going to one of the most backward socially economic parameters, the, state, the region which has been struggling for all these years, Bundelkhand. So an expressway being built to such a region is also very significant. It props up the chances of development, the chances of industrialization, the, the center's first big defense corridor is coming up in this region and the Bundelkhand Expressway will be a lifeline for the said defense corridor which is coming up for the defense industry which will come and set, set up shop here. So in a way the expressway not just provides connectivity, mm. it is more than that, it is bringing socio-economic benefits to the region, it will generate jobs, two industrial corridors will be built along the expressway all these things combined, I think that is what the PM may address on his, uh, when he speaks that how this express is actually going to change the lives of the region of Bundelkhand. Right. Also, Aman, give us a sense of how the connectivity of this entire expressway, how it uh, extends from Chitrakoot, also finally merges with the Agra Lucknow Expressway. And of course, as you rightly mentioned, this is not just going to be about connectivity, but also will be uh, yielding or rather leading to thousands of jobs as well. See, uh, the idea also is that UPUC is a large state. That's what the CM Yogi Ratnana since he came to power is that you have to connect the state because it's a huge state, it's a state, state of a size of many countries. So now with this latest expressway, if you start from Delhi, you take the Noida, Greater Noida Expressway, you take the Yamuna Expressway till Agra, then you take the Lucknow, Agra, Agra Lucknow Expressway and about 130 kilometers down from the Agra Lucknow Expressway, the new Bundelkhand Expressway is branching out from there and going right till Chitrakoot, passing through seven districts, a 296 kilometer new expressway. So in a way from Delhi to Chitrakoot, you can reach in about seven hours. This was, you know, unfathomable some years back. Similarly, the Purvanchal Expressway is similarly connected. You can go from Delhi till Ghazipur in about eight to nine hours. So this kind of connectivity, you know, fast road connectivity encourages more travel, encourages more uh, business environment, encourages more industry. That is what UP is trying that, you know, through fast roads, people can reach quicker and this leads to other kinds of economic development in the regions and that is why this whole network is being built and not just this, the PM has also laid the foundation stone of the Ganga Expressway, the 596 kilometer long expressway from Meerut to Prayagraj, which the UP government is planning to complete before the next comb in 2025. So a huge network of expressways is being constructed in Uttar Pradesh, totaling uh, what we were told, nearly 13 expressways in UP would be ready, totaling 3,200 kilometers by 2025. This expressway network will be larger than the expressway network in most countries. So that is the level of uh, development and the level of connectivity that UP is aiming for and Bundelkhand Expressway is one important addition towards that aim. Also, Aman, uh, we've, uh, I'm also learning that work on the creation of an industrial corridor has also begun. This is uh, a corridor that we are looking at in uh, Banda and Jalaun districts as well. Uh, this is going to be next to the expressway, right? Yes, they, there are two industrial corridors which are planned along the, the Bundelkhand Expressway in Banda and Jalaun. Uh, industries will come up, concessions will be given to them to come and set up shop there. You know, that will create lots of employment in this region, which has also been a problem in Bundelkhand. That unemployment is an issue, so employment will be generated. And apart from that, the, the center's defense corridor, the center had two years ago announced two defense corridors in the country, one in UP and the other in Tamil Nadu. The UP corridor of the defense corridor is, is alongside the Bundelkhand Expressway. So in a way, the Bundelkhand Expressway will also act as a backbone for the upcoming defense corridor, when big defense companies come and set up industries here, the expressway will help them to transfer raw materials and finished goods right up to Delhi. So in this way, this expressway was required because this expressway will also be a lifeline for the upcoming defense corridor.
All right, stay with us, uh, Aman, because I'm also joined in uh, by Pranshu, who's uh, currently in Jalon and uh, very closely tracking the Prime Minister's visit over there. Pranshu, take us through what's the latest over there. Uh, we can see that uh, Prime Minister Modi has arrived. Elaborate arrangements have been made. Much excitement on the ground level. Take us through all those details. Yes, uh, that's right. Just talk about that, the Prime Minister... Accompanied by UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has arrived here on the stage, and very soon uh, he'll be uh, inaugurating 597 kilometers long of the Bodhgaya Expressway. Now, before coming up to the stage, he has also uh, taken a time to visit the pavilion where the stand inscription of the entire Bodhgaya Expressway was made. Uh, he has also seen the ODOP gallery, trying to get familiarised with. Uh, the products, the various, uh, you know, uh, that they're selling products from various districts on Bundelkhan. And after that, he's on the stage. Clearly, there's a lot of excitement. And the series are very often decent. See, what's the uh, expressway? That is not due to Uttar Pradesh. But Bundelkhan expressway holds a lot of importance in a new sense because Bundelkhan uh, uh, has been a region which has been often in use for all wrong reasons. It might be uh, you know, the exodus of migrant laborers, the drought conditions, the cattle runners. With the crowd. For after a long time, Bundel Sun is in news for very positive reasons, and Bundel Sun Expressway is one big uh, that that big moment. So, whereby people in this region do seriously hope that you know the Bundel Sun would be pulled out of the, the privacy, the poverty, the, the backwardness, right. and would be put on the fast track road, uh, road of growth. And Bundel Sun Expressway probably is the road to that uh, you know that. Uh, brighter days which people of Mughal can to hope for. As Aman was saying, that the expressway has been built, it can boost the tourism sector in bigger practice in Jhansi. It can also be give, give an easy access to better markets for farmers in Mughal and with, with, uh, with different corridor, uh, you know, that the project has and when it takes shape and the industries come here. Really, they will, they will mean the more employment, more generation, and also a uh, larger uh, access to the market for the industry that will be set up here via the Bundel and Express Frame. In that, that sense, the, the road uh, at the Bundel and Express Frame map. The beginning of the growth story for the Bundel Khan. That is what the people uh, who have come here from across various countries who have been there for Prime Minister to end up becomes a lot of people who have for them. They are even waiting for Prime Minister to make an operate a breakfast and then make his keynote as well. Right, Pranshu, uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, that this is a huge feat for not just the BJP government at the centre, but also for the Yogi government in the state, considering this is uh, a project that has been completed way ahead of time and uh, was just bega it just began in the year 2020. And let's not forget that it was also, the pandemic also hit during that time. Uh, and irrespective of the pandemic, they've managed to uh, complete this project uh, much ahead of time. Yes, that's right. In fact, you know, barring just a few patches off left on a certain section of the expressway, uh, most the entire expressway is almost just now has been completed. And completed in well before time. So remember, the expressway foundation alone was made by Prime Minister in February 2020. From March that year itself, the, the nature of this time of Corona pandemic, and we all saw that how lockdown happened, how there was a, uh, you know, the movement of migrant laborers happening across, economy growth and digital. But facing all those odds, the expressway has been completed. Uh, you know, at the fast pace, the work never stopped even during the Corona pandemic, the years 2020-2021, when the entire nation was facing the heat because of the Corona pandemic. So in that sense, Yogi Khatrashat term really, you know, needs to be credited was to ensure that the express rate construction didn't, didn't come to a halt despite all odds because of the corona pandemic. And, 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 and actually it has been completed well in time. It was to be completed in 36 months, three years. It has almost been completed in almost 28 months at the cost of around 14,800 crores. So, you know, even the initial cost estimates have also been met quite handsomely. Right. Uh, and you know, the government says that we have said around 1,000 crores on its construction. So in that sense, Exercise really comes in as a, uh, you know, whether in cap, what you can come in. We can clearly say that it's entirely our project. We, uh, we thought of it, we had executed it, and we have executed it with flying colors with the lesser budget as well within the time. Right. Uh, stay with us, Pranchu, as Aman is also joining us from the newsroom. Uh, Aman, if I may uh, ask you,
to take us through all those districts that the expressway will be passing through since you've uh, covered it extensively and you were on the road tracking this expressway very closely. Uh, we are looking at these uh, areas like Banda, Mahoba, Hamirpur, Jalon, Aurayar. These are all districts that so far were tagged or rather labelled as backward districts. How crucial is this now going to be for the economic development uh, overall as far as uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh is concerned as Pranshu uh, also highlighted this is a huge state that we are looking at all right let's lokarpan karyakram mein aapke kar kamlon se yah expressway ka lokarpan hone ja raha hai main bundel khand ke pravesh dwar maharshi ved abhyas ki is pavan sadhana sthali jalon mein उत्तर प्रदेश के सभी 25 करोड़ वासियों की ओर से आपका हृदय से स्वागत करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं आज के इस कार्यक्रम में मंच पर उपस्थित प्रदेश सरकार में मेरे वरिष्ठ सहयोगी उप मुख्यमंत्री द्वय श्री केशव प्रसाद मौर्य जी श्री ब्रजेश पाठक जी उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार के जल शक्ति मंत्री और प्रदेश अध्यक्ष श्री स्वतंत्र देव सिंह जी केंद्रीय मंत्री श्री भानु प्रताप वर्मा जी प्रदेश के औद्योगिक विकास के मंत्री श्री नंद गोपाल नंदी जी प्रदेश सरकार के मंत्री श्री जसवंत सैनी जी रामकेश निषाद जी मनोहर लाल मन्नू कोरी जी मान्य सांसद सेनराग शर्मा जी कुंवर पुष्पेंद्र सिंह चंदेल जी डॉक्टर राम शंकर कठेरिया जी सीआर के सिंह पटेल जी जिला पंचायत अध्यक्ष और पूर्व सांसद जालोन सेन घनश्याम अनुरागी जी सभी माननीय जनप्रतिनिधिगण और बुंदेलखंड के कोने कोने से आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के स्वागत के लिए उमड़े हुए सभी बुंदेलखंड के मेरे भाइयों बहनों आज बुंदेलखंड के लिए एक ऐतिहासिक दिन है जब आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के कर कमलों से दो किलोमीटर लंबे इस एक्सप्रेस वे का उद्घाटन होने जा रहा है मैं इस अवसर पर पूरे बुंदेलखंड वासियों को हृदय से बधाई देता हूं कि उनके विकास की धूरी बनने जा रही बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे यह बुंदेलखंड की अर्थव्यवस्था को और उत्तर प्रदेश की अर्थव्यवस्था को एक नया आयाम प्रदान करेगा आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी का जालौन में आगमन अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण है करामोदय से राष्ट्रोदय की उस परिकल्पना को साकार करने वाली आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने पूरे देश के अंदर ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में ग्रामीण आवास से जुड़ी हुई उन तमाम समस्याओं के समाधान के लिए प्रधानमंत्री स्वामित्व तो योजना घरौनी के जिस पवित्र कार्यक्रम का शुभारंभ किया था उत्तर प्रदेश का जालौन पहला जनपद है जहां शत प्रतिशत लोगों को ग्रामीण आवासीय अभिलेख उपलब्ध करवा दिए गए हैं और उसमें घरौनी उपलब्ध होने के बाद आवासीय समस्या जो ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में जहां दबंगों के द्वारा और अन्य कारणों से एक गरीब को मालिकाना हक नहीं मिल पाता था वह जिस पुस्तैनी जमीन पर अपना मकान बनाता था उस मकान से जुड़े हुए कागजात न होने के कारण आर्थिक विकास के मार्ग को और अच्छे ढंग से आगे बढ़ाने में जो उसके सामने चुनौती होती थी आपने उस चुनौती को ग्रामीण अभि 
आवासीय अभिलेख के माध्यम से हर एक गरीब को उसके आवासीय अभिलेख उपलब्ध कराने के जिस कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ाया था वह जालोन ने सबसे पहले उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर पूरा किया है इसके लिए जालोन वासियों की ओर से भी मैं आपका हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूं स्वागत करता हूं यह बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे फरवरी 2020 में आपने चित्रकूट जनपद में इसका भूमि पूजन का कार्यक्रम संपन्न किया था पूरी दुनिया विगत 28 महीनों से कोरोना महामारी की मार भी झेल रहा है कोरोना महामारी के बावजूद समयबद्ध ढंग से इस कार्यक्रम को करते हुए 28 माह के अंदर दो किलोमीटर लंबे फोर लेन के जिसे सिक्स लेन तक विस्तारित किया जा सकता इस एक्सप्रेसवे का लोकार्पण अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण है आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव वर्ष में बुंदेलखंड को 2014 के बाद विकास जन सुविधाओं और इस ऑफ लिविंग की उन सभी सुविधाओं का लाभ मिलता हुआ दिखाई दिया है जिसके लिए दशकों यहां के लोगों ने आजादी के बाद प्रतीक्षा की आज हर बुंदेलखंड वासी आपके नेतृत्व में गौरव और गरिमा महसूस करता है क्योंकि बुंदेलखंड के विकास को एक नई ऊंचाई तक पहुंचाने के लिए और प्रत्येक उत्तर प्रदेश वासी और भारतवासी के जीवन में परिवर्तन लाने के लिए आपने जो दिशा पूरे देश को दी उत्तर प्रदेश उसी को अंगीकार करते हुए आगे बढ़ रहा है आज आजादी का जो अमृत महोत्सव पूरा देश मना रहा है बुंदेलखंड सूखे की समस्या का समाधान करने की ओर तेजी के साथ आगे बढ़ा है आपने 2021 में अर्जुन सहायक परियोजना का लोकार्पण किया था ऐसे लगभग डेढ़ दर्जन से अधिक सिंचाई की परियोजनाएं उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना के माध्यम से पूरी हुई जिसके माध्यम से 21 लाख हेक्टेयर से अधिक भूमि को अतिरिक्त सिंचाई की सुविधा प्राप्त हुई और अब जब यह देश आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहा है तब बुंदेलखंड हर घर नल की योजना को पूरा करने की ओर अग्रसर है बहुत शीघ्र बुंदेलखंड के हर घर में शुद्ध पेयजल उपलब्ध कराने के आपके महत्वाकांक्षी अभियान को भी हमें पूरा करने में मदद मिल जाएगी आज के इस अवसर पर जब बुंदेलखंड के एक्सप्रेसवे का आप लोकार्पण करने जा रहे हैं या बुंदेलखंड वे एक्सप्रेसवे चित्रकूट बांदा महोबा हमीरपुर जालौन और आई और होते हुए इटावा में लखनऊ आगरा एक्सप्रेसवे के साथ जुड़ेगा बुंदेलखंड की कनेक्टिविटी को तो ये आसान करेगा ही चित्रकूट से दिल्ली की दूरी मात्र छह साढ़े छह घंटे के अंदर पूरा करने के साथ ही बुंदेलखंड के नौजवानों को और यहां के प्लान की बहुत बड़ी समस्या का समाधान के लिए आपने जो डिफेंस कॉरिडोर के दो महत्वपूर्ण नोड झांसी और चित्रकूट में दिए हैं ये दोनों नोड को भी मजबूती के साथ आगे बढ़ाने में हमें मदद मिलेगी मैं एक बार फिर से बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे के लोकार्पण कार्यक्रम के अवसर पर मैं संपूर्ण बुंदेलखंड वासियों की ओर से उत्तर प्रदेश वासियों की ओर से आपका आभार व्यक्त करते हुए आपका हृदय से स्वागत करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं धन्यवाद जय हिंद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद माननीय मुख्यमंत्री महोदय और अब वो क्षण आ गया है जिसकी प्रतीक्षा हम सबको बहुत देर से है लोकार्पण का समय मैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री महोदय से अनुरोध करूंगा कि कृपया वे बटन दबाकर बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे का लोकार्पण करें माननीय 
प्रधानमंत्री महोदय बुंदेलखंड तप तपस्या और तेज की पावन भूमि है बुंदेलखंड की धरती यहाँ का कण कण कर रहा है विकास का अभिनंदन 2014 के बाद माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने निवेश और ईज ऑफ लिविंग के लिए जरूरी कनेक्टिविटी को प्राथमिकता देते हुए पूरे देश में आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के तेज गति से निर्माण पर जोर दिया उत्तर प्रदेश इस विकास यात्रा का अहम भागीदार है वर्ष 2017 के बाद यूपी में डबल इंजन की सरकार और माननीय मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी ने सड़क रेल मेट्रो एयर सहित सभी क्षेत्रों में विकास को प्राथमिकता दी है जिसका परिणाम है उत्तर प्रदेश की एक्सप्रेस प्रदेश के रूप में बनी नई पहचान पूर्वांचल की तस्वीर बदलने वाला पूर्वांचल एक्सप्रेस वे प्रदेश का सबसे लंबा एक्सप्रेस वे गंगा एक्सप्रेस वे गोरखपुर लिंक एक्सप्रेस वे और अब विकास की डबल रफ्तार की इसी कड़ी में जुड़ रहा है बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे करीब चौदह करोड़ रूपए की लागत ऐसी दो किलोमीटर लंबा बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस रिकॉर्ड अट्ठाईस महीनों में बनकर तैयार है जिसका शिलान्यास प्रधानमंत्री जी द्वारा ही किया गया था आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के अवसर पर माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी द्वारा बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे का राष्ट्र को समर्पण इस पावन धरती के वीर वीरांगनाओं की पीढ़ियों का सम्मान है जिनकी शौर्य गाथाएं आज भी बच्चों को सुनाई जाती है 2014 से पहले बुंदेलखंड में पानी की कमी के कारण जनजीवन बुरी तरह से प्रभावित था पर अर्जुन सहायक सिंचाई परियोजना और जल जीवन मिशन के तहत यहां सिंचाई और पीने के पानी की सहज उपलब्धता हो रही है खेती से जुड़ी संभावनाएं बढ़ी हैं लोगों का जीवन आसान हुआ है एक्सप्रेस वे ऐसी किसान अब अपने उपज और दुग्ध उत्पादों को बड़े बाजारों तक सरलता ऐसी पहुँचा पाएंगे बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस इस पूरे क्षेत्र के जन में बदलाव लाएगा और यहाँ के सामान्य जन को बड़े बड़े शहरों जैसी सुविधाओं से जोड़ेगा अब चित्रकूट बांदा महोबा हमीरपुर जालौन और के लोग भी आधुनिक एक्सप्रेस वे पर चलेंगे आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर यहाँ नए उद्योगों नए उद्यमों को विकसित करेगा जिससे रोजगार के हजारों अवसर तैयार होंगे बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे ऐसी उत्तर प्रदेश डिफेंस कॉरिडोर को भी गति मिलने वाली है बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे के आगरा लखनऊ एक्सप्रेस वे और यमुना एक्सप्रेस वे के साथ लिंक होने से स्थानीय एमएसएमई सेक्टर के लिए नए मौके बनेंगे और क्षेत्र के आर्थिक विकास को बल मिलेगा एक्सप्रेस वे के दोनों ओर राइट ऑफ वे बनाया गया है जहां सोलर एनर्जी से ऊर्जा मिलेगी एक्सप्रेस वे पर प्रवेश व निकासी के लिए इंटरचेंज तथा जरूरी जगहों पर आर पुल और अंडरपास बनाए गए हैं साथ ही जन सुविधा केंद्र और स्थानीय लोगों के लिए सर्विस रोड भी बनाए गए हैं एक्सप्रेस वे के आसपास सघन वृक्षारोपण होगा इन्वेस्टमेंट पार्क और कारखाने बनेंगे बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे ऐसी पूरे यूपी और पूरे देश की आकांक्षाओं को एक्सप्रेस रफ्तार मिलेगी और ये पावन भूमि नए भारत के सपनों का एक अहम केंद्र बनकर उभरेगी नए भारत का नया उत्तर प्रदेश बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्रधानमंत्री महोदय आपने आज बुंदेलखंड की संपन्नता के द्वार खोल दिए भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में उत्तर प्रदेश की विशेष रूपरेखा को आपने हमेशा सराहा है अभी हाल में जी सेवन की बैठक में आपने अनेक राष्ट्राध्यक्षों को उत्तर प्रदेश के ओडीओपी के उत्पाद भेंट कर इस तथ्य को पुनः पुनः रेखांकित किया है उत्तर प्रदेश आपका आभारी है कि आज बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे के लोकार्पण समारोह में आप पधारे हैं अब मैं देश के यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री माननीय श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को उनके उद्बोधन के लिए आमंत्रित करता हूं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री महोदय भारत माता की भारत माता की भारत माता की बुंदेलखंड की जावेद व्यास की जन्मस्थली 
और हमारी बाई सा महारानी लक्ष्मी बाई जी की जा धरती पे हमें बैर बैर बीरा अबे को अवसर मिलो हमें बहुत ही प्रसन्नता नमस्कार उत्तर प्रदेश के लोकप्रिय मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी यूपी के उप मुख्यमंत्री श्री केशव प्रसाद मौर्य जी उप मुख्यमंत्री श्री ब्रजेश पाठक जी केंद्रीय मंत्रिमंडल के मेरे सहयोगी और इसी क्षेत्र के वासी श्री भानु प्रताप सिंह जी यूपी सरकार के मंत्रीगण सांसदगण विधायकगण अन्य जनप्रतिनिधि और बुंदेलखंड के मेरे प्यारे बहनों और भाइयों यूपी के लोगों को बुंदेलखंड के सभी बहनों भाइयों को आधुनिक बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे इसके लिए बहुत बहुत बधाई बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं ये एक्सप्रेस वे बुंदेलखंड की गौरवशाली परंपरा को समर्पित है जिस धरती ने अनगिनत सुरवीर पैदा किए जहां के खून में भारत भक्ति बहती है जहां के बेटे बेटियों के पराक्रम और परिश्रम ने हमेशा देश का नाम रोशन किया है उस बुंदेलखंड की धरती को आज एक्सप्रेस वे का ये उपहार देते हुए उत्तर प्रदेश के सांसद के नाते उत्तर प्रदेश के जनप्रतिनिधि के नाते मुझे विशेष खुशी मिल रही है भाइयों और बहनों मैं दशकों से उत्तर प्रदेश आता जाता रहा यूपी के आशीर्वाद से पिछले आठ साल से देश का प्रधान सेवक के रूप में कार्य करने का आप सब ने जिम्मा दिया है लेकिन मैंने हमेशा देखा था अगर उत्तर प्रदेश में दो महत्वपूर्ण चीजें जोड़ दी जाए उसकी कमी को अगर पूरा कर दिया जाए तो उत्तर प्रदेश चुनौतियों को चुनौती देने की बहुत बड़ी ताकत के साथ खड़ा हो जाएगा पहला मुद्दा था यहां की खराब कानून व्यवस्था जब मैं पहले की बात कर रहा हूं क्या हाल था आप जानते हैं और दूसरी हालत थी हर प्रकार से खराब कनेक्टिविटी आज उत्तर प्रदेश के लोगों ने मिलकर योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के नेतृत्व में उत्तर प्रदेश की पूरी तस्वीर बदल दी है योगी जी के नेतृत्व वाली सरकार में कानून व्यवस्था भी सुधरी है और कनेक्टिविटी भी तेज से सुधर रही है
आजादी के बाद के सात दशकों में यूपी में यातायात के आधुनिक साधनों के लिए जितना काम हुआ उससे ज्यादा काम आज हो रहा है मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूं हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है आंखों के सामने दिख रहा है कि नहीं दिख रहा है बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे से चित्रकूट से दिल्ली की दूरी करीब करीब तीन चार घंटे कम हुई है लेकिन इसका लाभ इससे भी कई गुना ज्यादा है ये एक्सप्रेसवे यहां सिर्फ वाहनों को गति देगा इतना ही नहीं है बल्कि ये पूरे बुंदेलखंड की औद्योगिक प्रगति को भी गति देने वाला है इसके दोनों तरफ इस एक्सप्रेस हाईवे के दोनों तरफ अनेक उद्योग स्थापित होने वाले हैं यहां भंडारण की सुविधाएं कोल्ड स्टोरेज की सुविधाएं बनने वाली है बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे की वजह से इस क्षेत्र में कृषि आधारित उद्योग लगाने बहुत आसान हो जाएंगे खेत में पैदा होने वाली उपज को नए बाजारों में पहुंचाना आसान होगा बुंदेलखंड में बन रहे डिफेंस कॉरिडोर को भी इससे बहुत मदद मिलेगी यानी ये एक्सप्रेसवे बुंदेलखंड के कोने कोने को विकास स्वरोजगार और नए अवसरों भी जोड़ने वाला है साथियों एक समय था जब माना जाता था कि यातायात के आधुनिक साधनों पर पहला अधिकार सिर्फ बड़े बड़े शहरों का ही है मुंबई हो चेन्नई हो कोलकाता हो बेंगलुरु हो हैदराबाद हो दिल्ली हो सब कुछ उनको ही मिले लेकिन अब सरकार की बदली है मिजाज भी बदला है और ये मोदी है ये योगी है अब उस पुरानी सोच को छोड़कर उसे पीछे रखकर हम एक नए तरीके से आगे बढ़ रहे हैं साल 2017 के बाद से उत्तर प्रदेश में कनेक्टिविटी के जो काम शुरू हुए उनमें बड़े शहरों के साथ ही छोटे शहरों को भी उतनी ही प्राथमिकता दी गई है ये बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेसवे चित्रकूट बांदा हमीरपुर महोबा जालौन औरैया और इटावा से होकर गुजर रहा है पूर्वांचल एक्सप्रेसवे लखनऊ के साथ ही बाराबंकी अमेठी सुल्तानपुर अयोध्या अंबेडकर नगर आजमगढ़ मऊ और गाजीपुर से गुजर रहा है गोरखपुर लिंक एक्सप्रेस अंबेडकर नगर संत कबीर नगर और आजमगढ़ को जोड़ता है गंगा एक्सप्रेस वे मेरठ हापुड़ बुलंदशहर अमरोहा संभल बदायूं शाहजहांपुर हरदोई उन्नाव रायबरेली प्रतापगढ़ और प्रयागराज को जोड़ने का काम करेगा
दिखता है कितनी बड़ी ताकत पैदा हो रही है उत्तर प्रदेश का हर कोना नए सपनों को लेकर के नए संकल्पों को लेकर के अब तेज गति से दौड़ने के लिए तैयार हो चुका है और यही तो सबका साथ है सबका विकास है न कोई पीछे छूटे सब मिलकर आगे बढ़े इसी दिशा में डबल इंजन की सरकार लगातार काम कर रही है यूपी के छोटे छोटे जिले हवाई सेवा से जुड़े इसके लिए भी तेजी से काम किया जा रहा है बीते कुछ समय में प्रयागराज गाजियाबाद में नए एयरपोर्ट टर्मिनल बनाए गए कुशीनगर में नए एयरपोर्ट के साथ ही नोएडा के जेवर में एक और इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट पर काम चल रहा है भविष्य में यूपी के कई और शहरों को वहां भी हवाई रूट से जोड़ने की कोशिश हो रही है ऐसी सुविधाओं से पर्यटन उद्योग को भी बहुत बल मिलता है और मैं जब आज यहां मंच पर आ रहा था तो उसके पहले मैं इस बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे का प्रेजेंटेशन देख रहा था एक मॉड्यूल लगाया वो देख रहा था और मैंने देखा कि इस एक्सप्रेस वे के बगल में जो जो स्थान है वहां पर कई सारे किले हैं सिर्फ झांसी का ही किला है ऐसा नहीं कई सारे किले आप में से जो विदेश की दुनिया जानते हो क्योंकि मालूम होगा यूरोप के कई देश ऐसे हैं जहां पर किले देखने का एक बहुत बड़ा टूरिज्म उद्योग चलता है और दुनिया के लोग पुराने किले देखने के लिए आते हैं आज बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस वे बनने के बाद मैं योगी जी की सरकार को कहूंगा कि आप भी इन किलों के देखने के लिए एक शानदार टूरिज्म सर्किट बनाइए दुनिया भर के टूरिस्ट यहां आए और मेरे बुंदेलखंड की ताकत को देखे इतना ही नहीं मैं आज योगी जी से आग्रह एक और करूंगा आप उत्तर प्रदेश के नौजवानों के लिए इस बार जब ठंड की सीजन शुरू हो जाए मौसम ठंडी का शुरू हो जाए तो किले चढ़ने की स्पर्धा आयोजित कीजिए और परम बगरागत रास्ते से नहीं कठिन से कठिन रास्ता तय कीजिए और नौजवान को बुलाइए कौन जल्दी से जल्दी चढ़ता है कौन किले पर सवार होता है आप देखना उत्तर प्रदेश के हजारों नौजवान इस स्पर्धा में जुड़ने के लिए आ जाएंगे और उसके कारण बुंदेलखंड में लोग आएंगे रात को मुकाम करेंगे कुछ खर्चा करेंगे रोजी रोटी के लिए बहुत बड़ी ताकत खड़ी हो जाएगी साथियों एक एक्सप्रेस वे कितने प्रकार के कामों को अवसर का जन्म दे देता है साथियों डबल इंजीनियर की सरकार में आज यूपी जिस तरह आधुनिक हो रहा है ये वाकई अभूतपूर्व है जिस यूपी में जरा याद रखना दोस्तों मैं जो कह रहा हूं याद रखोगे याद रखोगे जरा हाथ ऊपर करके बताओ याद रखोगे पक्का याद रखोगे बार बार लोगों को बताओगे तो याद रखिए जिस यूपी में सरयू नहर परियोजना का पूरा होने में 
चालीस साल लगे जिस यूपी में गोरखपुर फर्टिलाइजर प्लांट तीस साल से बंद पड़ा था जिस यूपी में अर्जुन डैम परियोजना को पूरा होने में बारह साल लगे जिस यूपी में अमेठी राइफल कारखाना सिर्फ एक बोर्ड लगा करके पड़ा हुआ था जिस यूपी में रायबरेली रेल कोच फैक्ट्री डिब्बे नहीं बनाती थी सिर्फ डब्बों का रंग रोगान करके काम चला रही थी उस यूपी में अब इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर इतनी गंभीरता से काम हो रहा है कि उसने अच्छे अच्छे राज्यों को भी पीछे छोड़ दिया है दोस्तों पूरे देश में अब यूपी की पहचान बदल रही है आपको गर्व होता है कि नहीं होता है आज यूपी का नाम रोशन हो रहा है आपको गर्व हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है आप पूरा हिंदुस्तान यूपी के प्रति बड़े अच्छे भाव से देख रहा है आपको आनंद हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है और साथियों बात सिर्फ हाईवे या एयरवे की नहीं है शिक्षा का क्षेत्र हो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का क्षेत्र हो खेती किसानी हो यूपी हर क्षेत्र में आगे बढ़ रहा है पहले की सरकार के समय यूपी में हर साल ये भी याद रखना रखोगे रखोगे जरा हाथ ऊपर करके बताओ रखोगे पहले की सरकार के समय यूपी में हर साल औसतन 50 किलोमीटर रेल लाइन का दोहरीकरण होता था कितना कितने किलोमीटर कितने किलोमीटर 50 पहले हमारे आने से पहले रेलवे का दोहरीकरण 50 किलोमीटर मेरे उत्तर प्रदेश के नौजवानों भविष्य कैसे करता है देखिए आज औसतन 200 किलोमीटर का काम हो रहा है 200 किलोमीटर रोल लाइन का दोहरीकरण 2014 से पहले यूपी में सिर्फ ग्यारह हजार कॉमन सर्विस सेंटर थे जरा आंकड़ा याद रखिए कितने कितने ग्यारह हजार आज यूपी में एक लाख तीस हजार से ज्यादा कॉमन सर्विस सेंटर काम कर रहे हैं ये आंकड़ा याद रखोगे एक समय में यूपी में सिर्फ बारह मेडिकल कॉलेज हुआ करते थे आंकड़ा याद रहा कितने मेडिकल कॉलेज जरा जोर से बताइए कितने बारह मेडिकल कॉलेज आज यूपी में पैंतीस से ज्यादा मेडिकल कॉलेज है और चौदह नए मेडिकल कॉलेज पर काम चल रहा है मतलब कहा चौदह और कहा पचास भाई और बहनों विकास की जिस धारा पर आज देश चल रहा है उसके मूल में दो प्रमुख पहलू हैं एक है इरादा और दूसरा है मर्यादा हम देश के वर्तमान के लिए नई सुविधाएं नहीं गढ़ रहे बल्कि देश का भविष्य भी गढ़ रहे हैं पीएम गतिशक्ति नेशनल मास्टर प्लान के जरिए हम 21वीं सदी के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के निर्माण में जुटे हैं 
और साथियों विकास के लिए हमारा सेवा भाव ऐसा है कि हम समय की मर्यादा को टूटने नहीं देते हम समय की मर्यादा का पालन कैसे करते हैं इसके अनगिनत उदाहरण हमारे इसी उत्तर प्रदेश में है काशी में विश्वनाथ धाम के सुंदरीकरण का काम हमारी सरकार ने शुरू किया और हमारी ही सरकार ने इसे पूरा करके दिखाया गोरखपुर एम्स का शिलान्यास भी हमारी सरकार ने किया और उसका लोकार्पण भी इसी सरकार में हुआ दिल्ली मेरठ एक्सप्रेसवे का शिलान्यास भी हमारी सरकार ने किया और उसका लोकार्पण भी हमारी सरकार में हुआ बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस भी इसी का उदाहरण है इसका काम अगले साल फरवरी में पूरा होना था लेकिन ये सात आठ महीने पहले ही सेवा के लिए तैयार है मेरे दोस्त और कोरोना की परिस्थितियों के बावजूद कितनी कठिनाइयां हैं हर परिवार जानता है इन कठिनाइयों के बीच भी हमने इस काम को समय से पहले पूरा किया है ऐसे ही काम से हर देशवासी को एहसास होता है कि जिस भावना से उसने अपना वोट दिया उसका सही मायने में सम्मान हो रहा है सदुपयोग हो रहा है मैं इसके लिए योगी जी और उनकी टीम को बधाई देता साथियों जब मैं कोई रोड का उद्घाटन करता हूं कोई अस्पताल का उद्घाटन करता हूं कोई कारखाने का उद्घाटन करता हूं तो मेरे दिल में एक ही भाव होता है कि मैं जिन मतदाताओं ने यह सरकार बनाई है उनको सम्मान देता हूं और देश के सभी मतदाताओं को सुविधा देता हूं साथियों आज पूरी दुनिया भारत को बहुत आशा से देख रही है हम अपनी आजादी के पचहत्तर वर्ष का पर्व मना रहा है अगले 25 वर्षों में भारत जिस ऊंचाई पर होगा उसका रोड मैप बना रहे हैं और आज जब मैं बुंदेलखंड की धरती पे आया हूं झांसी की रानी लक्ष्मीबाई के इलाके में आया हूं यहां से इस वीर भूमि से मैं हिंदुस्तान के छह लाख से भी ज्यादा गांव के लोगों को करबद्ध प्रार्थना करता हूं कि आज जो हम आजादी का पर्व मना रहे हैं इसके लिए सैकड़ों वर्षों तक हमारे पूर्वजों ने लड़ाई लड़ी है बलिदान दिए हैं यातनाएं जेली है जब पचहत्तर वर्ष है हमारा दायित्व बनता है अभी से योजना बनाए आने वाला एक महीना 15 अगस्त तक हर गांव में अनेक कार्यक्रम हो गांव मिलकर के याद कार्यक्रम करे आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव बनाने की योजना बनाए वीरों को याद करे बलिदानियों को याद करे स्वतंत्र सेनानियों को याद करे हर गांव में नया संकल्प लेने का एक वातावरण बने ये मैं सब देशवासियों को आज इस वीरों की भूमि से प्रार्थना करता साथियों आज भारत में ऐसा कोई भी काम नहीं होना चाहिए जिसका आधार वर्तमान की आकांक्षा और भारत के बेहतर भविष्य से जुड़ा हुआ नौ
हम कोई भी फैसला ले कोई भी निर्णय ले कोई भी नीति बनाए इसके पीछे सबसे बड़ी सोच यही होनी चाहिए कि इससे देश का विकास और तेज होगा हर वो बात जिससे देश को नुकसान होता है देश का विकास प्रभावित होता है उससे हमें हमेशा हमेशा दूर रखना है आजादी के पचहत्तर वर्षों बाद भारत को विकास का ये सबसे बेहतरीन मौका मिला है हमें इस मौके को गवाना नहीं है हमें इस कालखंड में देश का ज्यादा से ज्यादा विकास करके उसे नई ऊंचाई पर पहुंचा रहा है नया भारत बना रहा है साथियों नए भारत के सामने एक ऐसी चुनौती भी है जिस पर अगर अभी ध्यान नहीं दिया गया तो भारत के युवाओं का आज की पीढ़ी का बहुत नुकसान हो सकता है आपका आज गुमराह हो जाएगा और आपकी आने वाली कल अंधेरे में सिमट जाएगी दोस्तों इसलिए अभी से जागना जरूरी है आजकल हमारे देश में मुफ्त की रेवड़ी बांटकर वोट बटोरने का कल्चर लाने की भरसक कोशिश हो रही है ये रेवड़ी कल्चर देश के विकास के लिए बहुत घातक है इस रेवड़ी कल्चर से देश के लोगों को और खास करके मेरे युवाओं को बहुत सावधान रहने की जरूरत है रेवड़ी कल्चर वाले कभी आपके लिए नए एक्सप्रेसवे नहीं बनाएंगे नए एयरपोर्ट या डिफेंस कॉरिडोर नहीं बनवाएंगे रेवड़ी कल्चर वालों को लगता है कि जनता जनार्दन को मुफ्त की रेवड़ी बांटकर उन्हें खरीद लेंगे हमें मिलकर उनकी सोच को हराना है रेवड़ी कल्चर को देश की राजनीति से हटाना है साथियों रेवड़ी कल्चर से अलग हम देश में रोड बनाकर नए रेल रूट बनाकर लोगों की आकांक्षाओं को पूरा करने का काम कर रहे हैं हम गरीबों के लिए करोड़ों पक्के घर बना रहे हैं दशकों से अधूरी सिंचाई परियोजनाएं पूरी कर रहे हैं छोटे बड़े अनेक डैम बना रहे हैं नए नए बिजली के कारखाने लगवा रहे हैं ताकि गरीब का किसान का जीवन आसान बने और मेरे देश के नौजवानों का आने वाला भविष्य अंधकार में डूब न जाए साथियों इस काम में मेहनत पड़ती है दिन रात खटना पड़ता है खुद को जनता की सेवा के लिए समर्पित करना होता है मुझे खुशी है कि देश में जहां भी हमारी डबल इंजन की सरकार है वो विकास के लिए इतनी मेहनत कर रही है डबल इंजन की सरकार मुफ्त की रेवड़ी बांटने का शॉर्टकट नहीं अपना रही डबल इंजन की सरकार मेहनत करके राज्य के भविष्य को बेहतर बनाने में जुटी है और साथियों आज मैं आपको एक और बात भी कहूंगा देश का संतुलित विकास 
छोटे शहरों और गांवों में भी आधुनिक सुविधाओं का पहुंचना ये काम भी एक प्रकार से सच्चे अर्थ में सामाजिक न्याय का काम है जिस पूर्वी भारत के लोगों को जिस बुंदेलखंड के लोगों को दशकों तक सुविधाओं से वंचित रखा गया आज जब वहां आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बन रहा है तो ये सामाजिक न्याय भी हो रहा है यूपी के जिन जिलों को पिछड़ा मानकर उन्हें अपने हाल पर छोड़ दिया गया था वहां जब विकास हो रहा है तो ये भी एक तरह का सामाजिक न्याय है गांव गांव को सड़कों से जोड़ने के लिए तेजी से काम करना घर घर तक रसोई गैस का कनेक्शन पहुंचाना गरीब को पक्के घर की सुविधा देना घर घर में शौचालय बनाना ये सारे काम भी सामाजिक न्याय को ही मजबूत करने वाले कदम है बुंदेलखंड के लोगों को भी हमारी सरकार के सामाजिक न्याय भरे कार्यों से बहुत लाभ हो रहा है भाइयों और बहनों बुंदेलखंड की एक और चुनौती को कम करने के लिए हमारी सरकार निरंतर काम कर रही है हर घर तक पाइप से पानी पहुंचाने के लिए हम जल जीवन मिशन पर काम कर रहे हैं इस मिशन के तहत बुंदेलखंड के लाखों परिवारों को पानी का कनेक्शन दिया जा चुका है इसका बहुत बड़ा लाभ हमारी माताओं हमारी बहनों को हुआ है उनके जीवन में मुश्किलें कम हुई है हम बुंदेलखंड में नदियों के पानी को ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों तक पहुंचाने के लिए लगातार प्रयास कर रहे हैं रतौली बांध परियोजना भावनी बांध परियोजना और मजगांव चिल्ली स्प्रिंकलर सिंचाई परियोजना ऐसे ही प्रयासों का परिणाम है केन बेतवा लिंक प्रोजेक्ट के लिए हजारों करोड़ रुपए स्वीकृत किए जा चुके हैं इससे बुंदेलखंड के बहुत बड़े हिस्से का जीवन बदलने वाला है साथियों मेरा बुंदेलखंड के साथियों से एक और आग्रह भी है आजादी के 75 वर्ष के अवसर पर देश के अमृत सरोवरों के निर्माण का संकल्प लिया है बुंदेलखंड के हर जिले में भी 75 अमृत सरोवर बनाए जाएंगे ये जल सुरक्षा के लिए आने वाली पीढ़ियों के लिए बहुत बड़ा काम हो रहा है मैं आज आप सभी से कहूंगा कि इस नेक काम में मदद के लिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा संख्या में आगे आए अमृत सरोवर के लिए गांव गांव कार सेवा का अभियान चलना चाहिए भाई और बहनों बुंदेलखंड के विकास में बहुत बड़ी ताकत यहां के कुटीर उद्योगों की भी है आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए हमारी सरकार द्वारा इस कुटीर परंपरा पर भी बल दिया जा रहा है मेक इन इंडिया भारत की इसी कुटीर परंपरा से सशक्त होने वाला है छोटे प्रयासों से कैसे बड़ा प्रभाव पड़ रहा है इसका एक उदाहरण मैं आज आपको भी और देशवासियों को देना चाहता हूं साथियों भारत हर साल करोड़ों रुपए के खिलौने दुनिया के दूसरे देशों से मंगाता रहा है अब बताइए 
छोटे छोटे बच्चों के लिए छोटे छोटे खिलौने ये भी बाहर से लाए जाते थे जबकि भारत में खिलौने बनाना तो पारिवारिक और पारंपरिक उद्योग रहा पारिवारिक व्यवसाय रहा उसे देखते हुए मैंने भारत में खिलौना उद्योग को नए सिरे से काम करने का आग्रह किया लोगों से भी भारतीय खिलौनों को खरीदने की अपील की थी इतने कम समय में सरकार के स्तर पर जो काम करने जरूरी था वो भी हमने किया इन सब का नतीजा ये निकला कि आज और हर हिंदुस्तानी को गर्व होगा मेरे देश के लोग सच्ची बात को कैसे दिल से ले लेते हैं इसका ये उदाहरण है इस सब का नतीजा ये निकला कि आज विदेश से आने वाले खिलौनों की संख्या बहुत बड़ी मात्रा में कम हो गई है मैं देशवासियों का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं इतना ही नहीं भारत से अब बड़ी संख्या में खिलौने विदेश में जाने लगे इसका लाभ किसे मिला है खिलौने बनाने वाले हमारे ज्यादातर साथी गरीब परिवार है दलित परिवार है पिछड़े परिवार है आदिवासी परिवार है हमारी महिलाएं खिलौने बनाने के काम में जुड़ी रहती है इस उद्योग से हमारे इन सब लोगों को लाभ हुआ है झांसी चित्रकूट बुंदेलखंड में तो खिलौनों की बड़ी समृद्ध परंपरा रही है इन्हें भी डबल इंजन की सरकार द्वारा प्रोत्साहित किया जा रहा है साथियों सुरवीरों की धरती बुंदेलखंड के वीरों ने खेल के मैदान पर भी विजय पताका फहराई है देश के सबसे बड़े खेल सम्मान का नाम अब बुंदेलखंड के सपूत मेजर ध्यानचंद के नाम पर ही है ध्यानचंद जी ने जिस मेरठ में काफी समय गुजारा था वहां पर उनके नाम से एक स्पोर्ट यूनिवर्सिटी भी बनाई जा रही है कुछ समय पहले हमारी झांसी की ही एक बिटिया शैली सी ने भी कमाल करके दिखाया हमारे ही बुंदेलखंड की बेटी शैली सी ने लंबी कूद में नए नए रिकॉर्ड बनाने वाली शैली थी पिछले साल अंडर 20 वर्ल्ड एथलेटिक चैंपियनशिप में सिल्वर मेडल भी जीता है बुंदेलखंड ऐसी युवा प्रतिभाओं से भरा हुआ है यहां के युवाओं को आगे बढ़ने का खूब अवसर मिले यहां से पलायन रुके यहां आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बने इसी दिशा में हमारी सरकार काम कर रही है यूपी ऐसे ही सुशासन की नई पहचान को मजबूत करता रहे इसी कामना के साथ आप सभी को बुंदेलखंड एक्सप्रेस के लिए फिर से बहुत बहुत बधाई और फिर से याद कराता हूं पंद्रह अगस्त तक पूरा महीना हिंदुस्तान के हर घर में हर गांव में आजादी का महोत्सव मनना चाहिए शानदार मनना चाहिए आप सबको बहुत शुभकामनाएं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद पूरी ताकत से बोलिए भारत माता की भारत माता की भारत माता की बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद there you have it uh, indian prime minister narendra modi inaugurating uh, the much awaited bundelkhand expressway under the azadi ka amrit mahotsav which celebrates 75 years of indian independence much was said by the indian prime minister he highlighted the achievements not just of the government at the center but also of the yogi adityanath government in uttar pradesh highlighting the importance of development for one of the biggest states in the country he spoke about 
how much uh, his his own party has done as far as development in uh, Uttar Pradesh is concerned. He, of course, also spoke about uh, the importance of connectivity and how the Bundelkhand Expressway is going to prove economically uh, beneficial for all those districts which were so far labelled as backward. And with the inauguration of this expressway, uh, there will be greater industrialization opportunities now for the state of Uttar Pradesh. He also took pot shots at uh, the previous UPA government, talking about how they were only promoting ravidi culture, providing sweet treats to the youth of the country. And he also warned the youth of the country to not fall for that kind of uh, ravidi culture. For more details, let's also go across uh, to Pranchu. Our Uttar Pradesh uh, Bureau Chief, who's also been tracking this event very closely. Pranshu, uh, finally, the much awaited inauguration has taken place. A lot was spoken uh, by uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at this event. If you could take us through some key highlights of his speech. Pranshu, can you hear me? All right. We'll try and reconnect uh, with Pranchu, who has been uh, tracking this event very closely. But uh, that's the big uh, news right now. The Bundel Khand Expressway has been inaugurated. Remember, uh, this expressway is uh, over 296 kilometer long, and it's a four-lane expressway. It has the capacity be to be converted into a six-lane expressway as well. It extends from NH35 at Gonda village uh, and goes all the way. Uh, we'll try and connect with her, but uh, those are the latest visuals that we are bringing to you from Jalon, where uh, Prime Minister Modi has just inaugurated that massive Bundel Khand Expressway that connects seven districts of Uttar Pradesh. The foundation stone, remember, of this expressway was laid in the year 2020, and within a record period of 28 months, this expressway has been completed irrespective of the hurdles that were posed by the pandemic uh, that ha has actually uh, posed immense roadblocks for overall development in the country. But as far as this expressway is concerned, it has been completed in a record period of 28 months. For more details, we have Pranchu with us. Pranchu, if you could take us through all those key highlights of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech now that the inauguration has finally taken place. Yes, uh, that's right. The Prime Minister gave a very detailed, comprehensive speech. And uh, uh, as we had been getting our viewers since the uh, morning, you know, there was a focus on how the double engine growth uh, phenomena, the double engine Sarkar growth phenomena, that has worked, uh, you know, well for Uttar Pradesh. And that was something which Prime Minister also emphasized. Prime Minister clearly reminded the people of Uttar Pradesh that they should never forget that what sort of uh, uh, story was UP news for before 2017. And he clearly said that, you know, uh, UP was always known for two things. One, the lawlessness, and the second, the poor connectivity. And both these two aspects have seen a tremendous, a remarkable transformation uh, ever since uh, the, the UK government came to power here in Uttar Pradesh. And that's the reason why law and lawlessness has been, you know, worked upon. Uh, no more UP is said to be the state of a, a, a lawless state. Uh, there's also been a, a significant enhancement in the connectivity. It may be in terms of roads, it may be in terms of expressways, or it may be in terms of air connectivity. He cited the example of how the, the international airport at Jewel is coming up, and many other cities are getting uh, the air connectivity. So I think the Prime Minister has chosen this moment not just only to inaugurate Bundel Khan, but also to reaffirm the, the, his, his, his party and his government's commitment to the overall growth story of Uttar Pradesh, the growth that focuses not only on the mega cities. The Prime Minister clearly said, that, you know, for, for, for them, for the BJP, the growth is only not about the metropolitan cities, cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, or Kolkata, but about in, uh, ensuring development even in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. And that's the reason why region like Bundel Khand is under focus for the Bharti Janta Party government. So Prime Minister making a clarion call from the people out here that they should continue to keep faith in the government. He also used, you know, used the moment 
to 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 make this appeal that people should get away from the from the politics of freebies or the politics uh, of what he said as uh, um, the the freebie politics he said that you know the political parties who give freebies uh, will never give you airports will never give you expressway so i think in a sense that was also a message from the prime minister that in days to come people should be you know willing to uh, willing to uh, to be to be sacrificing the charm of freebies in india's politics so that the growth story could be ad addressed to and i think that was also a big bold message which came in from the prime minister right pranshu i'd also like to ask you about uh, how not just with this expressway but also through the prime minister's speech the focus or rather the spotlight has suddenly shifted over to uh, bundelkhand all those seven districts through which the expressway will be going through as as we were talking earlier they were labeled as backward districts still some time ago but now today as we heard the prime minister highlight the achievements of all those bundelis he not just referred to rani lakshmi bai he also referred to the achievements of shaili singh the long jump athlete uh, you know now the focus is suddenly on bundelkhand and all those districts and how he used that speech uh, to highlight uh, bundelkhand as as a prospective lucrative region in the state of uttar pradesh Yes, uh, you know that's why it is in Bundel Khand holds immense significance for Uttar Pradesh and UP being such a big state, uh, population of more than 25 crores uh, per crore people. So every region is a distinct region, and Bundel Khand in that sense was a very distinct region comprising of at least six to seven districts of Uttar Pradesh, 19 parliamentary constituencies, and this was a region which was all, always in news for you know all wrong reasons. So it might be the drought, it might be exodus of migrant laborers, it might be uh, the lack of job opportunities. That's the reason why Bundel Khand was all, always is seen as a region which has pulled down the entire real estate growth story and now with the expressway coming forth prime minister was very clear was very convinced that days to come would be about bundelkhand's growth story and he clearly recounted and narrated how he feels that bundelkhand expressway will be a gateway to new progress opportunities in the opportunities tourism opportunities right. uh, opportunities in terms of you know job employment to the local people out here and in that sense it clearly you know today's event marks in uh, the most likely right. a new beginning of a new story for the region of bundelkhand certainly a beginning of uh, a new story for the region of bundelkhand and for uttar pradesh as they said naya bharat ka naya uttar pradesh with that uh, let's move over to other news stories many thanks uh, pranshu for bringing in all those details now the gujarat special investigation team investigating the tista setalwat case has made a big claim saying that tista received the padma award for her attempts to conspire against the then narendra modi led government in the state the sit had earlier stated in an affidavit that tista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize by hook or crook the state government back in the year 2002 apart from this the sit claims that Congress veteran leader Ahmed Patel gave funds to Tista Setalwa to the tune of 30 lakh rupees to help her in her mission to destabilize the government. Now, the Congress has responded by calling the SIT's claims mischievous and now the BJP Sambit Patra has put the blame on Sonia Gandhi's shoulder saying that she is the real driving force and that she tried to destroy the then CM Narendra Modi via Ahmed Patel. Let's listen in to what the BJP spokesperson had to say. अहमद पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की उन्हें अपमानित और उन्हें किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और ये पूरे षड्यंत्र की रचयिता सोनिया गांधी है तीस लाख का पहला किस्त सोनिया गांधी जी ने तीसता शीतल वार्ड को दिया अहमद पटेल जी हमारे बीच में नहीं है अहमद पटेल जी ने तो केवल डिलीवर किया Sandeep Patra is famous for giving false news and then telling something uh, which is irresponsible. A statement is known for it. The BJP is in power, and uh, then also BJP was in power. So SIT is constituted uh, on, on, a, uh, on uh, this 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 stuff. And now that uh, Ahmed Patel is no more, you can make any allegation because there is no body to find out. You should have taken this. When Ahmed Patel was alive, the allegation is false in my view because Tista Settlewood was meeting uh, several people as a social worker. 
we don't know but um, ahmed patel he has given 30 lakhs to her and all that there is no evidence whatsoever it is just an appearance CNN News 18 also exclusively spoke to Ahmed Patel's daughter Mumtaz Patel on the controversy and the serious charges leveled against her father. Let's listen into what she has to say. My father's uh, home residence and office has been open to one and all. I mean, it is you can walk in and walk out any time. I'm sure the media is very well aware of it. So I um, have uh, I I have never been involved in his work, so I really can't comment on it. I have I've I've not I've I've been uh, this was 20 25 years ago. We were much younger, probably maybe away at college or university. Also, have no clue. Do you not remember 2017? There was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father, and I don't know where the terrorist is right now. And like I said, uh, in tw- the election before that, uh, there was ISI and uh, some conspiracy conspiracy in Pakistan. where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister so every election uh, some controversy comes up i i wouldn't be surprised if 2027 also has ahmed patel turning up into some controversy again all right let's try and contextualize these developments and for that i'm joined in by senior political editor pallavi uh, ghosh who's on the phone line with us pallavi uh, we've already discussed uh, how the timing of these claims could just prove very costly for the congress party we've heard what jairam ramesh had to say he's called these uh, of course fabricated claims but is that enough and how now the congress party needs to do a lot of answering I mean, I mean, the Congress Party has already done a press conference, and a series of statements have been out. And you know, there are two things that they are suggesting. One, of course, is the fact that uh, there is a parliament session which is round the corner, and it's taken you so many years now to rake up this issue. I mean, you have been in power, so why didn't you carry on your investigations then? Second, elections in Gujarat is also very much there, uh, so you know, it's going to be later this year. So the insinuation coming in from the Congress Party is that you're timing it. Uh, with rose elections and clearly want to build up a narrative and project the congress party as being anti national and hobgoblin with those who are trying to dislodge a democratically elected government but having said that uh, you know i don't think this war of words is going to end anytime soon possibly in parliament but certainly in the battleground states of gujarat this is going to be one point of confrontation between the two absolutely pal we stay with us because i'm also uh now getting in some uh, breaking inputs after samit patra's press conference slamming the congress party congress leader pavan khera has countered the bjp's claims and said when elections are approaching in gujarat prime minister and the bjp bring up new theories he also alleged that the sit chief who had given clean shit to then chief minister was awarded he was made ambassador after years of retirement and also alleged that the bjp always brings names of a muslim leader let's listen to what pavan khera had to say jab bhi gujarat ka chunav aata hai bharatiya janata party narendra modi ji aur unka jo ecosystem hai wo naye naye theories samne laata hai har baar gujarat chunav jab aata hai to kabhi ansari ji ka naam lekar shuru ho jayenge kabhi स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया हर बार चुनाव आता है तो आप कभी किसी मुस्लिम नेता का नाम जरूर लाएंगे कांग्रेस पार्टी इस तरह की राजनीति में विश्वास नहीं रखती quickly go across to pallavi who's on the phone line with us pallavi uh, how do you view these statements now as we were uh, earlier discussing the war over is not going to end any time soon there are counter allegations now being heard by pavan khera in this instance uh, of course saying that uh, the sit chief was awarded by the bjp earlier yes as i said i mean there are elections around the corner in gujarat which is going to be later this year in the winter of 2022 and that's what the narrative is going to build up look the congress party is in a state of disarray in uh, gujarat as far as the organization goes but you know the bjp's uh, whole point is that they do see them as an opponent and i'm sure when the prime minister goes back there and not just in gujarat but even in a national narrative that point is going to be made that it was a democratically elected government there was a personal dislike which the gandhis had 
for the prime minister and then the chief minister, which is why they were arm twisting the system to try and target him and also give him a bad name. You know, it's not just now, but all along, I remember one of the main reasons why there is a bad uh, equation between the Gandhis and the prime minister is also because there's a sense which he has and also which the BJP feels is that, you know, from denial of visa opportunities to go to America on, you know, and personal targeting on him, calling him names. All of this is an actually a sense of entitled politics of the Congress party. And therefore, this is something which needs to be exposed. Right, Pallavi, stay with us because uh, I'm also joined in by Ananya Bhatnagar uh, for those legal angles that are surrounding this case. Uh, let me quickly go across to Ananya as well. Ananya, uh, today, Sambit Patra at the press conference, of course, referred to the court order, of course, the Apex Court's order. He used that to build those claims that have been mentioned in uh, the affidavit filed by uh, the SIT team of Gujarat. Uh, having said that, could you just allude to that court order uh, for the benefit of our viewers and talk and also highlight how the court order also highlights those misappropriation of funds for personal pleasure and personal comfort of Tista Setalwad. It also apparently alludes uh, to how money was spent uh, on wine as well as shoes and holiday resorts. Well, yes, uh, definitely uh, the court's order and what is the affidavit that has been filed by the Gujarat government uh, uh, SIT is clearly what, in a single word, if we have to sum it up, we can say it's an explosive affidavit coming against Tista Statel Ward, uh, wherein it, the claims that have been made in this uh, particular affidavit is uh, the SIT clearly goes on to say that she had received 30 lakh rupees from, uh, in fact, Ahmed Patel with regards to uh, the whole uh, conspiracy. And this was not for relief work, which uh, it was given in the of relief work but was not for relief work because it was being carried out by some other organization and it was in food and uh, other uh, other materialistic things that these reliefs were being uh, were being given but uh, uh, Ahmed Patel paid around 30 lakh rupees to Tista Setilwad apart from that she was holding constant meetings with the uh, senior congress leaders this is what the SIT say uh, after the Gujarat riots had broken down and in fact uh, uh, it has also been stated that uh, uh, the meetings that were held by, with these uh, uh, leaders of a particular party were basically to destabilize the government in Guj the then government in Gujarat, which was being led by Chief Min uh, then Chief Minister uh, uh, Narendra Modi and now the Prime Minister of India. In fact, uh, the, it has also went on to say that uh, Tista Sitload and other people who were involved into this whole criminal conspiracy, the larger uh, criminal conspiracy, as what the SIT calls it, was with a political motive to destabilize the government and was also uh, Tista was also uh, in fact uh, fabricating evidence even, and was uh, in fact uh, using the people the victims in order to give out one page affidavits which were pre-recorded affidavits and she had already prepared those and uh, the victims were uh, coming up and only signing those uh, right. uh, affidavits in exchange of money or in exchange of other favors so uh, big revelations coming in from the sp uh, special investigation team of the Gujarat SID remember she was arrested a day after the Supreme Court had given out a clean shit to uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was then the Chief Minister of Gujarat clearly saying that there are other people involved uh, right. uh, into this whole uh, larger conspiracy and who had maligned the image those of big the Gujarat big revelations, government. Ananya, let me also quickly go uh, to Arun Nanta who's joining us live and was present at the BJP press conference earlier during the day today. Arun, if you could take us through all those sensational claims that were announced uh, uh, by Sambit Patra as he referred to that uh, affidavit filed uh, by the SIT team of Gujarat and also, of course, refer to the apex court's order as well uh, it's important to highlight how Tista Setalwad, according to those claims was rewarded uh, by the congress party uh, for actually causing disruption in the state of gujarat back in 2002 we'll see uh, that's right and uh, you know bjp has made it very clear that they are not adding anything to this story. Whatever is in the uh, that affidavit which has been filed by the special investigation team in the court, uh, they are only saying things out of that. And therefore, uh, a national spokesperson of uh, BJP, Sambit Patra, uh, had not only 
uh, you know, uh, spoken about uh, what uh, what role Tista Sitalwar played, but he also spoke about uh, you know from where uh, things had started. He blamed none other than Sonia Gandhi for the entire thing. He said uh, uh, you know Ahmed Patel was uh, just used uh, to actually pass on that those checks or the money to Tista Sitalwar to create the disruption in the state of uh, Gujarat, and it is not only focused on 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 damaging the image of. Prime Minister Modi, but also to spoil the reputation of uh, Gujarat. And, uh, you know, he also uh, said that the money which was paid to Tista uh, Setalwar, that was just the tip of the iceberg. In the first meeting, she was uh, uh, paid around 5 lakh and then, uh, you know, 25 lakh later. And maybe, according to him, uh, you know, uh, a larger amount had also been paid to her. And also, uh, you know, he was uh, saying that it is mentioned in that affidavit that the money which she uh, received that was not used for the public welfare that money was not used for the benefit of uh, any person. It was for her personal uh, benefit and uh, and therefore it is very, very significant when, uh, you know, BJP claims that it is uh, something which is taking place from 10 Janpat, uh, you know, uh, bringing the name of uh, Sonia Gandhi into it and also saying that how she tried to benefit uh, Tista Sitalwar from the work which she was uh, actually doing at that point in time. Right. Thank you, uh, Arun, for bringing in those details. Many thanks to Ananya Bhatnagar and Pallavi Ghosh as well. And with that, let's now move over to some breaking inputs that we are getting in on the presidential election. The Aam Admi Party has decided to support Yashwan Sinha for the presidential polls. Now, remember, uh, it was earlier today that... Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party was to finally put its cards on the table as far as the presidential candidate was concerned. And this is the latest we are learning is that the Aam Aadmi Party has decided to back Yashwan Sinha and not Draupadi Murmu. This is the latest. All right, we are also getting in uh, Rupashree Nanda on the phone line. Uh, Rupashree, if you could uh, share with me what really uh, went behind uh, taking this decision to go ahead and uh, support Yashwan Sinha. Well, uh, actually, uh, the decision uh, comes on uh, very predictable lines. If you look at uh, 2017 elections, even then, the Aam Aadmi Party had actually supported uh, Meera Kumar, who was uh, the opposition uh, candidate then. And uh, But, of course, Meera Kumar uh, went on to lose. And now uh, this time, actually, the Aam Aadmi Party had tried to stray away from joint opposition strategies and had not attended the meeting that was called by opposition parties uh, uh, on the 15th of uh, uh, June, uh, 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 which uh, which was attended by many other political parties. Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party also did not uh, attend the nomination of Yashwan Sinha. However, as the days went by, uh, nobody from the NDA also reached out uh, for support uh, to Aam Aadmi Party National Convener uh, Arvind Kejriwal or anybody else uh, from the party. While uh, Yashwan Sinha himself also reached out uh, uh, for uh, support uh, from Arvind Kejriwal. And also remember, for the Aam Aadmi Party, it will be very difficult politically right. to support a candidate who is backed by the NDA, especially when it keeps Punjab in mind. Right. And, and, and the step of supporting an NDA-backed candidate will not go down with its legislators in Punjab. If one also, were, uh, Rupashri, if one were to look at the numbers, how do you think this is going to now pan out electorally as far as the Electoral College is concerned in the Rajya Sabha? Well, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party has uh, 10 MPs in uh, Rajya Sabha and it has uh, 62 MLAs in Delhi. It has uh, 92 MLAs uh, in Punjab. Uh, it may not uh, play a decisive role in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the final decision of, of uh, a win or a loss. But definitely the Aam Aadmi Party here making a very strong political statement by throwing its weight behind uh, the opposition's candidate win or lose. And it also sends a signal that it stands with the opposition parties against uh, the NDA. Now, this decision is also important uh, because of that context. Uh, the party makes its uh, position very clear. It is. It, it, remember, the Amati party has also come under a lot of fire. It has been targeted by opposition parties. Also, it has been labeled as the B team of the Congress party. There, uh, there were speculations about what right. the Amati party is going to do in these elections. Right. But by this position, it clarifies its stand uh, very uh, clearly. Absolutely. Uh, with that, there's, of course, some big news coming in now that uh, the Aam Aadmi Party has decided to back uh, Yashwan Sinha for the presidential election. And with that, it's time to slip into a short break as news and updates follow.
तो वो कनेक्ट कैसे करेगा या कैसे करेगी बट हैविंग सेट दैट गरीबी इज अ रिलेटेबल प्रॉब्लम इट्स द इट्स लाइक Objectively, it's 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 bad, right? Yeah. It's a struggle. Objectively, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you can't put your food in your house, or if your house is not empty, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are sitting in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a and i used to have this problem jahan main kehti thi ke whatever would happen in my life because people would keep saying but people are suffering here people are suffering there yeah. i'd be like ha mera problem kya hai but yeah. that's not healthy also yeah kyunki har insaan ke liye hmm. there will always be someone more privileged more than privileged. you of course there will always be then no one has a right to complain of but course. the point is that sab log koi na koi cheez se guzar kuch na kuch चीजों से गुजर रहे हैं ना देर सम वन मोर प्रिवलेज देन यू देर सम वन मोर प्रिवलेज देन एनी वन इन दिस रूम बट इज दैट मेक द प्रॉब्लम लेस रेलेवेंट सो द नेम ऑफ द फिल्म इज गुड लक जेरी एंड देर आर टू सिस्टर्स जेरी एंड चेरी चेरी एंड अ मदर एंड दीज थ्री वीमेन इन बिहार दीज थ्री बिहारी वीमेन इन पंजाब आर लेफ्ट टू फेंड फॉर देम सेल्व्स साइकोलॉजिकली इन अ इन अ हाउस होल्ड सेटअप वेयर देयर ओनली टू सिस्टर्स जो बड़ी वाली होती है वो घर का बेटा बन जाती है हैव यू एवर रिलेटेड टू हर कैरेक्टर and how do you feel at being the elder girl of the family a little bit sometimes you feel like you have to i mean i'm not the eldest mm. anshula didi is the eldest but uh, but many times i feel like there are some sacrifices that i'll want to make to ensure that my sister and my father yeah are in a situation that would make us all happy and like i've not had to hmm. but i but know that if push comes to shove i would I do, it. do it and i think that is an elder sister thing elder sister sy- syndrome yeah i think so a little <laughs> bit i think that you automatically think that you're kind of the sacrificial lamb lamb a little <laughs> bit <laughs> and finally what are the kind of directors you would like to work with mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai रोहित शेट्टी सर प्लीज मुझे कास्ट कर लीजिए मैं ऑडिशन कर लूंगी सही से ऑडिशन कर लूंगी और आई रियली वांट टू वर्क विद करण आई रियली वांट टू वर्क विद भंसाली सो आई रियली आई रियली वांट टू वर्क विद नीरज खेवान नीरज मैं बोलने वाली थी हां ग्रेट आई वांट टू सी मेनी मोर फिल्म्स ऑफ योर्स बिकमिंग ब्लॉकबस्टर्स एंड आई वांट टू सी यू गेटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ अवार्ड्स फॉर योर परफॉर्मेंस इन जानवी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच हेलो एंड वेलकम रणवीर कपूर इज टेलिंग मी दैट आई एम गोइंग टू मेस अप माय ओपनिंग मोनोलॉग बट आई एम नॉट बिकॉज़ आई नो दैट दीस टू आर द हॉटेस्ट कपल ऑन द टाउन एंड दैट्स व्हाट आई वांटेड टू स्टार्ट विद एंड वी हैव मोर सॉर्ट आफ्टर डायरेक्टर एंड अ मच अवेटेड फिल्म सो हाउ कुड आई मेस इट अप इट्स फ्रॉम शेरा गाइस एंड हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द टीम हाउ आर यू शी डिड इट आई एम प्राउड Of you. <laughs> this guy Ranveer's worst attempt. Yeah, yeah, he played with the psyche. He does, and not just this, Vani. I must tell you, playing with psyche right now. Any time I mention Ranveer, my friends have been saying you're not invited. Because the last time we spoke, I asked you about your wedding. So very sweetly and very sin- sincerely, looking into my eyes, said, "I'm not getting married. No, no, not now." Not now, not in April. So I'm like, he said he's not getting married, and he I'm, did, and yeah. he didn't invite you. Exactly, but he, he said he's not going me. to. He didn't invite you. But well. he said that to all of us. He said that to all of you, oh. right? So is there another special event as well that yes. we uh, that we need to congratulate? Well, you, you know when you have to congratulate me and congratulate me then. Okay. Because otherwise, well, otherwise this wouldn't make any sense, no. But but is it going to be in April, perhaps? Uh, no, not in April, uh, but it, hopefully soon. Uh, you know, and hopefully by the end of the year. No, no, we haven't planned. I think we are very instinctive people, and uh, uh, we are very uh, much in love. And hopefully so. Well, congratulations, and thank you for not keeping it in April. It's so hot. I know, <laughs> but you're not invited, so. Oh. I must say. <laughs> <laughs> You lied on camera. You lied to your fans. छोटी शादी, छोटी शादी की थी. You lied to your fans. No, my fans, my fans will forgive me. They understand. Oh, yeah. see, but plays with your psyche. He really does, but he's so charming. How can we not? How can we so not forgive, forgive you? you? 
I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. No, but that's what you have to. That's the nature of the job. But you have to forgive me. She's coming for me and Karan. You have to have love in your heart for me. You only come here for me and Karan. For you, yeah. That that is also true because though he did some nice dancing in that G Huzoor, which was okay. Some people really killed it in Fitur. I have to say, some people. Really did a fabulous job in Fitur. That's because I was in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a some people, I meant you. Yeah, only. oh yeah. yeah, yeah Thank yeah. you. You're very kind. <laughs> Even though some people had a great sequence where they fell down tables and chair, all of chair. that. Chairs, chairs, yeah, like a no whole array of chairs. So I feel like the director was a little partial to someone, but you still. New yeah. words you, you learned show. today. Huh? <laughs> array of chairs and all. <laughs> <laughs> what is that app? Grammarly. 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 <laughs> So despite that, you know, Vani, you really shone, yeah. and I have to say that I was just flying high, in, you know, <laughs> like taking those leaps and jumps and all. Very, very yeah. beautiful, very ethereal, I have to say. And uh, Ranbir, now this is the Pan India film. I want to. Welcome back. You're watching CNN News 18 with Nia Kangsha Swaroop, and with that, let's now head into some breaking news coming in. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla has called for a meeting of all leaders of all political parties at 4 p.m. today, and this is just ahead of the commencement of the monsoon session of the Parliament. That is all set to start on 18th of July. Now, the Speaker will brief them on the preparations related to the monsoon session. Which is all set to begin on 18th of July. And remember, a host of decisions have been taken, uh, and, and we can expect quite a few issues to now surface during this meeting. Uh, it could also be uh, decided as far as those uh, list of unparliamentary words that had uh, been unveiled by uh, the speaker. Uh, now, the decision whether or not these words are going to be expunged uh, by the Lok Sabha Speaker or the Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, these crucial decisions whether the, the, these will be coming up or surfacing for discussion during the upcoming monsoon session is also going to be decided at this crucial meeting that has now been uh, called in by Om Birla. And remember, this is going to be an all-party meet and is all set to take place at. 4 p.m. today. For more details, I have with us uh, Arun Dhanta on the phone line. Arun, what issues can we expect now to be discussed at today's all-party meet that's been called in by Om Birla? Well, uh, you know, this is uh, a kind of a normal practice before uh, the session starts. But uh, of course, uh, Speaker Om Birla uh, will uh, try to have that conversation with the all-party leaders where. Uh, he can talk about the consensus and the efforts which is needed from all the parties to run the house uh, smoothly because the disruption uh, is something which uh, uh, has been a part of the parliament if you see in, uh, in in last couple of sessions where opposition parties are coming up with the various demands various issues and therefore uh, not allowing the the house to work properly so that is something which uh, om birla is going to speak to all the uh, political parties in this meeting that they want to have uh, a smooth functioning of the parliament so the bills related to the public welfare and also which is important uh, uh, those are passed and therefore the, the the efforts and the consensus is something which is needed from uh, all parties so these are the issues which will be the part of this agenda which uh, a speaker uh, of lok sabha om birla uh, will be chairing with the, all the, the all the all the political parties right arunanta many thanks for bringing in those details and with that let's now move over to some more breaking inputs coming in this time from the state of maharashtra eknath shinde the cm of maharashtra has slammed the last minute decision taken by the uddhav thakre government saying that some decisions were taken by the mba government when despite they being asked for a floor test their decision is illegal and clearly seems that eknath shinde is referring to uddhav thakre's decision to rename aurangabad as chatrapati sambhaji nagar and usmanabad to be renamed as dharashiv he said that his government rather will be renaming aurangabad and also usmanabad padnavis also attended the cabinet meet along with eknath shinde 
Remember, it was during the last uh, cabinet meet that Uddhav Thakre had taken the decision to rename Aurangabad. For more details, I'm joined in by our correspondent Herman Gums on the phone line. Herman, do throw light on how uh, Ekna Chinde has called uh, Uddhav Thakre's move illegal uh, purely because their government that time was in a minority. Uh, well, yes. Uh, in fact, what the, the Maharashtra Chief Minister Ekna Chinde has been stating is that when uh, Udav Thakre was the Chief Minister in his last cabinet meeting, despite the fact that he did not have uh, the numbers on his side, how is it that certain very important decisions were taken? For example, in the last cabinet meeting that was chaired uh, by Udav Thakre, it was decided that Aurangabad would be renamed as uh, Sambachi Nagar. Uh, was now during today's cabinet meeting uh, where you had in attendance the Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Padnavis as well as Ekna Chinde. The decision has been taken to add the honourable title of Chhatrapati uh, and therefore Aurangabad will now be known as Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar. Uh, besides that, the Navi Mumbai Airport is also going to be named after D.B. Patil. Uh, besides that, also what we're told is Osmanabad would be re uh, renamed as Darashiv. So certain important decisions taken. But the most important key point, Akansha, what we are picking up is what they have decided is to look at the decisions uh, taken by the then uh, uh, by the then former minister, mm. uh, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre-led government. Were these in haste? Uh, was there a certain sort of appeasement? So all of those decisions that were taken in then are going to be looked into once again by the current government. And if required, which definitely looks to be the case as of now, uh, you know, they could be, in fact, going in uh, for uh, a complete change as far as those decisions were taken when Udav Thakre was the chief minister. Right. Uh, Arman, stay with us because we have some more breaking inputs coming in on uh, the same. Setback continues for the Udav camp as 10 Shiv Sena cooperators have joined uh, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde's group. All the cooperators are from Ratnagiri. Images show... Eknath Shinde welcoming the cooperators. We will be bringing to you those images as well, but this is indeed a huge setback for the Uddhav Thakre camp as well. Ten Shiv Sena cooperators have joined Eknath Shinde's camp. Uh, let's also go back to Herman for more details. Herman, do share the details with us and what this could mean for Uddhav Thakre now and for the upcoming BMC elections. Well, there are two key points if one looks at it. <clears throat> First of all, these are 10 Sena cooperators, all hailing from Ratnagari, who have uh, joined the Eknath Shinde camp. Now, this is a, a worry still continue for Udav Thakre. It, this is not just mere optics, I would say, Akansha, because this is going to this is taking place just months before uh, the BMC polls as well as uh, municipal polls. Now, we have seen at the state level how it is uh, that Eknath Shinde has the numbers clearly on his side uh, for now, as far as the Shiv Sena MLAs are concerned. But at the grassroots level, two things are changing. Now, with corporators extending their support, and that too from Ratnagiri, an important town, important district from Konkan area of Maharashtra, which has been, in fact, a bastion uh, for many years for the uh, Shiv Sena, which is when it was led by Udav Thakre. But now, with a vertical split, things look to be definitely changing. And here, clearly, if one looks at the pictures, it is Ekna Chinde now calling himself the true boss of uh, the Shiv Sena, not just as the chief minister, uh, no, but besides that, also now claiming to be the real boss and the replacement uh, to Uddhav Thakre. Right. Now, in the run-up to the BMC polls, it's going to be interesting to know whether there would be even Mumbai-based uh, Shiv Sena corporators who would extend similar support uh, to Ekna Chinde. And what I'm picking up to my, uh, you know, to, as far as my sources are concerned, it's just a matter of time before one could see a similar sort of situation uh, taking place in Mumbai. Just a matter of time, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, many thanks, Arman Gomes, for bringing in all those details. And with that, we slip into a short break as more breaking inputs uh, follow on the other side. Sunil is getting engaged and the girl is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful girl. This guy, I tell you, not that kind of good news about Sri Lanka. For Sri Lanka, is there any, any hope, any good news? Ah, Sri Lanka. There are few scenarios which may work. <laughs> are you just looking for out here or you really have some thoughts? Such as, such as? Uh, such as sublet to the global powerhouse like China, <laughs> US, Canada. You know, I thought of that. We were discussing this offline and I think that's a problem because you become a vassal state, no? You become yes men of the big power. Exactly. Then they could make Bahubali, Pushpa, Arara, KGF in Sinhalese as another option.
But it's a country of just 22 million. I mean, they can't get India-like figures from sales of tickets and all, yaar. They can if the citizens watch the movie again and again and again and again. <laughs> Are you on something, Mr. Aryukuti? Because, I mean, you, they told me number one in Asia, number one political informed person of India and Asia. Any other options? Yes, yes, yes. Make Sri Lanka the next IPL team. <laughs> no, come on, come on, that's not possible. I mean, can they be evaluated at 28 billion by 2027? I mean, come on, one team. I, I must tell you, you have a point. There is a last option, but I'm scared to say it. <laughs> no, 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 come on, please. This is the spot where you must tell us what you have because we want to give hope to people. Please, please tell me. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for me. <laughs> dangerous? Why would it be dangerous for you? We're not even involved. I mean, we're India. That's Sri Lanka. Come on, no one watches this show. I'll tell you honestly. <laughs> you just say what you want. We just abuse sometimes and nobody complains. Go on. On that point, you have convinced me. You have convinced me. <laughs> oh, okay. Go on, please. Go on. There is uh, one place where billions of rupees are available. <laughs> billions of rupees available? Kaan pe? Kaan pe, sir? No questions asked. <laughs> what? I, I I can't believe this, really. No money trail, no auditing, no question of accountability. No question of accountability? What is this? Listen carefully. PM Relief Fund. <laughs> what? Uh, India's or Sri Lanka's? Ah, you are right. <laughs> Let's just say, you see this? <laughs> Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> वैसे थोड़ा मुश्किल है आपको इसमें इमेजिन करना आपके पास जब ये फिल्म आई सो दिस इज अ फिल्म बेस्ड इन बिहार अ गर्ल फ्रॉम बिहार हुज लिविंग इन पंजाब उसकी जिंदगी में ड्रग्स आते हैं उसकी जिंदगी में परेशानियां आती हैं बाप का साया उसके सर से हट जाता है बहुत तरह की परेशानियों से वो अकेली लड़की गुजरती है और वो भी इत्तेफाक से बड़ी बहन है घर की व्हाट वाज योर रिएक्शन टू द स्क्रिप्ट इट्स स्टिल अ फन फिल्म Okay, okay. Um, and there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of uh, energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if she's going through these situations and difficulties and she's going through them, and she's in a serious tonality, then maybe I don't take so much interest in this film. But because सिद्धार्थ जो हमारे निर्देशक हैं उनका टेक इस फिल्म पे इतना कोकी था और जो ओरिजिनल फिल्म है कोलमा वो कोकिला उसमें इतनी कॉमेडी थी तो वो देख के मैं काफ़ी एक्साइट हो गई यू ट्रेन योर सेल्फ एज एन एक्टर इन ली स्ट्रैट्सबर्ग स्कूल ऑफ थिएटर एंड फिल्म्स व्हाट इज योर बिगेस्ट लर्निंग फ्राम फ्राम लर्निंग एक्टिंग बी ऑनेस्ट एंड बी इन द मोमेंट एंड नथिंग इज मोर रिपल्सिव Maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, oxem than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Mm. To be in the moment and to be honest in the moment is, mm. I think, where the magic happens. Actually, Nawaz, sir, who I met very briefly one day, mm. said to me and Ashan, he said, all of the best acting is acting that happens by mistake. Wow. 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 वहाँ जादू होता है वेन यू सिट डाउन विद योर फादर मिस्टर बोनी कपूर वॉट आर द कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट यू हैव नाउ नाउ दैट यू आर इन टू द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री यूर रीडिंग स्क्रिप्ट एंड योर फादर इज हैज बिन द प्रोड्यूसर रिसेंटली सलमान मेड अ स्टेटमेंट दैट यू नो मेरे करियर में जब बहुत बुरा वक्त था तो बोनी कपूर ने मुझे उठाया था सो एज अ प्रोफेशनल नाउ वॉट आर द कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट यू आर हैविंग विद अ प्रोफेशनल लाइक हिम आई थिंक दैट लॉट ऑफ क्रिएटिव डिस्कशन Welcome back. Uh, we begin this newscast with some breaking inputs coming in on the Kanhaiya Lal murder case. There's an update in Kanhaiya Lal's murder case of Udaipur. The NIA court has now sent all three accused to jail in judicial custody. The main accused, Gos Muhammad Riyaz Attari and Farhad Muhammad, were sent to jail after the remand period ended. They were presented in the court today. Now remember, a crucial milestone has been reached in this case. The NIA is in. inquiry has been completed and those through those three uh, accused have been sent to the ajmer jail for more details i'm also joined in by our correspondent kapil shivali uh, kapil ji hame bata sakte hain ki abhi tak jo ye nia ki inquiry hui hai usse kuch pata maloom pad raha hai ki kya kya details nikal ke aaye hain bahar all right we
कपिल आपको मेरी आवाज आ रही है जी बिल्कुल मैं आपको सुन पा रहा हूँ जी कपिल जी अभी ये जो इंक्वायरी एन आई की पूरी खत्म हो गई है अभी तक जितनी भी कंप्लीट हुई है इंक्वायरी इसमें क्या डिटेल्स निकल के आए हैं कुछ बता सकते हैं <coughs> हाँ देखिए एन इस मामले में लगातार तफ्तीश कर रही है सात लोगों की गिरफ्तारी हो चुकी है लेकिन अब जो ये जो जांच है ये मुख्य रूप से अगर हम बात करें तो जो लोग धमकी देने वाले रहे या फिर विवादित नारे लगाने वाले रहे उनके इर्द गिर्द घूम रही है लेकिन देखिए एक एक बड़ी खबर मैं आपको इस समय देना चाहूँगा उदयपुर के धान मंडी इलाके के ही दो व्यापारियों को विदेशी नंबर से धमकी दी गई है विदेशी नंबर से बने रही क्योंकि हम अभी इस खबर से जुड़े रहना चाहते हैं अपने बेनिफिट ऑफ of our viewers tell them what has happened so far the nia inquiry has been completed and those three accused have been sent to jail in judicial custody and the main accused we are talking about are goz mohammad riyaz atari and farhad mohammad they have been sent to jail after the remand period ended they were presented in the nia court today more details all right we have some more breaking inputs coming in on sepur story two more traders have received the heading threats these traders are from the same police station area where kanthiya lal was beheaded the threat was allegedly issued from a foreign number the cops have now registered a complaint both of them have been given police security two traders again now this time in udaipur have received beheading threats for more details let's go back to kapil shimali uh, kapil ji ye jo story abhi humne break ki hai hame bata sakte hain is threat ke bare mein kya maloom pad raha hai hame pata chal raha hai ye foreign number tha kuch uh, identity pata chali hai ye call kahan se aayi hai aur kisne ki hai ji bilkul dekhiye main aapko uh... दिखाऊंगा उस दुकान के बाहर मैं खड़ा हूं जहां पर जिस दुकान के व्यक्ति को ये धमकी दी गई है मरुदर हेयर ड्रेसर्स नाम के व्यक्ति को धमकी दी गई और जैसे ही धमकी दी गई उसके बाद आप देखिए कि सुरक्षा मुहैया करा दी गई है सुरक्षा मुहैया यहां पर इन्हें कराई गई है और ये वो व्यक्ति हैं जिन्हें आप देखिए कि ये वो दुकान है मरुदर हेयर ड्रेसर्स जिन्हें सुरक्षा मुहैया कराई गई है इसके अलावा इसके ठीक पास में एक और दुकान है एक कपड़े की दुकान पास में है वहाँ उसके जो हीरा नाम के व्यक्ति हैं उन्हें भी एक धमकी भरा व्हाट्सएप कॉल प्राप्त हुआ था और ये फिलहाल उदयपुर में नहीं है ये अमरनाथ यात्रा कर उदयपुर इस समय लौट रहे हैं उन्हें भी एक में धमकी भरा व्हाट्सएप कॉल इन्हें मिला था और जैसे ही इसकी सूचना पुलिस को दी गई आप देखिए कि एक एक जवान दोनों ही जगह पर दोनों ही दुकानों के बाहर एक एक पुलिस का जवान लगा दिया गया है ताकि जो सुरक्षा है वो मुहैया कराई जा सके इसके अलावा जो इस इस पूरे घटनाक्रम में अगर हम प्राथमिक जानकारी के आधार पर देखें तो जो व्हाट्सएप मैसेज जो भेजे गए हैं उन व्हाट्सएप मैसेज में फोटो भी साथ में भेजे गए और उसमें एक हथियारबंद युवक जो है वो बैठा हुआ है सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात उस व्हाट्सएप मैसेज भेजने वाले व्यक्ति को ये पता है कि किस तरह के व्यवसाय ये करते हैं तो ये भी संभावनाएं बन रही कि ये किसी सिरफिरे की करतूत हो सकती है या फिर असामाजिक तत्वों द्वारा दहशत फैलाने के लिए ये किया गया हो क्योंकि जो नंबर आए हैं वो प्लस नाइन सिक्स जो कि ईरान का कंट्री कोड है उससे ये नंबर जो मैसेज है वो मिले तो ये भी संभावना है कि इंटरनेट कॉलिंग के मार्फत तो देखिए जो नंबर है प्लस नाइन सिक्स सिक्स फाइव नाइन थ्री फाइव टू फाइव डबल सिक्स जीरो इस नंबर से मैसेज भेजे गए और मैसेज के अंदर एक मैसेज भेजा गया उसके साथ ही एक फोटो भी साथ में भेजा गया तो ये जो है वो इसकी सूचना स्थानीय पुलिस को मिली और इन दोनों एक तो नरेश सेन को मिली और दूसरा जो एक और व्यक्ति उसके परिवार से उन्हें साइबर सेल के पास ले जाया गया इसकी सूचना साइबर सेल को दे दिए फिलहाल उदयपुर पुलिस की साइबर सेल एक्टिव हो चुकी है और ये पता लगाने की कोशिश करे कि किस सर्वर से ये मैसेज भेजे गए हैं ये मैसेज भेजने वाले क्या स्थानीय लोग हैं जो कि विदेशी नंबरों का उपयोग कर रहे हैं या फिर इंटरनेट कॉलिंग के मार्फत भेजे गए या फिर ये मैसेजेस वास्तव में विदेशों से उदयपुर के इन युवाओं को भेजे गए तो ये सारा जो जांच का जो पहलू है ये शुरू हो चुका है और पता लगाने की कोशिश में अब साइबर सेल उदयपुर की जुट चुकी है जी जी बहुत बहुत ही दिल दहलाने वाले घटनाक्रम की बात कर रहे हैं आप अगर ये इस जो साइबर सेल के पास अब ये नंबर ले जाया गया है और इसका कॉग्निशंस लिया जाता है और ये ईरान का आपने जैसे कहा कि ये नंबर हो सकता है तो इसमें निश्चिंत ही कुछ ऐसे एलिमेंट्स दिख रहे हैं जो टेरर टेरर एंगल पे भी लाइट फेंकी जा सकती है लेकिन 
ये बता सकते हैं हमें कि ये जो दो दुकानें हैं जो दो ट्रेडर्स हैं आपने कहा कि एक अभी भी अमरनाथ यात्रा से वापस आ रहे हैं कौन है ये दो ट्रेडर्स क्या इनका कोई लिंक था कन्हैया लाल जी से क्या कोई जान पहचान थी ए, और ये किस एरिया में क्या ये उसी एरिया में है जहाँ पे कन्हैया लाल जी की भी दुकान थी देखिए कन्हैया लाल साहू की जो दुकान थी वो धान मंडी थाना क्षेत्र में थी ये भी आ, जो दुकानें हैं धान मंडी थाना क्षेत्र में लेकिन कन्हैया लाल साहू की दुकान से इन दुकानों की काफ़ी ज़्यादा दूरी है तो आ, उनसे सीधा कोई लिंक नज़र नहीं आता दूसरी बात सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात आप देखिए कि इन दोनों व्यापारियों द्वारा किसी भी तरह का समर्थन क्योंकि पिछले कुछ दिनों में अगर हम देखें तो जिन लोगों को धमकी मिली है उनके द्वारा नुपुर शर्मा की समर्थन पोस्ट का समर्थन किया गया था इन दोनों व्यापारियों द्वारा किसी भी पोस्ट का समर्थन नहीं किया गया उसके बावजूद इन्हें धमकी दी गई है यहाँ ये जो दोनों है पास पास में दुकानें हैं एक हेयर ड्रेसर्स का काम करते हैं और दूसरे के कपड़े की दुकान है अब तंग गलियों के अंदर धान मंडी इलाका जो कि बेहद तंग गलियों में बसा हुआ है हजारों की तादाद में यहाँ पर लोगों की आवाजाही रहती है काफ़ी सारी दुकानें हैं उसके बीच में ये दो दुकानें छोटी छोटी दुकानें और इन दुकानदारों को धमकी दी गई लेकिन इनका कोई कनेक्शन अभी तक ना तो नुपुर शर्मा की पोस्ट के समर्थन करने के मामले में आ रहा है और ना ही कन्हैया साहू के मामले में आ रहा है इसी वजह से साइबर सेल ये पता लगाने की कोशिश कर रही कि कहीं ये प्लस नाइन सिक्स जो कंट्री कोड है ये ईरान का है तो वास्तव में ये विदेशों से मैसेज भेजे गए या फिर इंटरनेट का उपयोग करते हुए मैसेज स्थानीय स्तर पर सिर्फ दहशत फैलाने के लिए सिर्फ इन लोगों को डराने के लिए भेजे गए ये पता लगाने के लिए साइबर सेल एक्टिव हो चुकी है हमारे साथ बने रहिए गेटिंग इन सम रिएक्शन फ्रॉम वन ऑफ दिक्टम्स इन उदयपुर कल रात को साढ़े आठ बजे मेरे मोबाइल पे मैसेज और फोटो आया तो जान से मारने की धमकी दे रहा हूँ किसी आदमी का फोटो लगा हुआ था बंदूक लगा खड़ा हुआ प्लस नाइन सिक्स करके कोई नंबर था तो कहाँ का है मुझे नहीं पता And with that, let's now shift our attention over to the state of Bihar. The crackdown on PFI continues in connection with the Bihar terror module case, which was unfoiled just a couple of days ago. Now, four people have been arrested, and the raids continue at the residences and offices of all the accused. According to sources, PFI's main agenda in Bihar was to spread its radical network in the interior parts of the state. Clerics. from other states were invited to preach the group also planned on giving material arts what use training to youngsters as well police jaanch kar rahi hai ab iske bare mein hum logon ke paas koi mane itar jankari ka zariya to hai nahi police jo jaanch kar rahi hai jo mane log bata rahe hain ki aisa aisa ho raha hai wahi hai janne ka zariya एक बात आदमी जरूर कहेगा कि जांच पड़ताल जो है वो तटस्थ ढंग से होना चाहिए और बात का बतंगड़ जो है नहीं बनाना चाहिए पीएफआई के अलग अलग लोगों के हिरासत में जाने के बाद और जो पटना से बिहार से आ रही हैं जानकारियां ये बहुत चिंताजनक है और ये एक सुनियोजित कॉन्स्पिरसी और सोच जो कहीं ना कहीं भारत में देश के अंदर में आतंक भी हो सकता है साथ में अलग अलग धर्मों के बीच में दिक्कतें हों इस प्रकार की एक सोच के पीछे एक षडयंत्र चल रहा है तो हम आशा करेंगे कि इस पर जल्द से जल्द जानकारी पूरी पूरी मिले इसमें जो इन्वेस्टिगेशन है जल्द से जल्द पूरा हो और कड़ी से कड़ी सजा ऐसे लोगों पर होनी चाहिए are currently taking place in parts of bihar they are underway and according to the police three accused in the patna pfi case are residents of darbhanga cops have said that they are conducting raids to trace them those accused and said that they are in continuous touch with patna police as well the history of those suspected accused are also being traced पहले जो पटना में एक गिरोह का पता पाँच हुआ उसमें गिरफ्तारी हुई है और उसमें प्राथमिकी भी दर्ज की गई है पटना पुलिस के द्वारा तीन व्यक्ति ऐसे हैं जो दरभंगा जिला के रहने वाले हैं दो सिकवाड़ा थाना क्षेत्र का और एक टूटी बाजार का उनके लिए हम लोग छापेमारी कर रहे हैं प्रयासरत हैं उन लोगों की गिरफ्तारी करने के लिए और पटना पुलिस से और सीनियर एस पटना से लगातार हम संपर्क में बने हुए हैं जो भी मदद हम लोग कर सकते हैं या हम लोग को और इन्वेस्टिगेशन में यहाँ कुछ मिलता है उस पर हम लोग आगे कर रहे हैं
For more details, let's quickly go across uh, to our correspondent Saurabh, who's joining me on the phone line. Saurabh, uh, what are the details that have emerged as far as uh, the Darbhanga police is concerned? Also, do throw a light on how uh, this entire module now seems to be spanning across the entire state of Bihar and goes beyond Patna. Akansha, the raids were conducted right from uh, yesterday, uh, not only in Darbhanga, but other parts of Bihar also, namely Katihar, Araria, uh, then uh, Darbhanga, and uh, one more place was there, which, which comes under right. the Manchal area. And uh, now uh, the Patna police is claiming they, are, they have arrested three people from Darbhanga uh, in connection with the Fulbari Sharif uh, incident, uh, where uh, Jalaluddin and Athar Parvez were arrested. Uh, in connection of uh, radicalizing people and uh, various uh, PFI documents, uh, 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 intrinsic documents were found from the house of Jalaluddin. So after the uh, uh, after the FIR was lodged against 26 people from 10 districts uh, and also from other states, uh, police uh, had uh, started the uh, investigation and they have arrested uh, three uh, people from uh, Patna itself and three from Darbhanga. Right. And one, uh, one Tahir was arrested yesterday in connection with uh, Perike, Labayak and uh, Gazwai uh, Hind. So uh, these arrests uh, clearly, uh, Bihar was becoming a center of, you know, terror module where uh, various kinds of radicalization and other uh, communal... Right. Uh, Right, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'll have to uh, interrupt and end you there because uh, we are running short of time, but we'll keep coming back to you as and when more details emerge. And with that, it's a quick wrap of this newscast. Thank you so much for watching. Up next is Pallavi Ghosh with more. Thank you very much, Akanksha. And the top story, of course, remains the controversy which surrounds Tista Settlewort, Ahmed Patel and a complete war of words between the BJP and the Congress party. Well, the Gujarat Special Investigation Team investigating the Tista Settlewad case has now made a huge claim, saying that Tista Settlewad received the Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Narendra Modi-led state government in Gujarat. The SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that Tista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize by hook or crook the state government in 2002. Now, apart from this, the SIT also claims that the Congress veteran leader Ahmed Patel in fact gave funds to Tista Settlewood to around 30 lakhs of rupees to help her in her mission to destabilize the state government. Congress of course has hit back calling the SIT's claims as mischievous. The BJP leader Sambit Patra has put the entire blame on Sonia Gandhi saying that it was she who was the real driving force and that she tried to destroy the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi via her political secretary Ahmed Patel. आमद पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की उन्हें अपमानित और उन्हें किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और ये पूरे षडयंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया in fact, we also spoke earlier to Ahmed Patel's daughter, Mumtaz Patel, on this entire controversy and also the allegations which have been put on her father. My father's uh, home residence and office has been open to one and all. I mean, it is, you can walk in and walk out anytime. I'm sure the media is very well aware of it. So I, um, have, uh, I, I have never been involved in his work, so I really can't comment on it. I have, I've, I've not, I've, I've been, uh, this was 20, 25 years ago, we were much younger, probably maybe away at college or university also, I have no clue. Do you not remember 2017, there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father, and I don't know where the terrorist is right now. And like I said, uh, in the election before that, uh, there was ISI and uh, some conspiracy, conspiracy in Pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister. So every election, uh, some controversy comes up. I, I wouldn't be surprised if 2027 20, also has Ahmed Patel turning up into some controversy again.
Okay, I'm just going to go across to my colleague Ananya Bhatnagar, who also tracks the quotes for us. You know, Ananya, uh, there are always going to be two versions. Obviously, political parties are involved, but legally speaking, and on the basis of the documents which the BJP says are freely available, you think it's going to be a strong, watertight case against M. I. Patel and the Congress Party? Well, yes, as we go down the affidavit that has been filed by the Gujarat SIT Pallavi, definitely it goes on to say a strong case because remember that these are not fall, uh, fall flat claims that have been made by the SIT. These are on the statements of various people. This is also on the statements of various witnesses who have actually given out their statement under 161 and 164, which are admissible statements in courts. These are recorded before a magistrate and only after these statements that the SIT has in fact given out this affidavit before the Gujarat court. The court has also, in fact, taken this affidavit on record. But uh, I'll take you first through what is there into this whole 12-page affidavit, which is definitely explosive one. The first and the foremost revelation that uh, this uh, Gujarat SIT affidavit before the Gujarat court clearly makes is that Ahmed Patel had paid 30 lakh rupees once, 5 lakh, and then uh, another 25 lakhs to Tista Setalwad in the guise of relief work, mm -hmm. while the witnesses claim that these relief works were being carried out uh, by way of food and material. But this, in fact, 30 lakhs were given in guise of cash and uh, was actually said to be a relief work, but then definitely it wasn't one. Secondly, uh, uh, the affidavit goes on to say that for her veracious uh, uh, litigations and in order uh, her malicious campaign to frame the then government of Gujarat for uh, and blaming them in fact for the 2002 riots is something that uh, led Tista Sitilwad to get a Padma Shri award in, to, in the year of 2007 which was given to her by the then government. In fact it also goes on to say that the communications, okay. uh, the electronic communications that have been accessed by the SIT clearly go on to say uh, that uh, in fact, she was in touch with R.B. Shri Kumar, who was mm -hmm. then the ADGP. Apart from that, he, she was also in contact with Sanjeev. But, and these people actually were a part of a larger conspiracy with a political motive okay. to de uh, destabilize the government okay. in 2002 in Gujarat. Apart from that, the final claim that mm -hmm. this uh, uh, affidavit goes on to clearly make is okay. that uh, the, these people were constantly holding meetings with a particular mm -hmm. political party mm -hmm. in order to de-establish de the government in Gujarat and in fact okay. this was a larger criminal conspiracy yeah. so, I don't know, uh, on based on this affidavit of course there's been a lot of full-out political war and to get a sense of that uh, Maria is also joining us Maria you know obviously the Congress party completely rejects it it's also questioning the timing that close to Parliament a session close to Gujarat elections but you think that the BJP is not going to give up on this issue to hit back at the Gandhis and also make the point that, look, the Prime Minister has always been targeted from the days that he was a Chief Minister. Yes, certainly not. And uh, after uh, the Apex Court's observation, we did see some immediate action in terms of uh, how uh, Tista Sitanwad has been arrested. Um, and now with this affidavit and the certain documents that have come out in the public domain with regards to what the SIT has said, Tista Sitanwad and it is, is being questioned again. And the linkage is being built here with late Ahmed Patel and also taking it directly to the Gandhi. So, uh, Pallavi, look, uh, I think the BJP, when, when actually when the Supreme Court verdict had come, Prime Minister Amit Shah had spoken out and he said mm. that it was a Tisna Setanwad and an ecosystem which functioned on the behest of the Congress Party had actually changed the entire uh, investigation as, as, as against the BJP and the Prime Minister who was then the Chief Minister of Gujarat in particular. So they have raised a number of questions there. And uh, it looks unlikely uh, that uh, the BJP would be letting go of this issue. And if the Congress were to raise this in Parliament, the BJP certainly has that they have, uh, of course, the Supreme Court's observation and the SIT documents, all of that certainly showing that there was a larger ecosystem which was working at the behest of the top Congress uh, leadership uh, trying to really portray Prime Minister Modi was the then the Chief Minister of Gujarat in a bad light. You know, but Anandya, uh, the question which then the Congress Party is asking is that I'm sure the state government, the central government was privy to this kind of an information and documents and these affidavits must have been around. Why now? 
Well, yes, uh, what is very, very crucial to note is that this action has come in after the Supreme Court had, in fact, given out its verdict. And remember, uh, what the Modi government is clearly being saying is that it was not saying a word until and unless the Supreme Court was seized off the matter and it was subjudice before the topmost court of the country. And now, uh, after the Supreme Court itself, in its observation, has clearly uh, claimed and, in fact, stated that there are certain people who were maligning the image and were portraying a false narrative narrative uh, and there should be uh, action against them immediately Tista Setalwad is arrested uh, on the lines of the Supreme Court order and then this affidavit surely is coming into line of a legal timeline and uh, which I uh, basically feel that is in, in line with the legal timeline and in fact the SIT had swung into action after the Supreme Court had in fact asked for uh, immediate action against these people who were spreading out a false narrative against the then government of Gujarat and uh, the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi who is currently the Prime Minister of India but definitely these revelation and this investigation is going to go a long way but what is very very important also Pallavi is that these are uh, this this affidavit, which is on a preliminary basis, is on the statements of these witnesses. There has to be a lot more documentary evidence that, that it has to support. There has to be a circumstantial okay. evidence that okay. has to support Ananya. all of these claims. Okay. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Society uh, uh, pans out into this whole okay. investigation and what it supports these statements with. Okay, Pallavi. we have also Mr. R.P. Singh on the BJP uh, joining us now on the phone line. Mr. R.P. Singh, the question I'm asking you is the question which the Congress party asked at the press conference. Why now? Is it because Gujarat elections are around the corner? That's what the Congress is asking. Well, it's only after the court order. Why now? It's because of the court order. Nothing to relate to Gujarat election. The problem is the election is uh, there uh, every six months in, in India. I mean, that's, the, uh, that's there every six months. Now, yeah. why to relate to the election? One. Secondly, I just heard your uh, one of the correspondent of who was the person before me was talking about the witnesses and all. There will be witnesses, obviously. The witnesses. Uh, to be uh, brought to book, and then they'll be, they'll, they'll also give their uh, witnesses on record. Hmm. So you yeah. think, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you think it could be a watertight case against the Gandhis in this context because the man who's in the eye of the storm, Mr. Ahmed Patel, is unfortunately not around to defend himself anymore. But people whom he ordered to pay money will be there uh, hmm. to to bring uh, to uh, to bring them on record. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's already there that this, he, he told men to pay money to Tista Salva, uh, Tista then and there. When, he, when, when they first met for the first time, he, he called someone uh, to the room and, and ordered him to pay the money. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, of course, the defense has also come in from his daughter who says that these are unsubstantiated allegations, but I'm sure we are not going to be hearing the end of it. Thank you very much, Mr. Arp Singh. Thank you, Maria. And thank you, Ananya, for putting this into perspective. We'll shift the focus from this. Well, shifting focus from this controversy to yet another controversy and this involves Mahua Moitro once again. In fact, there are anti Mahua Moitro protests which are going on in Kolkata over her Kali remarks and the BJP Mahila wing has already read, led four protests against the Member of Parliament from Krishnanagar over her comments on Ma Kali. In fact, we are going to be joined uh, by my colleague Preeti who is... Uh, joining us. So Preeti from Kolkata, Assam, but these pictures are straight out of Kolkata. Clearly, Mahua Moitro is in the eye of the storm. Uh, yes, uh, well, regarding what she commented uh, on her Twitter account about uh, Mr. Gogoi, actually she stated that uh, uh, that should be a replacement for sexual harassment, and which is why the word Gogoi has been a, a lot of uh, trouble to the to her because the people have been offended here as it, uh, it as it goes against a community which writes the surname of Gogoi and which was actually serving the Ahum dynasty. It has a very, it is a very integral part of the Assamese community. So this is now hurting the sentiments of the people in Assam and which is why now we can see a series of uh, protests against Mahua Moitra here because uh, uh, this uh, term that she used regarding the Gogoi community, it, it is actually imp impacting the whole community's sentiments now and which is why a lot of, uh, uh, we can see a lot of protests against Mohua Moitri in Assam here. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm also going to be joined in by my colleague in Kolkata for a bit also because uh, so there are two problem areas which are taking place over here, uh, Preeti. One, of course, is in Kolkata. That's because of Ma Kali comments where the BJP is involved. But back in Guwahati, many parts of Assam. Now, that's that's a state where the Trinamool Congress wants to make inroads into. Do you think Mahua Moitro's comments, that silence of the top leadership of the Trinamool Congress over here, could actually damage politically the Trinamool Congress's chances in Assam or its ambitions? Preeti, if you can hear me. Yes, yes. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course, of course, we have to say that because uh, Ripun Bora recently joined the Trinamool Congress and uh, his, uh, the Trinamool Congress actually started its footsteps here in uh, Assam uh, in a very solid way. We could see a lot of people coming in, uh, party representatives coming in as well. But now after this comment of Mohua, because earlier also there were certain instances uh, where uh, Mohua was actually, Mohua Moitra was actually involved and uh, there were certain instances where we could see uh, the certain sentiments being heard and now this uh, this comes against the community of Ahoms uh, entirely mm -hmm. because uh, Gogoi, uh, Gogois are actually those people who served the Ahom kings and they were very prominent uh, uh, people uh, since a long time in uh, this state and they are a very integral part of the community uh, provided she would have written maybe made uh, Justice Gogoi because uh, again she has clarified it that she was actually telling about Justice Gogoi but now the people of Assam has already their sentiments have been heard so which is why they have said that even she even if she was indicating about Mr. Gogoi Justice Gogoi they will not accept it and she has to apologize to the people of Assam as she indicated to the Gogoi community uh, if she would have not known about uh, the how uh, Gogoi is related to a certain community she should have uh, mm -hmm. learned about it as far as the people who are now protesting against Mohua Moitre are uh, saying. Also, I have to tell you regarding okay. uh, Trinamool Congress uh, that uh, already these people who have been actually protesting against uh, Mohua's comment now are saying that as Trinamool has not shown much of their opposition, mm -hmm. okay. much of their reactions to their okay. her comments. Preeti, I'm, 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 Preeti, I'm just also going to interrupt you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry for a bit because we also have Shogato Mukhapadha is now joining us from Kolkata. Shogato, I was talking to Preeti about the fact that a Trinamool Congress Congress has remained silent over the Gogoi controversy and how it could affect their chances in Assam or will it affect their chances. But if you just see these pictures which are coming out of Kolkata for a party which was wanting to find a base back and I'm talking about the BJP, you think the Trinamool Congress has actually given them on a platter, especially the fact that no action has been taken against Mohua Moitro apart from condemning her comment? Well, you see, uh, when the BJP uh, first initiated uh, the protests uh, a day after uh, Moha Moitro made that uh, you know uh, that comment uh, on a on a public platform. Um, uh, you know the, the BJP had uh, at that point in time uh, given a deadline, an ultimatum of 72 hours for the police to act and uh, and take steps against Moha Moitro. So it was um, uh, it is evident that the, the, the BJP had already uh, you know planned its uh, next round of protests. Evidently, uh, uh, they were under the impression uh, that the police wouldn't do much. Uh, in terms mm. of, uh, uh, of, uh, of of taking those um, those uh, steps that the BJP wants the police to do, um, as a result of which the step was already planned from before. At this uh, protest that you see uh, in Kolkata today is is a follow is a is a is a natural follow up uh, of those of those planned protests. Obviously, the BJP doesn't want the issue to die down. Uh, it wants to hold on to people as long as possible and, and, and make uh, their public uh, presence, uh, their political footing, um, you know, more and more visible uh, on the streets of Kolkata and elsewhere in the state of Bengal. And that's exactly what we see, uh, you know, getting played out on the, on, uh, you know, on the streets of Kolkata today. And as well as, uh, you know, several other parts of, of the state, given the fact that the Trinamool Congress is now focusing on its... Uh, Central 21st July Mother's Day program rally, and uh, and 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 they know, and the BJP knows that this is the right time uh, to make its political presence more mm -hmm. and more uh, palpable uh, on the roads. Uh, uh, given the fact that we have not yet acted, the BJP obviously knew uh, that we uh, wouldn't take any, any further steps apart from registering those topics. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Shogato, for putting that into perspective. Thank you very much, Preeti, also to reporting from Guwahati on those kind of protests against her uh, comments of Mobaya Mutro. Uh, this and much, much more on news18.com.
News continues over here on CNN News 18. Lawrence Bishnoi, operating from inside the Tihar jail with impunity, had no qualms uh, ordering multiple hits on Salman Khan. The sculptor himself, the mean man behind this, is saying that there is actually no difference. Drugs to try and fund their terror operations and to also try and radicalize young impressionable minds while confining them to the throes of drug addiction. What is becoming increasingly worrying and problematic is that issues related to education is becoming so, so polarizing. Don't try to wrap up just yet. Why? You're talking about the back, right? No, no one is saying. No one is saying. Lyo is just... He's playing with a psyche all along. He does. Is it? Does he do this on sets as well? Do you guys feel very demotivated when you go home? See, I have realized... He's demotivated. What is happening? I wake up motivated. Okay, okay. And then you meet Ranbir. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. He's been demotivating me since morning. Every time you do interviews, you always ask the musty core questions. So when I'm allowed to do musty, why only you're allowed? That's fine, that's Correct. fine, that's fine. But on, don't pretend on sets, you're like very disciplined, very sweet, introvert. Have you been on my set? You're very, you're very disciplined on your set. I don't know, ask them, am you're, I? Yeah, He's is very he? disciplined. No, generally, he's genuinely. Up up. It's, it's, a, it's a shocking transition that happens. Okay, fine, it's a yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I've asked, good, okay. good to know. She doesn't now. want to receive the answer, but she's, yeah, she's <laughs> leaving yeah, with okay. it. Yeah, okay, 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 huh, yeah. huh. And as, in, as a co-star, he's okay. Or yeah, just about okay. Just about okay. He manages. Yeah. Manages, yeah. we manage, yeah. we jail of him. We sail through. You, <laughs> I, I know you did Kathak for this film, you prepared ah, for this yeah, film. Yeah, I did. did what Few about sessions. you? You prepared? I um, prepared falling down in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> for six months, I was no. just falling down chairs. It's a larger than life role and yeah. you're so real. No, no, let's, I mean, real. On, a, on a serious note, yeah, yeah, this film came with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because it's a part which I've never done in my life. Hmm. In the... It's a 15 year career that I've had. Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shamshera and Obali. Uh, it was a, a, a character which was filled with angst. It's something which, angst doesn't naturally come from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karan's one um, requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film, he said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry. Do you get angry? Mm -hmm. And when I told him, no, I don't get angry, his face had broken. He's like, you don't get angry? So how are you going to do this part? Uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here. I had mm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst. Yeah. And I think that really helped in um, portraying both these parts. I don't feel like you would be angry, but I feel like you're a little angsty. You can be angsty, no? Uh, a little bit about life, about life, the bigger question. No, but I, I don't know. Nobody's complained yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> except you. It's a good thing it your characters thing. Yeah. have so much angst. Like in Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, you're so angsty. Yeah, but those are all soul searching and hmm. those, the villain was me only. <laughs> yeah. Here finally I have Sanjay Dutt as a villain, so yeah. the angst has to be external, not internal. You know? Yeah, how was that facing off with him? Very intimidating already, he's like somebody who's a role model. And now you know, it would have been very intimidating, but the kind of person that Sanjay Dutt is, he makes you feel very comfortable, hmm. he makes you, he gives you a lot of love, hmm. he gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation hmm. that listen, it's for the movie, it's for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. From the day I signed this film, yeah. till the day he see, saw the teaser, the trailer, the film, he calls my entire family. Mm -hmm. My mother, my, my uncles, me, that listen, I'm so happy Ranbir's done this kind of film because these are the kind of films I want to see him in. What about you, Banya? Are you taking any pressure or are you just putting it all on this title character? No, I feel responsible because I'm part of a film. I will feel a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. in my own way. Mm -hmm. And I've, I mean, I wish I could be that detached to the uh, result of, you know, output of mm -hmm. all the hard work that everybody's mm -hmm. put in and after that, you know, you leave it to fate. Yeah. Uh, I think I get extremely, uh, I'm very sensitive when it comes to my work. Mm -hmm. I take it very seriously. But what time period is in certain two time periods? Eh? It starts in 1871. And the second time period is? When you see the film. <laughs> ah, okay. I know, I know because there are two time periods and there's like a reincarnation sort of curse. 
Well, the newly opened Lulu Mall in Lucknow is seeing a lot of controversy and now and several people from right-wing groups have reached the mall to read the Sundar Khan and they have been taken into police custody. The row came up after a video of some people who were doing namaz, offering namaz went viral from yesterday. Karni Sena ne plan kiya hai ki aaj wo Lulu Mall Lucknow ke bahar pradarshan karenge, Sundar Kand karenge aur yahan isi wajah se Lulu Mall ke bahar kafi sankhya mein police bal tainat kiya gaya hai. Tasviron mein aap dekh sakte hain kis tarikhe se Lulu Mall ke bahar bahari sankhya mein Lucknow police tainat hai. Sirf mall ke bahari nahi, mall ke andar aur jahan bhi camera pan karega, sadak ke dusre taraf aap dekh sakte hain ki kis tarikhe se police ki gaadiyan yahan par lagi hui hai. Har chappe chappe par police bal tainat hai. Kuch dinon pehle humne dekha tha ki jis tarikhe se video viral hua tha, isi Lulu Mall ke अंदर नवाज पढ़ते हुए उसके बाद से लगातार विवाद हो रहा है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर सिचुएशन बनाए रखने के लिए पुलिस किसी भी हद तक जाएगी बीते कल शाम को जिस तरीके से चार लोगों को पुलिस ने गिरफ्तार किया है जो लोग यहां पर बिना इजाजत यहां पर सुंदरकांड करने के लिए आए थे फिर बाद में पुलिस ने उन्हें जेल भेज दिया था और पुलिस का कहना है कि कोई भी शख्स यहां पर आकर ना ही प्रदर्शन कर सकते हैं ना ही नवाज पढ़ सकते हैं ना ही सुंदरकांड कर सकते हैं क्योंकि इस पूरे एरिया में धारा एक लगाई गई है Okay, in fact, uh, my colleague Amit Singh is joining me from outside the Lulu Mall in Lucknow. Uh, Amit, kya jo logo ne kal namaz padha tha, unke khilaaf koi action liya gaya hai? Dekhe, filal, uh, jis location pe is waqt mai maujood hoon, yaha par high voltage drama kuch dher pehle yaha par hua hai. Kuch Hindu organization ke sadat se, uh, right wing group ke jo sadat se thai, woh yaha pahunche thai, aur unhoon ne isi jaga pe, isi spot pe, yaha par jo hai, unhoon ne Hanuman Chalisa, they offered Hanuman Chalisa over here, aur isi wajah se yaha par aap dekhs paar raha hai, ki lamba queue lag chuka hai, gaadiyo ka jam lag chuka hai, chuki police yaha par kaafi subha se hi alert mood par thi, to jaysay hi yaha par Hindu organization ya kahe, to right wing ke jo sadat se, woh yaha par pahunche, uske baad police ne turan उन्हें हिरासत में ले लिया और इस वक्त उनको नजदीकी थाने में ले जाकर पूछताछ कर रही है जो लोग नमाज अदा किए थे नमाज अदा किए थे लुलू मॉल के अंदर उनके खिलाफ भी लुलू मॉल प्रशासन ने मुकदमा दर्ज कराया पुलिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन कर रही है बीते कल लखनऊ के चारबाग रेलवे स्टेशन से भी एक विजुअल जो है वो वायरल हुआ है एक वीडियो वायरल हुआ है जिसमें दिख रहा है कि एक शख्स नमाज पढ़ रहा तो हिंदू जो राइट विंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है वो फिलहाल इस वक्त बातें वो अधिकारियों से मांग कर रहे हैं कि वहां पर भी एफ दर्ज होनी चाहिए तो लेकिन यहां पर जो ये स्पॉट अभी आप देख पा रहे हैं यहां पर हाई वोल्टेज ड्रामा यहां पर देखा गया था थोड़ी देर पहले यहां पर देखा गया था जब हिंदू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के सदस्य राइट विंग ग्रुप के सदस्य यहां पर पहुंचे उन्होंने हनुमान चालीसा पढ़ा लेकिन पुलिस तुरंत यहां पर अलर्ट थी 144 has been imposed here, uh, 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 is, uh, यहां पर तो but क्या आगे के लिए कोई directive दिया गया है कि इस तरह के religious practices ना की जाए mall के अंदर? बिल्कुल मॉल प्रशासन ने साफ किया है कि आ, कि कोई भी शख्स यहां पर नमाज अदा नहीं कर सकता है कोई या फिर आ, पूजा पाठ नहीं कर सकता है कोई सुंदर कांड नहीं कर सकता है तो वहीं पुलिस ने भी 144 इंपोज कर दिया है ताकि लुलू मॉल के आसपास जो ये आ, कुछ दिन पहले उद्घाटन हुआ है खुद मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ यहां पर पहुंचे थे उन्होंने आपको उद्घाटन किया तो इस मॉल के आसपास के एरिया में कहीं पर भी कोई प्रदर्शन नहीं हो कोई आके सुंदर कांड ना करे धार्मिक स्थल पर हालांकि मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ ने खुद कहा हुआ था कि कोई भी शख्स जो है धार्मिक कार्यक्रम जो है वो सड़क पर ना करें सार्वजनिक जगहों पर ना करें तो इस वजह से इंस्ट्रक्शन साफ है कि कोई भी धार्मिक जो काम होते हैं वो इस सड़क पे नहीं होनी चाहिए पुलिस ने 144 लगाया हुआ जी जी बिल्कुल अमित थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग आज फ्रॉम लखनऊ इट्स अ न्यूली ओपनड मॉल बट इट्स ऑलरेडी मायर इन कंट्रोवर्सी दिस एंड मच मच मोर आप news18.com news continues over here on our after a short Win. I mean, come on, one team. I, I must tell you, you have a point. There is a last option, but I'm scared to say it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, please. This is the spot where you must tell us what you have because we want to give hope to people. Please, please tell me.
It's it's dangerous. It's dangerous for me. <laughs> dangerous? Why would it be dangerous for you? We're not even involved. I mean, we're India. That's Sri Lanka. Come on, no one watches this show. I'll tell you honestly. Okay, you can't see it. You just say what you want. We just abuse sometimes, and nobody complains. Go on. On that point, you have convinced me. You have convinced me. Oh, okay. Go on, please. Go on. There is uh, one place where billions of rupees are available. <laughs> billions of rupees available? Kaha pe? Kaha pe, sir? No questions asked. <laughs> what? I. I I can't believe this, really. No money trail, no auditing, no question of accountability. No question of accountability. What is this? Listen carefully. PM Relief Fund. <laughs> what? Uh, India's or yeah. Sri Lanka's? Ah, you are right. <laughs> Let's just say, you see this? <laughs> Sri Lanka. <laughs> 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 वैसे थोड़ा मुश्किल है आपको इसमें इमेजिन करना आपके पास जब ये फिल्म आई सो दिस इज अ फिल्म बेस्ड इन बिहार अ गर्ल फ्रॉम बिहार हुज लिविंग इन पंजाब उसकी जिंदगी में ड्रग्स आते हैं उसकी जिंदगी में परेशानियां आती हैं बाप का साया उसके सर से हट जाता है बहुत तरह की परेशानियों से वो अकेली लड़की गुजरती है और वो भी इतफाक से बड़ी बहन है घर की वट वॉज यू रियक्शन टू द स्क्रिप्ट इट्स स्टिल अ फन फिल्म Okay. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of humor, and there's a lot of uh, energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if she is going through these situations and difficulties, and she is in a serious tonality, then maybe I won't have so much interest in this film. Hmm. But because she is in a serious tonality, then maybe I won't have so much interest in this film. But because she is in a serious tonality, then maybe I won't have so much interest in this film. But because she is in a serious tonality, सिद्धार्थ जो हमारे निर्देशक हैं उनका टेक इस फिल्म पे इतना कोकी था और जो ओरिजिनल फिल्म है कोलमा वो कोकिला उसमें इतनी कॉमेडी थी तो वो देख के मैं काफ़ी एक्साइट हो गई यू ट्रेन योर सेल्फ एज एन एक्टर इन ली स्ट्रैट्सबर्ग स्कूल ऑफ थिएटर एंड फिल्म्स व्हाट इज योर बिगेस्ट लर्निंग फ्राम फ्राम लर्निंग एक्ट And now to some news from around the country and the world as well. There's heavy rainfall which has been havoc in several parts of Kerala. The Alua Mahadev Temple, which is situated on the bank of the Periyar River in Kochi, has been submerged. The water level has increased significantly in the Periyar River following incessant rainfall. The rural areas of Kozhikode, Malappuram, and Kannur districts have also witnessed water logging and minor landslides. The Sri Kand Mahadev Yatra has been affected due to extremely heavy rainfall and landslides in parts of Kulu and nearby areas. Sri Kand Mahadev Yatra, one of the toughest religious pilgrimages in the world, many glaciers have also to be crossed to see Bholinath at an alt altitude of over 18,000 feet. Well, amidst this incessant heavy rainfall in the Doda district of Jammu and Kashmir, the water level in the Chenab River has also increased. The government has issued a red alert in the low-lying coastal areas. of the state due to the heavy rainfall in the navsari district of gujarat several animals and birds have been rescued after a flood like situation arose in the district rescue teams have also provided food to these animals who have been stranded in the flood affected areas several ndrf team has also been deployed in gujarat to for rescue operations but for delhi it was a sigh of relief as parts of the city received heavy rainfall this morning According to a Met department, strong winds of 30 to 40 kilometers per hour has been predicted. Cloudy skies, very light rainfall are also on the forecast for Delhi on Sunday. Very light or light rainfall could persist from July 19th to 27. Well, monsoon mayhem in Maharashtra continues and has claimed 102 human lives since June the 1st. The state disaster management department has said that two deaths are reported in the last 24 hours due to the rainfall and flood related incidents. Prime Minister Modi has inaugurated a 296 km long Bundelkhand expressway today. The expressway was built at a cost of 14850 crore rupees. This four lane expressway will pass through several Uttar Pradesh districts. Foundation stone for this expressway was laid by the Prime Minister in 2020. Project has been completed within 28 months आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के कर कमलों से 296 किलोमीटर लंबे इस एक्सप्रेस वे का उद्घाटन होने जा रहा है यह बुंदेलखंड की अर्थव्यवस्था को और उत्तर प्रदेश की अर्थव्यवस्था को एक नया आयाम प्रदान करेगा एक्सप्रेस वे 
बुंदेलखंड की गौरवशाली परंपरा को समर्पित है योगी जी के नेतृत्व वाली सरकार में कानून व्यवस्था भी सुधरी है और कनेक्टिविटी भी तेज से सुधर रही है But the Samajwadi Party leader Akhilesh Yadav has taken a dig at the UP government on this expressway project. He shared a video of the under construction expressway on Twitter and asked what is the hurry to inaugurate it even before the project has been The Gujarat Special Investigation Team has made a massive claim that Tista Settlewood received a Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Modi government. SIT is probing charges of fabrication of evidence and conspiracy linked to 2002 riots against activist Tista Settlewood. After SIT made shocking revelations about Tista Settlewood, the BJP spokesperson took a jibe at the Congress and its leader Sonia Gandhi. He said that Tista was not just working to destroy Prime Minister Modi or the Gujarat government but also wanted to defame the entire state. He went on to say that Sonia Gandhi through Ahmed Patel tried to destroy the Prime Minister. Ahmed Patel ji ke madhyam se Sonia ji ne Narendra Modi ji ko gherne ki cheshta ki unhe apmanit aur unhe किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और ये पूरे षडयंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है तीस लाख का पहला किस्त सोनिया गांधी जी ने तीसता शीतलवाड को दिया अहमद पटेल जी हमारे बीच में नहीं है अहमद पटेल जी ने तो केवल डिलीवर किया The under Congress, however, hit back at the BJP's claims and said that when elections are close by and they are approaching in Gujarat, he, the prime, he, uh, uh, that's the reason why this issue has been raised. He also alleged that the SIT chief, which had given a clean chit to the then chief minister, was awarded. He was made the ambassador after years of retirement and also alleged that the BJP always brings name of, drags the name of a Muslim leader. When Gujarat comes to Gujarat, भारतीय जनता पार्टी नरेंद्र मोदी जी और उनका जो इकोसिस्टम है वो नए नए थ्योरी सामने लाता है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे हर बार चुनाव आता है तो आप कभी किसी मुस्लिम नेता का नाम जरूर लाएंगे कांग्रेस पार्टी इस तरह की राजनीति में विश्वास नहीं रखती Four people have been arrested in connection to the Patna terror module. While three were arrested on Thursday, the police arrested another last evening and have found Pakistani links in this case. Now, according to the police, the messages which were found in the group were communal, extremist and objectionable, unlawful and unconstitutional as well. The WhatsApp group also had people from India, Pakistan and Yemen. Kal ek aur mahatapun giraftari hui hai. Jo giraftar abhyukt hai, uska naam hai Margoob. अहमद दानिश एक ऐसा नंबर पता चला था जिसमें बहुत ही आपत्तिजनक पोस्ट राष्ट्र विरोधी वीडियोस, नारे इत्यादि उनका प्रचार और प्रसार किया जा रहा था ये व्यक्ति गजवा हिंद नाम का संस्था के साथ जुड़ा हुआ था well, Prime Minister, Union Ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari, besides the party president, Mr. J.P. Nadda, will all be present at this meet. The last date for filing of nomination papers for the poll is 19th of July and election is on 6th of August. The political advisory committee of the Ahmadmi Party met and decided to support Yashwan Sinha in the presidential elections. This meeting was attended by the Delhi Chief Minister Mr Arvind Kejriwal and other members of the PSC which also includes the Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia. Arvind Kejriwal ji ke adhyakshta mein party ki political affairs committee ki meeting hui. Ek mat se political affairs committee ne tay kiya hai ki is chunav mein महामहिम राष्ट्रपति पद के लिए जो चुनाव हो रहा है उस चुनाव में हम लोग विपक्ष के उम्मीदवार यशवंत सिन्हा जी का समर्थन करेंगे Meanwhile Chief Minister of Maharashtra Eknath Shinde has slammed the last minute decisions which were taken by the Uddhav government he said that some decisions were taken by the Maharashtra Agadi Sarkar when a flow test was being asked and therefore are illegal 
Shinde has also announced that Aurangabad will be renamed Chhatrapati Shambhaji Nagar and Usman Ustanavad will also be renamed as Dharashiv. In fact, the support for the Ekna Chinde camp continues to grow as 10 more Sena corporators joined him today. All the corporators are from the Ratnagari area. Earlier this week, Uddhav Thakre had led the Shiv Sena, the uh, spokesperson Sheetal Matre also extended her support to Ekna Chinde. As a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration, Jammu and Kashmir government has formed a high-level committee to implement the recent decision which was taken on the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign. The move was welcomed by the BJP, but the PDP has called it a childish one. Mehbooba Mufti, bar bar bharti jhande ko lekar ke, jo Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav manaya ja raha hai, us par sawal khade karte hain, tiranga ki beizti karna. इनका शुरू से काम रहा है 70 साल इन्होंने उस झंडे को प्रायोरिटी दी जिसके कारण से अलगाववाद आतंकवाद और परिवारवाद ये सब चीजें चलती रही दिस इज येट अनदर डिस्ट्रैक्शन मूव ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट नेवर वांट्स टू एड्रेस द मेन इश्यूज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट पॉवर्टी अदर होस्टाइल इश्यूज फेसिंग द कंट्री द कॉमनवेल्थ they keep on distracting, they keep on generating controversy out of nothing, out of no issues. A Pakistani woman was nabbed on the Chakkanda Bagh line of control in Pooch by the security forces. The infiltrator was nabbed in the forward sector where infiltration took uh, place in an attempt a few days back. The woman was handed over to Jammu and Kashmir. Rubaiya Saeed, daughter of former Union Home Minister, uh, Mufti Mohammad Sayy has identified Yaseen Malik and three others as her abductors in the 1989 kidnapping case. Sayyid was kidnapped on 8th of December and was held hostage till December 13th, 1989, but she was released in exchange for five known militants of the JKLF. Army saved five youth from joining the terror tanks in Jammu and Kashmir. All five were planning to go to Pakistan for weapons training in the lashkar e taiba camps. Section 13, 1818B of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act has been invoked against the recruiters as well about the whole conspiracy. Now, in order to revive the dying Kashmiri art of paper mache, Shafia Bashir, an artist from the Lal Bazar area of Srinagar, has started making paper mache designs on things like Kashmiri Kangri. Shafia said that she has got a very good response all over from the world as well as for the revival of the culture and people now appreciate and support her in her initiative. The Amarnath Yatra has been stopped from both the sides due to heavy rainfall. The main route would be examined and if not found slippery, only then will the pilgrims be allowed to go there. However, as weather clears, it would be allowed via the choppers. The NIA court has sent three accused in the Udaipur murder of Kanhaiya Lal Kumar to jail in judicial custody. The main accused goes Muhammad Riyaz Atari and Farhad Muhammad were sent to jail. After a remand period ended, they were presented in court today. Kanaya Lal was killed on 28th of June for supporting the ex-BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma. Delhi police has apprehended four minor boys for firing at a man in Jahangirpuri on 15th of July. The said man has been hospitalised. The accused have said that a man had beaten up the father of one of the minors seven months back and that they had shot at him to take revenge. Three men have been arrested for allegedly gang raping a 16-year-old girl in a moving car. She was picked by two of the three accused from Vasant Vihar. According to the police, they went to Mahipalpur, consumed liquor, took her to a secluded place and raped her. FIR has been registered under the POXO Act. Well, no retest will be held for those who missed yesterday's common university entrance test for undergraduate admissions to the central universities. This after reports from several cities said that students missed the test due to sudden changes in the center. Chairman of the University Grants Commission, Jagdish Kumar, has denied that no retest will be held. <laughs> Union Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, Hardi Puri, has inaugurated at 166 CNG stations through video conferencing last evening. Stations were launched under the government's cleaner fuel alternative. In 2014, the country had only about 900 CNG stations. Government apes now to reach the target of 8,000 stations over the next two years. Happy I am personally when we are doing the inauguration of no less than 166 newly commissioned CNG stations in different parts of the country established by Gale and its uh, 
subsidiaries and joint ventures. With an investment of rupees 400 crores, this will also generate 1,000 direct employment opportunities. The 16th round of the India-China military talks will be held tomorrow on the Indian side of the LAC in eastern Ladakh. India has been pressing for progress in overall bilateral ties and for quick disengagement of troops from all the remaining friction points in eastern Ladakh. An FIR has been registered against a Trinamool Congress Member of Parliament, Mohua Moitro, for comparing Gogoi to the worst sexual assault by the Jatiya Sangrami Sena Assam. The group's chief, Chitu Barua, has expressed anger against her and sought an apology from her as well. Well, the centre has listed 24 bills, including the Cantonment Bill, the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill and the Insolvency and the Bankruptcy Court Amendment Bill for introduction during the monsoon session of Parliament, which is going to begin from 18. Now, ahead of the monsoon session of Parliament, an advisory has also been issued to members who refrain from distribution of any pamphlets, leaflets or placards in the House. This advisory comes at a time when the opposition parties have created a huge furor over the advisory on demonstrations and dharnas within the parliament complex. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, however, has called a meeting of the leaders of all political parties at 4pm later today ahead of the monsoon session. Speaker is going to brief them on the preparations related to the session. The INB Ministry has started a process to amend the registration of press and periodicals bill to include digital news. Digital media in India is now going to be regulated, will also have to be registered and you can and they can face action for violation under this new law. Digital news publishers have to apply for registration and will be required to do so within 90 days of the law coming into it. A Delhi court has granted bail to Alt News co-founder Mohammad Zubair in connection with the 2018 tweet case weeks after he was arrested. The bail has been granted on a personal bond and a surety of 50,000 rupees. The fact checker, however, will not be able to leave the country without the permission of the court. The Indian High Commission has called on a Lankan speaker today morning. According to a tweet, India has appreciated Parliament's role in upholding democracy and constitutional framework, especially during this crucial time. India has also conveyed that it's going to continue to be supportive of democracy, stability and economic recovery in the country. The question of course is that who is going to be the next president of Sri Lanka, which is going to be selected, uh, expected to be elected on 20th of July to complete the remainder of the former president Gotabaya Rajpaksha's term after his resignation on 14th of July. Prime Minister Ranil Bikrama Singhe, Lankan MP Peruma and opposition leader Sajid Premadasa are also in the fray to run for the president's post. Our party is SJB and we have an alliance, SJB alliance. This is the main opposition party. Parliamentary representation is lopsided. It does not reflect the aspirations of the people of the country because Today, the Rajapaksa ideology is a failed ideology. The majority that was attained in 2020 will be deciding on the future presidency. Well, there's more trouble ahead for Gotabaya. Singapore is not keen on keeping him for long. Singapore is unlikely to extend his permission to stay beyond 15 days. Now, according to sources, Gotabaya has approached India, but India has denied this much. Sri Lankan cricketer Shamika Karunaratne had to wait in a long queue at the fuel station to fill up his car after two days. A young international cricketer who made his international debut in 2019 is now upset with the recent crisis. He said that due to the current situation in the island, he's missing out on his cricket practice. The last uh, two, uh, two days, I didn't uh, went anywhere else. I just was in the queue for two days and I just got my fuel and uh, so struggling at right, right now. So. Even if we got, we only got for like 10,000 rupees, and uh, that's only for like two to maximum two to three days. I think the people are like uh, saying that the fuel is not coming for another two, th two, one, one week. I guess, I think. A central team has visited Kerala after a case of monkey monkeypox was detected in the state. The central team met with the health department officials regarding this case. The team is also going to visit Kollam district from where the patient is. India has reported around 20,000 COVID-19 cases, 56 deaths over the last 24 hours. Active cases now comprise 
30.32% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate was recorded at 98.48%. The daily positivity rate was recorded as 8.40%. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has tweeted to announce that more than 5 crore people have received the benefits of the Sanjeevni teleconsultation on so far. The rollout of the Sanjeevni India, e-Sanjeevni in India is supposedly the first of its kind of digital transformation in the delivery of health services at a national scale by a developing country. China's workers face economic pains from zero COVID as the country also reports its worst quarterly performance in two years. China's zero-COVID policy has inflicted devastating economic pain across the country. The policy has brought the cities to a grinding halt. There are people who haven't been able to access their own savings since April. Was that your life's savings? Yeah, for sure. I worked almost 10 years and that's all I have with my family. I'm, I'm losing my weight, I'm losing my, you know, uh, my mind. Just in June, massive protests broke out at the government building for five straight days, for more than 12 hours a day, only to be quashed by the cops violently. Local authorities later promised to start giving small payments to some such depositors. But still, there is no clear policy with people left in lurch. New York's chief medical examiner has said that Donald Trump's first wife, Vivana, has died of blunt impact injuries to her torso. According to U.S. media reports, the police are investigating if she died after falling down the stairs as the circumstance of her death has not been specified. Now, Britain's Brett office has declared a national emergency, issuing a red extreme heat warning for parts of England for Monday and Tuesday next week. Temperatures are also likely to reach a record high. Much of Europe is facing a heat wave that has pushed temperatures into mid-40s in some areas. Kaliningrad is a transit deal. It's a setback to Lithuania. It's a ruling in favour of Russia. Now, no Russian goods can be stopped from reaching Kaliningrad. The EU, in fact, uh, Lithuania had stopped Russia from sending any sanctioned goods via rail to Kaliningrad. The rail link to Russia via Lithuania uh, is now going to be well and truly functional. Russia is welcoming the decision. It says it is working on the front print of getting in these goods from Lithuania. North Korea slammed Ukraine for severing diplomatic ties between the two nations after Pyongyang said it was formally recognizing two self-proclaimed pro-Russian republics in the east of the war-torn country. This came after Ukraine had cut off its official relationship with the nuclear-armed state in response to Pyongyang recognizing the so-called Donetsk People's Republic and Lugansk People's Republic. As the race to become Britain's next Prime Minister has gained pace, caretaker Premier Boris Johnson has reportedly told his allies to back anyone but Rishi Sunak, according to a media report. Johnson, who resigned as a leader of the ruling Conservative Party on 7th of July, has been urging the defeated Tory leadership candidates not to back the former Chancellor. Britain's Met Office weather forecast on Friday has declared a national emergency, issuing a red extreme heat warning for parts of England for Monday and Tuesday next week when temperatures could reach a record high. The US House of Representatives has adopted two bills which is aimed at protecting access to abortion after the Supreme Court has ruled that individual states can ban or restrict the procedure. The legislation passed by the Democratic-controlled House is unlikely to advance in the Senate, where 10 Republican votes would be needed to bring the measures to the floor. U.S. President Joe Biden has said that he had confronted the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman over the attacks on dissidents during his visit to Saudi Arabia. Prince Mohammed drew global outrage for the 2018 killing of the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the kingdom's Istanbul consulate, an operation U.S. intelligence services said he had approved. BCCI has moved Supreme Court seeking to amend its constitution with regard to tenure of its office bearers, including President Saurav Ganguly and Secretary Jay Shah. Now, BCCI, during an AGM in December 2019, has proposed six amendments which had barred the BCCI and the State Board office bearers from holding office for more than six consecutive years. And in a video which is winning over the internet, former India stars MS Dhoni and Suresh Raina were spotted enjoying the second ODI at Lords. 
The CSK Twitter handle has shared the video where the two of them stepped out of the car into Lords with backing track to go with it. The second ODI between India and England was a star-studded affair with the likes of Sachin Tendulkar, Shaurav Ganguly, MS Dhoni and Suresh Raina in attendance. A day after the game, Master Blaster Sachin Tendulkar shared a photograph with the West Indies legend Sir Garfield Sobers on Twitter. Manchester United has signed a Christian Eriksen as a free agent on a three-year contract. The 30-year-old switch to Red Devils complete an incredible return after his brush with death last year. Eriksen has suffered a cardiac arrest on the pitch in Copenhagen while playing for Denmark at the European Championship and was forced to leave the Inter Milan after recovering due to a series of health regulations. Biologists have tracked the last dolphin pod in Rio de Janeiro's bay. Researchers say the last pod of dolphins in the bay shows signs of some recovery where once thousands roamed through the rich fishing grounds offshore but falling victims to pollution and overfishing, depleting the food. The Academy Museum is all set to honour Julia Roberts at the second annual gala in October. The Oscar winner will be presented with the Icon Award in recognition of the significant global cultural impact of her career. Roberts has won an Oscar in 2000 for her leading role in Erin Brockovich. And actor Juliana Moore has been selected to serve as president of the main competition jury for the Venice International Film Festival this year. The Oscar-winning actor is going to preside over a jury that includes French director Audrey Devan, author Casio and Iranian actor as well. That's it for me from now. My news continues over here on CNN News 18. On Bits to Billions this weekend, we have an entrepreneur who wants to make an India for the world, Amrit Acharya, the co-founder and CEO of Zetwork. Is it exciting to train for engineering and actually do engineering? Like I graduated with a degree in electrical engineering, but I ended up doing nothing close to electrical engineering for for many years. In fact, I was at McKinsey for a bit. At my heart, I always felt that calling that, you know, I really like building things. Why did you decide to choose um, an unsexy industry, so to speak? While it was unsexy, for us, it was very sexy. Because, <laughs> because we, we understood the pain points in a way which felt unique to us. Hmm. Uh, it felt very authentic to us that these are the problems we are passionate about. And I felt that I wanted to drive some change. लोगों को ये लगता है कि जिसने गरीबी नहीं देखी वो क्या जाने गरीब लड़की के दिल में क्या चल रहा होगा ये सही है ये गलत लेकिन वही तो काम है हमारा काम है आपका ओके वही तो काम है हमारा एंड आई अग्री अगर एक इंसान अपने देश को नहीं जानता अपने देश के लोगों को नहीं जानता अगर yeah. उसने जिंदगी ना देखी हो yeah. तो वो कनेक्ट कैसे करेगा या कैसे करेगी बट हैविंग सेट दैट गरीबी इज अ रिलेटेबल प्रॉब्लम इट्स द इट्स लाइक Objectively, it's 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 bad, right? Yeah. It's a struggle. Objectively, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you can't put your food in your house, or if your house is not empty, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel bedroom, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you sleep in a five-star hotel and i used to have this problem jahan main kehti thi ke whatever would happen in my life because people would keep saying but people are suffering here people are suffering there yeah. i'd be like ha mera problem kya hai but yeah. that's not healthy also yeah kyunki har insaan ke liye mm. there will always be someone more privileged more than privileged. you of course there will always be then no one has a right to complain of but course. the point is that sab log koi na koi cheez se guzar kuch na kuch चीजों से गुजर रहे हैं ना देर सम वन मोर प्रिवलेज देन यू देर सम वन मोर प्रिवलेज देन एनी वन इन दिस रूम बट दैट मेक द प्रॉब्लम लेस रेलेवेंट सो द नेम ऑफ द फिल्म इज गुड लक जेरी एंड देर आर टू सिस्टर्स जेरी एंड चेरी चेरी एंड अ मदर एंड दीज थ्री वीमेन इन बिहार दीज थ्री बिहारी वीमेन इन पंजाब आर लेफ्ट टू फेंड फॉर देम सेल्व्स साइकोलॉजिकली इन अ इन अ हाउस होल्ड सेटअप वेर देर ओनली टू सिस्टर्स जो बड़ी वाली होती है वो घर का बेटा बन जाती है हैव यू एवर रिलेटेड टू हर कैरेक्टर and how do you feel at being the elder girl of the family a little bit sometimes you feel like you have to i mean i'm not the eldest mm. anshula didi is the eldest but uh, but many times i feel like there are some 
sacrifices that I'll want to make to ensure that my sister and my father yeah. are in a situation that would make us all happy. And like, I've not had to, hmm. but, but I know that if push comes to shove, I would I do, it. do it. And I think that is an elder sister thing. Elder sister sy syndrome. Yeah, I think so a little <laughs> bit. I think that you automatically think that you're kind of the sacrificial lamb, lamb a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> and finally, what are the kind of directors you would like to work with? I want comedy, I want comedy, I want comedy, I want comedy. Rohit Shetty sir, please cast me. I will audition me. I will audition me. And uh, I really want to work with Karan. Hmm. I really want to work with Bhansali. So I really, I really want to work with Neeraj Khewan. I was going to say that. Great. I want to see many more films. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 So how could I mess it up? It's from Shera, guys. Oh and my God, welcome I'm so to the team. She Hi. did it. Proud of you. Well she did it. I'm well proud well of you. She did it. This five run be his worst yeah, attempt. Yeah, he played with the psyche. He does, and not just this, Vani. I must tell you, playing with psyche. Right now, any time I mention Ranbir, my friends have been saying, you're not invited. Because the last time we spoke, I asked you about your wedding. So very sweetly and very sin sincerely looking into my eyes, said, I'm not getting married. No, 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 no. Not now, not in April. So I'm like, he said he's not getting married. And he I'm, did. And yeah. he didn't invite you. Exactly. But he, he said he's not going me. to. He didn't invite you. But as he well. said that to all of us. He said that to all of you, oh. right? So is there another special event as well that yes. we have that? Good afternoon, I'm Pallavi Ghosh. We begin with some news coming in from Karnataka, which is now once again under the scan. The Drip Irrigation Distributors Association has written a letter to a Prime Minister against a horticulture minister, Muniratna Naidu, for allegedly demanding 8.5% commission to release a subsidiary funds to the farmers. The association has alleged that the drip irrigation companies deduct 8.5% commission from the dealers to pay to the minister. Association is now demanding a judicial investigation. Ritu is going to be joining us uh, live on this story. So, Ritu. Okay, I'm going to try and go across to Ritu in a bit, but this is going to be a huge embarrassment, especially with elections not too far away. But clearly, the horticulture minister is under fire. The letter has gone to the prime minister's office. It remains to be seen whether any action is going to be taken against the horticulture minister by either the state government, the chief minister, or the prime minister's office. Itself. But before we get some more details on it, a quick recap of what the issue is all about. And the, that is because the Drip Irrigation Distributors Association has alleged that the horticulture minister has demanded 8.5% as a commission to release any funds to the farmers. Association also alleged that the Drip Irrigation companies deduct 8.5% of this commission from the dealers to pay to the minister. Association is now demanding that a judicial investigation takes place. This will be one huge corruption charge against a sitting minister of the Bombay government and therefore the opposition which is there, which is the Congress party would want to raise this up as an issue uh, uh, against the BJP. Ritu is now with us. So Ritu, how serious would you say these allegations are? Are you picking up anything by way of your sources where the chief minister is aware of these allegations and does the chief minister plan to do something about it? See, it seems like the Chief Minister Basuraj Bommai is not aware about it, though the association in fact says that they have also written a letter one month back to the CM, but they sought no uh, action that was being taken from the uh, CM himself. So that's the reason they have written another letter now to directly to the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, thinking that this will at least get them some kind of a justice, writing a letter to the Prime Minister directly. But this is not for the first time that we're getting to see something like this in the Karnataka, but previously as well when we saw the allegations against uh, K.S. Ishwarappa, the, the former minister, in fact, uh, uh, there were uh, allegations against him about the 40 percent commission charges from the contractors. Uh, so that time, too, we saw how the Contractors Association wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi as they also lost hope in the, in the uh, BJP government here in the Karnataka and they had to write directly to PM, but uh, thinking that that will at least get them some justice because this has become, in a way, uh, 
a continuous practice of uh, the ministers as what well, the kind of allegations we got to uh, hear from these associations. But now this is the another allegation that has been made against the horticulture minister Muniratna, where they are saying that 8.5 percent commission, in fact, has been asked from the uh, dealers of. of from the companies, in fact, the irrigation companies cut 8.5% of commission from the dealers for the subsidiaries that is given to the farmers. So this is another serious allegation that we're getting to hear in the Karnataka. But we'll have to look and see now. We'll have to wait and see, in fact, that what the uh, CM is going to tell on this particular uh, thing. Also, we'll also, again, the other thing that uh, we'll have to wait for is like whether Prime Minister's uh, office will write back to this particular association. Because remember, previously as well, when the Contractors Association wrote letter to PM, they some, they somewhere uh, sort of uh, a, a word back from the Home Ministry office, but this time what exactly will happen is something that we'll have to wait and see. Ah, okay. So, uh, so, so, you know, obviously the opposition is going to be waiting in the wings because they've always claimed that whether it was the Adirappa earlier, whether it's the Bombay government now, corruption hasn't really end. Don't you think then the pressure is going to mount on the BJP in the state you know, ahead of the elections to ensure that at least this image correction takes place? Yes, the opposition is already up in hands uh, from the time that the 40% allegations were being made against the uh, government here in the state. But this time too, now that uh, they are of course going to raise this particular issue as well. Now remember you have seen whether it is about the 40% commission charges or whether it is about the PSI scam. The opposition is uh, in fact up in arms about all this and have always stated uh, uh, time and again about the uh, corruption that is taking place in this particular government. So this is going to be yet another uh, serious issue that uh, an opposition will raise uh, uh, in a short time that uh, we'll have to see of what kind of uh, uh, another set of decision that the opposition will make because we saw how many rallies the protests were in fact being made uh, and the pressure that was being mounted on the BGP government to sack the pro former minister K.S. Ishwarappa as well but in fact that the investigation is on now what exactly the kind of step the government will take in this uh, issue is something that has to be seen now. Okay, thank you very much Rizu, for putting us into perspective. So that pressure is going to mount and let's see whether any action is going to be taken. But we're going to shift focus now back to the presidential polls which are going to take place on 19th of this month. Well, uh, Prakash, ja uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, Prakash Ambedkar has tweeted and I quote him, I'm requesting Mr. Yeshwan Sinha to withdraw from the presidential race because many scheduled castes and scheduled tribe members across parties are joining to vote in favour of Madam Draupadi Murbu. That's going to be, and that is uh, even as you have a break in the opposition unity when it comes to the presidential elections. Remember, uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy's party, then there's Chandra Babu Naidu TDP, then of course uh, JMM, which is an ally of the Congress party in Jharkhand. All of them have decided, not just that, Shiv Sena too, all of them have decided to vote and support Draupadi Murmu, who happens to be the government's or the BJP's candidate for Rashtrapati's post. Let me go across to Maria. Maria, I have a doubt if Yashwan Sinha is actually going to withdraw from the race. But clearly, this is just going to make it look like political parties like the Congress and the Srinamool Congress are not supporting someone who is actually emerged from the grassroots. Yes, that's right. I think the concerns being raised by likes of uh, Prakash Ambedkar, um, and, uh, Ambedkar and others is that uh, should politicians be on the wrong side of the history because India will be getting its first woman tribal president. Yes, first tribal president and the second woman president on 21st. So uh, with the numbers clearly overwhelmingly uh, Pallavi stacked in favor of the NDA, it is going to be a smooth sail for Draupadi Murmu. Um, Yashwan Sinha's uh, fight is more of uh, tokenism, a uh, symbolism that the opposition always puts up a candidate uh, because they also want to showcase their numbers. But we have seen breaking of ranks that has happened also. Uh, we have seen how Shiva Sena has broken ranks with other allies of the Mahavikas Agadi. Uh, there is also a Jharkhand Mukti Morcha, the only tribal party of India which has come out in support of Draupadi Murmu. And hence, that is the reason why the tweet by uh, Prakash uh, Ambedkar becomes interesting, rather, in which he has asked Yashwan Sinha to withdraw. Uh, you know, Pallavi, interesting parallels are being drawn between Ramnath Kovin and also, uh, you know, Meera Kumar's fight. And now that is happening between Yashwan mm. Sinha and Draupadi Murmu. Uh, Draupadi Murmu and, uh, uh, you know, Ramnath Kovin, both of them come from humble background. They have risen in the ranks. 
Uh, they were seen as dark horses, completely uh, not those who are entitled or have a background. These are uh, representatives of ordinary Indians and perhaps symbolic of that hope that anybody can rise to the top constitutional office in the country. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. But it's going to be nonetheless a very, very interesting election, though the results are almost foregone. But it is also going to change the entire gambit of political equations. Many thanks, Maria, for putting that into perspective. Let's go across to Gujarat, where some important development has taken place. The Surat police has arrested three people, including a woman, for threatening a businessman, Vishal Patel, for posting a picture of the suspended BJP leader Nupur Sharma on Instagram. Vishal Patel had posted a picture of the former spokesperson on his Instagram page after which he has received death threats from many people. A case has now been registered at the Umrah police station. The complainant had immediately removed the picture and has apologised. He had a business account in his business account. He had posted a post in Nupur Sharma. After posting a post, he had a message on the comments and threatening messages. वो मैसेजेस जो है ये जब उसको आए तो उसके बाद जो है पुलिस में उसने कंप्लेन दिया था उस कंप्लेन के आधार पे पुलिस ने जो तपास इन्वेस्टिगेशन किया टोटल तीन लोग उसमें आईडेंटिफाई हुए थे जो तीनों लोगों पे पुलिस ने ऑफेंस रजिस्टर किया है उसमें जो तीन अभी अरेस्ट हुए हैं उसमें एक का नाम मोहम्मद अयान मोहम्मद नेम आतशबाजी वाला दूसरा राशिद रफ़ीक भूरा तीसरा जो लेडी है आलिया मोहम्मद अली गागन Okay, let me just go across to my colleague Kritesh Patil who is joining us from Surat. Uh, Kritesh, uh, kya aur koi precautions liya gaya hai? Kya Instagram page pe jaake investigations aur ki jayegi? Kyunki koi shayad chance lena nahi chahiyega. बिल्कुल जिस तरह से नूपुर शर्मा का केस को लेके पूरे देश में विवाद चल रहा है एक के बाद एक दो हत्या के मामले सामने आ चुके हैं वैसे में सूरत के राहुल राज मॉल में स्नो पार्क करके एक फॉर्म चलाने वाले व्यापारी ने अपनी ही बिजनेस इंस्टाग्राम अकाउंट पे जिस तरह से नूपुर सपोर्ट का मैसेज दिखा था उसके बाद उनको इंस्टाग्राम मैसेज पे धमकी आना शुरू हुई थी हालांकि इस व्यापारी ने सूरत के उमरा पुलिस थाने में मामला दर्ज करवाया था जिसके बाद इंस्टाग्राम पेज के थ्रू पुलिस ने तफ्तीश शुरू की थी और छह लोगों के सामने मामला दर्ज करके तीन लोगों की गिरफ्तारी की है जिस तरह से ये पूरा मामला है क्योंकि आगे भी सूरत में दो लोगों को धमकी मिल चुकी है राजस्थान के उदयपुर में एक युवक की हत्या हो चुकी है जिसके चलते सूरत ने पूरे मामले में गंभीरता रखी है और खास करके जो व्यापारी था उनका इंस्टाग्राम जो पेज था उस पर आगे तफ्तीश भी सूरत पुलिस ने शुरू की है Thank you very much for getting us those details. We're staying with Gujarat. The Gujarat Special Investigation Team investigating the Tista Settle Award case has now made a huge claim. It says that Tista in fact received a Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Narendra Modi government. SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that Tista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize the government by hook or crook in 2002. Now apart from this, the SIT claimed that the Congress political secretary to Sonia Gandhi, Ahmed Patel, in fact gave funds to Tista to the tune of 30 lakh rupees to help her in her mission to destabilize the government. Congress has responded calling the SIT's claims as completely baseless and mischievous. Sambit Patra of the BJP has of course put the blame on Sonia Gandhi's shoulder saying that she was the one who was the real driving force. She tried to destroy the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi through Ahmed Patel. Ahmed Patel ji ke madhyam se Sonia ji ne Narendra Modi ji ko gherne ki cheshta ki unhe apmanit aur unhe kis prakar se niskashit ki a jaye is ki cheshta ki और ये पूरे षडयंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया My father's uh, home residence and office has been open to one and all. I mean, it is, you can walk in and walk out anytime. I'm sure the media is very well aware of it. 
so i um, have uh, i i have never been involved in his work so i really can't comment on it i have i've i've not i've i've been uh, this was 20 25 years ago we were much younger probably maybe away at college or university also have no clue do you not remember 2017 there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father and i don't know where the terrorist is right now and like i said uh, in tw- the election before that uh, there was isi and uh, some conspiracy conspiracy in pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister so every election uh, some controversy comes up i i wouldn't be surprised if 2027 also has ahmed patel turning up into some controversy again Maria Shakil is also joining us now on the phone line on this Maria uh, you know we were discussing this earlier this is now going to be a slugfest between the BJP and the Congress party and the Congress's question is why now Yes that's right and they are linking it to Gujarat elections uh, but uh, the BJP's uh, view is that this is the affidavit of the SIT what can they say about it if uh, the Supreme Court has made uh, certain observations in the case uh, completely giving a clean chit to the former gujarat chief minister prime minister narendra modi uh, then uh, what can the bjp do if you remember pallavi home minister amit shah had then spoken out and said that there was a larger conspiracy in which tisa skitalwad had played a very important role and if you look at the affidavit pallavi which is now there in the public domain it says clearly that uh, that uh, late ahmed patel the then member of parliament from rajya sabha and political advisor to the president of the international conference had uh, you know played an important role and the entire conspiracy in many ways was more done at the behest of the congress party that there was much more more uh, in in terms of their support which was political financial and also material in carrying out what was seen as a target a targeted campaign against against then gujarat chief minister Uh, so i think the bjp senses a political opportunity they realize that uh, be it the sit report or uh, sit affidavit or the supreme court's observations are in their favor and they would be going all out to ensure that what happened several years ago a historical wrong is corrected okay and we also have ananya bhatnagar who tracked the court for us ananya beyond all this slug fest or politics between the two sides because obviously both the bjp and congress will do it in terms of legal sanctity in terms of legal strength do you think it could turn out to be a watertight case against tista settlewad uh well, yes uh, pallavi as, as i was pointing out to you earlier as well that this can come out to be a very very watertight case but what is uh, really required is that to support these statements to support the statement of these witnesses which have been recorded under 161 and 164 which are already admissible before the court uh the sit would need to collect some kind of documentary evidence some kind of circumstantial evidence which they would definitely in the course of time because remember this is a not a affidavit that has been filed in connection it is not a charge sheet first of all it is an affidavit that has been filed in response to the bail application that has been filed by tista sethilwad and if this affidavit is itself exploding then what would be the charge sheet is what i see legally uh, that uh, when the charge sheet into this whole particular fir that is uh, registered for alleged criminal conspiracy to frame people to in fact de establish the government in uh, the state of um, gujarat at that point of time is there then what would be the charge sheet into this whole particular case and this is merely an affidavit on uh, a, a reply a short reply in fact to the bail application of tista sidlwad and what this goes on to say is also what i'll tell our viewers is that uh, she had received a padma shri award in exchange of what she has done in a kind of a false and larger conspiracy to frame the then government the then chief minister narendra modi led government to blame the, blame it on the government for the 2002 riots apart from that she had also received around 30 lakh rupees uh, first 5 lakh and then 25 lakhs from uh, the late mr ahmed patel who was then the advisor of uh, uh um, the national president of uh, one of the major uh, parties or political parties and mm. in fact it is a war of words word that has emerged out between the bjp and the congress wherein uh, the affidavit also goes on to say in fact that uh, sb sri kumar and also Uh, okay. the other top officials of gujarat were also a part and parcel and they were meeting uh, one political party leaders uh, in not only in delhi but also in gujarat in order to give uh, a, a frame to this whole larger political uh, this larger criminal conspiracy i'm sorry which was with a political motive to de establish 
to destabilize, okay. in fact, the government in Gujarat. Pallavi. Okay. Thank you very much, Ananya. And thank you very much, Maria, for putting it into perspective. We are going to move on to some more news, which is coming in. And this one is from Telangana. Seems to be a case of mass food poisoning at Basra. Nearly 80 students have been hospitalized. Students complain that an expired food ingredients were used to prepare food for them. The state government has now rushed two special medical teams to the college. Samples have also been sent for testing. Swastika is now joining us with more details. Yes, Swastika. Well, that's right. And at this point in time, we're given to understand that nearly 80 students have been admitted in different uh, areas of uh, Basra as well as other districts. In fact, within the campus, there are about uh, 12 students who are inside and the rest of the students who have complained of stomach upset and uh, the other symptoms uh, have been admitted at uh, Nizamabad uh, at a private hospital. Now, the state government, in fact, has come under a lot of fire, especially from the BJP and other pol uh, Congress, uh, for uh, not making proper arrangements. And this incident comes on the heels of the campus being in complete unrest just two weeks ago when the students had complained of poor educational facilities and now uh, the mass poisoning case where we are understanding that more than 200 students have been affected is uh, something that has put the state government under a lot of scanner and that's the reason why the state government has now rushed two special medical teams right from sampling to understanding whether there was any fault from the mess uh, which is operating at this college. All right. Thank you very much, Swastika. And one only wishes that the children recover soon. But we are moving focus now to some other news. Well, the crackdown on the PFI continues in connection to the Bihar terror module case. Four people have been arrested. Raids continue at the residence and offices of all the accused. According to sources, PFI's main agenda in Bihar was to spread its radical network on the interior parts of the state. Clerics from other states have also been invited to preach. Group also planned on giving martial arts SWAT tra use training to the youngsters. Police अब इसके बारे में हम लोगों के पास कोई अने इतर जानकारी का जरिया तो है नहीं पुलिस जो जांच कर रही है जो मैंने लोग बता रहे हैं कि ऐसा ऐसा हो रहा है वही है जानने का जरिया एक बात आदमी जरूर कहेगा कि जांच पड़ताल जो है वो तटस ढंग से होना चाहिए और बात का बतंगड़ जो है नहीं बनाना चाहिए पीएफआई के अलग-अलग लोगों के हिरासत में जाने के बाद और जो पटना से बिहार से आ रही हैं जानकारियां ये बहुत चिंताजनक है और ये एक सुनियोजित कंस्पिरेसी और सोच जो कहीं ना कहीं भारत में देश के अंदर में आतंक भी हो सकता है साथ में अलग-अलग धर्मों के बीच में दिक्कतें हों इस प्रकार की एक सोच के पीछे एक षड्यंत्र चल रहा है तो हम आशा करेंगे कि इस पे जल्द से जल्द जानकारी पूरी पूरी मिले इसमें जो इन्वेस्टिगेशन है जल्द से जल्द पूरा हो और कड़ी से कड़ी सजा ऐसे लोगों पर होनी चाहिए पहले जो पटना में एक गिरोह का पता पांच वर्ष में गिरफ्तारी हुई है आज उसमें प्राथमिकी में दर्ज की गई है पटना पुलिस ने तीन व्यक्ति ऐसे हैं जो दरभंगा जिला के रहने वाले हैं दो सिकवाड़ा थाना क्षेत्र का और एक टूटी बाजार का उनके लिए हम लोग छापेमारी कर रहे हैं प्रयासरत है उन लोगों की गिरफ्तारी करने के लिए और पटना पुलिस से और सीनियर एस पटना से लगातार हम संपर्क में बने हुए हैं जो भी मतलब हम लोग कर सकते हैं या हम लोग और इन्वेस्टिगेशन में यहाँ कुछ मिलता है तो उस पर हम लोग आगे कर रहे हैं this is, of course, a huge plot uh, which the investigative agency says has been discovered and is something which could create trouble not just in the state but also in the adjoining states as well. Essentially, uh, what the allegations are and what proof they have also got is that there were uh, clerics who were visiting mainly and they were supposed to be from Kerala, Tamil Nadu and they were coming in and they were inviting also people and youngsters from other states and this was an entire vicious cycle and they were sent to actually remote part of uh, Bihar of the interiors of the state to try and tap the youngsters. Saurav is also now joining me from Patna. Saurav, these are mo uh, un uh, very serious revelations which seems to be coming by the day but do you get a sense and are your sources telling you that the you know the, this could be just a tip of the iceberg there could be other states also where a similar attempt may have been made or trying to be made say in jharkhand and in other states as well 
Uh, Pallavi, you are right. Uh, this can be a tip of the iceberg because uh, uh, not only Bihar is concerned, we, uh, many revelations uh, have been made. Uh, different states used to come here, impart training to the uh, recruits, and these recruits, uh, the youths were sent back to the other states in order to, you know, train more, more and more people. So. Uh, uh, although the police have uh, filed an FIR naming 26 persons and uh, 10 districts have been named uh, from where these people used to come, also from Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, these are the states that have been mentioned by uh, Patna Police. Uh, but uh, the bigger question is, uh, Pallavi, that uh, those people who were trained, actually, uh, they have gone back to their states, uh, and then uh, uh, the identity of those people uh, is more crucial because they ha already have been trained, and, uh, and they have been trained to train more people. So uh, it's a very sensitive issue, and it can be a uh, tip of the iceberg that uh, this was happening in Patna, uh, and more states are concerned because uh, clearly the FIR tells uh, uh, about the names of people from Karnataka, from Kerala. Uh, just, just, just yesterday, we talked to the SDPI chief of Bihar. Uh, he was in Karnataka, but he used to come to Patna, mm. train people, and then you know, uh, give all sorts of training, Pallavi. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Saurav, for giving us those details. We're going to shift focus from Bihar to Punjab. And this is from Bhatinda in the state. A statue of the Mahatma Gandhi was vandalized, according to the police. Some unidentified miscreants. In fact, the police says that this incident took place Thursday night, Friday morning. Gandhiji's statue was situated at a public park, which was in Brahman Mandi. After vandalizing the statue, these miscreants, in fact, took away the face of the statue. The case has already been registered at the police station. The police are sure that the miscreants will be nabbed, adding that the CCTV footage of the area is also now being examined. We're going to go across to my colleague from Patinda, but these are some pictures you can see up on your screens from that area, Raman Mandi in Bhatinda. And over there, a Mahatma Gandhi statue is vandalized. In fact, the ones who vandalized the statue also took away the face of the Mahatma. There is a CCTV footage uh, from that area, which is, of course, being studied by the police, where a case has already been registered. And, of course, a strict action will be taken. Uh, well, that's it for me from now. But news continues over here on CNN News 18. I did. Did what about you? Were you prepared? I um, prepared falling down in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> For six months, I was no, just falling down chairs. It's a larger than life role, and yeah. you're so real. No, no. Let's. Not I mean, real. on a on a serious note, yeah, yeah. This film came with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because it's a part which I've never done in my life, hmm. in the say, 15 year career that I've had. Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shamshera and Obali. Uh, it was a, a a character which was filled with angst. It's something which. Angst doesn't naturally come from me, mm -hmm. and uh, Karan's one um, requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film. He said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry. Do you get angry? Mm -hmm. And when I told him no, I don't get angry, his face had broken. He's like, you don't get angry, so how are you going to do this part? Uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here. I had mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst. Yeah. And I think that really helped in um, portraying both these parts. I don't feel like you would be angry, but I feel like you're a little angsty. You can be angsty, no? Uh, a little bit about life, about life, the bigger question. No, but I, I don't know. Nobody's complained yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> except you. It's a good thing it your characters thing. Yeah. have so much angst. Like in Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, you're so angsty. Yeah, but those are all soul searching, and hmm. those the villain was me only. <laughs> yeah. Here, finally, I have Sanjay Dutt as a villain, so yeah. the angst has to be external, not internal. You know? Yeah, how was that facing off with him? Very intimidating already. He's like somebody who's a role model, and now you know it would have been very intimidating. But the kind of person that Sanjay Dutt is, he makes you feel very comfortable. Hmm. He makes you, he gives you a lot of love. Hmm. He gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation. Hmm. That listen. It's for the movie, it's for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. From the day I signed this film yeah. till the day he see, saw the teaser, the trailer, the film, he calls my entire family. Mm -hmm. My mother, my, my uncles, me, that listen, I'm so happy Ranbir's done this kind of film because these are the kind of films I want to see him in. What about you, Banya? Are you taking any pressure or are you just putting it all on this title character? No, I feel responsible because I'm part of a film. I will feel a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. in my own way. Mm -hmm. And I've, I mean, I wish I could be that detached to the uh, result of, you know, output of mm -hmm. all the hard work that everybody's mm -hmm. put in and after that, 
you know, you leave it to fate. Yeah. Uh, I think I get extremely, uh, I'm very sensitive when it comes to my work. Mm -hmm. I take it very seriously. But what time period is in certain two time periods? Eh? It starts in 1871. And the second time period is? When you see the film. <laughs> ah, okay. I know, I know, because there are two time periods and there's like a reincarnation sort of curse. Sort of thing that I should expect. Fantastic. She got, got it. it. No, no, she it's got not. Got it. They're lying. She got this it. is what it is. This is this You've is what cracked. it is. Talking to Ranbir is it. just being lied to all the, the, the time. The director saying you got it. I can't say anything <laughs> also. No, it's not. I don't know. Now suspense huh? is only gone. No, it's not it's gone. gone. He can't release his interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now in Sri Lanka, folks, the PM and President have run away from the fight. It sounds funny if you're not paying attention, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. They actually just got up and ran away. They owe 50 billion in debt, the country that is, and they need to clear 28 billion by 2027. A minimum of 28 billion, otherwise they basically just sink completely. There'll be like nothing left. So let's talk to international financial advisor, Dr. R. U. Kutti, who is being consulted by what's left of the Sri Lankan administration. Uh, and he's right here with us. He's a very busy man. Mr. R. U. Kutti? Ah, that's my name. <laughs> I see, I see. Great opening, sir. Great opening. I love that. Let's start at the top now. Is there any hope for Sri Lanka? <sighs> Is there a hope for Uddhav in Maharashtra <laughs> or Congress at the center? <laughs> I don't know. Then that's your answer. <laughs> okay, okay, but now let's go from the top to the bottom. But young man, I did that by appearing on your show. <laughs> right, so comedy we've got, we're getting no answers, but we've got comedy. True. Now, are you Kutti? That's me, that's my name. <laughs> no, 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 just let me complete. Are you Kutti? That's my name. That's me. <laughs> this guy is just... Can you just behave yourself, sir? Please, sir. How did it get so bad for Sri Lanka? Give us an understanding of why it went wrong. See, I'll tell you. You owe 10 rupees. Yes. Then you borrow 10 rupees to pay off the first 10 rupees. I owe 10 rupees, so I borrow 10 rupees. But now, you owe the initial guy 12 rupees because of the compound interest. <laughs> so you pay off 10, still owe two to him. Mm -hmm. Plus, another 10 to second guy. Meanwhile, both sums compound further and become- This is getting very scary. <laughs> so now, you owe five to the first guy and 13 to the second guy. So you borrow 10 from the third guy. <laughs> okay, 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 please stop. Please stop. This show is painful enough as it is. Don't, don't do this calculation. Please stop. So, they reach a point of 50 billion plus in debt and growing. <laughs> is that so? And can you believe it all started from borrowing just 10 rupees? <laughs> I don't think that's true. I, in fact, I feel really bad. I apologize to all people listening. It's very insensitive to make jokes like this. You are watching now showing and I'm Atika Faruqi. Today the movies we talk about are emotionally uplifting and technically informative. The actor we speak to is the daughter of one of the biggest superstars we have loved and a young director who is a PhD and a lover of forensics and is now a Hindi film director. Bravo! I'm Atika and here we begin. Of course with the highlights. Shabash Mithu is a tell-all story of Mithali Raj. It's a biographical drama that every woman must see. Hit the first case is a taut informative thriller worth watching for its unusual story and Rajkumar Rao. Janvi Kapoor is a delight to talk to as her film Good Luck Jerry knocks at the box office. Director Selesh Kolanu on why he chose filmmaking after a PhD and love for forensics. And Salma Agha's daughter Zara Khan talks about the influence of Noor Jahan on her voice. Let's first talk about Shabash Mithu, that is a biographical film drama made on the life and times of Mithali Raj. It releases in cinema halls this week. Women in sports have always got it rough. They've always got it tough. From battling their neighborhood, their own parental traumas, their pressures and traditions set by ancestors, the sexist world inside and outside, and of course the rules set for commerce that often favors the male, whether as a lead actor or a lead sportsperson. Many fields are still governed by gender politics. This is exactly what director Shrijit Mukherjee attempts to address 
मोर देन रैक्स टू रिच स्टोरी मैं आठ साल की थी जब किसी ने सपना दिखाया था Shabash Mithu is a story of how women find an awakening in a man's world and that too from the 90s. Her 23 year long career is riddled with accolades and achievements including breaking the world record for highest individual test score at the age of 19 and serving as the first Indian captain to lead the country to two World Cup finals. Shabash Mithu tells the story of Mithali Durai Raj and highlights the predicaments and battles of women's cricket in India. Aisa khel ke dikhayenge ki hamari pehchan koi kabhi bhool na paaye. It all starts off from the childhood where director Srijit Mukherjee addresses gender bias in homes. Nuri, a boisterous girl in the neighborhood becomes an angel friend to Mithu and the two smash patriarchy like how even at that young age. Shorter hair and a smart attitude is what the kids display. A brilliant performance by Vijay Raz adds gravitas to a child's struggle that has given preference over her brother. Mai Mitali ki baat kar raha hu. What stands out is a terrific performance by Tapsi where she gets into the psyche of Mithali instead of copying her body language or the way she talks and walks. Sir hamari bhi to koi pehchan hai. Written by Priya Evan, the cricket is secondary and instead focuses on the touching friendship between the two girls here for a considerable stretch and that the fight with the invisible and the visible system that works against the women. Panch women cricketers ke naam batao. Sorry sir. I must say Mukesh Habra's casting gives us a team peppered with fine performances a scene stealing Sampa Mandal as Neelu and the other girls who have a history they come from very social strata and background someone's father had a tea stall one was into making leather out of animal hides she did it until she played uh, cricket that's the stories we had needed to know in some parts though the film seems long and needed a sharper edit the songs by amit trivedi and the background music is supported to the theme all the time it's a biographical film that has tried to stay true to the journey of mithali raj instead of adding drama from the creator's own perspective it's a must watch for all women ultimately mithali raj did change perspectives and that is a story that warrants a watch on the big screen नाम मशहूर है पुछला पिंड दे टब्बर टब्बर नु गज दे गज दे ने गज गज दे ने गज गज दे ने कबरू नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट हिट द फर्स्ट केस Remakes can be a bit difficult to helm. They can either end up being a washed-up version of the original or turn into something even better. In the case of Rajkumar Rao and Sanya Malhotra's hit, the first case, the result is quite amazing. Directed by Dr. Sailesh Kolanu, who also directed the original, the plot revolves around police officer Vikram, who is caught up in solving a kidnapping case and also struggles to deal with the demons of his past. The film throws light on mental health and post-traumatic stress disorder. क्या हुआ था तुम्हारे साथ लेके? When Vikram's fiancee Neha, that is Sanya Malhotra, goes missing, he realizes that the two cases that he's solving are interconnected. He's thrown into a dark alley of deceit, lies, and some unfinished business from his own police force. For most parts of the film, Vikram's journey is not just about hunting down the kidnapper, but also trying to come to terms with his own past. The film's narrative is simple. yet complex and despite the subplots the director manages to keep you engaged and actually over the seat's edge most of the time the film's highlight and its biggest strength though is the performance of its lead actor rajkumar rao raj has delivered a fine performance that's not only nuanced but also is extremely refined the varied emotions of loss anger grief and frustration that he shows as vikram tries to join the dots in this puzzle are simply amazing <laughs> There are scenes where he also shows the vulnerable side of a cop and the toll the job takes on the person. Sanya Malhotra excels in her scene. Please allow yourself to heal. The issue with Hit is only that the climax does not live up to the pace of the intellectual first one and a half hours and the reason of it all becomes a bit underwhelming. If you are a Rajkumar Rao fan, this one's for you. Don't miss it. Mujhe baat nahi chhod sakta.
Janvi Kapoor has an expressive face and a huge pair of shoes to fill. Shri Devi's daughter is getting scripts that test her acting abilities now. In Anand Rai's next, she plays a girl from Bihar who is stuck in a drug racket in Punjab. She tells me what are the best things about her life and the not so good aspects too. Sir, we want to work. We? Paji, we are in Bihar. We are in Bihar. My mother is ill. I don't have to pay for the money. The girl is not a job. You listen to the police. Ha 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 ha! It's a little difficult to imagine it. When this film came to you, this is a film based in Bihar. A girl from Bihar who is living in Punjab. She comes to drugs in her life. She comes to problems in her life. She goes to her head. 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 What was your reaction to the script? It's still a fun film. Okay. And there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if she is in these situations and in the difficult and in a serious tonality, then I don't take so much interest in this film. But because Siddharth, who is our director, his take was so quirky in this film, and in the original film, Kolama was so quirky, there was so much comedy. So, I was very excited to see it. The girl is going to get out of here. I don't think I'm scared of this girl. Don't do this girl. This girl will kill us all. You trained yourself as an actor in Lee Strasberg School of Theatre and Films. What is your biggest learning from learning acting? Be honest and be in the moment. And nothing is more repulsive Maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, oxum than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Mm. To be in the moment and to be honest in the moment is, mm. I think, where the magic happens. Actually, Nawaz, sir, who I met very briefly one day, mm. said to me and Ashan, he said, all of the best acting is acting that happens by mistake. Wo jo galti se ho jata hai na, wahan hi jadu hota hai. हम जितने दिखते हैं उतने हैं नहीं। When you sit down with your father, Mr. Boni Kapoor, what are the conversations that you have now? Now that you're into the film industry, you're reading scripts, and your father has been the producer. Recently, Salman made a statement that you know, मेरे करियर में जब बहुत बुरा वक्त था तो Boni Kapoor ने मुझे उठाया था। So as a professional now, what are the conversations that you're having with a professional like him? I think that. A lot of creative discussions. We love watching movies, discussing movies. I love telling him about how my day has been on set. And he has itna wisdom hai unke paas. Utne yeah. itna kuch dekha hai apni zindagi mein, itna kuch kiya hai. Um, ke wo gyan baatne ke liye hamesha tayar rehte hai. <laughs> Aur unki kahani aapko ek baar sunni chahiye. Hmm. Because he's seen it all and he's done it all. Hmm. To kai baar mein bas baith ke sunti hai. Aur unko baat karne ka bahut shock hai. Especially when they sit with their friends, Rumi sir, Javid sir, Shabana ma'am. And their stories, you listen to them and you want to be shocked that there were such films that were made. This film was like this, this was like this, this was like this. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. Yeah. So there's so much to learn. Yeah. He's been a producer, I've seen him that when actors are in the industry, they're not able to do anything. He's been a producer, I've seen him that when actors are in the industry, producers की जिंदगी थोड़ा मुश्किल करते हैं, demands करते हैं, ये वो करते हैं कि producer पे क्या pressures होती हैं। So I try, I try in whatever way I can to make it as easy as possible. Wonderful. When I read about you, newspapers and websites and social media, sometimes I think you are under too much pressure of just looking good. Do you ever feel that thing that just people are little judgmental of looks, especially women? I, I do feel like that. I don't just think that it's our industry ki problem or our uh, gender ki problem. Hai. I think social media is a problem ki problem ho gai hai, ke wo jo, yeah. um, The filters uh, and... <laughs> yeah, no, jo, matlab, external things that are... Yeah. Uh, the 
बहुत ज़रूरी हो गया लोगों के लिए और उस चीज़ से मुझे डर लगने लगा कि हाँ ऑफकोर्स मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फोटोज पोस्ट करने में बहुत मज़ा आता है लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की ज़िंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो वन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन वन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेर एवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम इन अ गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड आई थिंक आई एम फ्री चौपी बट देर आर डेज वर आई एम जस्ट लाइक Yeah. Like I, I don't know. My stomach's hurting, but I have to go to the gym because I have to look good for an event, or because yeah. I'm losing weight for a role, and then I have to do training after. And and like, someone just told me that the film I wanted to do is now happening with someone. And like, you're having a shitty day, and then yeah. there are paps saying, "Jami, ma'am, yah turn karke wave kije, please." Yeah, yeah, and you, yeah. you know that your tights are too tight, and this won't look flattering. And people yeah. will say that, "Oh, ye jaan buch ke aise kapde pendi," and all of these thoughts rush in your head. in a matter of seconds and then i and then it shows on your face yeah that's true and then they say ke itni khadu se hi bhi nahi bol sakti hai so you can't care about these things yeah inko lung cancer hai stage 2 mari nahi ho tum zinda ho abhi aur jab tak hum zinda hai marne nahi denge tumhe you've got into several roles like isme main jo aapke एक्सप्रेशंस देख रही हूँ मैं ये एक्सप्रेशंस नहीं सोच सकती थी कि आप दे सकती हैं फॉर सम रीज़न लोगों को ये लगता है कि जिसने गरीबी नहीं देखी वो क्या जाने गरीब लड़की के दिल में क्या चल रहा होगा ये सही है ये गलत लेकिन वही तो काम है हमारा काम है आपका ओके okay. वही तो काम है हमारा एंड आई अग्री अगर एक इंसान अपने देश को नहीं जानता अपने देश के लोगों को नहीं जानता अगर yeah. उसने जिंदगी ना देखी हो yeah. तो वो कनेक्ट कैसे करेगा या कैसे करेगी बट हैविंग सेट दैट Garibi is a relatable problem. True, true. It's the, it's like, objectively, it's, it's, it's bad, right? Yeah. It's a struggle objectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't eat your own food at home, or if your house is not there, then it's a relatable problem. Right. People think that if you are crying in a five-star hotel in the bedroom, then it's not crying. It's not crying. Exactly. 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 because people would keep saying but people are suffering here people are suffering there yeah. i'd be like ha mera problem kya hai but yeah. that's not healthy also yeah kyunki har insaan ke liye mm. there will always be someone more privileged more than privileged. you of course there will always be then no one has a right to complain of but course. the point is that sab log koi na koi cheez se guzar kuch na kuch cheezon se guzar rahe hain na of course there's of someone course. more privileged than you yeah. there's someone more privileged than anyone in this room but that's does true. that make the problem less relevant तो गंदा काम छोड़ा है कि नहीं इसके चक्कर में हमारा शादी भी नहीं होगा अरे तो तुम्हारे लिए कर भी नहीं रहे हैं अपने लिए कर रहे हैं सो द नेम ऑफ द फिल्म इज गुड लक जेरी एंड देयर आर टू सिस्टर्स जेरी एंड चेरी चेरी एंड अ मदर एंड दीस थ्री वुमेन इन बिहार दीस थ्री बिहारी वुमेन इन पंजाब आर लेफ्ट टू फेंड फॉर देमसेल्व्स साइकोलॉजिकली इन अ इन अ हाउस होल्ड सेटअप वेयर देयर आर ओनली टू सिस्टर्स जो बड़ी वाली होती है वो घर का बेटा बन जाती है हैव यू एवर रिलेटेड टू हर कैरेक्टर एंड हाउ डू यू फील एट बीइंग द एल्डर गर्ल ऑफ द फैमिली a little bit sometimes you feel like you have to i mean i'm not the eldest mm. anshula didi is the eldest but uh, but many times i feel like there are some sacrifices that i'll want to make to ensure that my sister and my father yeah are in a situation that would make us all happy and like i've not had to mm. but i but know still. that if push comes to shove i would I do it do. and i think that is an elder sister thing elder sister sy- syndrome yeah i think so a little bit i think that you automatically think that you're kind of the sacrificial lamb lamb a little <laughs> bit <laughs> and finally what are the kind of directors you would like to work with mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai रोहित शेट्टी सर प्लीज मुझे कास्ट कर लीजिए मैं ऑडिशन कर लूँगी सही से ऑडिशन कर लूँगी और आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विद करण आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विद भंसाली सर आई रियली आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विद नीरज खेवान नीरज मैं बोलने वाली थी हाँ ग्रेट I want to see many more films of yours Thank becoming you. blockbusters Thank and you so I want to see you getting a lot of awards for your performance Thank in Jandi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. So taking a break right now in some time we have a director who is a PhD from Australia and came back to India 
to make a hit film after the break. Requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film. He said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry. Do you get angry? Mm -hmm. And when I told him no, I don't get angry. His face had broken. He's like, you don't get angry. So how are you going to do this part? Uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here. I had mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst. Yeah. And I think that really helped in um, portraying both these parts. I don't feel like you'd be angry, but I feel like you're a little angsty. You can be angsty, no? Uh, a little bit about life, about life, the bigger question. No, but of I, life. I don't know. Nobody's complained yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> except you. It's a good thing it your characters good thing. Yeah. have so much angst. Like in Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, you're so angsty. Yeah, but those are all soul searching, and hmm. those the villain was me only. <laughs> yeah. Here, finally, I have Sanjay Dutt as a villain, so yeah. the angst has to be external, not internal. You know? Yeah, how was that facing off with him? Very intimidating already. He's like somebody who's your role model, and now you know it would have been very intimidating. But the kind of person that Sanjay Dutt is, he makes you feel very comfortable. Hmm. He makes you, he gives you a lot of love. Hmm. He gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation. Hmm. That listen. It's for the movie. It's for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. From the day I signed this film yeah. till the day he see, saw the teaser, the trailer, the film, he calls my entire family, mm -hmm. my mother, my my uncles, me. That listen, I'm so happy Ranbir's done this kind of film because these are the kind of films I want to see him in. What about you, Banya? Are you taking any pressure, or are you just putting it all on this title character? No, I feel responsible because I'm part of a film. I will feel a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. in my own way. Mm -hmm. And I've, I mean, I wish I could be that detached to the uh, result of, you know, output of mm -hmm. all the hard work that everybody's mm -hmm. put in, and after that, you know, you leave it to fate. Yeah. Uh, I think I get extremely, uh, I'm very sensitive when it comes to my work. Mm -hmm. I take it very seriously. But what time period is in certain two time periods? Eh? It starts in 1871. And the second time period is? When you see the film. <laughs> ah, okay. I know, I know, because there are two time periods and there's like a reincarnation sort of curse. Sort of thing that I should expect. Fantastic. She got, got it. it. No, no, she it's got not. Got it. They're lying. She got this it. is what it is. This is this You've is what cried. it is. Talking to Ranbir is just being lied to all the, the, the time. The director saying you got it. I didn't say anything <laughs> also. No, it's not. I don't know. Now suspense huh? is only gone. No, now. it's not it's gone. gone. He can't release his interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now in Sri Lanka, folks, the PM and President have run away from the fight. It sounds funny if you're not paying attention, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. They actually just got up and ran away. They owe 50 billion in debt, the country that is, and they need to clear 28 billion by... Welcome back. You're watching Now Showing. I'm Atika Faruqi. This week, we start talking exclusively and especially with the directors. They are the captains of the ship. That is the film project they're working on. It's their vision that gets translated on screen. Director Sailesh Kolanu did his PhD in Australia and is crazy about forensics. That's how the original Telugu version of Hit, the first case, got made. And now the Hindi version is at the box office. More about this director who uniquely has the prefix doctor in his name. I did my undergraduation in uh, optometry from the Bits Pilani uh, University and uh, uske baad mein, uh, I started practicing optometry in Hyderabad. I practiced as an optometrist for five years. Uh, before moving to Sydney to do my PhD, I got a scholarship to do PhD at the University of New South Wales in Australia. I moved to Australia and did, finished my PhD in 2016. Um, so then after that I worked as a scientist. During all this time, uh, uh, writing stories was a hobby, it was a stress buster for me. But then slowly and eventually I started getting attracted. I, I was drawn into the craft of screenwriting. I learned how to, uh, how to properly write a screenplay. Uh, at one point in time, I had a really good script on my hands and I wanted to do something with it. So I took a leap of faith. I took a flight from uh, Sydney, landed in Hyderabad. Uh, and I met uh, actor Nani from the Telugu film industry who then incepted the idea that I should direct my own films. <laughs> I don't want to lose you. So that's when um, I went back to Sydney again and spent another year learning the craft of direction. I realized that uh, I knew the process of filmmaking right from my childhood because my father was in the film industry as well. He worked as a production uh, manager uh, and he was an employee of Prasad Film Laboratory. So I had this uh, small bits and pieces of filmmaking learnings from my childhood. So 
all I had to do was integrate them and try to figure out a way how to translate the ideas onto the screen. Then once I was ready, I took the flight to Hyderabad. I came and made my first film, uh, which Nani produced as well. So uh, HIT Telugu was conceived like that. Yeah, my girls, Press involve Hindi, handle it very carefully. Sure. Uh, while making HIT Telugu itself, I had the idea of taking this uh, story to a wider audience. I wanted to narrate this to the Hindi, o Hindi audience. So with the success of HIT in Telugu, I had the opportunity to make the, make the film in Hindi now. Salma Agha's daughter and Bollywood's favourite voice, Zara Khan, these days is currently getting all the praise for her songs in the recent hit, Jug Jug Jio. My colleague Vishal Chatkara caught up with Zara earlier this week and got her talking about the influence of the legendary singer Noor Jahan on her voice and her latest chartbuster. Aha, Noor Jahan ka naam yaad aagaya, to unki gaane yaad aagaye. Chand neera te ho, chand neera te. तुम्हें Zara, first congratulations for the super success of two of your big songs from the film Jug Jug Jio, especially the song Jesse Savan, a real slow burner of a song that stays with you for a long time. Yeah. You know, also this is a song which is also a departure for you from the usual dance songs we hear uh, in Zara Khan's voice. Okay. How often do you get to sing songs about heartbreak and and relation, broken relationships? Well, uh, this was the first one to be honest. But uh, this is something I had recorded about two years back, before the before the pandemic, and uh, you know obviously the shoot and everything took time, and then by the time it released, तब तक बहुत सारे dance numbers आ चुके थे. But uh, definitely, I think uh, these are the kind of songs which are very close to my heart, and I really hope that I do get to sing more songs like this. Last time we contacted you, three months before. And um, where is he from? London. Whereabouts in London? Don't know. I watched your 2019 short film titled Coach that is yes. currently streaming on Z5. Yes. You are a chameleon of an actor who actually became this girl from Punjab named Guri. Yes. What is stopping Zara Khan to accept more acting assignments? Firstly, thank you for taking out the time and watching it. It's a film which is very close to my heart because it's based on teenage wife abandonment, and uh, it's not that I'm not accepting roles at the moment. It's just that you know I want to pick and choose wisely. Something which I know I can do justice to. I had completed a film uh, with Shabana Azmi ji also, which is directed by Vikas Khanna. So that's also going to be out soon. I'm playing Shabana ji's daughter in it. But yeah, I'm looking out for things which are you know very performance oriented. So hopefully you know along the way, kuch kuch. चीजें आती जाएंगी आती जाएंगी एंड होपफुली यू यू विल सी मी इन द एक्टिंग लाइफ मोर फ्रीक्वेंटली एज वेल योर मदर हैज बीन पार्ट ऑफ सम ऑफ द वेरी सक्सेसफुल एंड पॉपुलर सॉन्ग्स लाइक फिजा भी है जमा जमा और दिल के अरमान में मेम ऑफ यू यस यस बिकॉज़ योर एटीट्यूड इन एंड अप्रोच टुवर्ड द म्यूजिक इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम योर मदर मॉम्स वॉइस एंड माय वॉइस इन अ वेरी स्ट्रेंज वे इज इज डिफरेंट आल्सो बट देन ऑब्वियसली कहीं ना कहीं थोड़े चीजें हैं जो मैच भी करती है मे बी समाइम्स टोन बट आई साउंड अलॉट लाइक माई मासी माई मासी ऑल्सो यू नो हैज लर्न सिंगिंग एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बट शी डेवर प्रिस्यूड इट एज अ करियर बट मॉम वॉज समबडी हुज ऑलवेज इन टू इंडियन क्लासिकल म्यूजिक एंड फॉर मी आई वॉज वेरी इनक्लाइन टू वर्ड वेस्टर्न यू नो दैट वॉज समथिंग आई वेरी मच इंजॉय अलॉट सो वाइल ग्रोइंग अप इवन दो देर इज uh one uh singer which i have always always looked up to she uh, obviously i'm sure you know madam noor jahan she is amazing to unki uh, jo gayaki thi mujhe bahut pasand thi and i still listen to her songs but apart from her uh, i've always uh, been inclined towards western music so i think that ways me and mom have 
been a little different jo na me sake wahi be wafa ye badi ajeeb si baat hai jo na me sake wahi be wafa ye badi ajeeb si baat hai jo chala छोड़ कर वही आज तक मेरे साथ है दैट्स ऑल होप यू लाइक वट वी हैव टू से For those who are surprised about Sushmita Sen and Lalit Modi finding love and Bradley Cooper and Huma Abedin finding love remember how difficult it is to make careers raise children and still look strong and happy all the time so be happy for them not surprised every soul needs love take care of yourself and see you next week till then tara just think wo hamari industry ki problem hai ya hamari जेंडर की प्रॉब्लम है आई थिंक सोशल मीडिया के बदौलत वो हर इंसान की प्रॉब्लम हो गई है कि वो जो फिल्टर्स या नो जो मतलब एक्सटर्नल चीज़ें जो हैं दिखावट जो है वो बहुत ज़रूरी हो गया लोगों के लिए और उस चीज़ से मुझे डर लगने लगा कि हाँ ऑफकोर्स मुझे ड्रेस अप करने में मेकअप हेयर सब करने में इवेंट्स के लिए जाने में फोटोज पोस्ट करने में बहुत मजा आता है लेकिन अगर वो एक इंसान की जिंदगी बन जाती है तो वो बहुत डरावना हो जाता है सो यू नीड टू नो वन टू स्विच ऑफ इवन वन आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड वेर एवर आई एम गेटिंग पैप्ड इफ आई एम गुड मूड एंड आई एम फीलिंग गुड आई थिंक आई एम फ्री चौपी बट देर आर डेज वाई एम जस्ट लाइक Yeah. Like I, I don't know. My stomach's hurting, but I had to go to the gym because I have to look good for an event, or because yeah. I'm losing weight for a role, and then I have to do training after. And and like, someone just told me that the film I wanted to do is now happening with someone. And like, you're having a shitty day, and then yeah. there are paps saying, "Jami, ma'am, you have to turn and wave, KJ, please." Yeah, yeah. And you, you know that your tights are too tight, and this won't look flattering. And people yeah. will say that, "Oh, you're jan bujke aise kapde pendi," and all of these thoughts rush in your head. In a matter of seconds, and then I and, and then it shows on your face. Yeah, that's true. And then they say, "Ke itni khadu se hai bhi nahi bol sakti hai." So you can't care about these things. Yeah, you've got into several roles. Like this, me, me, jo aapke expressions dekh rahi hoon, me ye expressions nahi soch sakti thi ki aap de sakti hain. For oh. some reason, logon ko ye lagta hai ki jisne garibi nahi dekhi. वो क्या जाने गरीब लड़की के दिल में क्या चल रहा होगा ये सही है ये गलत लेकिन वही तो काम है हमारा काम है आपका ओके वही तो काम है हमारा एंड आई अग्री अगर एक इंसान अपने देश को नहीं जानता अपने देश के लोगों को नहीं जानता अगर yeah. उसने जिंदगी ना देखी हो गुडिंग आई एम पल्लवी घोष पर वे बिगनिंग विद सम न्यूज व्हिच इज कमिंग इन फ्रॉम द बीजेपी हेड क्वार्टर्स इवन एज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ द सिलेक्शन of the vice president is going to be going on uh, coming in now is the home minister mr amit shah the bjp president jp nadda they arrive at the bjp headquarters and this is ahead of the bjp's parliamentary board meeting at 6 pm to decide on the vice president's name the prime minister of course is going to be joining in also after a short while in fact my colleague arun dhanta who covers the bjp is now joining us uh, you know arun one thing certainly we can be sure of is that we cannot be sure of the name for the vice president but this meeting essentially is going to culminate in a formal announcement of the name what is it that they're likely to keep in mind when they're going to choose that person well that's right uh, pallavi it's not easy for anyone to speculate actually who's going to be the nda the nominee for the vice presidential uh, post there were so many names in past couple of days which are floating around uh, when uh, you know muktar abbas nakvi senior was not attended and people were saying uh, muktar abbas that we can be sent to uh, you know the vice president house then uh, uh, you know uh, arif mohammad khan's name and then somebody somebody some the few few people are saying that maybe venkaiah and i do uh, you know uh, given another chance uh, so various other names which are floating around at this moment but uh, this parliamentary votes meeting will clear the 
the air because this is the highest decision making body of the PTP and they will sit today at around uh, you know, 6 p.m. Uh, and then uh, they will discuss as to who's going to be the nominee of NDA for the vice presidential election. Uh, as we speak at this moment, uh, Union Home Minister Amit Shah has already arrived uh, at BJP headquarters. And also we are told that BJP chief JP Nadda uh, is also uh, in the BJP headquarters. So uh, both are in the BJP uh, headquarters at this moment. We are expecting other members of the parliament board reach here in a short while. And then, uh, of course, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, will be chairing this uh, meeting. Uh, but as far as number game is concerned, that is something which seems, uh, you know, uh, in BJP's favor. Uh, it's not like as uh, uh, it uh, earlier happened in case of uh, the president's school, since, uh, you know, various other political parties uh, have agreed to give their support. But in case of uh, president's school, BJP is in very comfortable position, uh, because if you go uh, by the total number of uh, seats in parliament, that is around 780, and the majority mark is... Uh, okay. Okay. okay, Arun, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to stop you on that. Delhi Chief Minister is addressing a press conference. Let's listen. Kejriwal freebies de raha hai. Mujhe baddi baddi galiyan di ja rahi hai. Mera majak udaya ja raha hai. Aaj mein desh ke logon se poochna chata hoon ki mein kya galat kar raha hoon. Dilli ke garibon ke bachche, middle class ke bachche ko mein sarkari skolo mein शानदार शिक्षा दे रहा हूं लेकिन फ्री में शिक्षा दे रहा हूं मैं लोगों से पूछना चाहता हूं कि क्या मैं फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा हूं या देश की नींव रख रहा हूं दिल्ली के सरकारी स्कूलों में 18 लाख बच्चे पढ़ते हैं इन 18 लाख बच्चों का भविष्य अंधकार में था अभी तक हमारी सरकार बनी थी उसके पहले जैसे देश भर में सरकारी स्कूलों का बेड़ा गर्क है देश भर में सरकारी स्कूलों की बुरी हालत है वैसे ही दिल्ली के सरकारी स्कूलों की हालत थी पढ़ाई होती नहीं थी सरकारी सारे स्कूल टूटे फूटे पड़े थे दीवारें टूटी हुई थी छतें चू रही थी ब्लैक बोर्ड था नहीं डेस्क नहीं थे नीचे बैठे रहते थे बच्चे उनकी कोई पढ़ाई नहीं होती थी 18 लाख बच्चों का भविष्य बर्बाद था आज अगर हमने इन अठारह लाख बच्चों का भविष्य अच्छा कर दिया अगर मैं इन बच्चों को अच्छी शानदार शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ लेकिन फ्री में दे रहा हूँ तो मैं क्या गुनाह कर रहा हूँ सरकारी स्कूलों में पहली बार आज़ादी के बाद से पहली बार 75 साल में पहली बार निन्यानवे प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा नतीजे आए हैं मैं अगर अपनी बढ़ाई खुद करूं तो कहा जाएगा कि केजरीवाल खुद अपनी बढ़ाई कर रहा है लेकिन नतीजे निन्यानवे प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा नतीजे आए हैं सरकारी स्कूलों के प्राइवेट स्कूलों को भी पीछे छोड़ दिया पिछले कुछ सालों में चार लाख बच्चों ने दिल्ली के प्राइवेट स्कूलों से नाम कटा के सरकारी स्कूलों में भर्ती हुए हैं ये कोई छोटी बात नहीं है आज गरीबों के बच्चे आईआईटी के अंदर कंप्यूटर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग की पढ़ाई पढ़ रहे हैं नीट के पेपर पास करके डॉक्टरी की पढ़ाई पढ़ रहे हैं एक लड़का है गगन उसके पिताजी कार्डबोर्ड बनाने गत्ते के डिब्बे बनाने की फैक्ट्री में मजदूरी का काम करते हैं कोरोना में वो नौकरी भी छूट गई पंद्रह हजार महीने कमाया करते थे आज गगन का एडमिशन आई धनबाद में कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग में हुआ है उससे पूछ के देखिए कि क्या केजरीवाल फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा है या देश का भविष्य बना रहा है ऐसे हजारों बच्चे हैं जिनका भविष्य आज सुनहरा हुआ सुनहरा किया हम लोगों ने यह काम 1947 में हो जाना चाहिए था यह काम 1950 में हो जाना चाहिए था जो आज हम कर रहे हैं आज हम लोग देश की नींव रख रहे हैं ये रेवड़ी नहीं है ये देश की नींव के में एक एक ईंट रख रहे हैं हम लोग आज दिल्ली के सरकारी अस्पताल हमने शानदार कर दिए दिल्ली में शानदार मोहल्ला क्लिनिक बना दिए जिनकी चर्चा पूरी दुनिया में हो रही है पूरी दुनिया के अंदर दिल्ली एक वो चुनिंदा शहर है जहां पे दिल्ली की दो करोड़ जनसंख्या एक एक आदमी का इलाज मुफ्त है एक एक आदमी का दो करोड़ लोग रहते हैं दिल्ली में एक एक आदमी का इलाज मुफ्त है चाहे वो गरीब हो चाहे अमीर हो हम ये नहीं पूछते कि कौन सी जात का कौन सी धर्म का है अमीर है गरीब है आदमी है औरत है छोटा है बड़ा है जो भी आदमी है हर एक का इलाज मुफ्त है तीस लाख चालीस लाख पचास लाख रुपए का भी अगर उसका ऑपरेशन का खर्चा आएगा उसकी सारी दवाइयां उसके सारे टेस्ट उसके सारे डायग्नोस्टिक सब कुछ उसका मुफ्त होता है सारे मैं सारे मोहल्ला क्लिनिक्स के अंदर उनका इलाज मुफ्त होता है क्या मैं ये फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा हूं 
आज दिल्ली के अंदर अगर किसी का एक्सीडेंट हो जाए हमने एक फरिश्ते स्कीम बनाई अगर किसी का एक्सीडेंट हो जाए तो उसको हमने कहा है कि उसको नियरेस्ट अस्पताल में ले जाइए आसपास जो भी अस्पताल हो चाहे कितना भी महंगा अस्पताल क्यों ना उसे उठा के ये नहीं सोचना कि मैं कभी मेरे उसे नियरेस्ट अस्पताल में ले जाइए उस आदमी को ठीक करने का सारा खर्चा दिल्ली सरकार देती है फरिश्ते स्कीम कहते हैं हम इसे मैं एक आपको उदाहरण देता हूं विकास सानी साहब हैं ईस्ट दिल्ली में रहते हैं अपने घर से निकले मार्केट के लिए रस्ते में एक्सीडेंट हो गया भगवान की कृपा थी कि उधर से अंतुल कोहली जी गुजर रहे थे उन्होंने उनको उठाया और वो उनको अस्पताल ले गए उस छोटे अस्पताल ने उनको फोर्टिस में रेफर कर दिया क्योंकि चोट बड़ी गहरी थी फोर्टिस अस्पताल में उनका पांच लाख रुपए का खर्चा आया सारा खर्चा दिल्ली सरकार ने दिया तेरह हजार से ज्यादा लोगों की जान बचा चुके हैं अभी तक हम इन तेरह हजार लोगों के परिवार वालों से पूछिए कि क्या केजरीवाल फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा है या पुण्य का काम कर रहा है धर्म का काम कर रहा है आज दिल्ली के एक एक परिवार को हम फ्री बिजली दे रहे हैं 200 यूनिट बिजली फ्री दे रहे हैं पंजाब में हमने 300 यूनिट बिजली फ्री देनी चालू की है ये कहते हैं केजरीवाल फ्री में बिजली क्यों दे रहा है मैं इनसे पूछना चाहता हूं तुम्हारे मंत्रियों को कितनी फ्री में बिजली मिलती है तुम्हारे मंत्रियों को चार चार पांच पांच हजार यूनिट तुम लोगों को चार चार पांच पांच हजार यूनिट बिजली फ्री मिलती है तब ठीक है लेकिन गरीब जनता को अगर मैंने दो यूनिट तीन यूनिट बिजली फ्री दे दी तो तुम्हें बड़ी तकलीफ होती है आज दिल्ली के अंदर हमने फ्री में लोगों को योगा कराना चालू किया सत्रह हजार लोग दिल्ली में हम उनको फ्री में टीचर भेजते हैं रोज सुबह हमारे 500 से ज्यादा टीचर फ्री में जगह जगह लोगों को योगा कराने जाते हैं हमने दिल्ली में सबकी दवाइयां सब कुछ फ्री कर दिया टेस्ट फ्री कर दिए इलाज फ्री कर दिया लेकिन हमारा मकसद है कि कोई बीमारी नहीं पड़ना चाहिए उनको योगा सिखाते हैं हम लोग सत्रह लोगों को हम योगा सिखा रहे हैं डेली फ्री में योगा टीचर भेज रहे हैं बताइए क्या गलत कर रहे हैं आज मैं दिल्ली में हजारों लोगों को फ्री में यात्रा करा चुका हजारों बुजुर्गों को लगभग पैंतालीस हजार से ज्यादा बुजुर्ग तीर्थ यात्रा कर चुके हैं अयोध्या जी गए हरिद्वार ऋषिकेश गए मथुरा वृंदावन गए शिरडी बाबा गए रामेश्वरम जी गए पुरी जी गए पता नहीं कहाँ कहाँ हम लोगों ने उनको फ्री में तीर्थ यात्रा कराई है तीर्थ यात्रा कराने का तो पुण्य होता है और ये लोग कह रहे हैं कि ये लोग मुझे गालियां दे रहे हैं कह रहे हैं केजरीवाल फ्री में रेवड़ी बांट रहा है आज महिलाओं को हम दिल्ली में फ्री में ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्री में उनको हम बसों में ट्रांसपोर्ट दे रहे हैं मेरा क्या कसूर है जो लोग मेरे को गालियां दे रहे हैं उन्होंने हजारों करोड़ रुपए खर्च करके लिए अपने लिए प्राइवेट प्लेन खरीदा है हजारों करोड़ रुपए खर्च करके अपने लिए शानदार हवाई जहाज खरीदे हैं इन्होंने केजरीवाल अपने लिए हवाई जहाज नहीं खरीदता केजरीवाल अपनी माँ बहनों का सफर उस पैसे को बचा के माँ बहनों का सफर फ्री करता है बताइए केजरीवाल क्या गलत कर रहा है पढ़ा लिखा हूं मैं इंजीनियरिंग में डिग्री करी है मैंने अकाउंटिंग की भी पढ़ाई करी है कानून की भी पढ़ाई करी है और असली डिग्री है मेरी डिग्री भी फर्जी नहीं है सब कुछ समझता हूं आज इतनी चीज़ें फ्री करने के बाद भी दिल्ली का बजट फ़ायदे में चल रहा है ये मैं नहीं कह रहा अभी थोड़े दिन पहले सीएजी की रिपोर्ट आई है और सीएजी की रिपोर्ट ने कहा है कि 2015 के बाद से जब से केजरीवाल की सरकार आई है तब से दिल्ली का बजट नफ़े में चलने लगा उसके पहले घाटे में चलता था तो बजट भी नफ़े में चल रहा है कोई नया टैक्स नहीं बढ़ाया भ्रष्टाचार खत्म कर दिया भ्रष्टाचार खत्म करके जो इतनी सारी इतना पैसा बचा उससे अगर अब मेरे अपने लोगों की मैंने इतनी सहूलियतें दे दी तो बताइए मैंने क्या गलत किया मैं बताता हूं आपको फ्री की रेवड़ी क्या होती है और मैं बताता हूं आपको इस देश में फ्री की रेवड़ी कौन बांट रहा है एक कंपनी है बहुत बड़ी उस कंपनी ने लोन लिया कई बैंकों से खा गए वो लोन बैंक दिवालिया हो गए और उस कंपनी ने एक राजनीतिक पार्टी को चंदा दे दिया कुछ चंद करोड़ रुपए का और उस कंपनी के खिलाफ सरकार ने कोई एक्शन नहीं लिया ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है जब आप अपने दोस्तों के हजारों हजारों करोड़ रुपए के लोन फ्री में माफ कर देते हैं 
ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है जब आप विदेशों की यात्रा में जाते हैं और विदेशों की यात्रा के बहाने आप अपने चंद दोस्तों के लिए वहां ठेके लेते हैं विदेशी विदेशी सरकारों से ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है आज देश में दो किस्म की राजनीति चल रही है एक ईमानदार राजनीति एक भ्रष्टाचारी राजनीति ईमानदार राजनीति वो है जिस जो आज आम आदमी पार्टी कर रही है हम एक एक चीज में पैसा बचाते हैं एक एक चीज में पैसा बचाते हैं और वो पैसा बचा के हम जनता को सारी सुविधाएं दे रहे हैं और दूसरी है भ्रष्टाचारियों की राजनीति बड़े बड़े हजारों करोड़ रुपए के ठेके दिए जाते हैं हजार जा ताकि खूब पैसा बनाया जा सके हजारों करोड़ रुपए के ठेके देते हैं अपने को देते हैं अपने दोस्तों को ठेके देते हैं वो सारे और सारी सुविधाएं अपने मंत्रियों को देते हैं जनता सुविधा मांगे तो कहते हैं कि नहीं नहीं ये फ्री भी फ्री भी फ्री भी रेवड़ी बांट रहे हैं जनता जनता को सुविधाएं नहीं देंगे जनता को सुविधाएं नहीं देंगे अपने मंत्रियों को सुविधाएं देते हैं अपने दोस्तों को ठेके बांटते हैं ये भ्रष्टाचार की राजनीति है आज जनता को तय करना है देश को आज मैं पूछना चाहता हूं जनता को तय करना है ईमानदारी की राजनीति चाहिए कि भ्रष्टाचार की राजनीति चाहिए मैं भारत को नंबर वन बनाना चाहता हूं मेरी जिंदगी का एक सी एक ही मकसद है भगवान से एक ही प्रार्थना है कि जब तक मैं जिंदा हूं मेरे जीते जी मैं भारत को दुनिया का नंबर वन देश देखना चाहता हूं पचहत्तर साल हो गए आजादी के पचहत्तर साल पचहत्तर सालों में हमारे से पता नहीं कितने देश आगे बढ़ गए जापान सिंगापुर जर्मनी अब तो बताते हैं बांग्लादेश भी कई चीजों में आगे बढ़ गया हम पीछे क्यों रह गए भाई हम आगे क्यों नहीं गए हम दुनिया का नंबर वन देश क्यों नहीं बने हमारे में क्या कमी है भगवान ने सब कुछ दे रखा है हमें पहाड़ नदियाँ तरह तरह की जड़ी बूटियाँ फसलें समुद्र तट सब कुछ दे रखा है भगवान ने भारत के लोग इतने इंटेलिजेंट फिर भी हम नंबर वन क्यों नहीं बन रहे तो हमारा मकसद है दुनिया दुनिया का नंबर वन देश बनाना दे भारत को आज दिल्ली के अंदर मैं फ्री की शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ बच्चों को अच्छी शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ फ्री की शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ लोगों को अच्छा इलाज दे रहा हूँ फ्री का इलाज दे रहा हूँ अगर कभी भगवान ने चाहा तो पूरे देश के एक एक बच्चे को हम फ्री की शिक्षा देंगे अच्छी शिक्षा देंगे शानदार शिक्षा देंगे देश के एक एक व्यक्ति को हम अच्छा इलाज देंगे फ्री का इलाज देंगे शानदार इलाज देंगे इससे देश की नींव रखी जाएगी ये काम उन्नीस में उन्नीस में हो जाना चाहिए था और जब तक हम अपने देश की नींव नहीं रखेंगे जब तक हमारी नींव मजबूत नहीं होगी तब तक भारत दुनिया का नंबर देश नंबर देश नहीं बन सकता हम भारत के अंदर कैपेबिलिटी है कैपेसिटी है आगे बढ़ने की लेकिन उसके लिए हमें एक ईमानदार राजनीति की जरूरत पड़ेगी नमस्कार so that was the delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal doing a press conference we are clearly taking names but obviously an attack on the bjp and this is just ahead of the gujarat elections where arvind kejriwal of course is also making a huge pitch for coming to power in the state and he's essentially taking a dig because the bjp recently and the prime minister also had uh, criticized the aam aadmi party for being a government which only offers free peace well uh, we're going to shift focus now to some news which is coming in and this has got to do with the presidential elections in a way in fact ahead of the presidential elections there have been posters which have been put up against the chief minister of west bengal mamata banerji calling her anti tribal and uh, this is being put up by the bjp across the state it shows the nda's presidential candidate dropadi murbu a tribal and prime minister modi the trinamool congress has supported yashwant sinha for the presidential polls and that is why she's been called anti tribal Shogato Mukhopadhyay is now joining us. I'm going to wait for Shogato Mukhopadhyay to join us from Kolkata. But uh, for now, there are two political parties, three actually. It's the Trinamool Congress and the Congress Party, the Aam Aadmi Party, and of course the NCP who are supporting Yashwant Sinha. And this question is being asked of the West Bengal Chief Minister that if she being a woman and also considering there is a tribal population in West Bengal, why is it that she is not showing her support for Draupadi Murmu? Kamalika is with us uh, from Kolkata. any response yet from the trinamool congress to this kamlika yeah uh, shukhendu shekhar roy the rajya sabha mp yes just reacted by saying that you know these are all tactics of bjp and uh, because on ground bjp can't win in bengal so they are trying to uh, you know show they are trying to give a wrong campaign here uh, by uh, you know by portraying that uh, trinamool congress is anti uh, uh, anti tribal 
But if you see it on record, that's what he's saying. And what work the Trinamool Congress government has done for the uh, for the Dalits, for the tribal peoples, that's totally different. And and more so, Mamta Banerjee herself has said that had she been known that Draupadi Murmu will be the candidate, then she would have thought otherwise. But since it's an opposition call which has been taken and since the government has not spoken to the opposition parties, so now they have to go by the opposition party candidate. But it's absolutely a ploy of BJP. That's what the Trinamool Congress is saying. And also the Trinamool Congress is putting this point that this won't have any effect anywhere in ground Bengal. Rashtrapati uh, present election, obviously, the numbers are there with BJP. Uh, so obviously, the uh, and, and all uh, this emotion of Draupadi Murmu, the Dalit candidate, is also there. But it won't have any effect on ground politics of Bengal. That's what the Trinamool Congress is saying. But these posters which are being put up, uh, do you think it's going to have any impact on the Trinamool Congress? Uh, uh, you know, maybe they'll have to be some explaining to it. They may want to do because she's a woman, she's also tribal. Uh, do you think there is a section of the Trinamool Congress, is there rather, Kamalika, who feel that perhaps they should have actually supported uh, Murmu? Yeah, that feel is there with the chief minister herself, with the party chief herself. So that feel is obviously down the party, you know, to the other people of the party, obviously. So um, that's there, obviously, that they feel that uh, if, uh, if the, uh, cent if the uh, BJP would have told them earlier, but that feel is uh, there. That cannot mm. be, uh, you know, that cannot be said it's not there. But at the same time, uh, the, the feel for the, the uh, Trinamool Congress, let me tell you, Pallavi, before uh, 2021, very uh, after 2019, they have been working, uh, targeting the Dalit class in in Bengal. Okay. So they think in fact, Komalika, they have, you uh, were talking about yes. a reaction from the Trinamool Congress. Let's listen into the uh, reaction of the Trinamool Congress, and I'll come back to you. दाबी ये बात अफवाह फैला के वो ये एक अफवाह फैला के भ्रम तैयार करना चाहते हैं आदिवासियों की मन में कि तिरुवन कांग्रेस के साथ मत जाओ लेकिन वो लोग आदिवासी लोग जानते हैं कि ममता बनर्जी का जो कारण सूची प्रगति का जिसके कारण उनका पिछले दिनों से ज़्यादा प्रगति हुआ है वो ममता बनर्जी का नेतृत्व में ही काम करेगा और काम कर रहा है वो भी समय नहीं करेगा Okay, now Kamalika, we just heard what the Trinamool Congress had to say in his defense, but you know, you were going on. I mean, you were talking about that there's a section who perhaps feels that Murmu would have been, politically speaking, a better cho choice. So that uh, Mamta Banerjee herself has said, and obviously what Mamta Banerjee sees in her party, that percolates down. So it's the thought of the entire party, not only Mamta Banerjee herself, but at the same time, since uh, Yashwan Sinha's name is there and since the opposition has uh, fielded in Yashwan Sinha as the candidate, so, uh, the, uh, so you, know, it, you know, there they can't say anything. But at the same time, the Supreme uh, Court government, they, uh, they are saying and they are putting this that they are not saying anything bad about Draupadi Murmu or the presidential candidate of BJP. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather, they themselves have worked a lot for the Dalits. And if you remember that uh, the National General Secretary of Trinamool Congress, Abhishek Banerjee, he has been saying that in terms in Ayodhya to, uh, you know, in this emblem inauguration thing, uh, everywhere it was not the president who was called, who is a Dalit. So, you know, they are also putting this point in front that Draupadi Murmu is nothing but a political weapon of BJP. So, uh, Actually, on ground, BJP is a party which does not think about the Dalits. That, you know, that uh, logic is also put forward by the Trinamool Congress. That is also very interesting. Okay. Thank you very much, Komalika, for putting that into perspective. We're going to move on to the other top story. And this has got to do with the special investigation team of Gujarat investigating the Tista Settlebat case, which has now made a huge claim says that Tista actually received the Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Narendra Modi state government.
SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that Thista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize by hook or crook the state company in 2002. Now, apart from this, the SIT also claims that the Congress veteran leader, the late Ahmed Patel, in fact gave funds to Tista to around 30 lakh rupees to help her in her mission to destabilize the government. The Congress responded by calling the SIT's claims as mischievous, but BJP countered it by saying that the entire blame was actually on Sonia Gandhi because she was merely using Ahmed Patel to put forward her desire to get rid of the Narendra Modi government. आमद पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की उन्हें अपमानित और उन्हें किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और ये पूरे षडयंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दू आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया माय फादर्स होम रेजिडेंस एंड ऑफिस हैज बीन ओपन टू वन एंड ऑल आई मीन यू कैन वॉक इन एंड वॉक आउट एनी टाइम आई एम श्योर द मीडिया इज वेरी वेल अवेयर ऑफ इट so i um, have uh, i i have never been involved in his work so i really can't comment on it i have i've i've not i've i've been uh, this was 20 25 years ago we were much younger probably maybe away at college or university also have no clue do you not remember 2017 there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father and i don't know where the terrorist is right now and like i said uh, in tw- the election before that uh, there was isi and uh, some conspiracy conspiracy in pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister so every election uh, some controversy comes up i i wouldn't be surprised if 2027 also has ahmed patel turning up into some controversy again the point is that that's a version submitted that whether that version has any legs to stand on is a question that will be decided from what i have been seeing since 2014 uh, in some matters my head hangs in shape okay in fact there's an all party meeting which has just begun and that is the speaker's all party meeting and this is something which is always takes place just ahead of the parliament session you know the parliament session begins on 18th or which it begins on 19th which is on monday and you can see those first pictures which are out you know maria all party meetings are a courtesy and i think it's a norm before every parliament session but there plenty which is going to be on the platter for both the sides Yes, absolutely, and uh, hence that is the reason why uh, a meeting, all party meeting, called by the speaker here, and it becomes important because uh, uh, the speaker has to run the house, and he would certainly want that uh, the issues which affect the common man could be raised by the opposition, and those are the issues uh, on which the government can be sought to explain hmm. its position and uh, you know the accountability sought here. Uh, so, uh, Padavi, we have seen over the last 48 hours a lot of issues. which have been uh, you know the point of conflict between the two sides with the speaker coming out and giving clarifications saying that what is being released be it in the form of the, the no dharnas in the parliament premises or even those list of unparliamentary words this is something which hasn't happened all of a sudden it has been in the works or perhaps those lists have come out been coming out since 1959 and and also in the context of those protest ban uh, has been happening for 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 uh, you know years now uh, so the government uh, on its part says that it is the speaker has to explain the speaker says that the government has nothing to do mm, with it mm. and if anything it is uh, it is they who are uh, who have explained their position but all efforts are being made to ensure that this is a fruitful uh, monsoon session but uh, the opposition has too much on its plate and uh, so the government as well okay thank you very much maria they all promised to cooperate but then what happens inside the house is going to alter completely different picture that's it for me from now but news continues over here on cn news 18 
say some people really we killed managed. it in Fitur. Uh, I have to say some people really did a fabulous job in Fitur. That's because I was in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a some people, I meant you. Yeah, only. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You, sir. You're very kind. <laughs> Even though some people had a great sequence where they fell down tables and chair, all of chair. that chairs. Yes. Yeah, like a uh, whole array of chairs. So I feel like the director was a little partial to someone. But you still new yeah. words you've learned today. Yeah? <laughs> array of chairs and all. <laughs> <laughs> what is that app? Grammarly. 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 <laughs> so despite that, you know, Vani, you really shone. Yeah. And I have to say that. I was just flying high, in, you know, like <laughs> taking those leaps and jumps and all. Very, very yeah. beautiful, very ethereal. I have to say. And uh, Ranbir, now this is a pan India film. I want to say. Who said it's a pan it's India? It's a pan film. India film, right? Who no, it's releasing so many languages, not pan India. It's pan world. Pan world, okay. Pan, pan universe. Pan universe, multi universe. Multi universe. Did you manifest this pan Indian film? You signed on 2018, let's tell everyone. Two, three people who don't know, he signed on 2018 before KGF. Two, three people means only two, three people watch your show. <laughs> no, yeah, two, three people who don't who know don't that know. you. Achha, okay. They all know your trivia, na? Achha, we all achha. know trivia about you. Point. We all know too much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's your question though? <laughs> that you signed this on before, before KGF, before Bahubali. No, no, before RRR, after Bahubali. So were you prescient? Did you know that this is the kind of film Indian audiences are going to like? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't write the film. So, hmm. it, so actually he was someone who hmm. was, I guess, above. Ekta and me. Yeah. Ekta and him were uh, ahead of the curve. Uh, but at the time that it came to me, it seemed very exciting. Hmm. Uh, you know, I felt uh, very lucky to be offered a film like this. Um, yeah, and here we are sitting about the film. Very excited. 22nd July, the film releases, and the two, three people who don't know that uh, you know it's an action entertainer. It's uh, it's a badass um, entertaining film, uh -huh. and uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. Don't try to wrap up just yet. You go yeah. Pichhe se bolna. No, no one is saying. No one is saying. Lyo is just. He's playing with so his psyche all along. He does. Is, is it, does he do this on sets as well? No, do you no, guys no. feel very demotivated when you go home? See, I have realized that. demotivated. What is happening? I wake up motivated. Okay, okay. And then you meet Ranbir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. See, you're he's, a, you're, he's been you're demotivating me since morning. Every morning. time you do our interviews, you always ask the Masti core questions. So when I'm allowed to do Masti, oh, no? why are only you allowed? That's fine, that's Correct. fine, that's fine. But on, don't pretend on sets. You're like very disciplined, why very sweet, introvert. Have you introvert. been on my set? You're very, you're very disciplined on your set. I don't know, ask them. Am you're, I? Yeah, he's is very he? disciplined. No, generally, he's generally. Oh, but it's it's a it's a shocking transition that happens. Okay, fine. It's a yeah, question yeah, yeah. I asked. Good, okay. good to know. She doesn't <laughs> want to receive the answer, but she's yeah, she's leaving <laughs> yeah, with okay. it. Yeah, okay, okay, ha. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and as an as a co-star, he's okay. Or? Yeah, just about okay. Just about okay. He manages. Yeah. Manages. Yeah. We manage. Yeah. We jail of him. He sail through. <laughs> you, I, I know you did Kathak for this film. You prepared huh? for this yeah, film. Yeah, I did. Did what Few about sessions. you? You prepared. I. Um, Prepared falling down in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> For six months, I was no. just falling down chairs. It's a larger than life role, and yeah. you're so real. No, no. Let's. I mean, real. on a on a serious note, yeah, yeah. This film came with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because it's a part which I've never done in my life, hmm. in the say, 15 year career that I've had. Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shamshera and Obali. Uh, it was a, a a character which was filled with angst. It's something which angst doesn't naturally come from me, hmm. and uh, Karan's one. Um, requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film he said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry do you get angry mm -hmm. and when I told him no I don't get angry his face had broken he's like you don't <laughs> get angry so how are you going to do this part uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst yeah. and I think that really helped in um, Good evening, I'm Pallavi Ghosh, but we're beginning with some news which is coming in from the BJP headquarters. Even as the process of the selection of the vice president is going to be going on. Uh, coming in now is the Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah, the BJP president, J.P. Nadda. They arrive at the BJP headquarters and this is ahead of the BJP's parliamentary board meeting at 6pm to decide on the vice president's name. The Prime Minister, of course, is going to be joining in also after a short while. In fact, my colleague Arun Dhanta, who covers the BJP, is now joining us. Uh, you know, Arun, one thing certainly we can be sure of is that we cannot be sure of the name for the vice president. But this meeting essentially is going to culminate in a formal announcement of the name. What is it that they're likely to keep in mind when they're going to choose that person? Well, that's right, uh, Pallavi. It's not easy for anyone to speculate 
actually who's going to be the NDA's uh, nominee for the vice presidential uh, post. There were so many names in past couple of days which are floating around. Uh, when uh, you know Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi senior was not extended, and people were saying uh, Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi can be sent to uh, you know the vice president house, then uh, uh, you know uh, Arif Mohammad Khan's name, and then somebody, somebody, some few few people are saying that uh, maybe Venkaiah and I do uh, you know uh, given another chance. Uh, so various other names which are floating around at this moment, but uh, this parliamentary board's meeting will clear the. The air because this is the highest decision making body of the PPP and they will sit today at around uh, you know, 6 pm uh, and then uh, they will discuss as to who's going to be the nominee of NDA for the vice presidential election. Uh, as we speak at this moment, uh, Union Home Minister Amit Shah has already arrived uh, at BJP headquarters and also we are told that BJP chief JP Nadda uh, is also uh, in the BJP headquarters. So, uh, both are in the BJP uh, headquarters at this moment. We are expecting other members of the parliament board reach here in a short while. And then, uh, of course, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, will be chairing this uh, meeting. Uh, but as far as number game is concerned, that is something which seems, uh, you know, uh, in BJP's favor. Uh, it's not like as uh, uh, it uh, earlier happened in case of uh, the president's school, since, uh, you know, various other political parties. Uh, have agreed to give their support. But in case of uh, President, we be in very comfortable position uh, because if you go uh, by the total number of uh, seats in parliament, that is around 780, and the majority mark is. Uh, okay. 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 Arun, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to stop you on that. Delhi Chief Minister is addressing a press conference. Let's listen. Israel freebies de raha hai. Mujhe baddi baddi galiyan di ja rahi hai. Mera majak udaya ja raha hai. आज मैं देश के लोगों से पूछना चाहता हूं कि मैं क्या गलत कर रहा हूं दिल्ली के गरीबों के बच्चे मिडिल क्लास के बच्चों को मैं सरकारी स्कूलों में शानदार शिक्षा दे रहा हूं लेकिन फ्री में शिक्षा दे रहा हूं मैं लोगों से पूछना चाहता हूं कि क्या मैं फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा हूं या देश की नींव रख रहा हूं दिल्ली के सरकारी स्कूलों में अट्ठारह लाख बच्चे पढ़ते हैं इन 18 लाख बच्चों का भविष्य अंधकार में था अभी तक हमारी सरकार बनी थी उसके पहले जैसे देश भर में सरकारी स्कूलों का बेड़ा गर्क है देश भर में सरकारी स्कूलों की बुरी हालत है वैसे ही दिल्ली के सरकारी स्कूलों की हालत थी पढ़ाई होती नहीं थी सरकारी सारे स्कूल टूटे फूटे पड़े थे दीवारें टूटी हुई थी छतें छू रही थी ब्लैक बोर्ड था नहीं डेस्क नहीं थे नीचे बैठे रहते थे बच्चे उनकी कोई पढ़ाई नहीं होती थी 18 लाख बच्चों का भविष्य बर्बाद था आज अगर हमने इन 18 लाख बच्चों का भविष्य अच्छा कर दिया अगर मैं इन बच्चों को अच्छी शानदार शिक्षा दे रहा हूं लेकिन फ्री में दे रहा हूं तो मैं क्या गुनाह कर रहा हूं सरकारी स्कूलों में पहली बार आजादी के बाद से पहली बार 75 साल में पहली बार निन्यानवे से ज्यादा नतीजे आए हैं मैं अगर अपनी बढ़ाई खुद करूं तो कहा जाएगा कि केजरीवाल खुद अपनी बढ़ाई कर रहा है लेकिन नतीजे निन्यानवे प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा नतीजे आए हैं सरकारी स्कूलों के प्राइवेट स्कूलों को भी पीछे छोड़ दिया पिछले कुछ सालों में चार लाख बच्चों ने दिल्ली के प्राइवेट स्कूलों से नाम कटा के सरकारी स्कूलों में भर्ती हुए हैं ये कोई छोटी बात नहीं है आज गरीबों के बच्चे आई के अंदर कंप्यूटर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग की पढ़ाई पढ़ रहे हैं नीट के पेपर पास करके डॉक्टरी की पढ़ाई पढ़ रहे हैं एक लड़का है गगन उसके पिताजी कार्डबोर्ड बनाने गत्ते के डिब्बे बनाने की फैक्ट्री में मजदूरी का काम करते हैं कोरोना में वो नौकरी भी छूट गई पंद्रह हजार रुपये महीने कमाया करते थे आज गगन का एडमिशन आईआईटी धनबाद में कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग में हुआ है उससे पूछ के देखिए कि क्या केजरीवाल फ्री की रेवड़ियाँ बांट रहा है या देश का भविष्य बना रहा है ऐसे हजारों बच्चे हैं जिनका भविष्य आज सुनहरा हुआ सुनहरा किया हम लोगों ने यह काम 1947 में हो जाना चाहिए था यह काम 1950 में हो जाना था चाहिए था जो आज हम कर रहे हैं आज हम लोग देश की नींव रख रहे हैं ये रेवड़ी नहीं है ये देश की नींव के में एक एक ईंट रख रहे हैं हम लोग आज दिल्ली के सरकारी अस्पताल हमने शानदार कर दिए दिल्ली में शानदार मोहल्ला क्लिनिक बना दिए जिनकी चर्चा पूरी दुनिया में हो रही है पूरी दुनिया के अंदर दिल्ली एक वो चुनिंदा शहर है 
जहां पे दिल्ली की दो करोड़ जनसंख्या एक एक आदमी का इलाज मुफ्त है एक एक आदमी का दो करोड़ लोग रहते हैं दिल्ली में एक एक आदमी का इलाज मुफ्त है चाहे वो गरीब हो चाहे अमीर हो हम ये नहीं पूछते कि कौन सी जात का कौन सी धर्म का है अमीर है गरीब है आदमी है औरत है छोटा है बड़ा है जो भी आदमी है हर एक का इलाज मुफ्त है तीस लाख चालीस लाख पचास लाख रुपए का भी अगर उसका ऑपरेशन का खर्चा आएगा उसकी सारी दवाइयाँ उसके सारे टेस्ट उसके सारे डायग्नोस्टिक सब कुछ उसका मुफ्त होता है सारे मैं सारे मोहल्ला क्लिनिक्स के अंदर उनका इलाज मुफ्त होता है क्या मैं ये फ्री की रेवड़ियाँ बांट रहा हूँ आज दिल्ली के अंदर अगर किसी का एक्सीडेंट हो जाए हमने एक फरिश्ते स्कीम बनाई अगर किसी का एक्सीडेंट हो जाए तो उसको हमने कहा है कि उसको नियरेस्ट अस्पताल में ले जाइए आसपास जो भी अस्पताल हो चाहे कितना भी महंगा अस्पताल क्यों ना उसे उठा के ये नहीं सोचना कि मैं कभी मेरे उसे नियरेस्ट अस्पताल में ले जाइए उस आदमी को ठीक करने का सारा खर्चा दिल्ली सरकार देती है फरिश्ते स्कीम कहते हैं हम इसे मैं एक आपको उदाहरण देता हूँ विकास सानी साहब हैं ईस्ट दिल्ली में रहते हैं अपने घर से निकले मार्केट के लिए रास्ते में एक्सीडेंट हो गया भगवान की कृपा थी कि उधर से अंतुल कोहली जी गुजर रहे थे उन्होंने उनको उठाया और वो उनको अस्पताल ले गए उस छोटे अस्पताल ने उनको फोर्टिस में रेफर कर दिया क्योंकि चोट बड़ी गहरी थी फोर्टिस अस्पताल में उनका पाँच लाख रुपये का खर्चा आया सारा खर्चा दिल्ली सरकार ने दिया तेरह हजार से ज्यादा लोगों की जान बचा चुके हैं अभी तक हम इन तेरह हजार लोगों के परिवार वालों से पूछिए कि क्या केजरीवाल फ्री की रेवड़ियां बांट रहा है या पुण्य का काम कर रहा है धर्म का काम कर रहा है आज दिल्ली के एक एक परिवार को हम फ्री बिजली दे रहे हैं दो यूनिट बिजली फ्री दे रहे हैं पंजाब में हमने तीन यूनिट बिजली फ्री देनी चालू की है ये कहते हैं केजरीवाल फ्री में बिजली क्यों दे रहा है मैं इनसे पूछना चाहता हूं तुम्हारे मंत्रियों को कितनी फ्री में बिजली मिलती है तुम्हारे मंत्रियों को चार चार पांच पांच हजार यूनिट तुम लोगों को चार चार पांच पांच हजार यूनिट बिजली फ्री मिलती है तब ठीक है लेकिन गरीब जनता को अगर मैंने 200 यूनिट 300 यूनिट बिजली फ्री दे दी तो तुम्हें बड़ी तकलीफ होती है आज दिल्ली के अंदर हमने फ्री में लोगों को योगा कराना चालू किया सत्रह लोग दिल्ली में हम उनको फ्री में टीचर भेजते हैं रोज सुबह हमारे 500 से ज़्यादा टीचर फ्री में जगह जगह लोगों को योगा कराने जाते हैं हमने दिल्ली में सबकी दवाइयाँ सब कुछ फ्री कर दिया टेस्ट फ्री कर दिए इलाज फ्री कर दिया लेकिन हमारा मकसद है कि कोई बीमारी नहीं पड़ना चाहिए उनको योगा सिखाते हैं हम लोग सत्रह हज़ार लोगों को हम योगा सिखा रहे हैं डेली फ्री में योगा टीचर भेज रहे हैं बताइए क्या गलत कर रहे हैं आज मैं दिल्ली में हजारों लोगों को फ्री में यात्रा करा चुका हजारों बुजुर्गों को लगभग पैंतालीस हजार से ज्यादा बुजुर्ग तीर्थ यात्रा कर चुके हैं अयोध्या जी गए हरिद्वार ऋषिकेश गए मथुरा वृंदावन गए शिरडी बाबा गए रामेश्वरम जी गए पुरी जी गए पता नहीं कहाँ कहाँ हम लोगों ने उनको फ्री में तीर्थ यात्रा कराई है तीर्थ यात्रा कराने का तो पुण्य होता है और ये लोग कह रहे हैं ये लोग मुझे गालियाँ दे रहे हैं कह रहे हैं केजरीवाल फ्री में रेवड़ी बांट रहा है आज महिलाओं को हम दिल्ली में फ्री में ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्री में उनको हम बसों में ट्रांसपोर्ट दे रहे हैं मेरा क्या कसूर है जो लोग मेरे को गालियां दे रहे हैं उन्होंने हजारों करोड़ रुपए खर्च करके लिए अपने लिए प्राइवेट प्लेन खरीदा है हजारों करोड़ रुपए खर्च करके अपने लिए शानदार हवाई जहाज खरीदे हैं इन्होंने केजरीवाल अपने लिए हवाई जहाज नहीं खरीदता केजरीवाल अपनी माँ बहनों का सफर उस पैसे को बचा के माँ बहनों का सफर फ्री करता है बताइए केजरीवाल क्या गलत कर रहा है पढ़ा लिखा हूं मैं इंजीनियरिंग में डिग्री करी है मैंने अकाउंटिंग की भी पढ़ाई करी है कानून की भी पढ़ाई करी है और असली डिग्री है मेरी डिग्री भी फर्जी नहीं है सब कुछ समझता हूं आज इतनी चीजें फ्री करने के बाद भी दिल्ली का बजट फायदे में चल रहा है ये मैं नहीं कह रहा अभी थोड़े दिन पहले सी की रिपोर्ट आई है और सी की रिपोर्ट ने कहा है कि 2015 के बाद से जब से केजरीवाल की सरकार आई है तब से दिल्ली का बजट नफे में चलने लगा उसके पहले घाटे में चलता था तो बजट भी नफे में चल रहा है कोई नया टैक्स नहीं बढ़ाया भ्रष्टाचार खत्म कर दिया भ्रष्टाचार खत्म करके जो इतनी सारी इतना पैसा बचा उससे अगर अब मेरे अपने लोगों की मैंने इतनी सहूलियतें दे दी तो बताइए मैंने क्या गलत किया 
मैं बताता हूं आपको फ्री की रेवड़ी क्या होती है और मैं बताता हूं आपको इस देश में फ्री की रेवड़ी कौन बांट रहा है एक कंपनी है बहुत बड़ी उस कंपनी ने लोन लिया कई बैंकों से खा गए वो लोन बैंक दिवालिया हो गए और उस कंपनी ने एक राजनीतिक पार्टी को चंदा दे दिया कुछ चंद करोड़ रुपए का और उस कंपनी के खिलाफ सरकार ने कोई एक्शन नहीं लिया ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है जब आप अपने दोस्तों के हजारों हजारों करोड़ रुपए के लोन फ्री में माफ कर देते हैं ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है जब आप विदेशों की यात्रा में जाते हैं और विदेशों की यात्रा के बहाने आप अपने चंद दोस्तों के लिए वहां ठेके लेते हैं विदेशी विदेशी सरकारों से ये फ्री की रेवड़ी है आज देश में दो किस्म की राजनीति चल रही है एक ईमानदार राजनीति एक भ्रष्टाचारी राजनीति ईमानदार राजनीति वो है जिस जो आज आम आदमी पार्टी कर रही है हम एक एक चीज में पैसा बचाते हैं एक एक चीज में पैसा बचाते हैं और वो पैसा बचा के हम जनता को सारी सुविधाएं दे रहे हैं और दूसरी है भ्रष्टाचारियों की राजनीति बड़े बड़े हजारों करोड़ रुपए के ठेके दिए जाते हैं हजार जा ताकि खूब पैसा बनाया जा सके हजारों करोड़ रुपए के ठेके देते हैं अपने को देते हैं अपने दोस्तों को ठेके देते हैं वो सारे और सारी सुविधाएं अपने मंत्रियों को देते हैं जनता सुविधा मांगे तो कहते हैं कि नहीं नहीं ये फ्री भी फ्री भी फ्री भी रेवड़ी बांट रहे हैं जनता जनता को सुविधाएं नहीं देंगे जनता को सुविधाएं नहीं देंगे अपने मंत्रियों को सुविधाएं देते हैं अपने दोस्तों को ठेके बांटते हैं ये भ्रष्टाचार की राजनीति है आज जनता को तय करना है देश को आज मैं पूछना चाहता हूं जनता को तय करना है ईमानदारी की राजनीति चाहिए कि भ्रष्टाचार की राजनीति चाहिए मैं भारत को नंबर वन बनाना चाहता हूं मेरी जिंदगी का एक सी एक ही मकसद है भगवान से एक ही प्रार्थना है कि जब तक मैं जिंदा हूं मेरे जीते जी मैं भारत को दुनिया का नंबर वन देश देखना चाहता हूं पचहत्तर साल हो गए आजादी के पचहत्तर साल पचहत्तर सालों में हमारे से पता नहीं कितने देश आगे बढ़ गए जापान सिंगापुर जर्मनी अब तो बताते हैं बांग्लादेश भी कई चीजों में आगे बढ़ गया हम पीछे क्यों रह गए भाई हम आगे क्यों नहीं गए हम दुनिया का नंबर वन देश क्यों नहीं बने हमारे में क्या कमी है भगवान ने सब कुछ दे रखा है हमें पहाड़ नदियाँ तरह तरह की जड़ी बूटियाँ फसलें समुद्र तट सब कुछ दे रखा है भगवान ने भारत के लोग इतने इंटेलिजेंट फिर भी हम नंबर वन क्यों नहीं बन रहे तो हमारा मकसद है दुनिया दुनिया का नंबर वन देश बनाना दे भारत को आज दिल्ली के अंदर मैं फ्री की शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ बच्चों को अच्छी शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ फ्री की शिक्षा दे रहा हूँ लोगों को अच्छा इलाज दे रहा हूँ फ्री का इलाज दे रहा हूँ अगर कभी भगवान ने चाहा तो पूरे देश के एक एक बच्चे को हम फ्री की शिक्षा देंगे अच्छी शिक्षा देंगे शानदार शिक्षा देंगे देश के एक एक व्यक्ति को हम अच्छा इलाज देंगे फ्री का इलाज देंगे शानदार इलाज देंगे इससे देश की नींव रखी जाएगी ये काम 1947 में 1950 में हो जाना चाहिए था और जब तक हम अपने देश की नींव नहीं रखेंगे जब तक हमारी नींव मजबूत नहीं होगी तब तक भारत दुनिया का नंबर देश नंबर देश नहीं बन सकता हम भारत के अंदर कैपेबिलिटी है कैपेसिटी है आगे बढ़ने की लेकिन उसके लिए हमें एक ईमानदार राजनीति की जरूरत पड़ेगी नमस्कार सो दैट वाज़ द दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल डूइंग अ प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस वी आर क्लियरली टेकिंग नेम बट ऑब्वियसली एन अटैक ऑन द बीजेपी एंड दिस इज जस्ट अ हेड ऑफ द गुजरात इलेक्शन वे अरविंद केजरीवाल ऑफकोर्स इज ऑल्सो मेकिंग अज पिच फॉर कमिंग टू पार इन द स्टेट and he's essentially taking a dig because the bjp recently and the prime minister also had uh, criticized the aam aadmi party for being a government which only offers free peace well uh, we're going to shift focus now to some news which is coming in and this has got to do with the presidential elections in a way in fact ahead of the presidential elections there have been posters which have been put up against the chief minister of west bengal mamata banerji calling her anti tribal and uh, this is being put up by the bjp across the state it shows the nda's presidential candidate dropadi murbu a tribal and prime minister modi the trinamool congress has supported yashwant sinha for the presidential polls and that is why she's been called anti tribal Shogato Mukhopadhyay is now joining us. I'm going to wait for Shogato Mukhopadhyay to join us from Kolkata. But uh, for now, there are two political parties—three actually. It's the Trinamool Congress 
and the Congress party, the Ahmadmi party and of course the NCP who are supporting Yashwan Sinha and this question is being asked of the West Bengal chief minister that if she being a woman and also considering there is a tribal population in West Bengal, why is it that she is not showing her support for Draupadi Murbo? Kamalika is with us uh, from Kolkata. Any response yet from the Trinamool Congress to this, Kamalika? Yeah, uh, Shukhindu Shekhar Roy, the Rajya Sabha MP, has just reacted by saying that, you know, these are all tactics of BJP and uh, because on ground BJP can't win in Bengal. So they are trying to, uh, you know, show, they are trying to give a wrong campaign here uh, by, uh, you know, by portraying that uh, Trinamool Congress is anti, uh, anti-tribal. But if you see it on record, that's what he is saying. And what work the Trinamool Congress government has done for the uh, for the Dalits, for the tribal people, that's totally different. And and more so, Mamta Banerjee herself has said that had she been known that Draupadi Murmu will be the candidate, then she would have thought otherwise. But since it's an opposition call which has been taken, and since the government has not spoken to the opposition parties, so now they have to go by the opposition party candidate. But it's absolutely a ploy of BJP. That's what the Trinamool Congress is saying. And also, the Trinamool Congress is putting this point that this won't have any effect anywhere in ground Bengal. Rashtrapati uh, present election, obviously, the numbers are there with BJP. Uh, so, obviously, the uh, and, and all, uh, this emotion of Draupadi Murmu, the Dalit candidate, is also there. But it won't have any effect in ground politics of Bengal. That's what the Trinamool Congress is saying. But these posters which are being put up, uh, do you think it's going to have any impact on the Trinamool Congress? Uh, uh, you know, maybe they'll have to be some explaining to it. They may want to do because she's a woman, she's also tribal. Uh, do you think there is a section of the Trinamool Congress, is there rather, Kamalika, who feel that perhaps they should have actually supported uh, Murmu? Yeah, that feel is there with the chief minister herself, with the party chief herself. So that feel is obviously down the party, you know, to the other people of the party, obviously. So um, that's there, obviously, that they feel that uh, if, uh, if the, uh, cent if the uh, BJP would have told them earlier, that feel is uh, there. That cannot mm. be, uh, you know, that cannot be said it's not there. But at the same time, uh, the, the feel for the, the uh, Trinamool Congress, let me tell you, Pallavi, before uh, 2021, very uh, after 2019, they have been working, uh, targeting the Dalit class in in Bengal. Okay. So they think in fact, Komalika, they have you uh, were talking about yes. a reaction from the Trinamool Congress. Let's listen into the uh, reaction of the Trinamool Congress, and I'll come back to you. दाबी ये बात अफवाह फैला के वो ये एक अफवाह फैला के भ्रम तैयार करना चाहते हैं आदिवासियों की मन में कि तिरुवन कांग्रेस के साथ मत जाओ लेकिन वो लोग आदिवासी लोग जानते हैं कि ममता बनर्जी का जो कारण सूची प्रगति का जिसके कारण उनका पिछले दिनों से ज़्यादा प्रगति हुआ है वो ममता बनर्जी का नेतृत्व में ही काम करेगा और काम कर रहा है वो भी समय नहीं करेगा Okay, now Kamalika, we just heard what the Trinamool Congress had to say in his defense, but you know, you were going on. I mean, you were talking about that there's a section who perhaps feels that Murmu would have been, politically speaking, a better cho choice. So that uh, Mamta Banerjee herself has said, and obviously what Mamta Banerjee sees in her party, that percolates down. So it's the thought of the entire party, not only Mamta Banerjee herself, but at the same time, since uh, Yashwan Sinha's name is there and since the opposition has uh, fielded in Yashwan Sinha as the candidate, so, uh, the, uh, so you, know, it, you know, there they can't say anything. But at the same time, the Supreme uh, Court government, they, uh, they are saying and they are putting this that they are not saying anything bad about Draupadi Murmu or the presidential candidate of BJP. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather, they themselves have worked a lot for the Dalits. And if you remember that uh, the National General Secretary of Trinamool Congress, Abhishek Banerjee, he has been saying that in terms in Ayodhya to, uh, you know, in this emblem inauguration thing, uh, everywhere it was not the president who was called, who is a Dalit. So, you know, 
they are also putting this point in front that Draupadi Murmu is nothing but a political weapon of BJP. So uh, actually on ground, BJP is a party which does not think about the Dalits. That, you know, that uh, logic is also put forward by the Trinamool Congress. That is also very interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Komlika, for putting that into perspective. We're going to move on to the other top story, and this has got to do with the special investigation team of Gujarat investigating the Tista Settlebat case, which has now made a huge claim says that Tista actually received the Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Narendra Modi state couple. SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that Tista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize by hook or crook the state company in 2002. Now, apart from this, the SIT also claims that the Congress veteran leader, the late Ahmed Patel, in fact gave funds to Tista to around 30 lakh rupees to help her in her mission to destabilize the government. The Congress responded by calling the SIT's claims as mischievous. But BJP countered it by saying that the entire blame was actually on Sonia Gandhi because she was merely using Ahmed Patel to put forward her desire to get rid of the Narendra Modi government. Ahmed Patel ji ke madhyam se Sonia ji ne Narendra Modi ji ko gherne ki cheshta ki unhe apmanit aur unhe kis prakar se niskashit ki a jaye is ki cheshta ki और ये पूरे षडयंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया My father's uh, home residence and office has been open to one and all. I mean, it is, you can walk in and walk out anytime. I'm sure the media is very well aware of it. So I, um, have, uh, I, I have never been involved in his work, so I really can't comment on it. I have, I've, I've not, I've, I've been, uh, this was 20, 25 years ago, we were much younger, probably maybe away at college or university also, I have no clue. Do you not remember 2017, there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father, and I don't know where the terrorist is right now. And like I said, uh, in tw the election before that, uh, there was ISI and uh, some conspiracy, conspiracy in Pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister. So every election, uh, some controversy comes up. I, I wouldn't be surprised if 2027 also has Ahmed Patel turning up into some controversy again. The point is that that's a version submitted, that whether that version has any legs to stand on is a question that will be decided. From what I have been seeing since 2014, uh, in some matters, my head hangs in shape. Okay, in fact, there's an all-party meeting which has just begun, and that is the speaker's all-party meeting. And this is something which is always takes place just ahead of the parliament session. Remember, the parliament session begins on 18th, or which it begins on 19th, which is on Monday, and you can see those first pictures which are out. You know, Maria, all-party meetings are a curtsy, and I think it's a norm before every parliament session. But there are plenty which is going to be on the platter for both the sides. Yes, absolutely. And uh, hence, that is the reason why uh, a meeting, all-party meeting called by the Speaker here and it becomes important because uh, uh, the Speaker has to run the House and he would certainly want that uh, the issues which affect the common man could be raised by the opposition and those are the issues uh, on which the government can be sought to explain hmm. its position and, uh, you know, the accountability is sought here. Uh, so, uh, Padavi, we have seen over the last 48 hours a lot of issues which have been, uh, you know, the point of conflict between the two sides, with the speaker coming out and giving clarifications, saying that what is being released, be it in the form of the, the no dharnas in the parliament premises, or even in those lists of unparliamentary words, this is something which hasn't happened all of a sudden. It has been in the works, or perhaps those lists have come out, been coming out since 1959, and, and also in the context of those protest bans uh, has been happening for, for, for uh, you know, years now. Uh, so the government uh, on its part says that it is the speaker has to explain. The speaker says that the government has nothing to do mm -hmm. with it. And if anything, it is, uh, it is they uh, who, are, uh, who have explained their position. 
but all efforts are being made to ensure that this is a fruitful uh, monsoon session but uh, the opposition has too much on its plate and uh, so the government as well Okay, thank you very much, Maria. They all promise to cooperate, but then what happens inside the house is a completely different picture. That's it for me from now, but news continues over here on CNN News 18. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful girl. This guy, I tell you, not that kind of good news about Sri Lanka. For Sri Lanka, is there any, any hope, any good news? Aha, Sri Lanka. There are few scenarios which may work. <laughs> are you just looking for out here or you really have some thoughts? Such as, such as? Uh, such as sublet to the global powerhouse like China, <laughs> US, Canada. You know, I thought of that. We were discussing this offline and I think that's a problem because you become a vassal state, no? You become yes men of the big power. Exactly. Then they could make Bahubali, <laughs> Pushpa, Arara, KGF. In Sinhalis as another option. But it's a country of just 22 million. I mean, they can't get India-like figures from sales of tickets and all here. They can if the citizens watch the movie again and again and again and again. <laughs> Are you on something, Mr. Adyukuti? Because, I mean, you, they told me number one in Asia, number one political informed person of India and Asia. Any other options? Yes, yes, yes. Make Sri Lanka the next IPL team. <laughs> no, come on, come on, that's not possible. I mean, can they be evaluated at 28 billion by 2027? I mean, come on, one team. Ah, I, I must tell you, you have a point. There is a last option, but I'm scared to say it. <laughs> no, 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 come on, please. This is the spot where you must tell us what you have because we want to give hope to people. Please, please tell me. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for me. <laughs> dangerous? Why would it be dangerous for you? We're not even involved. I mean, we're in India. That's Sri Lanka. Come on, no one watches this show. I'll tell you honestly. <laughs> you just say what you want. We just abuse sometimes and nobody complains. Go on. On that point, you have convinced me. You have convinced me. <laughs> oh, okay. Go on, please. Go on. There is uh, one place where billions of rupees are available. <laughs> billions of rupees available? Kaan pe? Kaan pe, sir? No questions asked. <laughs> what? I, I I can't believe this, really. No money trail, no auditing, no question of accountability. No question of accountability? What is this? Listen carefully. PM Relief Fund. <laughs> what? Uh, India's or yeah. Sri Lanka's? Ah, you are right. <laughs> Let's just say, you see this? <laughs> Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> वैसे थोड़ा मुश्किल है आपको इसमें इमेजिन करना आपके पास जब ये फिल्म आई सो दिस इज अ फिल्म बेस्ड इन बिहार अ गर्ल फ्रॉम बिहार हुज लिविंग इन पंजाब उसकी जिंदगी में ड्रग्स आते हैं उसकी जिंदगी में परेशानियां आती हैं बाप का साया उसके सर से हट जाता है बहुत तरह की परेशानियों से वो अकेली लड़की गुजरती है और वो भी इत्तेफाक से बड़ी बहन है घर की व्हाट वाज योर रिएक्शन टू द स्क्रिप्ट इट्स स्टिल अ फन फिल्म Okay, okay. Um, and there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of uh, energy in the film, hmm. which is what excited me. Because if she's going through these situations and difficulties and she's going through a very serious tonality, then maybe I don't take so much interest in this film. But because सिद्धार्थ जो हमारे निर्देशक हैं उनका टेक इस फिल्म पे इतना कोकी था और जो ओरिजिनल फिल्म है कोलमा वो कोकिला उसमें इतनी कॉमेडी थी तो वो देख के मैं काफ़ी एक्साइट हो गई यू ट्रेन योर सेल्फ एज एन एक्टर इन ली स्ट्रैट्सबर्ग स्कूल ऑफ थिएटर एंड फिल्म्स व्हाट इज योर बिगेस्ट लर्निंग फ्राम फ्राम लर्निंग एक्टिंग बी ऑनेस्ट एंड बी इन द मोमेंट एंड नथिंग इज मोर रिपल्सिव Maybe repulsive is too strong a word, but more uh, oxem than an external performance. Uh, just a shallow performance. Or just like a performance in general. Mm. To be in the moment. Good evening, I'm Pallavi Ghosh and our top story at this point of time is a BJP parliamentary party meeting where they're likely to decide on the vice president and candidate. It's set to pick its candidate for the next vice president or the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha as well. The BJP chief, J.P. Nadda, Home Minister Amit Shah, in fact, they held a meeting at the BJP headquarters in the national capital. Now, the BJP parliamentary board is going to meet at 6 p.m. later today. Arun Dhanta is reporting from the spot. So, Arun, 
not safe to take names at all, but any yardstick, what essentially is going to be the yardstick on the basis of which the choice is going to be made? Well, see, uh, Pallavi, one thing is uh, very clear and perhaps uh, uh, BJP is also thinking on that line that whoever uh, will be their uh, candidate for the vice uh, presidential post, uh, a message, uh, you know, should be given through that and also uh, they will try to reap benefit out of it. So that is for sure. Uh, now, who's going to be that face? Nobody knows. Uh, you know, 6 p.m. is the time which, uh, which we are told when uh, the parliamentary board meeting will commence here uh, at uh, the BJP headquarters. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, then subsequently we have at around uh, 7.30 a dinner for all BJP MPs, which means that the parliamentary board meeting will not last long. Uh, whether the announcement will be made today, that is something which we do not know. But we're hearing that uh, BJP is going to make the announcement uh, today because, uh, you know, uh, you know, on Monday, uh, perhaps, uh, because 19th is, 19th is the last date to file the nomination. So on 18th, uh, we are told that uh, the candidate will file the nomination. Uh, and as far as the number game is concerned, Pallavi, it, uh, it seems that VJ, BJP is in a very, very comfortable position. The Electoral College for the Vice Presidential Election consists of Lok Sabha and uh, Rajya Sabha. Uh, and therefore, uh, in the total strength of both houses at this moment is around 780. So the majority uh, uh, mark is around uh, uh, 390. Or BJP has around 394 uh, uh, MPs. So for uh, in the numbers game, they have... Uh, uh, you know, they have numbers in their favor, so there will not be any problem in that. But who's going to be uh, the candidate? That's something which is uh, which nobody knows. Uh, BJP has made it very clear that they will uh, try Arun, to I'm speak to the opposition parties in this there regard for a minute. to have that consensus. I'm just going to break your thoughts there for a minute because the speaker is speaking after the all-party meeting. Let's listen into what he says. <laughs> हम देश के महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दों पर चर्चा करें संवाद करें लेकिन सदन बिना वेधान के मर्यादा से चले सभी दलों के नेताओं का सहयोग रहे ताकि देश की जनता की आकांक्षा अपेक्षाएं इन सदन के माध्यम से हम पूरी कर सकें सभी दलों के नेताओं ने सरकार की तरफ से संसदीय कार्य मंत्री ने यह आश्वस्त किया है कि हम सदन की कार्रवाई में सहयोग करेंगे महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दों पर चर्चा भी करेंगे विधेयक पर भी चर्चा करेंगे और किस तरीके से पिछले आठ सत्रों के अंदर जिस तरीके की सदन की उत्पादकता रही है आने वाले सत्र के अंदर भी हम इसी तरीके से सकारात्मक सहयोग देंगे मैंने सभी दल के नेताओं से अपेक्षा की है कि ये सत्र हमारी आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव का काल का सत्र है इसलिए इस सत्र में जो पिछहत्तर साल की हमारी यात्रा है जिस यात्रा में लोकतंत्र सशक्त हुआ मजबूत हुआ है हमारी कोशिश होनी चाहिए कि इन लोकतांत्रिक संस्थाओं के प्रति जनता का विश्वास भरोसा और बढ़े इसलिए सदन के अंदर मर्यादा चर्चा हो सार्थक चर्चा हो सकारात्मक चर्चा हो देश हित में चर्चा हो ताकि समाज के अंतिम व्यक्तियों की बात भी सदन में आ सके और सरकार उसी तरीके से सकारात्मक रूप से उस वंतिम व्यक्ति का कल्याण इस अमृत महोत्सव में करे ऐसे मैंने अपेक्षा किए मुझे सभी दलों ने आश्वस्त किया है कि सदन की कार्रवाई बिना विधान के चलेगी धन्यवाद स्पीकर एड्रेसिंग द मीडिया जस्ट आफ्टर ऑल पार्टी मीटिंग इज ओवर यू नो अरुण uh, just to come back to the vice presidential name, in the case of the presidential elections, it was a trump card really which was thrown by the BJP, which has only led to a shuffling of pack as far as the opposition is concerned. It doesn't stand united. 
Do you think that's also going to be one of the game plans or strategy of the BJP while choosing the vice president? Because remember, the vice president also happens to be the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha, where the opposition parties are more in number still. Well, uh, you know, that's right, uh, Pallavi. You know, last time around when they chose... Uh, uh, the, the nominee for the presidential election, it was a masterstroke because we heard right after that decision, many opposition parties were saying that uh, had they informed them earlier, they would have uh, you know, given their consensus. So that was a masterstroke which uh, in fact various, uh, various opposition leaders uh, were telling us off the record. Uh, but when you talk about the vice presidential uh, the nominee, as you rightly mentioned, that uh, uh, you know, vice president is a you know ex official chair chairperson of uh, Rajya Sabha, so he or she uh, has that responsibility to manage as well. So you need somebody not only uh, you know uh, sending a message to a larger public, but also somebody who can manage things in Rajya Sabha. Uh, various names uh, you know, are floating around in the past couple of days, uh, uh, for that matter, Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi, because he was not given another tenure. You know, people are talking about uh, Venkaiya Naidu, uh, you know, uh, may uh, you know, get another chance. Uh, people are talking about Arif Muhammad Khan or somebody from uh, uh, you know, southern India. So you know, there are various names and uh, various theories behind uh, them. Uh, but nobody knows actually what is going on in the mind of uh, the BJP. Because I remember yesterday, I was here in the BJP headquarters when uh, they were uh, holding that meeting of parliamentary board to decide the name of the presidential candidate. Nobody knew till the time JP Nadda announced that name from the stage. So such was, uh, you know, uh, uh, such was the clandestine uh, operation or the, you know, the things which they kept, uh, you know, is something which, uh, which we know. And the various decisions, uh, you know, had, had been taken in this regard by BJP where nobody uh, knew about as to what uh, BJP is planning. So even today, nobody is ready to, you know, make any guess uh, that uh, what is going to be uh, the, the nominee of uh, the vice presidential candidate, but uh, everyone is waiting for that parliamentary board's meeting to start uh, because we are told that the meeting will not last because then uh, will not last long because they will have to go to uh, parliament for that yeah, uh, dinner right. party uh, which has been organized for all the BJP uh, MPs. So the wait is not, uh, you know, uh, not going to be much, but yes, all eyes are going to be on that parliamentary board's meeting and then only we will we'll be get to know who's going to be the vice presidential nominee of NDA. Right. And if there's one thing we know, Arun, is that it's not very safe to hazard any guess. Thank you very much. We'll come back to you once the names are announced. But to some news coming in from Haryana. This is from Hisar. A big conspiracy has been unearthed to stop the coal supply at the Kedar power plant. 64 locks have been uprooted from the railway track. In fact, this was used to supply coal to the power plant. Sikhs for justice have now taken responsibility for this incident. The railway track has been repaired and supply has begun once again. Uh, so this is certainly seen as a very, very uh, dangerous attempt. Let me just go across to my colleague Sandeep Saini, who's joining me from uh, uh, Atari. Uh, Sandeep, Mansha kya thi? Or unhone zimmedari to li hai, lekin unki mansha kya thi? Or kis tarah ka investigations abhi chal rahe? Okay, I'm going to try and get back to him. Uh, but just doing a recap and you see some of the pictures, essentially what the Sikhs for Justice who've taken responsibility for this are saying is that they wanted to cut the coal supply to the Kedar power plant. 64 locks were uh, uprooted and the railway's track has now been opened up and the supply has been uh, kind of ensured at this point of time, which would have actually meant if the coal supply would have been stopped, it would have been a major power outage. And at this point of time, the Sikhs for Justice have taken responsibility. There has been quite a bit of a concern which has been raised off late, especially in the context of Punjab, where there has been a worry that is this raising its head once again. Let me go back to Sandeep. Sandeep, um, a Sikhs for Justice ne zimmedari li to hai, lekin unka mansha kya tha, aur wo kya chaare the karna? 
जी उन्होंने जो वीडियो जारी किया है उसमें ये कहा गया है कि पंद्रह अगस्त को वो पूरे देश में ब्लैकआउट करेंगे बिजली गुल करेंगे जितने भी पावर प्लांट हैं पूरे देश में उनका जो जो कोयला आता है उसको रोकेंगे उसी के तहत जो रेलवे ट्रैक यहाँ हिसार में है खेजर प्लांट पे उस ट्रैक के जो लोक थे वो हटाए गए हैं और उस वीडियो में उन्होंने लोक हटाते हुए की वीडियो जारी की है और उन्होंने साफ चेतावनी दी है कि पूरे देश में पंद्रह अगस्त को वो जितने भी पावर प्लांट हैं हिसार में यमुनानगर में अन्य जो भी राज्य में है उनका सभी को मतलब कि कोयला नहीं जाने देंगे और 15 अगस्त को पूरे देश में बिजली गुल कर, कर देंगे जी हमारे साथ मिस्टर हेमन अत्री आल्सो नाउ जॉइनिंग आज यू नो डू यू इज दे फियर एंड इज देन एप्रीहेंशन दैट द सो कॉल्ड खालिस्तानी और सेपरेटिस्ट मूवमेंट और एटलीस्ट अ पर्टिकुलर सेक्शन इज रेजिंग इट हेड टू डिस्ट्रप्ट पीस इन पंजाब हरियाणा सी पल्वी व्हाट इज व्हाट हैज हैपेंड इन हिसार इट्स मोर ऑफ अ थ्रेट एंड अपरेंटली for the simple reason yesterday night the whole night this operation was done these clips were removed almost 65 of them so if at all you are up to something very serious and as big as this scale that they have claimed mr pannu that they will be doing it all around the country he has named at least 20 stations for them so he would have never come on video and detail all those details we will not be detailing all those details minor details now what i think from this is they are trying to create a kind of you know atmosphere of panic see there was an agitation going on in khedar till yesterday only once there was a person who was killed also who has been you know cremated today only so mm. the thing is sick for justice is more into you know creating kind of panic in this country and less of something concrete in this particular case now mm. at 7:45 7:40 in the morning they released this video you might have seen that that is with your channel also already so the thing is if at all they have to plan such a big operation they would have never disclosed it in this way they would never have made it viral now but it is up to the intelligence agencies panvi to see as to what kind of thing that they are planning khedar being a soft target there was an agitation already going on for till about a week or so hmm. so this was a soft target and further let me remind you one thing there is one overbridge also in barwala wherein they have written khalistan zindabad also you might be having those pictures with you hmm. now there has been a spray over that and that has been you know written off in a particular way by the police authorities now the fir is going to be lost but i don't think that haryana police will be able to investigate the whole conspiracy behind it since the you know connection is from somewhere in canada mr pannu is sitting in canada hmm. these plates are removed in uh, you know barwala or khedar or hisar for that matter so it's very difficult for haryana police to get into the whole conspiracy part of it intelligence agencies and particularly nia they will have to look into it this is since it, this is a transnational crime hmm. but 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 when you say that they wouldn't have said this so openly don't you also fear that they are actually now getting more and more brazen about it ki khul ke karenge ab jo hame karna hai daring the government yeah hmm. six for justice had a very active role to some extent in the farmer education also and during that they also got some soft corner from many fringe elements all around now they are going to they are trying to legitimize their position and if hmm. you go by that video what he has said mr pannu 2 minutes and 40 seconds video it is he is trying to say that we are not against indians we are against the indian state what do you mean by it indian state and indians are not two different entities they are the same Hmm. so the thing is the intelligence agencies particularly they have to get into the crux of it and he has particularly mentioned at least 20 power plants located at different locations from west bengal to maharashtra to karnataka and to so many gujarat rajasthan and many other places so this is a you know kind of a national conspiracy has gone across the borders so i don't think haryana police is competent enough to get into the crux of the whole issue that's my point Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Atri, and thank you very much, Sandeep, for getting us those details. Well, there's more trouble ahead for the Congress Party just ahead of the presidential elections.
Well, the Goa Congress is going to send five of its MLAs to Chennai and this is amidst fears of cross-voting. Six are already there in Goa. Eleven MLAs are making up the Congress camp. Remember, just recently there was this fear that there was going to be a split within the Congress party in Goa and they would join the BJP. Herman is with us on the phone line. Herman, just in case there's a cross-voting, obviously the party would take action against them. Is this what you think secretly the Congress MLAs want? But the Congress leadership over here not willing to take any chance and sending them off to Chennai? Uh, well, Talavi, I think you would agree when I say this, that it's never a dull day in Goan politics as far as the Goa Congress is concerned. Now, Goa Congress currently has 11 MLAs. Uh, five of them, uh, who we are told, uh, would be in all likelihood be moved towards uh, Chennai ahead of the presidential election amidst, uh, amidst cross-voting. Now, the remaining six, uh, this, is what, this is what we are picking up from our sources, is that it was the same breakaway group that was trying to move over and join the BJP in the last, uh, in the last week, but things did not uh, prevail at that point in time, which is why this was a move. Uh, but when I spoke to a very senior insider from the Goa Congress, uh, what he's been stating is that this clearly will show uh, that whether these six, in case if there is cross-voting, are loyal to the party or whether they want to switch over to the BJP. Michael Lobo, for example, uh, who is the Kalangut MLA, who was previously from the BJP but had joined the Congress, he is someone who even visited Mumbai today. The purpose of his visit in Mumbai is not yet known. But what we are told is that ahead of the presidential elections, the Congress doesn't want to take any chance. And definitely there are certain rumbles, no doubt, uh, within the Goa Congress, but which of its uh, MLAs will continue to stay with the party and which will decide to cross vote? Uh, to get some sort of clarity, you have five of these uh, who the Congress believe are still loyal to the party are going to be in all likelihood being moved towards Chennai. But about the remaining six, one cannot say because so far the party has not taken any action against them. Even though you have certain murmurs coming in from the state leadership, that they could move in for disqualification at least against two. But that has formally not happened as far as the speaker's office is concerned because they have mm -hmm. said they have not received any sort of uh, any sort of intimation from that particular camp. All right. Okay. We'll have to wait and watch after Monday's elections. Thank you so much, Herman. Shifting focus now to Telangana, where the Telangana Congress chief. Telangana Congress Chief Raven Reddy has written to a Prime Minister requesting that Telangana should be declared as national disaster because of the floods along with NDRF deployment, financial compensation to farmers and kin of the deceased and an immediate relief package of 2,000 crore rupees for repair and reconstruction of roads. And to the other top story, which we have been following since morning, the Gujarat Special Investigation Team has been investigating the Tista Settlevat case, has made a big claim, saying that Tista, in fact, received the Padma Award for her attempts to conspire against the then Narendra Modi led government in the state. SIT had earlier stated in an affidavit that Tista was allegedly part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss or destabilize the state <coughs> by hook or crook in 2002. The SIT claims that Congress veteran leader Ahmed Patel in fact gave funds to Tista to around 30 lakh rupees to help her in the mission. The Congress of course retaliated by calling this mischievous, whereas Mr. Sambit Pats of the BJP said the blame is squarely on Sonia Gandhi who used Ahmed Patel to try and destroy the Chief Minister. Ahmed Patel ji ke madhyam se Sonia ji ne Narendra Modi ji ko gherne ki cheshta ki unhe apmanit aur unhe किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और यह पूरे षड्यंत्र की रचेता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया माय फादर्स होम रेजिडेंस एंड ऑफिस हैज बीन ओपन टू वन एंड ऑल आई मीन इट इज यू कैन वॉक इन एंड वॉक आउट एनी टाइम आई एम श्योर द मीडिया इज वेरी वेल अवेयर ऑफ इट so i um, have uh, i i have never been involved in his work so i really can't comment on it i have i've i've not i've i've been uh, this was 20 25 years ago we were much younger probably maybe away at college or university also have no clue do you not remember 2017 there was uh, a terrorist that was found in a hospital that was uh, affiliated to my father and i don't know where the terrorist is right now 
and like i said uh, in tw- the election before that uh, there was isi and uh, some conspiracy conspiracy in pakistan where my father uh, was to be made the chief minister so every election uh, some controversy comes up i i wouldn't be surprised if 2027 also has ahmed patel turning up into some controversy again the point is that that's a version submitted that whether that version has any legs to stand on is a question that will be decided from what i have been seeing since 2014 uh, in some matters my head hangs in shape सेतलवाद फौरन बॉम्बे से गुजरात आई अहमदाबाद आई और अहमदाबाद आने के बाद में उसने कहा कि हम तो इसको म्यूजियम बनाना चाहते हैं और हम ये चाहते हैं कि ये जो 2002 है उसको हम हमेशा हमेशा जिंदा रखें और वैसा करती भी थी हर 2028 फरवरी 28 फरवरी 2002 को दोहराने के लिए हर साल 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006 हर साल जो है वहाँ एक कार्यक्रम करा करती थी और विक्टियमों को सारे पूरे गुजरात के विक्टियमों को वहाँ पर बुलाया करती थी और वहाँ पर उनके वीडियो बनाया करती थी और वीडियो बनाने के बाद में उसके ऊपर बड़े पढ़ने के लाया करती थी तो मेरा झगड़े का मुख्य कार्यान यही था मैंने उनसे ये कहा कि आप इसको म्यूजियम मत बनाइए इसको इसको बिक जाने दीजिए और इनको जो विक्टियम है इनको इनको घरों में जाने दीजिए वहाँ पर उनकी नाकामी ये हुई कि जो उनके जो उस मुख्यमंत्री थे नरेंद्र मोदी उनके खिलाफ जो है वो सबूत jutta nahi paya varun back with us on this so arun the bjp clearly is not going to let go of this opportunity to hit back at the congress party and even as those investigations against tista satlavat carries team arun in a bit but uh, uh Uh, but we've seen how it's now become a slugfest between the BJP and the Congress party as far as the Tista Satlavad issue and the affidavit is concerned which now finds this angle that the political okay Arun is with us so Arun um, despite the Congress party calling it mischievous and timed with the Gujarat elections the BJP is convinced that there's much that the Congress party needs to answer that's right pallavi and bjp is making it very clear that they are not adding anything into it it's simply the investigation of the special investigation team uh, and therefore the affidavit which they uh, have submitted before the court uh, that's something which they have spoken about today sambit patra the national spokesperson of uh, bjp saying uh, that it is very clear in the affidavit of the special investigation team uh, that tista sitalwar uh, was actually uh, you know working to defame or disrupt the government there in uh, in 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 gujarat and not only damage uh, or the tarnish the image of uh, uh, prime minister uh, and you know chief minister of that time uh, narendra modi but also uh, to you know to to spread a very negative message at a larger level against uh, gujarat uh, and he also uh, talks about the role of ahmed patel and in fact uh, he goes on to say that it was uh, sonia gandhi on whose behest ahmed patel was uh, you know making all the uh, all all the all the efforts and in fact the money which was given to to tista sitalwar uh, as he claims that in the first meeting 5 lakh rupees uh, you know were given to her and then in the second meeting 25 lakhs were given and also he added that beyond that uh, uh, in additional money Uh, was also paid to her which uh, was not used uh, to the in, in the welfare of the victims that money individually uh, had gone in favor of uh, tista sitalwar so it was a very very uh, categorical and direct attack by the bjp on uh, on sonia gandhi and also sambit patra you know read that uh, uh, court's observations when uh, court gave clean chit to Uh, you know uh, prime minister narendra modi uh, that is also uh, you know part of the press conference of uh, sambit patra where he said that very scathing remarks came from the supreme court that uh, you know action should be taken against those people who you know try to malign who uh, you know constructed this co- uh, this this conspiracy against one person so uh, bjp uh, was completely in up and arm against the congress party not even uh, sparing the ahmed patel uh, and also okay. the top uh, top leadership of the congress party Okay many many thanks Arun for getting us that perspective another news coming in from Bihar <coughs> But in the latest crackdown on the Bihar terror conspiracy a lawyer a resident of Darbhanga has been picked up by the Bihar police 
with the help of the UP counterparts. The lawyer was in fact in Lucknow. He has now been taken to Bihar. Saurav is joining us from Patna. So Saurav, we were talking about this earlier. Do you think it could have a connect with other states? It certainly seems so. The lawyer, uh, he, he was in uh, Lucknow, but he's a resident of Darbhanga. Uh, remember, there are uh, several people who have been named uh, from Darbhanga in the fire of Ulwari Sharif case. And, uh, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, Athar Parvez, who was the prime uh, accused in the case, who was arrested, and he, he also uh, uh, used to provide legal aid to his uh, semi uh, uh, members, ex semi members. Uh, who were who in jail, he accepted that he used to uh, uh, be the uh, bailer of those uh, Simi members and also he had uh, helped his own younger brother when uh, when he was arrested in Patna uh, for 2013 blast when Prime Minister Modi was there in the rally, the bomb blast took place and his younger brother was arrested. Uh, in fact, uh, Athar Parvez helped him to get out. So, uh, it's a similar kind of uh, arrest. The lawyer who was from Darbhanga, uh, he is arrested in Lucknow uh, for providing help and aid to PFI is what we are learning right now. स्पेशल एसआईटी काम कर रही है इस पे वो बहुत जल्द ही और लोगों को गिरफ्तार करेगी और फिर हम लोग आपके सामने फिर इसमें नए खुलासे के साथ हैं कोर्ट में आपने सर कोई पेटिशन भी दिया है रिमांड पे लेने के लिए जो पहला केस हुआ था डे बिफोर यस्टरडे जिसमें तीन लोगों को जेल भेजा गया था उसमें दो लोगों को अरमान मलिक और अतर परवेज का हम लोगों को माननीय न्यायालय द्वारा 48 घंटे का पुलिस रिमांड दिया गया है पुलिस रिमांड पे पूछताछ शुरू की जा रही है और 48 घंटे में जो साक्ष्य हमारे पास आएंगे या हमारे पास अभी तक जो साक्ष्य आ गए हैं उसको और वेरीफाई करके और उन दोनों के द्वारा जो और कुछ बताए जाएंगे उन दोनों के जो इंटरलिंक्स इस्टेब्लिश होंगे और उन दोनों के द्वारा जो अभी तक और चाहे फंडिंग की बात करें फाइनेंशियल ट्रेल्स की बात करें स्लीपर्स की बात करें या ट्रेनिंग प्रोवाइड करने की बात करें या टीओटी। सो फास्ट पेस डेवलपमेंट्स टेकिंग प्लेस इन द बिहार टेरर मॉड्यूल एज इट दैट्स इट फॉर मी फ्रॉम नाउ बट न्यूज कंटिन्यूज ओवर ऑन सी एन न्यूज एटीन comes to shav i would I do, it. do it and i think that is an elder sister thing elder sister sy syndrome yeah i think so a little <laughs> bit i think that you automatically think that you're kind of the sacrificial lamb lamb a little <laughs> bit <laughs> and finally what are the kind of directors you would like to work with <laughs> mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai mujhe comedy chahiye mujhe comedy karni hai रोहित शेट्टी सर प्लीज़ मुझे कास्ट कर लीजिए मैं ऑडिशन कर लूँगी सही से ऑडिशन कर लूँगी और आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विथ करण आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विथ भंसाली सो आई रियली आई रियली वॉन्ट टू वर्क विथ नीरज खेवान नीरज मैं बोलने वाली थी हाँ ग्रेट आई वॉन्ट टू सी मैनी मोर फिल्म ऑफ योर्स बिकमिंग ब्लॉक बस्टर्स एंड आई वॉन्ट टू सी यू गेटिंग लॉर्ड ऑफ अवार्ड्स फॉर योर परफॉर्मेंस इन जान सो मच थैंक यू सो मच है वन वेलकम रणवीर कपूर इज टेलिंग मी दर आई एम गोइंग टू मैस अप माई ओपनिंग मोनोलॉग बट आई एम नॉट बिकॉज आई नो दैट दीज टू आर द हॉटेस्ट कपल ऑन द टाउन एंड दैट्स वट आई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट विद एंड वी हैव मोर सॉर आफ्टर डायरेक्टर एंड अ मच अवेटेड फिल्म So how could I mess it up? It's from Shera, guys, oh and my God, welcome I'm so to the team. I'm proud it. of you. No, no. She did it. I'm proud <laughs> of you. She did it. This fight, Ranbir's worst yeah, attempt. Yeah, yeah. He played with the psyche. He does, and not just this, Vani. I must tell you, playing with psyche. Right now, any time I mention Ranbir, my friends have been saying you're not invited because the last time we spoke, I asked you about your wedding. So very sweetly and very sin sincerely, looking into my eyes, said, "I'm not getting married. No, 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 no." Not now, not in April. So I'm like, he said he's not getting married, and he I'm, did, and yeah. he didn't invite you. Exactly, but he, he said he's not going me. to. He didn't invite you. But well. he said that to all of us. He said that to all of you, oh. right? So is there another special event as well that yes. we uh, that we need to congratulate? Well, you, you know when you have to congratulate me and congratulate me then. Okay. Because otherwise, well otherwise this wouldn't make any sense, But right? but is it going to be in April, perhaps? Uh, no, not in April, uh, but it, hopefully soon. Uh, you know, and hopefully by the end of the year. No, no, we haven't planned. I think we are very instinctive people, and uh, uh, we are very 
uh, much in love and hopefully so. Well, congratulations and thank you for not keeping it in April. It's so hot. I know. <laughs> but you're not invited, so oh. I must say. <laughs>
has now been titled as Barangan. Surya and Bala have reunited after a long time. They last teamed up for the award-winning film Pita Magar in 2003. Classic Malayalam film Kummatti is being restored by eminent Hollywood filmmaker Martin Scorsese. The 1970s movie that was originally directed by Aravindan Govan was presented at the Film Foundation Restoration Screening Room. The film preservation is something that um, we got involved with back in the um, back in 1970s. While making the announcement, Scorsese hailed director Aravindan as a pure magician. Scorsese he added that the engaging story and stunning visuals are sure to captivate the viewer's attention even today. Kumati. Kumati. Hi, this is your favorite travel vlogger Farah Khan reporting live from the Shangri-La Bangkok and tonight is a very famous crab festival or as we say in Mumbai khekra tyohar. So let's see all the khekras. Most sought after choreographer, filmmaker and host Farah Khan has now turned travel vlogger. She left her industry friends in splits over her latest hilarious video. I don't know why I haven't come to Bangkok before. I came this year because tickets to New York were just too expensive and I'm so glad I came here. Look at this beautiful view from the Shangri-La Hotel. The chart buster of the week is Akri Pakri from Ananya Pandey Vijay Devarakonda star Liga. Yes! The action entertainer produced by Karan Johar and directed by Puri Jagannath releasing late August has been generating a lot of buzz ever since Devara Konda rose to the occasion. Janvi Kapoor was late to the shoot and Varun Dhawan created a bawal. This is terrible. Janvi. This is behavior. Sorry. If you thought that someone will bawal the beginning miss karega to Ajay Devgan character nahi samajh mein aayega. Hmm. Janvi what is this behavior man? The two are in Poland for Nitesh Tiwari's film Bawal. which has a holocaust connect apparently and the two actors also visited the Auschwitz Nazi camp in Poland earlier they were shooting in Amsterdam and hanging out with Kajol's daughter Nisa Devgan Janvi has confessed that she's been on an ice cream binge on this outdoor shoot I had one too many ice creams yesterday so this is how we cut my double chin so she shared her behind the scenes secret to looking jaw droppingly good <laughs> like Anna Kapoor my chachu Thank you for joining us for the 2022 Emmy Awards nominations announcement. The nominations for the 74th Emmy Awards 2022 are out and Succession is leading with 25 nominations. The satirical drama about the rich had bagged the best drama trophy and eight other awards when it last vied for the Emmys in 2020. My family have disappeared. I need to know where everyone is and what everyone's thinking. There he is, the little man who started this big war. South Korean drama Squid Game which has taken the internet by storm last year has 14 nominations which is historic for a non-English show and it will also be the first foreign language show to bid for the top trophy which is best drama. Other top nominations are The White Lotus which has received 20 nods. Surprise! Mom! Am I interrupting? I know it's only your honeymoon. Oh my god, look at her face. The comedies Hacks and Only Murders in the Building with 17 bids each. We're going to go down there and look around for clues. Do you want to come? And teenage dysfunction drama Euphoria. It stars Zendaya was crowned best actress in 2020 and has been nominated again. Thor Love and Thunder continues Marvel's dream run in India by collecting over 80 crores. Chris Hemsworth also has a very close connection to India considering that's the name of his daughter. Yes, she's India Rose Hemsworth. The actor recently shared glimpses of her on the sets of Thor over the years calling her his favorite superhero. BTS Army will now have access to more content on the Korean pop icons on Disney's international streaming platform. Following a content agreement between the Walt Disney Company Asia Pacific and BTS's management group Hype Corporation, the two shows featuring the K-pop band will play on Disney platforms. 
The titles revealed so far include BTS permission to dance on stage LA a 4K concert film featuring BTS's live performance in Los Angeles's Sophie Stadium in November 2021. The show was the first time in 2 years since the beginning of the pandemic that the band met fans in person and the set included their latest hits like Butter and Permission to Dance. The two companies have also agreed to make BTS monuments. Beyond the Star, a docu series that tracks the journey of the seven member pop act to be made available on Disney platforms from next year. It claims unprecedented access to a library of music and footage over the band's 9 years and will delve into their daily lives. Ranbir Kapoor is back on the big screen after 4 years with Shamshera. This period drama has all the trappings of a pan-Indian entertainer we're seeing nowadays. Vani Kapoor plays the female lead and the film has been helmed by Karan Malhotra. Now it's always fun to catch up with Ranbir though he just won't stop lying to me. As you can see, just a few days before his wedding, he looked me in the eye and told me that he is not getting married in April. Hello and welcome Ranbir Kapoor is telling me that I'm going to mess up my opening monologue but I'm not because I know that these two are the hottest couple on the town and that's what I wanted to start with and we have a most sought after director and a much awaited film so how could I mess it up it's from Shera guys oh and my God, welcome I'm so to the team she did it. proud of you no, no. she did it I'm proud <laughs> of you she did it despite Ranbir's worst yeah, attempts yeah. he played with the psyche he does and not just this Vani I must tell you playing with psyche right now any time I mention Ranbir my friends have been saying you're not invited because the last time we spoke i asked you about your wedding so very sweetly and very sin sincerely looking into my eyes said i'm not getting married no 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 not now not in april so i'm like he said he's not getting married and he I'm, did and yeah. he didn't invite you exactly but and he, he said he's not going me. to he didn't invite you but he said that to all of us he said that to all of you right so is there another special event as well that yes. we uh, that we need to congratulate well, you well you know when you have to congratulate me and congratulate me then okay because otherwise right. otherwise this wouldn't make any sense but, but is it going to be in april perhaps uh, no not in april uh, but it, hopefully soon uh, you know and hopefully by the end of the year no no we haven't planned i think we are very instinctive people and uh, uh, we are very uh, much in love and hopefully so well congratulations and thank you for not keeping it in april it's so hot i know <laughs> but you're not invited so oh. i was <laughs> <laughs> He lied on camera. You liked your fans. छोटी शादी, छोटी शादी की थी. You yeah. liked your fans. No, my mm. fans, my fans will forgive me. They understand. Oh, yeah. see, but <laughs> plays with your psyche. He really does. But he's so charming. How can we not? How can we so not you forgive, forgive you? Me? I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. No, but that's for you. After that's the nature of the job. But you have to forgive me. <laughs> She's coming for me and Karan. You have to, you have, to have love in your heart for me. Only, you're yeah. only coming for me for and you, Karan. For you, yeah. That that is also true because yeah. though he did some nice dancing in that G Huzoor, which was okay. okay. Some. some people really we killed managed. it in Fitur. Uh, I have to say, some people. They really did a fabulous job in Fitur. That's because I was in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a some people, I meant you. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> Even though some people had a great sequence where they fell down tables and chair, all of chair. that. Chairs. Chairs. Yeah. Like a no whole array of chairs. So I feel like the director was a little partial to someone. But you still. New you words you've learned show. today. Huh? <laughs> array of chairs and all. <laughs> <laughs> what is that app? Grammarly. 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 <laughs> So despite that you know Vani you really shone yeah. and i have to say that i was just flying high in you know, like <laughs> taking those leaps and jumps and all very very yeah. beautiful very ethereal i have to say and uh, ranbir now this is a pan india film i want to say who said it's a pan it's india it's a pan film? india film right who you are releasing in so many languages not pan india it's pan world pan world okay pan pan universe pan universe multi universe multi universe did you manifest This Pan Indian film. You signed on 2018. Let's tell everyone. Two three people who don't know, he signed on 2018 before KGF. Two three people means only two three people watch your show. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Two three people who don't who know don't that know. you. Achha, okay. They all know your trivia, na. Achha, We all achha. know trivia about you. Point. We all know too much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's your question, though? <laughs> that you signed this on before before KGF, before Bahubali. No, no, before RRR after Bahubali. So were you prescient? Did you know that this is the kind of film Indian audiences are going to like? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't write the film, so hmm. it, so actually he was someone who hmm. was, I guess, above. Ekta and me. Yeah. Ekta and him were uh, ahead of the curve. Uh, but at the time that it came to me, it seemed very exciting. Hmm. Uh, you know, I felt uh, very lucky to be offered a film like this. 
um, yeah, and here we are sitting about the film. Very excited. 22nd July, the film releases, and the two, three people who don't know that, uh, you know, it's an action entertainer. It's uh, it's a badass. Um, entertaining film uh -huh. and uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. Don't try to wrap up just yet. Why? Are you talking to me? No, no one is saying. No one is saying. Laya is just... He's playing with a psyche all along. He does. Is, is, is it, does he do this on sets as well? No, do you no, guys no. feel very demotivated when you go home? See, I have realized... Demotivated? Demotivated. 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 What is happening? I wake up motivated. Okay, okay. And then you meet Ranbir. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. See, you're he's been demotivating me since <laughs> morning. Every time you do interviews, you always ask the musti core questions. So when I am allowed to do musti, okay. why only you allowed? That's fine. That's Correct. fine. That's fine. But on, don't pretend on sets. You are like very disciplined, why very do sweet, I have to introvert. Have you been on my set? You're very, you're very disciplined on your set. I don't know. Ask them. Am you're, I? Yeah, he's is he? very disciplined. No, generally, he's generally. Uh, but it's it's a it's a shocking transition that happens. Fine, it's a yeah, question yeah, yeah. I've asked. Good, okay. good to know. She doesn't no. want to receive the answer, but she's yeah, she's <laughs> leaving yeah, with okay. it. Yeah, okay, okay, ha, ha. And as an as a co-star, he's okay. Or yeah, just about okay. Just about okay. He manages. Yeah. Manages. Yeah. We manage. Yeah. We jail over. We sail through. ये कहानी है शमशीरा की. अरे कोई नई बात बता गजुरी ये बात तो बचपन से सुनके जवान हुआ हूँ मैं. ड Uh, I'm playing two characters, Shamshera and Obbali. Uh, it was a, a a character which was filled with angst. It's something which angst doesn't naturally come from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karan's one um, requirement for this part was at the very onset of this film, he said mm -hmm. that I need you to be angry. Do you get angry? Mm -hmm. And when I told him no, I don't get angry, his face had broken. <laughs> He's like, you don't get angry, so how are you going to do this part? Uh, so I had to take a lot of help from Karan here. I had mm -hmm. to channelize him a lot because <laughs> he is someone who has a lot of angst, yeah. and I think that really helped in um, portraying both these parts. Akela kahu? Pura gero hai mera. Ab bata. Pakka marega tu. I don't feel like you'd be angry, but I feel like you're a little angsty. You can be angsty, no? Uh, little about life, about life, the bigger question. No, but I, I don't. Nobody has complained yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> except you. Complaining. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Your characters good thing. Yeah. have so much angst. Like in ये जवानी है देवानी उसको angst थी। Yeah, but those are all soul searching and those hmm. the villain was me only. <laughs> yeah. Here finally I have Sanjay Dutt as a villain, so yeah. the angst has to be external, not internal. You know? Yeah. How was that facing off with him? Very intimidating already. He's like somebody who's your role model and now. You know, it would have been very intimidating, but the kind of person that Sanjay Dutt is, he makes you feel very comfortable. Hmm. He makes you, he gives you a lot of love. Hmm. He gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation. Hmm. That listen. It's for the movie. It's for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. From the day I signed this film yeah. till the day he sees, saw the teaser, the trailer, the film, he calls my entire family. Mm. My mother, my my uncles, me. That listen, I'm so happy Ranbir's done this kind of film because these are the kind of films I want to see him in. Ab shud singh in ki safai kare. Shud hone ka vakt. Aa gaya hai daroga sahib. What about you, Banya? Are you taking any pressure, or are you just putting it all on this title character? No, I feel responsible because I'm part of a film. I will feel a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. in my own way, mm -hmm. and I've. I mean, I wish I could be that detached to the uh, result of you know output of mm -hmm. all the hard work that everybody's put in, and after that, you know, you leave it to fate. Yeah. uh i think i get extremely uh, i'm very sensitive when it comes to my work mm -hmm. i take it very seriously tera ishq mera fir tu tu jo bhi kahe ban jao main chhaya hai hu tera suru jis rang kahe rang jao main but what time period is in certain two time periods eh it starts in 1871 and the second time period is when you see the film <laughs> ah okay i know i know because there are two time periods and there's like a reincarnation sort of curse sort of thing that i should expect Fantastic. she got, got it. it no no she it's got not it. Got it. they're lying she got this it. is what it is this is got this you is what cried. it is talking to ranbir is just being lied to all the, the, the time the director saying you got it right <laughs> everything <laughs> also no it's not and no now no, suspense huh? is only gone no now. it's not it's gone, gone he can't release his interview he's not the story
very short break but I'm not going to ask you to come back because I know you will. We have the biggest Hollywood superstars Chris Evans and Anna De Armas on the other side. How can it get bigger? monologue but I'm not because I know that these two are the hottest couple on the town and that's what I wanted to start with and we have a most sought after director and a much awaited film so how could I mess it up it's Shamshera guys oh and my God, welcome I'm so to the team she Hi. did it of you. Well she did it I'm well proud <laughs> of you she did it this guy Ranbi's worst yeah, attempt yeah. he played with the psyche he does and not just this Vani I must tell you playing with psyche right now anytime I mention Ranbi my friends have been saying you're not invited because the last time we spoke I asked you about your wedding so very sweetly and very sin sincerely looking into my eyes said I'm not getting married no no not now not now not in April so I'm like he said he's not getting married and he I'm did and young. he didn't invite you exactly but and he, he said he's not going me. to he didn't invite you but as he well. said that I to all of us he said that to all of you oh. right so is there another special event as well that yes. we uh, that we need to congratulate well, you well you know when you have to congratulate me and congratulate me then okay because otherwise right. otherwise this wouldn't make any sense but no. but is it going to be in April perhaps uh, no not in April uh, but it, hopefully soon uh, you know and hopefully by the end of the year no no we haven't planned i think we are very instinctive people and uh, uh, we are very uh, much in love and hopefully so well congratulations and thank you for not keeping it in april it's so hot i know <laughs> but you're not invited so oh. i was <laughs> He lied on camera. You liked your fans. छोटी शादी, छोटी शादी की थी. You liked your fans. No, my mm. fans, my fans will forgive me. They understand. Oh, yeah. see, this plays with your psyche. He really does, but he's so charming. How can we not? How can we so not you forgive, forgive me? you? I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. No, but that's what you have to. That's the nature of the job. But you have to forgive me. She's coming for me and Karan Ranveer. You have to, you have, to have love in your heart for me. Only, you're yeah. only coming for me. For and you, Karan. yeah. yeah. That, that is also true because yeah. though he did some nice dancing in that G Huzoor, which was okay. Yeah. Some. some people really we killed managed. it in Fitur. Uh, I have to say, some people really did a fabulous job in Fitur. That's because I was in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a some people, I meant you. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Very kind. <laughs> Even though some people had a great sequence where they fell down tables and all of that. Chairs, yeah. Like a no whole array of chairs, so I feel like the director. Was Welcome back after the break. Now it's time for the big Hollywood exclusive. This is with heartthrobs Chris Evans and Anna De Armas, stars of The Grey Man, which also stars our Tamil superstar Dhanush, of course. Listen to all the wonderful things they said about him, and also check out their favorite action moves. We got an urgent locate and destroy. That could be fun. The man's got some street cred. Reckless mystery man you guys send in when you can officially send anyone else. What a star-studded film. Who was that one star in that film that you were really excited about, about working with or even about just sharing the movie space with? On this movie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I can't get enough of this one. Um, <laughs> Anna and I only ever want to make movies with Anna Day on this. That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, so Chris, I, but I, the character is seven years old. No, it doesn't matter. Anna will. <laughs> Anna's gonna be great. It's fine. Chris, it's a man. I don't care. It's Anna. No, Anna is Anna is just such a talented actress, and we have. You a know really what? I mean, there were so together. many people like because how can you not say Alfre? Or How like Alfie, Bill, Danush. Billy I mean, Bob, there, Danush. There, there are like, honestly the truth. I don't is, think I, I, I don't think I could choose. I was happy to go back again with Ryan after Blade Runner. Yeah. I was happy, you know, like Chris sure. after Knives Out. Yeah. It's so rare that you actually get to work with the same people in one or two projects, and yeah. and and then the ones that you haven't, but you've seen in so yeah. many. Even movies Julia Butters, before, Julia Butters, oh, she's she's also awesome. Yeah, this, this movie really is, has endless talent, and so I, I yeah, we we were thrilled to work with all of them. Give it to me. You wanna go first? You go. I was gonna ask you about my Tamil friend Danush. How was it working with him? Danush is incredible, and he is the most patient. Human being I've ever seen. <laughs> Patient and poised and lovely yeah. and so polite and, and professional. So lovely, and yeah, yeah. truly, like really, lovely, really lovely hardworking. Man. Danush and I spent endless hours at this, you know, stunts facility that we were training and rehearsing for weeks. These fight scenes, and he was just 
there and he was focused and he was there no complaining no nothing he was just so into it and and so lovely to work with i mean he's so much fun well said uh, truly yeah. a professional professional just just a really poised man there's something about him that almost has like an elegance to him yeah. that, that really is you know he, he sets the bar for professionalism yeah that's so good to hear you know considering we're both in the same city and of course he's Danish and um, you know, this is an action film the two of you <laughs> of course he's Danish <laughs> you want to make an omelet you got to kill some people the two of you are no strangers uh, to action is there any um favorite move of yours that you like to go to when it's like an all out action film like this that's kind of a good question all right what's your favorite move what's your yeah. favorite like action move cuz i've yeah. seen anna do a bunch of action moves i've seen anna do full full fight sequences <laughs> i've seen anna kick like 10 people's I like ass kicks. Do you like kicks I you like, like kicks, kicks. Like But what? I also tried that Superman punch. Yeah, remember? Right. And the, what? The you don't like Superman punch? No, I do. I you do. You do like Superman punch? Yeah, I punches. do. Okay. But kicking is my. Uh, I you like really kick. like it. You like a kick? Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I do it so well. That high kick, Chris. What is yours? Oh God, I like. You know what? I like a Superman punch. A Superman What punch. Is a Superman is, punch. A Superman punch is when you jump off of one oh, foot. You jump off of the wrong in, foot and you kind you of hit. punch in the air. It's um, so badass. It's great. You know what I don't like? I don't love headbutts. Headbutts, look, headbutts might work in life. In in films, they're very hard to sell. You know, based on where the camera is, where you have to sink them and the, you know, snap back of your head, it's 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 a complicated move to make look good. Um but yeah, I I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say Superman punches and you want your kicks. Yeah. yeah I have kicks. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't kill anybody. Let's wrap on today's show. Let's recap. We got you the hottest news. We got you Ranbir Kapoor. We got you an exclusive interview with Chris Evans and Anna the Armis. I don't know how we can top this next weekend, but we will try. So tune in again and until then remember to stay safe and stay entertaining. Sort of thing that I should expect. And that's it. You got, got it. it. No, no, she got it. Got it. They're lying. She got this it. is what it is. This is called this you is what cracked. it is. Talking to Ranbir is it. just being like to all the, the, the time. The director said you got it. I didn't say anything also. No, it's not. I don't know. Now suspense huh? is only gone. No, now. it's not it's gone. gone. He now. can't release his interview. He's going to tell the story. Yeah, yeah. Now in Sri Lanka folks the PM and president have run away from the fight it sounds funny if you're not paying attention but it's but it's true they actually just got up and ran away they owe 50 billion in debt the country that is and they need to clear 28 billion by 2027 a minimum of 28 billion otherwise they basically just sink completely there'll be like nothing left so let's talk to international financial advisor Dr R U Kutty who is being consulted by what's left of the Sri Lankan administration uh, and he's right here with us he's a very busy man Mr R U Kutty ha ah, that's my name <laughs> I see I see great opening sir great opening i love that let's start at the top now is there any hope for Sri Lanka <sighs> Is there a hope for Uddhav in Maharashtra <laughs> or Congress at the center? <laughs> I don't know. Then that's your answer. <laughs> okay, okay, but now let's go from the top to the bottom. But young man, I did that by appearing on your show. <laughs> right. So comedy we've got, we're getting no answers, but we've got comedy true. Now are you Kutti? That's me. That's my name. No, no. No, no. Just let me complete. Are you Kutti? That's my name. That's me. <laughs> This guy is Can you just behave yourself, sir? Please, sir. How did it get so bad for Sri Lanka? Give us an understanding of why it went wrong. See, I'll tell you. You owe 10 rupees. Yes. Then you borrow 10 rupees to pay off the first 10 rupees. I owe 10 rupees, so I borrow 10 rupees. But now you owe the initial guy 12 rupees. because of the compound interest <laughs> so you pay off 10 still owed to to him mm -hmm. plus another 10 to second guy meanwhile both sums compound further and become this is getting very scary <laughs> so now you owe 5 to the first guy and 13 to the second guy 
so you borrow 10 from the third guy. <laughs> okay, 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 please stop, please stop. This show is painful enough as it is. Don't, don't do this calculation, please stop. So, they reach a point of 50 billion plus in debt and growing. <laughs> is that so? And can you believe it all started from borrowing just 10 rupees? <laughs> Starting off with some breaking news, the BJP is all set to pick its name for the next Vice President of India. The BJP Parliamentary Board will begin its meeting very shortly in the next few minutes. The party is going to deliberate over the Vice Presidential candidate. Remember, these are pictures of Home Minister Amit Shah arriving there a short while ago. You also have other members of the Parliamentary Board, including Ministers Rajnath Singh, the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan, all of them arriving at the BJP uh, headquarters. Nitin Gadkari there arriving just moments ago. The Prime Minister is expected in the next few minutes. Remember the Vice Presidential candidate of the NDA, uh, victory is almost certain because the numbers clearly are with the NDA. As far as the Electoral College is concerned, you can see pictures of Rajnath Singh arriving at the BJP headquarters just moments ago. Prime Minister Modi will be arriving very soon is the word that we're getting in. Uh, the others who've arrived so far, Union Ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari, as well as, of course, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister. J.P. Nadda, the BJP Party President, will also be present in the Parliamentary Board meeting. The last date for filing of nominations is the 19th of July, and the election is scheduled for the 6th of August. Arun Danta is joining us live from the BJP headquarters. Uh, I know it's uh, useless to speculate when it comes to the BJP and its picks such as this for VP or President. Uh, but what are the names that are doing the rounds? Well, uh, Zaka, it's, uh, it's very difficult to speculate, as you rightly mentioned, because the way uh, things have been happening in the past couple of big decisions, uh, it was, uh, you know, no way guessing for anybody. In fact, when they announced the name of uh, Draupadi Murmu for their, uh, uh, you know, presidential nominee, nobody knew till the time J.P. Nadda announced it from the stage uh, as far as the you know candidature of uh, you know candidate for the vice uh, president uh, post is concerned there are so many names you know uh, there were uh, talks about Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi when he was not given uh, you know additional tenure uh, at that point in time, people were talking about uh, that whether he can be given responsibility. And then there were uh, talks about Arif Mohammad Khan. Uh, you know, people were talking about Amrinder Singh. Uh, you know, uh, and you know, a few were saying, uh, saying, uh, talking about somebody from uh, South India. So there are various names which are floating around, but nobody knows who's going to be, to, going to be the NDA's vice presidential nominee. A uh, few minutes from now, because all the uh, parliamentary board members have arrived here. Uh, Prime Minister Modi expected to reach here. Then the discussion will commence and today we are told that it's not going to be a long meeting because uh, at around 7.30 all of them will be in the parliament. Uh, the dinner uh, which has been organized for all the uh, member of parliament of BJP. So uh, once Prime Minister Modi arrives here at the BJP headquarters, uh, you know, then we can expect that uh, within, within an hour uh, you know, the meeting will be concluded and perhaps today we'll have uh, the name of the NDA's, uh, uh, you know, vice presidential nominee. Uh, so remember, what's the protocol, you know, the like, uh, when the presidential, and the uh, Arun, when the presidential candidate's name was announced, when Draupadi Murmu's name was announced, uh, JP Nadda had a press conference, so would the same protocol apply once the name is decided? Will the party president come and address the press and say that this is the NDA's candidate? Well, uh, Zaka, there is no clarity about, uh, you know, about the press conference, who's going to uh, address that press conference, whether that will take place today or not. Uh, but what we are picking here, uh, you know, from our sources, uh, it is likely that uh, the name will be announced today itself, uh, because uh, then you have Sunday tomorrow, and on Monday, uh, you know, the candidate, uh, uh, whoever it may be, will file uh, the nomination. That's what uh, we have uh, given to understand, because on because um, you know 19th is the last day to file the nomination uh, so perhaps in a few hours from now we'll have the clarity as to who's going to be uh, the the vice presidential candidate of NDA and uh, uh, as far as the stats are concerned uh, you know it is very much in favor of BJP the, the total strength of the parliament because uh, vice president's election, the electoral college consists of uh, uh, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha M M MP. So uh, out of 780, which is the uh, existing number of the parliament, uh, 
390 is the majority mark. So BJP has around 394. So there's, there's not going to be any issue for them as far as uh, vice, vice presidential uh, candidate uh, is concerned. So it's going to be a you know, cakewalk for them. But who's going to right. be uh, that candidate? What is the arithmetic which uh, BJP puts behind the name? That's something which is going to be very, very interesting. All right. We're waiting for the Prime Minister to arrive at the BJP headquarters and then the Parliamentary Board will begin its meeting, its deliberations as to who is going to be the Vice Presidential pick for the NDA for the moment. Arun, many thanks. We'll come back to you as and when that meeting begins. Meanwhile, the big focus at 6 o'clock this evening, a special investigation team that is probing the role of Tista Sehlwad in forming a conspiracy after the Gujarat 2002 riots, has claimed that she deliberately did so to implicate the then Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi. The SIT has also startlingly claimed that she was doing this at the behest of Ahmed Patel, the longtime political secretary of Sonia Gandhi. The Congress and the Patel's uh, family, in fact, have dismissed these claims. The question is, were Tista and gang doing this for political purposes? Uh, the SIT has also gone on to claim that Tista apparently got separate checks, one for 5 lakhs, which was given to her uh, by a person who was told to by Ahmed Patel, and then subsequently another one for 25 lakhs at a guest house just days after the Gujarat 2002 riots. Let me now bring you up to speed with what are the findings. Uh, let's in fact play out the uh, bites of both the BJP and the Congress in response to the SIT's findings. पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की उन्हें अपमानित और उन्हें किस प्रकार से निष्कासित किया जाए इसकी चेष्टा की और यह पूरे षड्यंत्र की रचयिता सोनिया गांधी है हर बार गुजरात चुनाव जब आता है तो कभी अंसारी जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे कभी स्वर्गीय अहमद पटेल जी का नाम लेकर शुरू हो जाएंगे और मैं याद दिला दूं आपको जिस एसआईटी ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी को क्लीन चिट दी थी उसके अध्यक्ष श्री राघवन को पुरस्कृत किया गया राइट दिस इज वॉट दी एस आई टी एन इट सबमिटेड दिस टू द गुजरात हाई कोर्ट दे आर दिस इज ऑफकोर्स इन द बेल हियरिंग ऑफ तीसरा सेटलवाद दिस इज वॉट दी एस आई टी सेज दैट वॉज अ कंस्पिरसी दैट वॉज हैच एट द बिहेस्ट of late Ahmed Patel. Remember, Ahmed Patel, for the longest time, was Sonia Gandhi's right-hand man, her political secretary. Uh, the plot involved Tista Sethilwad, as well as two former Gujarat cops, uh, former ADG R.B. Shrikumar, and also Sanjeev Bhatt, who was in the intelligence, uh, state intelligence at that time. Tista Sethilwad apparently held meetings with Ahmed Patel just days after the Godhra incident that happened in February of 2002. Ahmed Patel gave Tista Sethilwad first through a person appointed by him 5 lakh rupees uh, in the first installment and then subsequently 25 lakh rupees. There was a meeting at a guest house that happened in Ahmedabad just days after the 2002 riots. There was a larger political objective which was to destabilize the then Gujarat government under Chief Minister Narendra Modi. These are the findings of the SIT. This has now become a full-fledged political war between the Congress and the BJP. Tom Varakar, national spokesperson of the BJP, is joining us. Ratan Sharda, RSS researcher on the broadcast this evening. Saira Shah Halim, author and activist, Kapil Madan, lawyer. And I must say, before we start the debate, that the Congress party has officially said that they will not be sending their representative uh, for this debate. But let me start with Tom Varakar. These are damning findings of the SIT, but the Congress has hit back and said, why are you attacking a dead man? It's been five years since Ahmed Patel died. If you had this information while he was alive, at least he could have defended himself. Tom. Zaka, he would have definitely defended himself in the sense he would have spoken out because his condition towards the end of his life was very miserable. I've known the man for quite some time and his helplessness was visible right on his face. The kind of treatment he received from Rahul Gandhi and company was shocking. Now, these are issues. If he was alive, what would he say? The issue is not about late Sri Ahmed Patel. The issue is about who was behind it. Okay. The questions being raised by the Bharatiya Janata Party is, did Sonia Gandhi know about it? If so, she must come out openly. It's not enough that Jairam Ramesh issues a press statement saying, well, you know, uh, Gujarat elections and the script is all familiar. Why don't you deny that there was no connection? 
if you don't deny that means there is an element of suspicion mm. the first time i met tester settle what was in mr ahmed patel's house it was incidental zaka okay i had just walked in and uh, i also do not agree with what mumtaz the daughter says mm -hmm. she was not familiar with the daily routine of mr ahmed patel you could not meet ahmed patel without an appointment you okay. had to call him up and the time allotted you had to be there it could be late night it could be 1 o'clock 2 uh, o'clock any time this man was a work al alcoholic and uh, and then he would rush to ten janpur to get his clearances he would not breathe without instructions from ten janpur i have okay. known the man Sa he stood by them saira shah okay. halim this is what the sit has said and it's been submitted to a uh, uh, district court uh, in uh, amdabad the political objective of the applicant in this case tita satalwad while enacting this larger conspiracy was dismissal or destabilization of the elected government in gujarat by hook or crook for which she obtained illegal financial and other benefits from a rival political party in lieu of her attempts to wrongly implicate among others the then chief minister this is the affidavit that they have filed in a, in a court surely both tista and the congress party need to explain uh, see zaka these conspiracy theories and these allegations are getting bizarre by the day it seems that a particular political party is getting quite rattled because there are elections around the corner in that state because here you're putting all the allegations on an elderly frail woman as if she sent the orders and mr ahmed patel who is not even alive to defend his position has given a uh, an alleged amount of money to a human rights defender it is so sorry that this regime is so fearful of one particular woman because it feels it seems that a whole lot of skeletons are there in the closet and they are going to tumble out you know any time sooner or later so that is what they're trying so hard to bury no, and but saira so, saira so tell me something if they wanted if they want once again if they wanted to bury it they would have buried it why are they keeping the issue alive so number 1 number 2 no no number 2 number 2 you can say you can say what you want about you know political motives and so on and so forth are you attributing then political motives to the supreme court also because the court said pretty much the same thing uh, about a month ago when it uh, delivered the final verdict that there was a larger conspiracy and that tista was involved in it so all i'm trying to say is that right now there are various agencies that are dancing to the tune of the ruling regime and it is very tragic that where justice should be delivered justice is not being delivered but justice is just being added to the powers they are just making the powers more powerful okay. and i think that's not a healthy sign for a true democracy when the powerful who are already powerful they are getting these uh, what do you call help from all these sources and these very very bizarre allegations of i mean put i mean sonia no, no, gandhi but once of course these are allegations that have been filed in an, an affidavit MP, before a court of law it's up to tista settlewad and her lawyers to contest so that but but here's what here's what here's what it says more and i want to read this and i want to ask ratan sharda to weigh in on this um Two days later, in a meeting conducted at the government circuit house in Shahi Bagh between late Sri Ahmed Patel and the applicant Tista Satulwad, uh, by the said witness, was handed over 25 lakh rupees more on the instructions of late Ahmed Patel. This cash money was given to the applicant. It was not part of any relief-related corpus because all the relief came through one centralized Gujarat Relief Committee. So this money was not going through that centralized system. It was seemingly given to her separately. See, you know, now uh, one second, one second. I'm asking that to Ratan Sharda, please. Yeah, thank you. Zaka, actually, I must appreciate the left and the Islamist lobby for standing together even in the worst cases. Tista has been implicated by the Supreme Court. Are you saying, or is she saying that Supreme Court is the agency which is helping this current regime? This kind of implication, this kind of arguments, don't wash well with the people. You remember there were a lot of fake stories by the same lady. Tista has been. caught on on the on the wrong foot for her perjury for tutoring the witnesses for misusing the funds and now if you say no no these funds didn't come since so far all the stories have found to be true and properly if properly uh, uh, you know uh, checked and curated by the supreme court supreme court's own sit cleared mr modi but still these people kept on slamming him kept on uh, abusing him and still they believe that the, the government and the courts are on their side so okay. this kind of approach 
of lying or lying and damn lies continuously and then trying to defend her because her her credibility is only in tatters now to show that this money was received by her people would rather believe that than to believe a lady who has misused every kind of funds she is a mercenary she is not simply uh, you know what you call uh, do good as samaritan i want to ask kapil madan this is what the sit is also going on to say that tista had multiple meetings with rb shri, shri kumar who was then adgp armed unit he had nothing to do with the relief work uh, in the aftermath of the riots and sanjeev but who is in the state intelligence bureau neither of these two officers were involved in any relief work and kapil madan also please respond to what ratan sharda has said that tista has been implicated by no less than the supreme court not just for tutoring witnesses but for filing affidavits on behalf of witnesses and also for misuse of funds that came to her ngo no less than the supreme court has said this you have to unmute yourself kapil so zata let me give you a very point wise uh, uh, rebuttal of what the allegations you have made now first thing first now if you look at the sit if you look at the entire supreme court's judgment you would know and you will also get to know that whatever allegations this sit is raising in this affidavit in tista's bail application none of the allegations finds mention in the supreme court uh, uh, supreme court's judgment and i challenge you also and mr ratan sharda also please point out which paragraph uh, you will find allegations where you know this 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 uh, Uh, uh money from uh, uh, mr but Emma the court to... judgment did say and that there was a larger conspiracy <laughs> and that she was part of that conspiracy to destabilize the government and to and to tarnish uh, the then chief minister of gujarat narendra modi the court did say that please hold up zaka zaka please hold up no, no, did what... the did the court, supreme court judgment I, not mention yes, that I, I, let me let me let me answer let me answer that let hmm. me answer that now zaka you would appreciate that was a supreme court appointed sit and it was a court monitored investigation that was being done by sit yes. okay now in that sit they don't find any kind of allegation of giving money by ahmed patel to tista sitalwar this is again a matter of fact now suddenly after 20 years there is another sit that is now starting the investigation and after 20 years you have the evidence where you are now claiming that mr ahmed patel paid so and so money to tista sitalwar i ask a question now during all this while there was no embargo there was no predicate that why this investigation against tista satelwar if there was a money angle involved why it was not done for 20 long years and why they waited you know so long and they want to do this just before the gujarat election okay now but kapil the fact is that that sit the new sit got constituted after the supreme court judgment which explicitly said and this is a three judge bench by the way a three judge bench which explicitly said that uh, the the petitioner in the, in this case tista satulwad had got into a conspiracy to tarnish the image of the then government and the then chief minister narendra modi it's explicitly said this in in the, in the judgment now yeah. why is that the, uh, the sit finding it 20 years later because the sit was constituted basis the supreme court judgment which came a month ago so yes zaka let me let me respond to that so if you will I am not here arguing what is the role of Tista Sethalwad. My argument is limited to the fact that there are allegations where money was paid by Mr. Yes. Ahmed Patel. Yes. There is. Is there any reference to that effect in the Supreme Court's SIT? Okay. Uh, uh, Tom, what I can respond? There is no, no mention in the Supreme Court judgment <laughs> about any kind of money being exchanged or that Ahmed Patel was involved uh, in the larger conspiracy. Tom. I am challenging the BJP spokes 